Uh, could have warned me. Was that pain or orgasm? Yes. Like he comes blood. Oh, that's not nice. Mess based. That's one of them doctor moments, you know. Doctor Who <laughs> moments. Doctor moment, you know, where you have a thing that, that goes wrong. This is the Doctor Who episode where the doctor starts to come blood. <clears throat> that's the opening. I don't scare. remember that one. Oh, it was, it was uh, a good one. It was really good. One of the older ones, yeah. That was probably oh, during really the season uh, where it was in America. Really good. Uh, they, they, that's the one that they used the most fake blood on than any other uh they broke a record yeah Yeah, it's like uh, the shining it's like the shining of the doctor who uh universe turns out doctor who it turns out time lords they they come a lot Uh, that's not why you like the show so much well i've never seen it myself this is all the things that i've heard this is all alleged that's why you got put off from the show so much yeah Anyway, hello I wanted, everyone. I wanted, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, we're live. Goodness? What is goodness? Goodness? Oh, goodness. I know that one. I didn't know the other one. Uh, the, the capacity of the presence of goodery. This is, this is one of those uh, one of those fappins where I'm like, is there? Oh, should we even do an intro? Should we just go? Because we've got a lot to talk about. Likely. Uh, go for it. Start. Got all of the Break things to talk about. I no guess. intro. Hmm. No intro. No, no. I don't want to go. I just arrived. Go. Jeez. I've been looking forward to this. That's fair. All right. So uh, the, the quick vision is um, everyone here played Ragnarok thoroughly. Isn't that right? Everyone here. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. True. Oh. I'm sorry. Guess. I had to step out for a moment. What, what oh, was the no, question? Nothing. You, I'm sure it was fine. Everyone agreed. So was, I think that was the answer. So. Oh, okay. I think unity is our strength. That's very true. Um, yeah. And, <clears throat> and what, what it was was, if you've seen any of those streams, you'll see that a lot of people were like, "Oh man, that was that was uh, they did some story stuff there. We should we should do a thing where we talk about it. Uh, also the mechanics." And then it's like, "Okay, but the story it turns out it's not like um, it's not one of those movie films where it's like two hours or four hours or six hours or eight <laughs> hours. It's it's kind of like several movies, like a whole bunch of movie films in one. And so yeah." It's there's loads Not. to talk about as to what they did right and what they did wrong and what they could do to be different or whatever and and stuff. Mm. Um, I don't I don't know if it's worth starting with like a, oh what did everybody think of the story instead of just talking about it. But I I I mean it's gonna be a long one, so why not? Right, give people a bit of a, a little bit of insight into who they're dealing with here. What kind of disgusting opinions? I don't know if oh it's probably yeah honorable mention Callisto Protocol crashing and burning sad face. Yeah. <laughs> Sad face. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of those cases yeah. where you unironically hate to see it. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody here actually bad. had an interest in that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were gonna um, potentially, yeah, really do something with that. That was my plan mm -hmm. for the week, basically. <laughs> no, I was like, no, not actually. Callisto is basically it's... Dead Space Three. I don't know about that. No, Dead Space Three uh, works. Dead Space Three oh. does work. <laughs> Just all I hear about so, is stuttering. Yeah. yeah, it's not like even no, the PlayStation Shivering. Five version runs just fine, and it's still a bad video game, guys. It's like it's bad. It's not. Oh my goodness! It's very bad. It's poorly very, designed. It's very not, bad. Not good. Are you sure it's very bad? Are you being yeah, hyperbolic? No. If anything, no. No. If anything, if anything I'm being kind of nice. Very bad. Oh my goodness. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not much we can say on that. Maybe I'm trying to think. Is like, if, uh, is any of us? Well, one of Are us. I mean, Mark, you played it a bit, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've been streaming it on my Rumble channel, and I, I am gonna finish it. But it is anyone who tells you that yeah, it's basically Dead Space has is a, a liar or has not played Dead Space because it's not. It's like a Last of Us game that's hyper linear, mostly focused on melee combat. And oh. sort of looks like Dead Space. That's, well, that's all. Go. Yeah. One thing and the I PC watched the, uh, the other day. I watched a review. A guy, I forget his name. He does reviews of games, but only after he one hundred percents everything in them. Hmm. And his review, huh? The completionist. I don't know. I mean, he is a completionist, but I don't oh, know if that's okay. his name or if that's just a title or what he says he is to his friends. I I'm not sure. But he only reviews games when he has 100% uh, 
completed them. That's his thing, I guess. And he only talked about the game for 18 minutes. Wow. Which is something I could not do. I don't no. think there's any <laughs> game that if I completed it at 100%, I could only talk about for 18 minutes. And the review is pretty so-so because a lot of it was very subjective. I don't feel like I gained a lot from watching this review, which isn't something I feel I should say after someone's done 100% completion on a game. I feel like you should just it should be a, a rich tapestry of information and mechanical discussions and things, but oh well. Yeah, that should be Good a deep voice. dive. If your oh thing well. is, I know this game inside and out, then yeah. Well... Uh, well, we did a forge yesterday, uh, so if anyone here listens yeah. to that on Old Metal's channel, they're gonna have an inkling as to what we thought of the game, uh, or the story rather. They might have yep. an idea. So why don't we um why don't we do a do a thing of just yeah everyone can give give a little give a little blurb. And I'm gonna start from the from the right side and go left because I think at least got to start with someone who's gonna be a little more negative, all right? And that's what Theo does. That's that's what everyone knows Theo to be. He's hyper negative about everything. So nice. welcome. Everything. L every last Even thing. Air. Oxygen is kind of lame, to be honest with you. Mm. Uh, super mainstream. But uh, anyway, yeah, Theo. What did you think of? Uh, well, actually, if you want to let people know what you have in and, and in what way consumed this game, so to speak, and then what you thought of it. I have not played the video game. I have watched Mauler's playthrough of the game and several other people play through it, including Fringy and Metal. Uh, but okay, yeah. I saw me going. <laughs> okay. I went back I and know. caught the vods. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I guess that Metal guy, you know. Um, yeah, that, uh, fuck that yeah guy. I have not played it myself. Um, so is this just my thoughts on the story? Is that what you're after? Um, well, your thoughts in general, I suppose. Why not? Um. It shouldn't surprise you at this point that I'm kind of down on this game. I don't like I don't like games like this. To put it as simply and as bluntly as I can, uh, it's it's a very very triple A kind of product, and I think that's to its detriment rather than to its benefit. Uh, in terms of the narrative, however, there's very little to complain about there. My being somewhat down on the story has more to do with my feelings about the overall product rather than any issues I have with the narrative itself and also to do with the fact that the narrative is being placed in a video game as opposed to standing on its own as a film or something mm -hmm. so to say I think it's an extremely well written story but I wonder if perhaps there may have been better ways to tell it and and or better ways to tell it through a video game I know and or TV show and or what oh, I remember that show yeah. yeah I don't oh someone does uh, uh, someone watched that. I, watched I think Drinker something. watched it. It was crazy. I watched five episodes and then I forgot about it. I'm gonna watch it all. <laughs> I got through. Happen. I forgot about it. Um, but yes, uh, very well. Fair enough. Uh, Rags, what about you? Same question. Okay, so I watched a long play of it, and I spoke with, uh, and I've been speaking with Mahler and to a lesser degree Fringy on uh, the game and getting caught up with 2018 a bit before this game came out, so I could sort of understand a lot of things uh, leading up to the events of Ragnarok. Uh, I have not played it, though. Uh, I watched, like I said, watched the long play, talked a lot about it with, uh, talked about it a lot with Mahler. Uh, so I can't speak really too much as to the mechanics, because I haven't played it. Um, as far as the story and characters go, I really like them a lot, particularly the characters and the characters' writing. I'm extremely happy that in a big popular game that this kind of attention to the writing and the characters has clearly been given, that we are reaching the end of what was very obviously uh, a, a long-term plan and goal that was set forth years ago. I'm extremely happy that the single-player game with no microtransactions or DLC is selling very well and that it seems to be beloved. I think this sets a, a, a very, very, uh, a, an amazingly good uh, message out there that people do appreciate good stories and good characters and a lot of thoughtful dialogue and callbacks and things of that nature. And even though I, I will likely never play it and I've got no real investment at all in God of War, I suppose until now, um, I, I, I'm very, very happy that this game happened. Wow, fair enough. Uh, metal! Yeah, I was alright, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, uh, 
I mean, if you watched my streams, you, you're probably aware that I very much love this game, uh, 2018, and this one together, specifically. Uh, I mean, yeah. Narratively, very good. Uh, I'm not as, not as down on the mechanics. I think they, they're, they're all right. They're, they, they're all right. And, uh, I mean, I could talk for hours and hours how, how much I like, but yeah, love the characters, love how, where we went, that it was planned, and uh, yeah, I'll just keep it short. I just like it a lot. A lot, a lot. A lot. All right. Um, what I'm about to say, I think, reflects pretty heavily on Metal as well, but I'm, uh, he and I, possibly Mark, we'll find out, uh, very obsessive with the old God of War franchise, been playing it since mm -hmm. early days, played them many times over, very familiar, always fun to jump back in when the God of War days come back around, seems like there's a, almost a consistent gap with each, almost a generation with, with, with how it goes, but, uh, yeah, this one was, uh, was a bit of a, well, 2018 was a bit of a worry, and came out, and I was very happy with it, uh, Though the, the fighting over whether or not it was any good back back in 2018 was a fun thing, and, and we're doing it all over again. Because uh, Ragnarok, very similar results. Widely popular, has uh, not changed a huge amount in terms of its formatting for both how it delivers story and uh, what mechanics are being used in it. Uh, uh, depending on where you discuss it, that can be seen as an enormous detriment. It's, it's being called a giant DLC. Hopefully we can uh, maybe mm -hmm. talk about that. It's... Uh, it's being considered like, you know, how could you even call this a game? It's clearly a movie. That's an interesting point of view. You know, I, mm. I, I, I see I'm being nice, all right? I'm not being mean at all to any of these opinions. These, these are all very fair. Uh, and we're going to have some chaos probably in chat tonight because you're going to have plenty of people who hate this game, plenty of people who love it, and plenty of people who think it's fine. Just fine. Um, the thing that I think has a runaway success on this one that uh is, is funny because i rewatched the mathematosis video for the 2018 game and one of his conclusion points about this game or the 2018 one was that uh it does a lot of things just fine to to okay and stuff but it'll it'll do nothing so well that it'll never be uh used as an example of how to do anything because it doesn't do anything like the best or even close to great but like I just uh, the one aspect I think they've absolutely nailed compared to the vast majority of our entries in this regard is is narrative. I think they've done a fucking mm -hmm. phenomenal job with uh, the writing and Ragnarok and twenty eighteen put together. But I mean, if I had to choose between the two, I would be like, yeah, Ragnarok especially. And you know, if someone said, "Wow, that is the most absurd thing I've ever heard," buckle in. We got like <laughs> the, the 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 nature of this this EFAP as as some people might be surprised to hear that two people here haven't even engaged necessarily with mechanics directly is because we are talking uh, a lot about the story. Um, Mola, what are you saying? That I think the game's good. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, yeah, that's the short yeah. version. Uh, here we go. But, but yes, uh, this, but the thing is, all six here are very familiar with the story, so that's going to be the plan. But I, 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 you know, no reason why we can't talk about mechanics here and there if it does come up. Um, yeah, all right. Mark, what about you? Hi, everybody. I'm Mark the Cyborg, and I, I have angry <laughs> dogs who were totally quiet. They were totally quiet for the entire time everyone else was talking. I was terrified. <laughs> Stop talking! Fuck off! Luckily, I'm using push to talk, but I just shouted to X-Ray Girl for help. Anyways, um, <laughs> I, I, I like the game quite a lot. I think the story is great, and uh, most of the the um, concerns that I had for the story in the middle of that uh, Mauler and I were kind of talking about as they were happening were kind of evened out by the end, and most of the concerns that I had um, were uh, unwarranted, and I ended up really, really liking what they did with all the story and characters. And I played the game on Give Me God of War difficulty, so it took me 76 hours. Damn. But overall, I'd recommend it. Well, well, all right. Uh, Free. Well, so my God of War adventure started recently because I played 2018 properly for the first time only about a month ago ahead of Ragnarok because I wanted to play Ragnarok and talk about it. And I really liked 2018 and coming into Ragnarok and having completed it, those two paired together um, in terms of the story that they have to tell is uh, really, really great. Um, it's super thematically rich. The character writing is like pr across the board stellar. Um, it's uh, it's very impressive to me what they achieved by way of uh, writing 
in terms of like the core experience itself, game. Well, we're not talking about that much. So I, uh, I, um, I really, really, really liked it. Um, yeah, that those are my very brief thoughts. All right. Well, like I said, the plan is to talk about this game's story, and what we're gonna do is use something I I cut up from the game as a reference. Nice and short. It's just uh, maybe one or two cutscenes, you know, in the background that'll play, and then we can pause or wait for them to finish uh, as they as they happen, and pause and then talk about what they're doing. I have uh, so much to say about what this game managed to do and what it was up to in reference to the original trilogy in uh, 2018 and then just itself. Um, I've included a couple of edits to help show what they've done and how they did it. And I've got a, bits of the soundtrack involved so that we can have a little listen and talk about what they're doing with that as well. Um, so, is everyone ready to begin what is going to be a, a, a real quick adventure? Just just now, or maybe. You lie! Yeah, it's going to be very brief. Yeah, I can't we'll see us talking about no this time. very long. Um, yeah. it, was, it was funny, when, when you know we were talking about it on Metal's Forge, like... Uh, I wasn't sure how we, the format was going to work or what we would talk about exactly, but like we in about ten minutes we'd already been talking for like an hour and a half. So yeah, <laughs> uh, so, you know it happens. So yes, uh, what you can expect, person listening right now who maybe isn't this isn't exactly what they were looking for. God of War, the the God of War Ragnarok. Okay, that's a great name pending. Uh, Ragnarok is going to be today. Is this more than likely? Because there's no way we can finish this in one stream. Tomorrow will be part two. <laughs> um, and then the following week, we're going to check out uh, criticisms of the game. Hypercriticisms. We're going we're gonna to look into people who are very much not a fan of it. Because, unfortunately, the six of us here aren't exactly... None of us hate the story. Uh, so No. That's what we ended up with. Um, I don't think anyone even dislikes it. No, most people here. Are... I don't even think anybody here thinks it's even okay. <laughs> it's, it's, maybe it's they very... do. Uh, that's the thing. Maybe they'll change their mind. But uh, yeah, so that's what's that's what's happening today. Um, you're welcome to join us. And uh, once we get to the end of it, we'll check out super chats. More than likely, not sure what we're dealing with today. We're just going to get started up. Now this game begins as the p first one did, as you hit start and it just runs into the game, the menu is like a little thing of Kratos uh, sitting down. And so, like I said, the plan is to sort of let things play. If anyone has anything they want to say, hit pause, but the typical idea is just going to be once a, once a scene comes to a close, they'll just be pause and then talk about what what's going on. Uh, yeah. The reason why I'm so like weird about this, because I don't think we've ever done a format like this before. Uh, and it's exciting. Well, who knows what's gonna happen, but here we go. Puppies are excited. Ah. Oh, Jesus, that's loud. No. Well, it's loud for me. So there's like seven things to say already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to start. I think I might go with um, facial expressions. Whoa. Well, yeah, I was wondering if I was yeah. jumping the gun by just saying, right, yeah, Christopher Judge. Like, it's, uh, I was not... going straight to Bear McCreary. Like, yeah, this is the thing. There's so many things to say. Like, oh, uh, his theme is so beautiful. <laughs> well enough, what I was aiming for is technology rather than the performance yet. Uh, uh, yes. It's, just... yeah, it's, it's some of the best facial animation like in any video game. Holy crap, the amount you can draw out of it. I'm having flashbacks to us talking about Arcane. It's like, oh my god, it's so good. You can draw so much. Yeah. It represents a new sort of high for games because they've struggled with facial animation a lot, I think. Yeah. Even in prominent oh. titles with high degrees of fidelity, a lot of expressions still come across into the uncanny valley or just don't look appropriate to the scene or what they were trying to portray. 
but there's no, there's plenty to read out of it right off the bat. Um, yeah, which maybe someone will be like, well, wh what are you reading? It's like, well, uh, he's, he's, he's not got Nova Faye's death, like, at nope. all. He's having so much trouble, which is interesting, because in 2018, he's like a stone block when she dies. He's like, she's gone. We move on. Mm -hmm. We grieve. We move on. That sort of thing. And I do it in my own way. Like, but now it looks like, uh, that whole locking out of feelings and stuff, it hasn't exactly had fantastic results, nor does anyone expect no. it to. And um, yeah, he's not, it, like, that expression of, it looked like he he was more so breaking than we usually ever see of him. Yeah. Um, well, also in this right. one, he I think he just doesn't have a good sense of what his goal should be. Like, because he knows that... He knows that the, you have the the Ragnarok prophecies coming and the the stuff that you see at the end of the previous game with, uh, um, with Atreus holding him and what what's uh, I guess implied. I don't know how spoilery we're getting. We're gonna try here. and go as though we're only working with what we have up to the. What about point. for for twenty eighteen though? Can we just go? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, twenty eighteen is all on the table. Go for it. Okay, so when um when you see the mural of Atreus holding Kratos and it's it's at least implied that he's dead. And you, everything else that's on the mural happened during 2018, so you kind of get the impression that, okay, Ragnarok is very likely going to be Kratos' last game. It's heading towards this big battle that's called Ragnarok, and he's spent so much of his life fighting against gods that all he wants to do is not anymore, and he doesn't really want Atreus to either. But he also doesn't want his son to die, so he kind of wants him to wants him to be ready and wants him to prepare. But I think he sort of doesn't know what his end game is, like what what his his ultimate goal should be, because it's like, well, do I have to fight the gods of Asgard to keep my son safe? I'll do it if I can, but I also don't particularly want to start a war with another pantheon of gods. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and he's kind of mm -hmm. letting time while away. Uh, so the entire sequence is about certainty and uncertainty, right? Like, that's the theme of yeah. this little section. Uh, you see it in Kratos' motions when he's uh, holding uh, the bag that held Faye's ashes. His his motions and gestures are really unsure, and like he hesitates a lot. And then you contrast yeah. that to when he picks up an arrow representing Atreus, because we've got symbolism of object representing people. Uh, and yeah, he's much more certain in everything he does, in his motions and his expressions. And I think that's reflected Which, I mean, follows, in right? what he has to say in this game about Faye, uh, compared to the 2018 yes. game. I, like, it follows logically from, in the first game, it's like, yep, we're gonna take a scatter ashes from the high speak and all the realms now. It's like, well, now what are we doing? Based on yeah. all of that information that he received over the course of that adventure, and particularly in the end with the mural, like Mark said, like, yeah, we didn't get what? to now see I have him. To start a now, war that's going to kill yeah, me. Like, now, <laughs> what do I do? What am I? What am I doing? And what impact is it going to have on Atreus? Like, what? What am I to do here? That's like the impression you get just with all of those hesitations. He's just and, doubt. Yeah. And I was reassured uh, with before even playing this game. I knew Christopher Judge was incredibly invested in it i was like well that's yes. a good sign yeah. then like it, that he and that he considered leaving the project really early on until he was reassured that they they know what they're doing and they're going to take care with this and i was like oh, okay good 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> well something. that shows that yeah well, the cavill. <laughs> already it's just like you know for the people out there who hate uh they just want to play the game this is not a great way to start for those people but it is a great way to start for those taking very seriously the story like the story is mm -hmm. is given front and center focus it's like about Kratos as a character. So this whole game has an enormous amount to say about him, but lots of other people do. Mm -hmm. Yes, the music is amazing. That's another topic. Yeah, yeah. Lots, <laughs> of course. There's yeah. lots of great throwbacks to some of the games. That, like they 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 talk directly about Demos, who's Kratos's brother from Ghosts of Sparta, which was a yeah. PSP spinoff <laughs> that was actually like really good. But it's like, wow, well, yeah, they're they're respecting that as canon. Cool. <laughs> but all right, so. Let's look at that exchange rate. What? One ten minutes per one minute of source material. Let's think. It's yeah. a great moment now. Yep. <laughs> it's it's great. Done, basically. Oh god, who's this? So, this is 
a good example of achieving like instantly you can already understand how the dynamic has changed visual storytelling yeah. baby Atreus yeah. is doing things on his own he went oh, out God. hunting by himself got the deer here by himself while Kratos yeah. just here preparing more arrows uh, like it's worth emphasizing that's good that's good when you like yeah. instantly in like five seconds of the character showing up you already understand how the dynamics have changed between the games yeah, Especially because, um, like, of the way 2018 starts with them hunting for exactly, deer. And I would say it's super <laughs> yeah. deliberate. We've we've moved very oh, yeah. far along from 2018. Teaching him how to properly hunt. Now he's doing it all on his own. Uh, Good old George Lucas quote. And it's like poetry. It rhymes. It do be rhyming. It's, um... And, and just, like, no lack of confidence in him to have done that. And I saw yeah. someone mentioning uh, uh, they think it's like a reference in the silhouette for Loki and his horn helmet. Um, that, that's oh, more so okay. known. Uh, oh, man, I didn't think of that at all. Can't speak to it myself, because um, I don't even know how often he's portrayed with a horn helmet, if that's true or not. Um, but, I mean, it would be neat if that was what they were going for, because... Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah, and he looks, he's, he's quite a confident man, but he's like, holy shit, he's not a little boy. What's going on? Like, yes, we have jumped forward in time. Hungry? What's next? No more. Ooh. Storm is getting worse. Also, it's so funny. I love this outfit for Kratos. He loses it in about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I'm like, hey, looking back at the beginning of this game, I'm like, what is that like a what outfit is that? Yeah. yeah. It's real it was what, And you don't even get it back anyway. Like there's no way for you to get it as far as I know. I was wondering if you up upgrade like the the, the the armor you have, the first one, if it changes back to that, but that would be it cool, doesn't. yeah. The, the oh, starting, yeah, that would have been nice. Starting armor is actually really good if you upgrade it all I, the way through. Funny enough, for the <laughs> recording of this footage, that's what I've uh, gone with, is uh, upgrading the original armor. I will yeah, say, some, it's the best can... for not obstructing cutscenes. I uh, bet yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> something I wish they had, like, oh god, there's, there's a few problems with that in the 2018 game. If you buy armor that has the big old shoulder, like, if God things it gets in the way, you can literally cover up Kratos' face when he's talking. <laughs> it's like, oh no. I, I had that happen on my new game plus. Like, I had the big chunky armor, and it's like Freya, you can't see her sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, whoops. But yeah, it's an, another thing you, 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 you saw her. He gives him the arrows, and the trails is not just taking them, he's checking them. Like, a he's like, yep, those are good. And he's wearing the mistletoe still. And he's wearing the mistletoe, yeah. I'll get them ready. Season. What was that, sorry? It was seasonal. Yeah. Festive. Mm -hmm. You can really dive into why, too. It's her. The state is not far. Get ready. Falcon! This happened pretty fast. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just on your way home, and all of a sudden, fighting. Here we go. Yeah, obviously, had another like, example oh. of the amazing facial animation. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have to cut a lot of. Otherwise, we'll never, ever, ever be able to finish this. No, but, I um, know. Because <laughs> what's lost Point there out. is the build-up. Uh, you know, you, you yeah. sort of rise and fall sort of thing. But yeah, she's. Uh, this is great because it's like. Oh, I'm told everything immediately. So she is still trying to kill us. She's overtly doing it now. Like, I don't know how long she's been doing this for exactly, but uh, there is a line, obviously, that she doesn't typically give up very quickly. We know from the mm -hmm. previous game that she was looking for uh, her... I think she was searching for her wings the to break yeah. the curse on being able to hurt living things to get access to her... Basically, all of her warrior stuff. Because she was the queen of the Valkyries. Um, and Odin took all of that from her. And... Obviously, you killed Balder. She's fucking pissed. She's punished Freya now. She's got the even her makeup looks like it's it's running because of tears, sort of thing. Like yeah. it's uh, very dark. And and yeah, they they even do like a setup of it being like a bit haunting. Like her just standing yeah. in the distance, staring at them. It's like, oh shit. Well, I mean, it just kind of makes you. You guys seen the movie It Follows? Yes. 
It's yes, like where you, they'll just like randomly see the, the thing kind of coming towards you slowly. That first shot of Freya kind of reminded me that it's like, <laughs> oh, oh, that's well, he, real bad. It's just a person standing over there right now, but this is going to get much worse. And what I love is the it makes the visual storytelling of Atreus's age have much more of an impact when she's coming at them this hard because you're like the for this amount of time freya has been wanting to kill them this much <laughs> like yeah because that this is kind of how she is at the end of the last game so it's like oh she hasn't calmed down even a little <laughs> like, well, if, if anything, anything yeah yeah the she's fucking, amped it up the hatred in her facial expressions holy shit um, which is unfortunate because if you play 2018 and you enjoyed the story, you probably like her and you kind of feel the same way as Kratos. Like, oh man. Yeah. Mm hmm. She wouldn't give up that easy, would she? She never does. Stay alert. Wait, we're not your enemy. We're worse. Seriously, <laughs> like the yeah. that, uh, I could do without those. <laughs> you could, you could what? Sorry, I, I could do without the ta tap circle to continue this cutscene stuff. Um, that, that was probably one of the things I disliked about playing the game most, and is one of the things that's bothering me most about Callisto Protocol. I just I, might be. I don't even disagree around. necessarily. I just don't know what what can be done at that point. Like it seems. I, I think honestly, just if you want to show me cool scene. shit, yeah, just show me the cool shit. No, uh, I know. It's I, just I'm a, not. They obviously I'm throw it in it. because they. <laughs> there are people out there who are like, if I can't be pressing circle in the cutscenes, then I'm really just watching a <laughs> movie. And it's like that's okay though. <laughs> it's yeah, okay. like I mean that. Like my whole thing is like no, no, no. Like when I say Sony movie game, I'm not even. I don't even mean it as an insult. It's just a, a description of this type of game and some do it better than others and i think when they're better when it's like if you're going to be tapping a button during a cutscene, it's something like clicking the right stick Ooh. oh yeah oh. oh i think we lost uh oh. I, think we, I think mark lost oh sorry his sorry sorry I, I, oh, I don't, no, yeah, you back. know what it is I, I was saying like no no clue. it's because it's because uh, i will tell you it's because um i sometimes talk with my hands and I was saying that the good kind of quick time events would be like in God of War 3 when you fight Poseidon and in the end you click the left and right sticks. The poke out his eyes. Wait, 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 go, yes. back, go, go back, go yeah. back, go back. What does talking with your hands have to do with any of this? Because I took, my, I took my hand off my push to talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, okay. uh, yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, that was me, me being a boomer. It's not, uh, <laughs> and Italian, I suppose. Oh. Sorry. Sorry to hear that. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. I, I just, I think that in the odd event that when like clicking the sticks being the poking out the eyes of Poseidon when it really kind of adds something to the scene it's mostly just tap triangle to not die or otherwise we'll cut this cutscene back 30 um, seconds and make you do it again it's obviously the there's a jamming here they usually put circle tapping in whenever there's uh something of a two beings trying to impose their will on each other or what what like one because mm -hmm. uh, what's happening here obviously if she's dug the sword into him and he's trying to push it back a tap circle to feel like you're ex giving some I, level of expression of muscle. Feels like a I, I do understand why, but it's just like, eh, well, I don't even think it's, it's a like, misunderstanding. I think they know what they're doing. They just, I don't even think they're comfortable with throwing it in that much. They're probably like, we got to do it because otherwise people feel like they're not interacting with the game at all. Uh, but yeah, I, I could take it or leave it. I really don't care. Like, yeah. it's uh, most of the time the requirement is very little. And uh, the only time I really hate it is when it happens when I never expected it. Say I'm actually enjoying the cutscene, it's chill. And then like a dragon bursts in the room and starts trying to eat you. And it's like, tap <laughs> circle. And you're like, oh, fuck, I wasn't even holding the controller. Fuck. Yeah. Um, but something like this, I, I, I can mostly... But but anyway, uh, <laughs> what's, what's happening? just trying to engage you in ways that don't benefit the scene. But yeah, sorry. No, no yeah, it's, it's totally fair. Um, so the, uh, the scream she has at him when she's put the mm -hmm. sword at him really gives me the impression of almost like egging herself on. Uh, to get this done, like um, yeah, it feels like it's been a while, and she's so fucking desperate. I just want to get my revenge, and also yeah. we got the line, uh, "Oh, it's not gonna be that easy," and it's just it never w it never is. And you already know it's like, oh yeah, this has been happening for a while. So if you were in doubt, stab sixty-seven times, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> 
I saw some behind the scenes stuff. The actress for Freya is uh, she, she puts like a nightmare level of work. You know, so uh, I mentioned it to Freya, <laughs> but apparently the the scene where she, let's say for sake of spoilers, I guess I don't know. It's kind of weird, but uh, the 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 roots scene, um, mm -hmm. the the volume stage she was on, the entire carpet was like wet because how many times she'd really? uh, done the the take and been crying basically. Damn. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's probably a good thing. Um, I, I, I almost want to bring it up now because it won't be another fucking like 20 hours before I can, narratively <laughs> speaking. But let's just say a big moment for Kratos, a moment that I believe is currently me, Metal, and Fringy's favorite part of the game. I'm not going to be able to say for everyone else yet. Um, apparently, Christopher Judge said, uh, I've got a maximum of two takes in me for this. When <laughs> like, when we do this, so, like, you know. Make sure everything's working because I'm gonna give it everything I've got. That's yeah. that's fair. <laughs> I, that's, I've always thought that about acting. Like, um, imagine giving what you consider to be the most like authentic and real performance, and they go, "All right, cut, do it again." It's just like, uh. Uh, how do you <laughs> okay. get back into that headspace? Right? Yeah. We talked about it, and uh, uh, Christopher Judge talked about it in uh, for 2018 with the Blades of Chaos scene. About it, the 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 feeling of like that there's a place that he has to get into to be able to deliver that, and it's kind of a scary place personally mm. for him to get himself in there. But he you know wants to do it for the sake of the performance. It's just yeah, he's uh he really clearly cares. Yeah, and I can believe a lot of the people uh, as part of this project really do. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Everybody's top notch. Oh. Please don't make me do this. Yeah. Ah, she fucking hates him so much. Yep. <laughs> So funnily enough, a lot of people I've seen are confused that this happened, and I've seen people defend it as, yeah, really? unfortunately an avalanche happened. It's like, Wait, what? No, no. no. no Freya, <laughs> we, we see her throughout all of 2018, she has like full control over nature to some degree. She's like, yeah, nature yeah. lady. She screamed, <laughs> she's using her power to fuck with all of the environment. She controls like a full blown mountain giant at the end of the yeah, yeah, I, 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 like roots and stuff. It was so weird. I saw people being like, Are you say it's serious? It's just a bad luck avalanche. So it's like, No, it's just that it's, you know, it's a lot of it's Fimble Winter. I was like, What are you both doing? <laughs> <laughs> You're arguing the wrong, the wrong thing. Our three of us stay. Dude, that expression on Kratos, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can't help but imagine it's because that avalanche, if things had gone wrong, that would have killed Atreus. Yeah. But uh, also just, he's probably not happy about him being being, being killed too. That's probably, probably a... I imagine this is a day-to-day -day inconvenience as well. Well, yeah, uh, for those who don't understand, having to go through this. they essentially have a magic force field around their home made of uh, magic, giant magic from staves that are applied to each yep. tree. They make like a big old sphere. We made it. Let us go home. It's Becky. It's Vana. Up. Now, um, I'm not going to do it all the time, but I thought this scene mm -hmm. deserved it. I'm going to replay it now, but with uh, everything removed except the music. Because... Man, oh, what a man. great start for the game with the music. Like haunting. Yeah. Man. I mean you can tell while you play it's like that's some good shit. No, it's just, just listen to it by itself without anything else. Just well looking. the great part is it, it's often synced with what's happening in the yeah. Scene. yeah, yeah, that's what I was getting to. It's like, the action. Don't really realize that while you're in the action yourself. King circle. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Really makes you think. Rings of Power had this guy. I don't, I don't know. Oh, like, yeah. How? How? The guy who made That's this OST made uh, Rings of Power is so nuts. Uh, the only conclusion everyone's come to is he didn't give a fuck about Rings of Power. That's yeah, the only, that's, like, that's what I think after listening to the soundtrack to this and how legitimately impressive it is. And as you play the game, you notice, you know, yeah. reincorporations of themes and you know stuff of that nature. And, and you realize how much work and effort and thought went into it. And then you think back on Rings of Power and how utterly mediocre and un yeah. and forgettable every bit of music in that seemed to be. Rings of Power was a paycheck. Uh, if you hear him talking about this game, he cares immensely about it, and I can't help but assume that poured into the soundtrack. Yeah, you can hear it. That choir drops. <laughs> yeah. Pretty great. Like watching a, it's like it's like watching a Fantasia movie, kind of. <sighs> That's some good shit. Yeah, yeah. When you're watching <laughs> it with no other sound. It's almost sad that, like, uh, you know, even I didn't appreciate that song when I was playing the game to the level of what, yeah, listening to it individually. I'm... But that's the thing: the music is just another component. It's accentuating the story in that moment. It's cool to listen it, to it, it in actually... isolation. What's actually kind of a good example is when when Fringy was talking about the Blades of Chaos scene. I was going to bring up my my criticism of it, which is I I thought that I always thought that it would have been better if they brought. Just a, like, even if it was one bar of his theme from the Greek mythology games, that the kind of doon, 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 doon. But it's one of those things, it's like, ah, eh, they, they might not be giving you the thing that you want, but if what they're giving you is this good, it's kind of, like, hard to complain about it. So I think they've like, always been... I've got to complain about the music, but it's like, ah, eh, but it's okay. <laughs> I think they've always been trying to strike a balance between how much they'd want to reference and how much they want to imply even through music or other elements of storytelling that they are their own thing they're not the other the older thing he's developed since then in and it's represented through all the different aspects which uh, you know a lot of people would have preferred that the classic songs are playing when he first gets the blades of chaos and i just uh, i think it was a much better choice to have his current theme play because the blades aren't what they were then they are something else now but they're um, recontextualized in the role that he's playing in this story and where yeah. he's at now and and the way that he's going to participate in this world. And then there's also, like, Kratos' theme is incredibly versatile, like the one mm -hmm. in this game. It's super yeah, it's duper really versatile. Good. Probably because, oh, yeah. you know, it is three notes, but that it's it's a... um And Freya's theme as well, actually, which is what we basically just listened to as another yeah. one of them that's super versatile. We're going to hopefully be able to talk about throughout the coverage a lot of awesome light motifs, like musically, that are throughout the soundtrack, because it is really impressive to me how often Bear McCready finds ways to reincorporate character themes into different moments of the, uh, of the, um, of the soundtrack. It, like, it's, it's super impressive. Yeah, I'm not going to have all of it in here, so feel free to reference it if you want to. Sorry, sorry. I did not wish you to. I keep hoping she'll let it go. You saved her life. I killed her son. There is no letting that go. And ironically saw someone, yeah. several people, sorry, in chat saying like, why is she trying to kill us? Wasn't she our friend in the first game? Like, did you oh. finish the game? It's, it's funny to me because like, sometimes <laughs> I'll be like, you know, oh, why is she, you know, so blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, we did kill his son. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, I know I was there. Uh, but like yeah. <laughs> the kind of thing where it's like, well, it has been four years, and then there are people who are legit like, wait, Freya, she's like a good guy. She helps you. What the fuck? Mm. Yeah. I like the way they pair these, by the way. Daniela Bisuti and Alistair Duncan as Mamir and Freya. I got it. Yeah. Um, and they pair like uh, uh, Richard Shift and Ryan Hurst. So just like, yep, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. 
And also, it's neat to put the crediting for the voice actors here. It is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, they do performance capture too. So they do. It, yeah, it, it's kind of tricky well, to that, 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 even that's just why to them it's as voice actors. Important to do it right because they are like involved yeah. heavily in the project, and of course, play a significant role in what makes it valuable. Absolutely. Also, yeah, people keep saying Bear McCready. It's Bear McCreary, as far as I know. Uh, uh, did uh, I say McCreary? Yeah. I mean, said it wrong. <laughs> Was I not for saying years. McCreary? Uh, McCreary, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, just, just for anybody who thought otherwise, it's McCreary. Chad Cox. <laughs> Chad Cox. Yeah, yeah, we noticed that when we were going through. I was like, damn, Chad Cox. Yeah. That's a, that's a potent name. No wonder the game's good. <laughs> <laughs> I was speaking of names. There was I was watching a, a an MST three K video and in, and they were commenting on one of the names at the beginning. There was a it was like an executive producer and the name was Harry Sackett. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one from Wonder Woman eighty four? Do you remember? Oh yeah, what was his name? Uh, oh. Help us out. One of you's gotta remember. It was a real funny yeah, name. No. Oh shit. Oh, what was it? It was Any something. Now. Someone's gonna remember it. Come on. I, I, I can't remember. Was it? Was it? Oh, Richard remember. Suckle. Was that it? <laughs> Richard Suck. Dick Suckle. That's Dick it. Suckle, yeah, that was yeah. it. Dick Suckle. Dick Suckle. That's Dick pretty Suckle. Funny. His parents <laughs> were like, they did not want a child. They no. wanted a daughter. <laughs> Dick Suckle, such a <laughs> Dick bad <Suckle>. name. <laughs> but hey, hey, at least you got to work on Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah, yeah, good yeah, job. That's true. That's true. Jordan Dorf, enough. Good me. Enough. The Ooh. the Virgin Dick Suckle versus the Chad Chad Cox. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Since they they probably did meet at some point, and it was like Thor and Kratos, you know. Boom. They definitely met. I will get the deal. Kratos, nope. no. <laughs> Oop. What are you doing there, Mel? You paused? Metal? I, you okay? What? I didn't pause. I didn't. So who did? Well, I'll, I'll play. Come on, girls. Smiles, proud dad moment. Yeah, very cool. I don't hear him. Atreus is downright self-sufficient, which is yeah. obviously super good for a world like this. He yeah, we can tell he's been he's been training in those yeah. uh, in that thimble winter. Wait, you can tell that he's been training? Huh? Oh, okay. Interesting. 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 Oh. Atreus. Benrir. Huh? You okay, boy? Pretty satisfying to see, really. Yeah. It's okay, boy. You're okay. I know. I missed you too. Where's your food? Still hungry? Come on, boy. You need to eat. Eat. Why? Too big? Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Rough every time I see. <laughs> there you go. Oh boy. Atreus, the time draws near. You must prepare yourself. For what? He's still eating. He wants to live. Uh, he is dying. You're a good boy. A brave boy. Fast and strong. But you can rest now. Okay? I'll be okay. 
You can let go now. You have to let go. Fuck, I just realized you have to let go. That comes up yeah. later. Right. Um, it does. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so this was one of them, like, oh shit, we are like 10 minutes in and you're already dropping this on us, huh? Um, yeah. Which is not the simplest thing to do. Uh, it still takes a lot of respect, but um, it basically works for, for most people that I've seen. Most common criticism I find is like, why am I supposed to care about this? I don't even know this wolf. Which is weird. Um, people love dogs. It should be pretty easy. It's not even just that. that. It's that um, if you see... I spoke with Rags about this. Like, if, if, if you have a friend who's like, you know, always told you about a dog they have, but never... And never like why they love them or anything beyond the fact they have a dog. And then you go and see them one day and it's when the dog is dying. And they're dealing yeah, with that. Like, you, you that's don't, all you need to know. You don't shout at them like, I don't care about yeah. this. I don't even know that dog. Like, Yeah, let's go play video games. It's fun. It's First just, time um, I've ever seen this dog. Who cares about him? It's a super basic like, like uh, storytelling thing. One of the ways we, we feel for the, the death of a character is because we care about the character. Or the, we care about their relationship to someone else. Or we care mm -hmm. about the person this is going to hurt. Uh, of course we care about Atreus at this point or I mean, you know, obviously if you're engaging with it in a way that's uh, you're enjoying it and stuff, you would by now you know that they have wolves to help them with, be it travel or hunting or whatever um, yeah, one of them's uh, seemingly dying from either an illness or age or whatever it is, but uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, it's just a beloved pet essentially yeah and uh, yeah, the, the performances again and the sound effects and stuff, it's just uh, it's enough to really drag you into if this has ever happened to you. Uh, and the premise that what Atreus is holding on to is that it, it wanting to eat, like to say, he's still eating, he wants to live. It's like, yeah, dogs, it's it's going to eat when you put food in front of it if it's starving, man. Like that's, well, and of course it, <laughs> that doesn't That doesn't mean it's well, not time it to go, go, but it's well, just it like eat. from... That's the thing, it's trying it back like, out. Gave up. Yeah. Oh, it did? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it didn't eat, and he's like, see, look, he's eating. He's deluding himself as to what mm -hmm. the truth is. Just to see want to lose his dog. Yeah. yeah, it's the scene of showing us that, because we've been getting a lot of... Atreus has grown up a whole lot, but... We're still trying to reinforce yeah. that Kratos is trying to prepare him for the realities of the world still. And that's his role in this scene. Role in well, because he's also only like, what, 15? Yeah, 16 he's grown maybe? up a lot, but he's still a kid. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and this is going to play in big time into Atreus's sort of not being able to deal with uh, the concept of anything in his life that he cares about coming to an end. Uh, the, the, the primary motivation throughout this whole game is going to be something to do with uh, th th that idea. Sofna. Afra. Desu. Sofna. Hethon. Sofna. Is all we ever do, ever. It's not enough. We can't hide forever. We do not hide. So, um, I, I saw someone ask it, so I may as well.
bring it in as an example. He said, what's the difference between this and the zebra scene in Lost of Us 2 exactly? So, oh, the zebra scene in Lost of Us 2 is designed to, as quickly as possible, get you to agree with the developers that the Doctor is a good guy. That's all it's supposed to do. It's, it's supposed to make you go, isn't it sad that Joel killed such a good guy? What a great guy that guy is. Isn't it sad that he, he killed him? That's fucked up. He shouldn't have done that. Really cheap way of doing it. This doesn't have any obvious purpose at first. It's uh, it's just, you know, your average day, and then unfortunately it's the last day for Fenrir. But what, is, mm. what does this do as a function? It's going to have huge plot implications very soon. Shows us what Atreus does when he's trying to deal with death, but similarly what Kratos does. Now going to be an emotionally charged scene. It's going to make some stuff come out that normally wouldn't necessarily. That's uh, culminating over several years of them. Obviously it's being set up now. He's, he's like, why are we hiding? Um... But I'd like the, I'd say that part of the biggest thing as well is this, uh, like this level of approach that can reassure the the players. Like, yeah, we're going to be uh, dealing with some heavy stuff in this game, and this is just a sort of because some people are like, why would you put something like this right at the beginning? It's like, well, I mean, this this I don't even know if this reaches a top ten for like heaviest moments in this game throughout. Yeah. Um, it's kind of just the beginning of a side plot. Yeah. So. I don't know, I'd just say it has many purposes that relate to both character and plot. Uh, meanwhile, the zebra one, is it's one clear purpose that everyone picked up straight away. Is that This guy's awesome, isn't he? Wouldn't it be sad if someone killed him? Oh, look, your hero Joel did. You're like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> what a bad mm. guy. Not a beloved yeah. character, I'm sorry. I'm so sad that this game doesn't start with Kratos getting his head bashed in. People were worried about that. Very much yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I was yeah. even a little bit too. I, I thought that they could still narratively make it work if just the the mural scene from the end of the previous game happens in the beginning. But I, I was kind of like, oh, don't do it. Needless to say, I was pretty happy with what they did. Mm -hmm. We prepare for a fight for which we are not ready. We'll go. Time is running out. The prophecies say Fimblewinter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. Whatever Loki's supposed to be doing, he's supposed to be doing it now. My story doesn't end hiding in these woods. I should be out there, finding out who I am, who Loki is. I will not allow you to pick a fight with gods. I don't want to fight anyone. I just want answers. And if those answers lead to war with Asgard? Maybe that's what Mother wanted. We do not know what Mother wanted. Ooh. Looks like we never will. Dynamic feels very different. Oh. He's pushing back hard on Kratos now. And, uh... Yeah. So, well, so there's definitely that reflecting in their dynamic, like how clearly it's changed. But like, man, this, this scene is very clearly laying down the groundwork for one of the many themes that run through the story. Like, one of the broad themes where, even though it's filtered through the lens of, you know, the conflict, Ragnarok and everything, like, a broadly universal, like, theme that's just being set up and will be reinforced consistently throughout the story. Did you want to signpost more, or did you want to do that later? No, nah, we, can, we can get to it later. Okay. Um, uh, I, th the idea as well that <clears throat> post-2018, he finds out his name was originally going to be Loki, that there's all these prophecies and stuff, but we've spent very little time exploring it or understanding it. We've been hiding, we've been training because we're worried about what's going to happen next, but it's, uh, you know, mm. Atreus is a clearly completely unsatisfied. And the idea that he's, like, evoking the mother and her intentions and Kratos to say, we don't know what she wanted in such a yeah, more so it's... aggressive way, it's like, whoa, what's going on there? Yeah, that's something I was wondering about when I was playing for 2018 again. It's like, hmm, I don't think Kratos is very thrilled that there was all these secrets he didn't know about, which were uh, apparently very important for what's been going on uh, well, this yeah, whole time. And now we get this scene where it's like, we don't know what Mother wanted. It's like, oh shit, he is angry about that. In 2018, he wouldn't dare allow Faye's name be besmirched in any yeah. way whatsoever. <clears throat> but right now, he's, he's just like, I don't know. Yeah, like, she didn't I, tell me the half of it. Different to what I thought it was. Not that he hates her or anything, like, far from it. Um, yeah, it's just he, he doesn't know. Frustrated. Yeah, pretty much. Frustrated is the right word. Well, also because he's, he's been involved in a prophecy before. Like, they, the whole deal with the 
original God of War series was that there was a prophecy that a marked warrior would be the one to 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 take down Olympus or to like destroy Olympus and that that turned out to be what ended up happening even though the gods thought the marked warrior was supposed to be his brother so he I, I don't think Kratos is the type of person who really wants to be going headlong into prophecy to be like he he mentions a few times I think in this game yeah that he doesn't want to let prophecy dictate his choices mm -hmm. And do you think he might have a reason or two to be reticent about picking fights with gods? As, yeah. That was because throughout the, the first game, too. Uh, his, his role as the marked warrior who takes down the gods of Olympus necessitated what happened to his first family. Because it, like his first family was killed by, by himself through the actions of a god. Yeah. Yep. Um, everything to do with gods always ends up badly. Especially if he's had this long being chill in the woods with Waifu. Like, he's just like... Yeah. God, this is the way to go, not the whole thing. Hang the gods out with thing. Karen Page the in the woods. Because <laughs> Boulder shows up at his house, wanting to get into a fight. An Aesir god, yep. He gets dragged back into it unwillingly. He does not want to be getting into fights. I fucking love their uh, their meeting. It's so good. I, yeah. I, I love every scene with Boulder. He was great. Hmm, I thought you would be bigger. It's like, oh. <laughs> I just love the, when he hits him, he's like, finally. <laughs> yeah. And just like, uh, no, no. <laughs> Punch him. Like, wait, we, I'll, we'll mention that later. <laughs> Something to do with Kratos' home. Look. I have a moment alone with Fenrir before I bury him. Oh man, losing a dog's rough. <laughs> yeah. There's one of many examples of Kratos' theme being creatively reincorporated. Yep. You. Is that like an accordion? You... Oh, I'm not sure, but... Well, I think uh, Ben McCreary said that his favorite instrument is the accordion, because it's kind of weird. I think it is. I think I think it's a, like the really it's high it's register of an accordion. And you might be almost, right, actually. Yeah, it I mean, almost sounds like it's something different, though. It's a, it's that's, the, so that's the crazy thing about a lot of these themes, is the when they're a different instrument and a different speed, and then you think about it for a while, you're like, oh shit, that's that theme. You're like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, some people in chat are saying harmonica. It. Yeah, I guess I could I could buy harmonica. Inter interesting to hear harmonica in this setting too. Oh, cool. Mm. Yes. It's funny because uh, I already <laughs> knew he was in the game, but see, I was just like, oh, so reassuring. I fucking love you. <laughs> He's a head, too. <laughs> it's just a head. <laughs> it's a good head, though. Well, I recognize that dull expression anywhere. <laughs> Do you have to tell me what went wrong? The wolf is gone. Oh, no. Not Fenrir. How's the lad taking it? That well. He goes to bury him. Oh, damn it. All right, brother. Good night, then. Yeah, even that, just that Mamiya uh, has just been with them this whole time. He never actually yep. left. Because yep. obviously the goal of the first game was complete, so he decided he'd stay with them. Not to say that, like, he has full agency as a head, but at the same time, you know, that's a decision he made. Yep. Yeah, it's not easy to find friends when you're just a disembodied yeah. head. Didn't <laughs> raise a hand in protest. Yeah. <laughs> Faye. Are you ready? Oh, well, you didn't get to see it, but the scene transition was, uh... Yeah, seamless. Yeah, like, really seamless. Yeah, yeah. Um, this as long as you guys remember what I've cut, you can mention it. <laughs> so that'll be the which, good thing. Um, which, There's a bunch of those in the game. Yeah, those transitions I, are really good. I've got some of them I in have here to for sure. Those, those were a challenge, technically. Yeah, because it's supposed to 
maintain the in-game sort of engine, right? It's still running. You just gotta... Well, yeah, because it's all, you know, the cutscenes blend seamlessly into gameplay, you know, in and out, and that's tough, technically. Until you go into a menu. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. Well, I mean, that's to be a, fair, un until you turn off the console as well, <laughs> like, it's impossible to maintain. You walk as though Emir himself sits atop your shoulders. This is your hunt. I will follow. Very well, Grimms. I saw someone being like, this is so fucking lame. She leads hunts. Like, you said this is your hunt. Yeah. Not and his she's, hunt. She's... It's not like she's a random woman. She's a warrior. I think we learned that in 2018, right? So um, why wouldn't she know how to hunt? I can't remember how much we learned in 2018, but obviously by the time you hit the end of this game, you learn a lot about we, yeah. Just but how we do know for sure. We do know that she is capable of fighting well, they, um, and whatnot. We, did they, did they not tell us serves. in 2018 that um, the axe was made for her? Yeah, yeah. Didn't... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, yeah. That, that's what I was saying. Leviathan is the axe, and that it was it was made by Sindri and Brock for Fey. So it's hence everyone's that's reactions true. whenever they see it, being like, "You killed her, didn't you?" Yeah, he's yep. like, "No, I no, I no. loved her. <laughs> she was kind it's of the most life. most important thing in the world uh, to me. I'm actually really beaten up about it." Once this sequence started, I was uh, I was like, I I thought we were never gonna see Fey. Same, and yeah. I was kind of. I was like, hmm, uh, not, uh, 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 not really, it was more like, I wonder what you're going to do here, uh, by having her, you know, by having us see her and, and having scenes between her and Kratos, what are you, what are you going to work towards? Bringy was concerned are... about the SJW agenda. Yes. <laughs> I knew it. Hey, she's ginger. We, we didn't get a vicious amount of women Oh, in she is game. a gender. Ginger. <laughs> gender. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I was worried about even having her show up at all, uh, but I think even on my stream I was like, thank goodness we're going to be able to actually like discover the nature of their relationship. They get three yeah. scenes in this game and they are all glorious. And they are, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Great yeah. Actress. Uh, by the end it's like, man, you, for how little time like she is in the story, like they achieved a tremendous amount with these scenes. And they are chronological. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine what the story looks like without these scenes they're so important yeah this this would be before atreus is even conceived and uh that they're living together um and then the next one and the next one are further on further on but uh this will tell you something about kratos coming from god of war 3 up to 2018. Hmm. unrelated i recommend the show true blood she oh, is well, this that, is yes. Deborah Ann Wool. Yeah, <laughs> plays Karen Page in uh in Daredevil. Yeah, in Daredevil. It oh, was I, when people realized that they went from being like, oh, "She's fine" to "Oh, she's oh oh I like her." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Your... Tell me your thoughts. We hunt the predator. A wolf. Yes. Predators kill. It is the natural order of things. Your words are misguided. The sick wolf we found beyond our stave. He found his way inside. As I said he would. We should have acted. It was not our concern. Now it is. A problem doesn't have to reach our doorstep for it to be our responsibility. If we have the power to limit the harm it could cause, we should act. Mm, we, we will have remember that. the seeds of another important <laughs> theme. <laughs> Look, everybody, it's, it's Spider Man. Be... Spider Man, Spider Man. I kid, because that's just a really good message in general. But yeah. Spider Man is probably one of the most well known for doing it. Um, yeah, so post God of War 3, Kratos went as far as just annihilating an entire pantheon. Felt pretty bad about it by the end, if you guys remember. Would have yeah. uh, sailed off, ended up in Norse land, and uh, judging from what we saw of the early parts of the 2018 game, his logic, as far as he's concerned, is if you stick to yourself, save yourself, help yourself, that's the best way to live. Fuck, fuck everything else outside of you. And then, of course, that extends to how much he cared about Faye and Atreus. And over the course of that game, especially by the time you hit the end, it's clear he's uh, going further than that. He's, he's, he's more invested in helping beyond that. And this is a great little moment to show that she was very invested in the idea that we should be doing more to make the world a better place than just looking after ourselves. 
And Kratos, on the other hand, is like, we should have, we should deal with the problems that affect us, and when they affect us. That's that's the sort of the smart and strong way to do it. Which two perspectives clashing a little bit. Yeah. Who are we to hide and do nothing? We are not hiding. Boys! Time is running out, my love, and there is much to do. Brother? You don't suppose he was training in the middle of the night? Oh, that's good. I suggested as much. Did you? What on earth for? He was. Just to be clear, Atreus has not come back. Yeah, that's one part I probably should have included. Atreus is gone. Yeah, yeah. Atreus <laughs> has not returned from whatever he was doing. So they're going to go out and they're going to try and find out where he is. And What's up? Argue this is one of the first examples of this is optional dialogue that if you miss out on it, you miss out. Uh, it's uh, the training that's area important. behind the house. If you walk into it, obviously the implication is you're looking there for Atreus. And then Mamiya's like, why would you do that? In the middle of the night. All right. Suggested as much. Did you? What on earth for? He was grieving. Oh, Kratos. I know you're trying. That's such a blatant, like, acknowledgement that he doesn't know how to deal with grief properly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And he's just like, well, you, you get your mind off it, right? And that's what he did in 2018. He was just like, we just do what we do. We just move on. She's gone. Like, the amount of times I'm pretty sure he says in that game to basically just, like, move the fuck on. But he hasn't moved on in this game. It's not working. I feel like that approach might be influenced by his history in the Greek games, because look where, you know, lingering on things got him there. Of Boy, course, it was you're a very negative Spartan. kind of lingering, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. Telling the boys, half Spartan, go to the backyard and hit some shit. Yeah. Mares? I dream of the past. Almost every night. Ah, the bad old days in Greece? No. It feels like Faye is trying to tell me something. You don't mean to say you're talking to ghosts again, brother? No. But it is something more than memory. So, Interesting. two big pieces of information. Mamiya knows about yeah. all of the Greek history at this point. Uh, yeah, they've been, they've been mm -hmm. chatting. Kratos has been opening up about all those things and has been telling them, probably to both Atreus and Mimir, uh, in their time together. Yeah, to so casually be like, you're having nightmares about Greece? It's just like, whoa! <laughs> like yeah. that's, you wouldn't have said that in the 2018 game, damn. Uh, yeah, things moved on. And then also to refer to, you speaking to ghosts again, I think he's talking about Athena, and that confirms that mm -hmm. she was not actually <laughs> Athena in 2018, she was in his head. Um, yeah. I yep. know some people were disappointed by that. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> not even close. No, it's fine. Absolutely fine with him dealing with what he's dealing in that scene. It's not that a, literally a, a Athena showing up because a lot of people were sad. I don't mind confirming at this point. Athena does not show up in this game. She's not in it. A lot of people thought she would be, and a lot of people thought that you oh, know really? she's yeah that she's not done that she's going to be a, an agent of some kind in this u universe mm. that that would have gigantic implications that like because basically it means like okay so like the greek pantheon still kind of exists they're um, just mostly dead like the, there would be a lot to deal with there the thing is ultimately you still could say that that was actually her and that as far as kratos knows it was in his head but i mean i, I don't see mm. how it benefits anything unless you're going to actually tell that story that she's she's alive and she's pissed, sort of thing. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I always kind of read it as he's going to get the well, I mean, the blades of chaos is what they call it in the game. Even though the last ones that exist were the blades of exile, it's a, that's the only thing that bothered me about 20, 2018's adherence to the lore because the blades of chaos are the ones that get destroyed at the end of the first game. And yeah, I will uh, acknowledge God of War Three set it in stone that Athena exists and is alive. That's fine. Yeah, I agree. Possible. I just, uh, we don't know what she's up to. And it would be really neat as a potential that she's rebuilt Olympus slash the Greek Empire into something new. A lot of ideas floated that she could have jump started the Roman one, right? Like that could be something. Yeah. You could make lots of connections and that going back there could mean a hell of a lot. Who knows what they'll do in future? But um... they, they could have Jupiter be one of the other sons of Zeus. 
Um, oh my JoJo. god. Oh, he <laughs> said <laughs> Zeus. He didn't like him. Or Jupiter. You don't like him here. <laughs> yeah, JoJo's very racist against the Greek pantheon. Or does he just hate planets? <laughs> like, I <can> fucking <laughs> That's hate also Jupiter. Possible. He might have been reacting to Jupiter. A bear. Mauled. By what? A larger bear. Wounded. The fight destroyed the tree. We must find Atreus. Any idea what could have made the lad wander off? We argued. He accuses me of hiding from Odin. Eh, only sensible to keep a low profile after killing three of his kin. A reckoning. Do you love how Kratos brings it up as like an insult that's absurd and Mabia goes, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> You'd be <laughs> hiding. Like I'd probably hide, yeah. It's like <laughs> One of the things that you'll notice throughout this playthrough is that Mimir definitely wants people to get along. He yes. tries to get everyone to yes. sort of chill. He tries to get, you know, everyone to be like, yeah, calm down. It, it's all good. He He's a very sensible, sort of very you know, charismatically pragmatic guy to keep everyone together. He wants everyone to, which is important. I mean, not just considering that he's ahead and he needs other people to sort of, you know, take care of him, but also because, you know, if you're invested in every party involved, you don't want them at each other's throats. Yeah. You want them to be okay with each other. And hey, he's, uh, that was his job before he lost his head, I think. Diplomat, right? That was his whole goal. Yeah. Lost his body. Right. Lost his body. It's weird. Ooh, yeah, that, I guess. I mean, technically yeah. you're... I mean, no. Hmm. <laughs> it's it's weird because normally you say that people have lo like, like they lost their head, but in this case, he lost his body. <laughs> yeah, because his body isn't walking around talking to people yeah. and stuff. That'd be funny <laughs> if out there there was just a random head just like bumping into things with its arms outstretched, like <laughs> looking. That is what must learn to survive on his own. Oh, this is about that prophecy. Just because the giants had you dead on some wall full of... Otherwise accurate predictions. I do not believe in prophecies. Well, good. Good. And with that, I just want to highlight it's not just the dialogue, it's how it's presented, like the, the yeah. performances, the gaps you take, the enunciations. Yeah, well. Fucking, oh, so good. Do you believe in prophecy? I'm skeptical by nature, though we have seen things that defy explanation. So, speaking as the smartest man alive, I have no bloody idea. And that is one of many times that an individual will just be asked straight up, what do you think about fate and prophecy? And they'll give you an answer that uh, everyone's is different, pretty much. This might mm -hmm. sound like a weird thing to bring up, but Kratos just asked another character what they think about something. That's kind, yep. of, a, that's kind of a step. Oh, well, I, I, I think they, they kind of started up in 2018, and I love it when uh, you get to the in Jotunheim and he starts asking Atreus what the, the images mean. It's mm -hmm. like, yay! Because uh, like, in the earlier parts of the game, he's like, don't ask questions that like aren't useful to some like pragmatic thing, like getting us resources or whatever. But um, And so he keeps telling Atreus not to. Mm -hmm. And then eventually he starts just to open up his little curious mind. He sincerely just wants to know Mimir's thoughts. That, yeah, that too. He must have a camp nearby. I know what you're thinking, brother. But Atreus can handle himself. You've taught him well. So he keeps telling me. You fight a bear. I don't know if I should have. Yeah, <laughs> like, angry you bear. get attacked by a big old bear. Yes, and a then this bear. He's called Bjorn. Bjorn. Atreus! 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 You know what I should have included when he yelled at the bear and the bear yelled at him? That was great, actually. My bad. <laughs> Atreus. Big fan of yelling. Atreus. Uh, what? I barely recognized you. Uh, I think it was as of um, 2018 that they made it like super canon that he has like Wolverine healing, uh, but you have to focus. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, because it was probably a good idea. Because yeah, he gets stabbed a lot. <laughs> um, I think someone I did spot. I meant to mention because someone was like, "Did he just get stabbed in like that opening? Is he not bleeding to death?" It's like no, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's not the way that you kill any of. These types of entities in this world is that it's like a lot of damage at once to end them, sort of thing. But you know, it, I, I'm not going to defend the games for this. Like it's 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 very weird and inconsistent a lot of the time. It's like, oh, they can survive that, but not that. You're like, yeah, and then it's like they can't survive that, but they can come back from the dead, but that one can't. You're like, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, it gets confusing. Like Kratos crawling out of the underworld twice, possibly three times. Um, mm -hmm. you, you're just like, well, how come he could do that and like Zeus can't? You're like, I don't know. 
He's not angry enough. You gotta, not angry enough. You gotta be angrier. <laughs> Prayed Fenrir, and then I'm, I'm not sure. I was so sad, and then I was angry and scared. I remember running. There was a bear. Charging and I charged back. All right, let me run this by. Let's see if this works. You should have said, I was so angry, I put the ursing and cursing. Um, I can't understand. No, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I know the connection. <laughs> no, the cutscene, let's load this important. Oh, that's awful. It had to it. be, Atreus is saying it had to be a dream. He saw a bear. So Sorry. Right. To, uh, so, okay. yeah, yeah. I was unbearably oh, mad. No, I already did a bear one, so let me pause you there for Jade a second Bart. and oh, remind stop. you that that one's <laughs> already been used. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I transformed you. I, I, I didn't know I could do that. He doesn't like having blood on his hands, huh? No. Nope. He's I'm used to being dirty and grizzled. Like grizzly, and uh, this I'll line for that. reassurance from Kratos: did not do "You did anything. not do anything." They overcame you. It was your emotions? They overcame you. It's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even think he believes that. Like in terms of, it's nothing to do with what you, what actions you've taken. It's like that would true. A lot of the stuff he feels super guiltful probably wouldn't necessarily you apply. If someone told him that about his yeah. affairs in Greece, he'd... <laughs> but it's he'd uh, it's just him recognizing that's probably what Atreus needs to hear right now. Yeah, he wants to tell Atreus about his grizzly past. Help. Beautiful. Yeah. That's the second grizzly one we just did. God damn it. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> now we're even. Sorry, I'm just distracted by how fucking good the uh, the fear on on the shoulder of Atreus looks in the wind. Oh, oh look right. Look at yeah. that shit. It does look really good, yeah. Yeah, it matches his hair too, sort of when it moves. Technology's gone insane. I saw someone say like, "Ah, oh, yes, they have lots of money. Praise them for that." It's like, well, it's not just money. It's also <laughs> the willingness to Artistry. use that yeah. money for a lot of you know the, the technology yeah, like, and stuff. The like fear James stuff. Cameron has a lot of money, but it's how you use it and the things that you develop and you know the stuff that you make technologically that 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 that's that could be worthy of praise because you could tell a lot of work is going into this and yeah well yeah and I mean, as that, people keep pointing out rings of power had money look yeah, what they did with it, it looks like <laughs> shit extremely that's bad. true oh, yeah it'll look bad um rings of power had a lot of money and it looks like shit and so i would yeah i would just go as far as saying maybe the fear one you, you you're more on point in terms of like what is this adding to a story analysis but when you talk about the technology and money that's gone into the facial recognition like representation that, inc that exceedingly helps the storytelling to know what characters feel. That's super important. But yeah, half the scenes hinge on it. Yeah. Dangerous without discipline to control them. You've already taught me discipline. I need more than that. I need answers. Answers you don't have. Answers only your mother had. That's how she withheld. Yeah. Oof. Bitch. Oh boy. Gives you a lot there. That's that's almost uh, bitter <clears throat> as fuck. Yeah. It feels like uh, he thinks she made the wrong decision in terms of how much she let them know. Yeah, true. If let them know more. What if there was someone who could help us? Someone that could give us answers about the giants and who Loki's supposed to be? Atreus. Wouldn't it help to understand what I'm becoming? Atreus! Listen to me. might have killed you until you learn control we will take no unnecessary risks inaction is also a risk you taught me that mm -hmm. stop thinking like a father for a moment and start thinking like a general no Ooh. No. 
Yeah, that felt like uh, those two no's were actually different answers, meaning that yeah. the yeah. loud and angry one is like a passionate, like, how fucking dare you say that I should stop thinking like a father. And then the second one is a very considered, like, no, I wouldn't do that. That's that's really mm -hmm. bad. No. Yep. That's not going to help. No. Collect yourself. I didn't mean to. Oh, this one. Intent does not matter. Only consequences. What? What can we do? Nature will take Nothing. Its course. Nature will take its course. That would suck to have to deal with, but mm -hmm. uh, what's happened? You know. I mean, like, there's some parallels though between the like the bears and Atreus, though. When you like, with the nature will take its course thing, it's like, yeah, we might be abandoning them to the wolves to let them die, or not literally the wolves, but you know, the elements to let them die. But they might also find a way to you know survive to to hang in there to to. The point is, they can't adopt the bears. Up bears okay. themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, yeah, uh, obviously because I'm trying to trim as much as possible. It's just that dream from the 2018 game is part of Loki's ability to uh, have giant visions or whatever. And so this is this game's equivalent, which is that we're finally getting that actual scene. There he is. Here comes the boy! That shit was so cool in 2018. It's just like, yeah, you ought to need the hammer, of course, because he's so fucking yeah. famous. Can I come in? I have me. Big old <laughs> subversion. I um, have made. There's a shit ton of subversion in this game, and I want to remind everybody, Ryan Johnson is the one that made subversion a dirty word. It is not a dirty word. <laughs> it's not it is not a bad. dirty word. It's not a bad you just thing have in and to of think. itself. It's a word that's been dirty. He peed all over <laughs> it. <laughs> Um, I did not pee on that word. I will not take responsibility for the that. The first piece. thing I always go to is uh, Predator is one of the best films ever made, and it's incredibly subversive. The whole point of that movie is to rely on what you think would happen and to completely undo that. Um, mm. Subversion is a really cool storytelling element. It's just a way to keep you on your toes. Uh, the way to do it, of course, is to have it so that it slots in and makes sense. It doesn't just happen for no reason at all. Or I say no reason. It happens for the sake of subverting you, which is what Ryan loves to do. I saw someone the Earn other day saying, the "I wish um, Muller would review Knives Out because that's where like Ryan's storytelling shines." And I was like, "Oh god!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you, oh you, <laughs> yeah, what like, a joke. Oh. Hmm. What's actually funny is I saw when you guys did an EFAP on Knives Out, and I was like, "Oh, I really want to watch that, but I should watch the movie first. And then in subsequent EFAPs, heard you guys shitting on it so much that I was kind of like. I kind of don't want to watch this movie, now. <laughs> but I've never heard your EFAP about it. I really know nothing about the film other than it's a mystery by Ryan Johnson that has um, the hot chick it's, from Blade Runner. It's a it. film that thinks it's really clever. Mm. Yeah, well. Not find me good company. No. It's been fun that Kratos says that. I'm yeah, I mean, Kratos is fucking company. like, <laughs> he's so ready to fight. And it's, it's just like, yeah. I don't want to hang out though. And he's like, well, we wouldn't have many things to get along about. <laughs> like, just saying. Well, I'm, yeah. Sure we'll find lots to talk about. He's like, our place is a mess. <laughs> Clean it up as much as you can in 10 <laughs> seconds, please. Oh, this is Thor, dude. Did you guys watch Sons of Anarchy? No, no, but I know he's in No. There. Yeah, he's, he's really Thor? good in it. He, yeah, Thor's in like the first three seasons, I want to say, maybe two. 
but um, yeah, great actor, great character too. Well, we're gonna have lots to talk about with this scene. How many seasons he's in? Oh yeah. The way I always describe him as an actor is his eyes have gravitas. Nice place. Nice place. <laughs> Thanks, Thanos. Hey, thank you. I feel myself. But yeah, so one of the first things to highlight is so many people, including myself, I'm not sure if you did metal, but I, th I think bringing you made the comparison as well, but so many people have made the comparison of like, it sounds like Thanos. It sounds like Josh that. Brolin when, with a couple of... Uh, when, we when we first watched this, I yeah, was like, it, it, oh, it, it, I asked who if that was Josh Brolin because he sounded exactly like Thanos in that line. There's a couple of lines in this scene that sound indistinguishable from how Thanos would sound if he said it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, and, and it's not a complaint or anything, that dare I say, type of voice, it's so much power behind it. Like, Josh Brolin was a great choice for Thanos. His uh, mm -hmm. his voice was fantastic, and so is Thor's. The bassy voice. That's a heavy hammer. Well, my axe is heavy too. <laughs> See? Let the crows out. told me before I poured. Mm, why would he say that? That's weird. Yeah, I mean, may as well talk a little bit about it. That's, um, okay. why wouldn't he have just poured for himself and Kratos, right? What's wrong with that? Like, he didn't even yeah. pour a third one, so what's being wasted? Um, the line implies that now we've poured too much. Which doesn't, exactly. like, logistically speaking, it was like, that doesn't really make sense. But it's something that you don't really think about, and it'll make sense later. Mm-hmm. Why are you and I mean, we the the design is fantastic. Like Thor looks awesome. Look, you gotta wait till the end of the scene <laughs> for both him and and Odin. We'll talk about it because, like, God, we have to go through a lot. <laughs> like, uh, I really wasn't sold on it when they showed the first pictures, I but man, when you see him in, in action, he's pretty good. Well, Look yeah, I mean, I think myself, uh, Fringy, and I want to say Metal. I think we were all just like, sure, fine, fits with the twenty eighteen oh, yeah, one. Absolutely. See, see what they do with him. Sure. But a lot of people were like, "Ew, that's not." <laughs> well, I mean, I, like uh, my issue with it was just in its, um, I guess, consistency with the art direction in the series. Just because you have Zeus is like absolutely shredded, so this seems like a world in which age and what, like, whatever your lifestyle is, doesn't affect your body type if you're a god. Like this is this is a world in which gods are always absolutely shredded. Um, so it, maybe it, for it the Greek guys. Obviously, the Norse I mean, yeah, guys we see are very different. <laughs> Clearly, uh, yes, yeah, because I mean, Boulder has the kind of uh, Jesse Pinkman body, like the yeah, Bold, the, like part of what's yeah. subversive about Boulder is that he's like this weedy guy, and uh, yeah, he's he he through the <laughs> yeah <laughs> through the roof. He's uh he's fucking with Kratos, and then you find out he's actually a hell of a lot more powerful than you thought. Um, well, and and that's the thing. Even w with Balder, I think it w I would ha probably have the same reaction. Like if you just showed me the picture of him, that hey, this is the main antagonist of this God of War game, who's going to be fighting Kratos. I'd be like, eh, I don't know. Like that kind of looks like, I don't know, like like James Franco's character from Spring Breakers or something, but like Norse. <laughs> but uh, like, and then you see it in action. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, it works. And it, I think it's the exact same thing with Thor. That it, you see a a. a marketing still and it's like well i don't know like it's kind of a big gut on him like he, he doesn't even look like the mountain or anything where it's like a, a strong man like that looks like actual fat but then you see you see the how they do the character in the game and because they think they nail it so well it's just like ah, okay i'm i'm not mad <laughs> it's, it's not even it's just that fine. i think what wins everyone over is the fight scene coming up uh yeah <laughs> yeah that too you start him being some the idea that he's like Fat Thor from Endgame, there's just nothing there. Like, it's nothing like that, is what yep. I mean. Yep, yeah, it isn't. It really is not. <sighs> Being polite. Psst. 
You seem like a calm and reasonable person. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> this whole exchange is great. A calm and reasonable person. That fucking look, dude. And uh, yeah. you, you combo <laughs> it up his eyes. with how tense this is, being that I killed your sons and your brother. Um, mm -hmm. So, are we good? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we cool? It's the actor, man. I'm telling you, his eyes just have weight. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. If the moment calls for calm, I'd say the moment calls for calm. Yeah. Don't worry, talking about Thor's controversial design will be completely overwritten by a different conversation. You know who I am? Back before winter set in, there were some misunderstandings. Regrettable ones. But I think we all have a better idea of who we're dealing with. Now, what you did to his boys. Self-defense. Dying is what we Aesir live for. And let's be honest, they were kind of useless. Oh. <clears throat> But Balder. You see that? that, that that's just I, I Od have... Odin's way of being like, drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, it's, there's so many details once you've completed he the has, game about this. There's a line coming up that's great in reference to that. Um, like Odin to Thor. So, yeah, uh, there's plenty of complaints already in chat. Just like, yeah, terrible, terrible design. It's like, so, what's everyone think? And the first time, uh, the first time I watched it, well, should we just wait until the end of the cutscene to discuss it all, or um, uh, should we do it now? Well, so I, I was kind of gunning for how looking at him on the surface and then going into detail. So, like, because we know so little about him, this is when everyone was reacting to him, right? I think me and Metal. By the time we hit the end of these scenes, we already had people being like, "Tell us what you think." Tell us. I was like, I don't, I don't even know how much I need, mean, but you know. But like, without any context, would you would you guys consider his design a mistake? I, no, I honestly loved it right away. I was I like, oh, see... this is cool. He's like a mafia boss type guy. I don't <laughs> see a reason to consider it a mistake, just from in terms of the design. I see lots of references to... Well, oh. actually, wait. Rags, go ahead. Yeah, you were saying something. So at the beginning, um, I didn't care for the design. I was pretty neutral on the design. I didn't care for the, his, his manner of speaking, his... Uh, uh, just the voice it didn't quite click with me. Uh, whereas now, uh, I really, really like the character, and I, I think it gets uh, nailed. And I'm glad they did what they did. And his first appearance, very uh, kind of shaky with me. I could go either way, but I, I really wasn't uh, really wasn't much of a fan. Uh, Thor was uh, buying away the. Uh, I was I was super pleased with Thor by the end of all of this. Uh, this first segment, we'll call it. I I guess his manner of speech being considered under design because that feels like a different conversation to me almost. Yes, um, and though I understand the complaints of like too modern or whatever, it should be like I mean, so everybody speaks too modern in this. Surely. Yeah, yeah. They, this is a world, especially in the this era of the games, like the Norse, the Norse saga, you could call it. It's just hey, the accents don't matter. Like, it, it's not, hey, Mimir actually sounds Scottish in the lore. I heard people complaining about that in 2018. They're like, they're talking, they're, they're acting like Mimir is a Celt god. And I'm like, no, he's not, it's not actually Scottish. <laughs> he's like, that's just the way that actor talks. Yeah, and make they... the wise man Scottish. Well, I mean, I, mean I, I think the whole thing is they're consistent in being like, yeah, the people, the actors aren't doing accents. They're just... They're speaking the way they speak. What act? Well, yeah, but I mean, do people do people say that about the old games too, or? Um, that's a great do question. They say that about Kratos that he has an American accent, even though he's Greek. I mean, I guess yeah, that's fair. I think, I think it's, the it's, the that's always been the, the secret. Pantheon, with, right? Like, they always have American accents. It's, that's like always Athena. kind of. That's always been like kind of the secret code with like English accents in things that are supposed to be Greek and or Roman. 
where it's like if people sound English, no one cares. But if they sound anything else, it's like, oh, that that doesn't really sound right. But I, I think that at, at the very least, my point is that the, this game is consistent about being like, hey, don't worry about the accents. Just think think about what what these characters are in relation to each other and what their actually what their actions are, what they're doing. I am somewhat concerned with inconsistency in the uh, accents, but more particularly in terms of dialects. And I think that's where the jarring response, the jarring response is coming from, for most people, uh, from the fact oh. that we have Mimir as an example of a casual, but much, much less anachronistic sort of uh, style of speech. But then most everyone else is talking like a modern American, but there are still loads of people like Kratos and the Valkyries who don't. You're so right, actually. Yeah, I want to honorable mention the fact that despite Kratos' accent, he seems to be one of the only characters that speak. Like, instead of saying, Oh, I'm coming, he'll be like, I am coming. You know, like, <laughs> it, 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 as yeah. much as you know, it, it, he, he's very, that's the way he talks. And you'll be like, um, I don't know, it, it feels a lot different than, for example, right. Odin saying, I'll get my ex off your back. Which is very. At like, the same oh. time, I think I, I know pretty serious people that speak the way Kratos speaks. Like, or like, I, I don't know if serious people is the right word for it, but you know what I mean? Like people who aren't necessarily the, uh, people the most serious, easy, the most easygoing folk. Like you wouldn't describe them that way. They're a little high strung. They do kind of speak in similar patterns to the way Kratos does in, in the last two games. I wouldn't necessarily yeah. agree with that. Yeah. It's when, just that we've got a collection of voices here that so I don't kid. know, um, could ever be considered. Like, I don't think there's any Venn diagram that has... Uh, any of the circles filled with many of the characters really it's it's they all are all doing different things um in lots of different ways and it seems like that's just not something they give a shit about they're not uh for lack of a better term they're not going to make them feel as authentic as a lot of people would prefer the reason i brought mm -hmm. this up was that i feel like it's got to be more than that for odin because this applies to a lot of the characters yeah um I, I would assume it's more than that for Odin. I think actually it is. A lot of the arguments involve, like, it doesn't feel like he, of all people, should be talking that way, uh, nor should he be this um, casual. But then we have to dig into what should Odin be. And uh, you can reference mythology, you can reference other adaptations, or you can reference what we learned about him in the 2018 game. And uh, I don't know, man. After everything I did learn about him in the 2018 game, this, this, uh, this Odin makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um... He's a sneaky fuck. It's and disarming. Yes, that you can tell that's how he gets his power, is that he uh, comes across as though he doesn't have a, a, a huge presence, and he can, uh, and yet, when things matter... That's the thing, that's, that's more to talk about once we see more of him, but already he's taken full control of this room. Yeah. And, um, and the vibe he kind of gives me is like Junior from The Sopranos. It's like, oh... Yeah, people call him Mafia Thor, right? No, sorry, like, Mafia Odin. Dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a, kind of an un, unassuming, like, sort of thin, smaller guy, but yeah, I, it's like, oh, but he could say the word and just have you killed immediately. Like, d don't mess with that guy also. <laughs> and then you have like stuff like he should have, um, you know, the, the look of Anthony Hopkins Odin, right? And stuff like that. Or you should, you should be speaking very regally and stuff. And it's just like, I feel like those things will fall away the more you see of this version, because he'll... Hopefully, anyway. Uh, That's also okay. almost exactly what Zeus was in, like, the previous song. Yeah. Series. The the way they portrayed in the Greek one, I think, is much more uh, publicly expected. This one, a lot of these have yeah. to earn their place. And, uh, well, it's up to you as an individual to see whether or not they do. But we'll, we'll see some more of this, shall we? Dying is what we Aesir live for. And let's be honest, they were kind of useless. But Balder, he had value. He was my best tracker, my closer. Yeah, his mind was gone, sure. But he had his uses, and now he's gone because of you. You follow me? This Kanye commentary is really... <laughs> <laughs> you have a debt. It's really Don't break it no fun it's anymore. too funny. You know, fun anymore. What do Another... you want? How about peace? 
How does peace? I just want it highlighted like the both he and Thor after Kratos said, What do you want? They both seemed annoyed by that question. Yeah. Like, it's like, what could we possibly want? Like, come on. Yeah, and, and so this <laughs> you already get the impression that he's like he like takes a breath and he says, How about peace? Like like basically I'm not even I don't even really want peace with you. <laughs> but like <laughs> how about that's what we do? Strike. Retired god of war. How about we just don't kill each other? How about you stay home, kick up your feet, seek no quarrel with me? I'm going to pause here just for, uh, you noticed it, Rags. I think plenty of people do, but the second the boy is brought up, Kratos' uh, body language. And I'll yeah. have none with you. That him. is something, as we go forward, everyone, if you are watching this, like, treat this as if you are watching a movie with actors. Yeah. Um, which you're not often sort of thinking to do when you're watching a video game cutscene. Mm -hmm. But we're at the stage now with this level of production that expressions, subtle body movements, um, they are filled, uh, they're scattered all over this game. So keep an eye open for those sorts of things and yeah, you'll and be rewarded. Some people might say like, well, how do you miss it? Or just like, no, some people do miss it because it's, uh, it's quick. A lot of, well, yeah, yeah. And like I said, a lot of people don't know to look for it in a video game cutscene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not something people that you might out think skip about. The yeah, well, they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, if they've <laughs> seen it before, you know, fair enough. In this type of, of game, you should that, not that do one. that. That one has to stop his search for tear. Yeah. We know what you've been up to. Stop it. That stop fucking it. lie delivery, dude. We yeah. know what you've been up to. Stop Stop it. Like, I would stop immediately, Jesus whatever Christ, I was doing. Yeah. I was like, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Tears old ways are dead. He is dead. You understand? And then that's it. Then we're square. Shit, I'll even sweeten the deal. I'll let you keep the prisoner that I know you stole. <laughs> that's right. I know you're in here somewhere, you silver-tongued little shit. Before I let him speak, uh, this is such a, a huge deal. Mimir spent all of basically 2018 telling you how much of a piece of shit Odin is. Yeah, it's and like, now he's here. Yeah, now they're <laughs> in the same room again. And you can tell from the way Mimir talks that this is a person that makes him feel incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, yep. he comes out swinging with this line. Why should we believe a word of you? What of your promises ever been worth? There he is, my there old partner is. in crime. He's First one where he's... If he tells you snow is Here white, is. he's lying. <laughs> yeah. Can't the smartest head? Look at this. He fucking hates him. Absolutely yeah, he hates him. Curious. So much. And we get I mean, to know why. He's uh, usually so calm too. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's why it means even more. When when you watched my thing, it was just kind of laugh. It's like, oh, look how Bimir is losing his shit. And then he pointed out, it's like, yeah, because he's really angry and hates the guy. It's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like. He's we get more really on personal. it um, in this game. Mamiya, yeah, he like it's it's definitely his own responsibility to some degree, but he just sees Odin as someone who fucking ruined his own life, as well as yeah. all these other people's, and he you know wishes he acted faster in that regard. But yeah, so he just hates this fucking guy. Alive, see past himself, see that we all want the same thing. All right, here's a deal. I know you can trust. I'll settle your debt with my ex. Mm. Keep Freya off your back. Keep your boy safe. That's really all you want, isn't it? So what do you say? Love it. It's so great. Yeah. So good. But um, why didn't he take the deal though? 
Yeah, yeah, so apparently this is a point of con- <laughs> this is a j- legit point of confusion for many people. Um, so the first question everyone has in response to that question is, "Oh, you didn't play a 2018 game, or no?" Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the 2018 game. You told that Odin is a deal maker. He makes shit tons of deals with all kinds of people, and every time he does, he fucking backstabs them, destroys them, kills them, destroys their whole family. Mm-hmm. Basically, cannot trust this fuck. He'll do anything he can to take advantage of you. Uh, Mamiya has spent so long explaining to you that. All he'll do is try and take advantage of you. He also just made clear he's going to be attacking Freya. Uh, yeah, which is a big no-no. Um, so, yeah, and Kratos didn't say, I don't want peace. He said no to the deal as presented. Yes. Yeah. And then, I, and I quite love this angle, by the way, because it's just, what is Odin's response to this? Like, well, it's, there's only one he's going to have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's executed so well, too. Don't take all day. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take all day. <laughs> it's the fact that he goes straight to that as well. There's no bargaining here. Nope. Yeah. Which yeah. helps to establish Only... the position of strength for Odin, or at least, you know, as yeah, and the, I think the audience's view. It's worth saying Odin feels fucking disrespected from that answer, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, uh... I, I like the take that this is uh, what Thor says next is exactly how the audience feel who really want to see this fight. <laughs> it's like, <Yeah>. finally. <laughs> About time. Oh, the fucking suits. <laughs> so good. I've been waiting for this. You're not from here. We got a It's like, in the event that there's... In the event that there's anyone watching who hasn't played the previous game, Kratos killed both of his sons. Yep. Yeah, and so. we we already got him hyper intimidating from just saying hello. Now we've got this overt like I'm gonna fucking kill you. Yeah. You're like, oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. And the fact that he's enveloping the whole screen and he's got Kratos in his hand, it's just like, yeah, this is a fucking phenomenal yeah. intro. To the power of Thor. Thor's huge. <sighs> like he's he's towering over Kratos when you first see him. It's yeah, quite nuts. <laughs> Waiting for this. You're not from here. We got a tradition called a blood payments. It means I get a piece of you for what you took from my family. You'll pick it up. Oh, some people are confused. So, uh, Kratos killed Magni and then Thor beat Modi because yeah. the, the brother died. He was obviously enraged and probably drunk. Mm-hmm. Modi ran off and, uh, met back up with Kratos and Atreus, and then Atreus stabbed him in the neck and kicked him off a cliff. That was for Balder. Now show me this god killer I've heard so much about. Can't fight without your axe. Coward! How were you ever a god of war? I did not seek that fight with your brother. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Oh, actually, sorry, real quick, out of curiosity, does Thor know that it was Atreus who killed uh, Modi? I can't remember specifics. If if it, uh, you'd have to just check the dialogue, I can't remember if he knows that it's the difference between Atreus or uh, Kratos. Mm. Okay, sorry, because I'm under the impression that Thor thinks that Kratos killed both. <laughs> So I, I I just noticed he might do. Um, I can't remember if Atreus takes responsibility for that. Like or well, well, he, uh, maybe just to grab that. He later says he, he didn't get the blood payment from Atreus yet. So oh yeah, I guess yeah, he so he maybe he just does it both. Do you think? Yeah, do you, like? Do you think he considers it like a package blood payment deal? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, I mean, like, to be fair, like killed both of them. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. We're hoping to see. Guess they don't come when you call. Really like having him snap his fingers to recall Mjolnir. Especially, do you see that one where he snapped it and it yeah. rose up just to block the axe yeah. attack? That was just cool. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, Mjolnir looks fucking awesome as well. Oh, yeah, oh it's it boss as so fuck. So cool. Yeah. Oh. That's for it's here that he, uh, that Kratos kind of says, yeah, like, 
right because like when he says oh, that's for modi like kratos says you like, we're not there yet no no yeah but it, what he's highlighting that. is just the the fact that he would even say that's for modi that implies he thinks kratos yeah. is responsible oh. Um, right, right, right. I at least, you. yeah. At least in part, yeah. I think, I think it's safe to say that Thor I think thinks it's, just, it's both of them both accountable. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're you tear, you preachy old stiff. <laughs> if you're not fighting dirty, you're not fighting right. <laughs> just go grab them all. <laughs> Shit, that, that damage, though. Nice try. I love that they have pieces of dialogue for shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And Mrs. is <laughs> like, yeah, fucking idiot. <laughs> you can't even aim right. <laughs> Your son struck first. Good. <laughs> Good. Fucking <laughs> luck. Did my son die, you blind fucking luck? <laughs> oh, dumbass. Oh. What I love about this is it. He's like calling him a dumbass for not knowing. He's like, yeah, it returns to me. But it's just like, you'd be so much more aware of that as someone who is in our universe than, than Kratos would necessarily. Yeah. I know he yeah. knows that's how it works, but it's just like, this is still new to him. While Mjolnir is one of the most famous things in this game for the audience. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, he should also kind of know based on what Leviathan does. No, it's, uh, what I'm saying is like, this is still, he hasn't fought Mjolnir for more than oh, yeah, like a couple true. of minutes. Come here, become a daddy, get a clean slate. That ain't how it works. You're a destroyer, like me. There's another, another yep. seed yep. planted. <laughs> I yep. missed this part. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> the fake oh, out no. death screen. Oh, no. <laughs> I say when we're done. <laughs> that was Could right. That was so cool. right there. Uh, <laughs> you didn't have um, to do it, but you did. It's awesome. Wait, I, I hear Theo noises. Go. Oh, no. What do you guys like about that? Are you shitting I... me? Uh, <laughs> I am very serious. Go for it, rags. Um, do you do you not think that this is a really excellent way to blend the storytelling of the character with the mechanics of it being a game? As I the actually player? think it's quite a terrible way. I, uh, I, I can tell you right now, Theo, I'm going to guess you hate Hideo Kojima. No. <laughs> really? You don't? Can I, I'm, actually, can I I'm guess, honestly surprised. Can I guess Theo's <laughs> argument? I'm gonna do it. Oh yeah. Is it that um mechanically speaking then he just had his first canonical death and it got undone by Thor electrocuting him? Well no. it's not his first canonical death. No, it, it would be considered <laughs> we don't this is he's never died before. This would be the first yeah, yeah, canonical well, death. He, no, he has a, a couple times in nope. the Greek nope. games. No, nope. those aren't deaths. He goes to a place that comes out of it again. It's bullshit. This would be an actual <laughs> death. <laughs> the whole reason why okay. they're non canon every time you die is because, yeah, Kratos never dies. He never stops. He keeps going. But uh, if you flash us the death screen, that could imply for a moment there that he would have just been he, dead. He died for... in the way that Buffy died. Like they, they, Why the they're, fuck they're would dead. you say that? <laughs> because I have a feeling that you would understand that of all people. Don't, like, they're dead. Don't just yeah, spoilers. Yeah, that the character died, but in the story... Luckily, the luckily, uh, Mark, uh, Mark just, really just, just listen close. Luckily, all you did was spoil season one, which is pretty bad. Luckily, that's exactly <laughs> yeah, what you just did. And I'm sorry. I would go as far as saying, uh, no, no spoileritos for Buffy, because these these fine gentlemen will be watching it eventually, and a bit, it could be sooner rather than later. Um, anyway, for years now. Sorry. But, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Theo, why don't you why don't you why don't you say what you think's wrong with it? Okay, I'll see what I can do. So, <laughs> my problem is entirely and solely with the presence of the death screen. I think the death screen is a really, really bizarre inclusion, and I don't understand what it's supposed to accomplish for two reasons. First off, because it's a real death fake out, like for the character, uh, it makes, and it came just after a QTE sequence. The first place every player's mind is going to go is, did I just fail the QTE? Oh shit. And then they're going to mentally reset out of whatever was just taking place because they think they just failed the QTE until they're baited back in, and they have to re-engage with the scene, because, oh, uh, I didn't so, actually fuck up. That was no, Is that not that what makes... Three seconds of time. Oh, no. Wait, 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 because I, I, I would want to counter my own arguments for what I brought up just now, and I'd want to counter that one. That's, uh, I would say, adding to it. You are, you are yeah. indeed in the mode of, I lost, fuck, and then a voice comes where it never is expected before of, 
we're not done. And you go, wait, what? And then you mm -hmm. rise all the way back into, no, we're still playing this game. It's not over yet. Like, uh, that's the experience I think they're gunning for. They want you to go into that mode of uh, playing the game of, oh, I lost. All right. I have to build myself back up. I need to focus. And it's like, no, not at all. You, you, you're back. Okay. In. As much so... as though I can agree with you on the point of, like, it's literal false information to the player. They didn't lose anything. Um, I think all it does, that that's my problem, is it creates, it, all it does is obfuscate and create a small sense of confusion for a moment. But to respond to what you've said, I think that would be much more effective if that came from an actual player death. But actual player deaths result in real death screens, and this scripted death does not. And that's when the only fake out comes. Like, he will actually kill you if you die when you're not supposed to. That's true. Um, I think then mm. it would have been cool, actually, for them to force this early if you actually had a legit death quote unquote yes. um, yeah that could work uh, I think this works tremendously well if it's a real death I think well see, I, I still think it works when it's a, a fake out death but I, I think it's better if it was a real death was I, think, real I think it's so bizarre as a choice especially because it compromises their one take thing as well yeah you're right and in universe contextualizes <laughs> the existence of a death screen which is kind of horrifying to think about do you, th do you think that it in universe contextualizes a death screen or th Maybe. that's something that's out of universe that is being shown to us meanwhile in universe it's just kratos lying there yeah i think anyone who goes as far as to say that it implies an in-universe death screen is uh i was gonna say like theo surely if you wild make that argument then pause menus have to be out as well that's that's a pretty wild well yeah i think theo's already made that argument though to be fair hasn't he the menus uh, result again. I'm not fully willing to commit down that line. Like that's a bit further than I'd maybe reach. But pause menus are something that is player dictated and are a concession to gameplay. Okay, this sorry. Uh, upgrade menus. Choice. Hmm? Upgrade menus. Does the same not apply? That's what I'm suggesting. Is that we would contextualize it in the same way. We see menus. Kratos sees. I'm looking at my bag of stuff and I'm moving things around and putting things on and changing things. Mm -hmm. Sure, but this came as resultant from a scripted sequence. Okay, but what we see isn't what he sees. Okay. What then... about the menus that come up that you have to engage with, though, that you must do, that, are, that you have to do it? Like, you have to go into the menu to learn how to upgrade. Or QTE button prompts. Well, you actually, you can't disable tutorials either. I, I, I mean, I tried, and they still come up. I'd be fully willing to make the argument the game could, or the game would be benefiting from having diegetic menu systems. I think that... Uh, well, sure, but like you wouldn't, you wouldn't say that when it's a scripted, you have to go into the menu to learn how to do unlocks. That that would be the universe recognizing and like canonizing yeah, sure. menus in the I'd world. I agree with that. Same you thing do, here. You can I maybe just, use a yeah, book. Sure. Have Kratos take out a book and have that be well, what he. Yeah, uses for they sometimes do that. Obviously, when having us walk Red up to Dead, the Smith Dead, Dead, Dead in order too. to upgrade our shit is to best contextualize it in universe. Uh, someone said, "Well, yeah. what's the point of the death screen then if it's uh, only for the player?" It's like it's it's to it's to encourage the player into that sense that Theo was saying was actually a negative of you did lose. We're familiar with that death screen. We go, ah, oh, we died. Like, no, yeah. Whereas we this didn't. is a quick time event that you have to lose because it's a it's an it's an unwinnable situation. You you have to die here to this quick. Yeah, time it's like event. it's specifically it's to make the player feel a particular way. It's got nothing to do with Kratos in terms of the death screen. Vulnerability. I mean. Um. <laughs> Here we go again. Guest has a different opinion to Mola Rags for you. Therefore, we'll spend forty-five minutes beating this topic to death. Wow! Welcome to EFAP. And, and Theo's definitely <laughs> one of the people who uh, comes up with interesting ideas. And the funny thing is, we all just agreed with him that it would be an improvement if it were a nice yeah. death. <laughs> yeah, I but it would be an improvement. But never mind that. But I don't think that this is bad at all. I like it a lot. I think it's pretty great, and I don't. I, don't know, uh, I, I have. To, I really quite hate it. I find it incredibly baffling as a choice. I, I, I like it. baffling. I think that I, think I like that it, it, but I agree with Theo's argument. <laughs> I well, I guess the thing is, is that I I'm not I pretty sure that a lot of people responded to this well, so like I think in terms of achieving what they were going for, it it worked, even if it's like a a, a decision that you disliked. I guess if you get what I mean. Yeah. Like I remember seeing people talking about how like that caught them off guard and they thought it was really cool. I've that, seen like specifically for the. Uh, I'm not really appealing to popularity. It's more so just that, like, an effect that they were going for was achieved. 
the effect being, oh, I died, damn. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. Holy shit. Like, that's just a response that I've seen. That was how I responded See, to it when I when I played it. I thought I failed. This is incredibly weird because I'm having to try and infer mindsets from what people are saying when they're commentating over when they're playing the game. But I've also seen, like, I have seen many people express sort of a sense of befuddlement rather than the immediate sense of, oh, I lost. Like, rather than considering, oh, I failed the QTE, they wonder, did I fail the QTE? Because, of course, they would have been mashing. So they wonder, like, what was insufficient about what I've done? Which yeah, that's fair. Confusion rather than the intended. That's actually of... why I agree with you that it would be an improvement, uh, just strictly to be an actual it... death because it can it can betray your uh, your inputs. But obviously, it's um, technically speaking, you'll realize pretty quickly it's not it's not any of that because you haven't lost anything. It ultimately is the developer trolling the player for like a quick smirk laugh. Like I mean that that that's ultimately what's happening, right? Because it's them. Pretending that you're dead when you're not really dead and then immediately saying, well, well just kidding, like now we're back into the game. And I think that it's completely acceptable for your reaction to that to be, ah, you got me or I'll oh, fuck you. Like, I think both of those are kind of reasonable. Well, someone like, brings up something pretty fair as well. You can switch it to from pressing to holding. And you, and they've said like people who play with that, which you can choose as an option, oh, yeah. are obviously oh, baffled by this scene because yeah. they're just like, it's what? like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so that's fair as well. It needs, I would say it needs tweaking on that respect. Um, it actually makes the accessibility it's... not make sense with the difficulty that they chose. This game doesn't uh, really regs, have... You might have a Jim Sterling video to respond to. <laughs> it doesn't really have failable QTEs, right? I don't think so. I, I don't, oh, no, that... wait. You do the Freya ones in the opening, you can fail. Um, okay. I did that in the first the first time because I was mashing instead of only pressing it once. <laughs> hmm. Instead of only pressing it once? Yeah, because you're supposed to do like R1. L1, so you do those elbows, but I was mashing them. So oh, okay, I don't know, okay. Buffer, buffer the inputs, or Honestly, it just like, oh, you're doing way too many inputs. You die now. Any QTE is better than having to try to tap E really quickly during Callisto Protocol on oh, PC. Like, I don't like tapping crap. buttons on PC. Yeah, I know. I'm just like, oh man, can you, like, if you're. Uh, <laughs> I can you make my, my at least make it be, yeah, like a bit, like get, make it be enter or something that's nice and chunky for me. I think or um, alternate QTE between left and right cool. mouse, I'd like, if that became a thing. I think that I mean, we've work. certainly mm -hmm. talked I about QTEs in the past and where I think they're appropriate. Um, but, of um, course, I haven't played this game, so I couldn't really... Uh, but yeah, for the sake that. of countering the argument I was bringing up before, uh, Theo's, it was that you don't have to contextualize this as a death as opposed to him being knocked out. Yeah, uh, the screen is for the player, okay. um, and That's of course, true. death is a process, not just a thing that necessarily happens. It's like a defibrillating. Those people are like sure they're dead in a way, but also you can undead them. I'm leaving till I see the real you. Get up. Also, this implies that Thor has gone to medical school and is a certified. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any reason not to think that. That's not how cardio version works. So well, maybe it should. But yeah, um, so uh, uh, to, be, to be definitive, right? Because <laughs> I don't blame you. Yes, uh, what's supposed to have happened in God of War 1 and 2 is a death. It's just that in the Greek world, I guess you could say it about the Norse one too. It's just that uh, in the Greek one, it seems easier to just sort of leave um, <laughs> when you die. Uh, the, the the first one, obviously, he climbs right out, and the second one, um, it, Gaia gives him something. Yeah. she like powers you, get, you like, up or something. Gaia no, no, powers. the the first one, it's a pretty big deal. It's in God of War two. Um, Zeus kills him, and then he climbs right out, and like like immediately. He's, he's definitely no, he, like 30. You say big deal. I mean, you go through a series of platforms. It's really weird. <laughs> like, well, I mean, it, it's like, it's <laughs> arguably the most frustrating area. Oh, of I don't the disagree game. with that. I'm saying I'm <laughs> oh, saying um in a pillars. in a broad yeah, <laughs> a broad description, right? At least in God of War Two, Gaia had to do something powerful and magical or whatever. But in the first one, mm. you it's a logistical issue. You must move from A to B to get out of dying. Yeah, that's true. Um, obviously it's not, yeah, the hell was a fucking nightmare in that game. Um, 
Dude, I saw yeah, people and, saying and, they want David like, Jaffe back because Corey Barlog sucks, and I was just like, you guys remember what he did, right? <laughs> <laughs> Although, to be fair Wasn't to David Jaffe, Jaffe and I, I have, right. I've, I've shit on David Jaffe in my videos before because I made a big video on Metroid and his takes on Metroid Dread are absolutely trash. Absolutely, but, yeah. um, I remember those. I think he has come out and said, yeah, well, you know, Hades, you, we ran out of time. What can I say? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's, he's, he's been pretty upfront about that not being his favorite part of that game, so like, I still like you, David. Although uh, you're, you have to say about uh, that last, is last that, fight in the game. Is that X-ray girl <laughs> screaming in the background? <laughs> yeah, it is. She's playing uh, Dark Tide. Dark Tide yeah, <laughs> he's screaming. What do you mean they don't have weapon crafting, but a fully functional cash shop where I can't just buy things Thank I you. want for the actual currency? Thank you. <laughs> it's almost like this company knows what to do, but they purposefully didn't do it. Fuck this game. That's probably what she's saying. But mm, yeah, yeah, I've actually been upset with some of the experiences I've had with Dark Tide. Yeah, because so it's far, a but... it, yeah, it's it's a marked, it, very clear and stark downgrade from Vermintide too. Absolutely, don't buy Dark Tide right now, everybody. So I did. I also don't around. think that switching engines was the best move because uh, man, that game kind of runs like trash on all of my computers. Oh no. Yeah, and Vermintide two didn't look bad. But yeah, before, we go, into a before we go into a spiel about something that I care a lot about and have many things to say, let's return to Ragnarok because we have a lot to cover. Oh, we're, yeah. we're, we're mostly through it now. We're near the end. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> well, you how do you guys, uh, how do you guys feel about Angry Boda? Clearly, clearly this is the boss fight. So. Yeah, yeah it's course, the end of the game. Game over. Yeah. Oh, the oh. music. Yes, this is the yeah. music section. <laughs> <laughs> so good at this. Theme is pretty poggers. This, I believe, is the theme for Asgard, the the light motif. But this, obviously, is the one that's used oh. for this fight. The okay. dun, 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 yeah, dun. it is. It is because it plays at another part in the game. <laughs> A couple parts, parts yes. Game. I was gonna say specifically, but we're not doing that. This might legitimately be a soundtrack that I buy a CD of. It's so good. Um, it's Fantastic. really, really good. I've this is pretty awesome uh, game vinyls. Uh, there's um, companies like Limited, uh, not Limited Run, sorry. Um, oh, shit. I am 8-bit that do um, vinyl records of game soundtracks. And mm -hmm. what they'll do is they'll give you an MP3 code or like a digital download code and then a vinyl that's got like really nice artwork on it and stuff. And uh it's usually, I mean, on the pricey side, but usually worth it if you think the music's really good. I fucking love the soundtrack of that game. <laughs> it's so good. I feel like we should say something about it, <laughs> but it's just, just, no, just so good. good. <laughs> we all just transitioned. I can mention into that the part I prefer black. is the rumbling, growing strings towards the beginning. I really, really like that at the start of the theme. The the yeah yeah yeah. I like all of it, all of it, man. But as has been made aware, I have a serious weakness for choir. Whenever they're doing anything, ah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm fucking awesome. It's, That's it's really cool. funny. I'm quite the opposite at this point because FromSoft have annoyed me with it. They still, I, I, I actually <laughs> thought that would happen with me. It still hasn't. They, they can send From a Soft billion choirs. Yeah, because their tracks have started to get kind of samey, or like there is one style of instrumentation and one sound that they like to do over and over again, and it's a good sound, but they keep doing it. <laughs> Theo with more trash takes. I actually. About. I think it's so but, totally fair because yeah, from so soundtracks have been they are very the choir is always there every time. Uh yeah. but it's the variety, right? But yes, then again, I would still I, say that, I yeah. love Dark Souls Three soundtrack, and a lot of that is loud. Um, mm -hmm. like <laughs> it's it's not as it, there's not as much variety as in like Demon Souls or uh or Bloodborne or Dark Souls, but I still love it. Choir is awesome. Fuck up! Choir. It was an offhanded mention. Jesus Christ! Well, I, I, I <laughs> dude, I realized as well. I, I realized what I said. It's in like every track. I was like, uh oh, I'm gonna put, be punished uh, for that, aren't I? Like, <laughs> like, there's actually one track called uh, the, the Demon's Lament, where it's there's no the choir. Demon's Lament. So yeah, is okay. There, is there the the there's a lot of choir. Okay, that's the Sekiro is Yuka Kitamura as well, and it, you can tell it's her sound coming through yeah. even if it's very japanese it's um but yeah i haven't gotten tired of hearing basically any instrument i don't think i ever will i i, I, I instruments I really are pretty cool i like them 
I want you guys to play Sekiro. I'd love to hear what you think of it. Racism. It's good. I played I Sekiro when it came out. That. No, that's different. That doesn't count. Oh, did you? Metal, we might have to talk about Sekiro one time. Oh, no, I'm interesting. Okay, yeah, whatever. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I love talking to you about Robocop. We talked about Robocop, yeah, and I'm an actual cyborg. How about that? Wait, yeah, Scurvy that was your choice, by the way. Yeah. I was not being uh, cyborg racism, so whatever. That's true, yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> it, it, it was legit one of my favorite movies before I lost a leg, so, you know, how about that? <laughs> oh, God. Shut up, honey. Did you oh, ever find it? <laughs> Shut up, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Great scene here. What a fucking spectacle. When yeah. he when he grabs him and the camera's following them as they just fly away, he's going, ha 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 ha. <laughs> this is like, oh so fucking cool. Yes, this this little exchange is great. This is the best <laughs> gif I've seen out of this game too. Yeah. <laughs> the slamming of Mjolnir in the Modi saw us in fear of you. He died of the wounds you gave him. Oh, we got a model father here. Uh, look at him, Joey. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we get? Frozen lightning, baby. Oh. This feels familiar, he says. Yeah. This <laughs> feels familiar, but don't matter. <laughs> don't matter. <laughs> yes. And they don't care if you don't find out. Nope. Yeah. I do, 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 have, do you have this in here, Mewpshly, at all? That won't be. I won't be able to get that in in time. So we'll have to okay. talk about it when it becomes relevant. I remember seeing oh, like right. multiple people get terrified about potential time travel and implications from that. Oh yeah, there, there was a lot of theories uh, as to. I remember I talked about this on the 2018 stream. I'm glad I was absolutely wrong and that there was no chance of it happening. But Thor was going to send Kratos back in time after he died and became Jormungandr. And it was what? like it uh, that was a big old theory, and that's why Yorman oh, is chill yeah, with the trays and stuff. And uh, it's just like, well, we'll have to see how they do it. If they do it, they did not do it, <laughs> like, which do that. is preferable, yes. Okay, to be fair, they did a lot more than hurt his feelings, like, um, as a person who. <laughs> Pretty recently played every single God of War game. Yeah, it, they, they did a lot of shit to Kratos. <laughs> he's um, you might say he's being rude when he summarizes it that way. Yeah, Thor, a little bit. Oh, bit rude, mate. Might want to. Yeah. Unfair. Yeah, come on, man. As you can tell from the damage, this is called story mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No way my Show me who you are. You playing in HDR? <laughs> I see why my sons yeah, fell to you. Even this lesser version of you. But I hey, unfortunate timing on those two lines in this version, huh? See, he's under the impression that that Kratos killed both of them, right? No way my sons fell to you immediately followed by this is why my sons fell to you. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean, because of the sort of random dialogue and then the yeah, yeah, cutscene. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I was combining what both of you were saying, and I was like, I have no yeah, fucking clue what your mean. point is. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, no, I, like, I wasn't even on Theo's page at all. I was just like, see, like, Thor is under the impression that Kratos killed them both. And Theo was <laughs> you might be, I, the, I think you might be right. I'm not sure. He might still. No idea what he's talking about. He might still be attributing it as they fell to you as a you and Atreus sort of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd accept that as well. I see why my sons fell to you, even this lesser version of you. But I am not my son. Mocking you for playing on easy. Wow. And your boy. <laughs> yeah. There he is. There's the 
the god of war. Souvenir, god souvenir. Get it, it's still out there. It's still out there. Go get it. <laughs> it's gonna be. be seeing you. you killed my sons, but you punched me real good, so it's cool. Well, it seems to me that it becomes clear at that point he was never gonna kill Kratos. That wasn't why he was there. Yeah, that's true. I'm, so, I'm pretty sure he's I, not. I, I like that exchange. I, just, I think yeah. the rationale, when you think about it, is kind of funny, but it uh, it is a very cool scene. Oh, I love the expressions on him again when he grabs them, and you start to. It becomes clear. It's like they clearly crank the um the work they do on expressions for particular moments. Because mm -hmm. um, like Thor's face is not that animated all the time, but in that moment it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Told you he'd <laughs> It's Sindri and Brock. That was quite a fight. Can we Oh, now! Odin is with Atreus. Oh no. Once you chase Odin off, you got another place to lay your head tonight? And I don't mean that talking, though. I will not abandon my home. Oh yeah? And what's to stop the all fucker from spying on you? Or Raven checking <laughs> your house to square us while you're sleeping? <laughs> Brock, Nothing, never changed. that's what. You go get your boy, and I'll speak to a certain someone about putting you up in his place in a pinch. I was about to look for you. Are you hurt? Are you? What does he want? To, uh, What's pay for the that? roof. And he invited me to Asgard. You pay Did for the he? roof is such a mobster. I move. couldn't hear what's it going is. on. <laughs> That's for the window no. that we have broke Obviously. the Searching for Tia. If I told you I was looking for him, you would have said not to. So you hid the truth from me. I wanted to tell you. I really did, but now that you know, there's something you should see. No. Just trust me, you'll want to. Trust! You have broken my trust. Then let me regain it. Let me show you what I found. Besides, we haven't seen the last of Odin, or Thor. And clearly they can just walk in and blast holes in our home whenever they want. There's only one way to get them off our backs. And I think I know how. Sir. Yeah, some of these obviously these clips are more so for just you can understand with us what the storyline even is but yeah they uh yeah yeah obviously revealing that he's he's getting a little obsessed about mr tear but how and why and this is how and why well that's new You didn't show the coin throw? That's true. I probably should have, because it's kind of neat. Uh, that little coin, Kratos throws it, and uh, Mamiya says, and you can piss off or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember, but it's just a... Um, I think when I picked it up, I was like, you better get rid of that. Get rid of it. It's fucking Odin's coin. I don't trust it. Probably his eyes. Get rid of it. Come on. Atreus, wait! Yeah, I don't think he's waiting. What does any of this have to do with... We're coming to that. Look, here's Ragnarok. Do you see who's leading the armies against Odin? That's Tyr. If he's gonna be around at Ragnarok, that means he's gotta be alive. We know it's Tyr because he's holding a spear, which apparently is something that Tyr does. Makes spear complete holder, sense. Notorious spear holder. Yes. Holder of spears. Right? Mimir, 
can this be? Odin told me he killed Tyr, and he trusted me at the time, or so I thought. What if he didn't kill him? What if he's just had him locked up somewhere all this time? We are back to ifs. Enough. Wait! We are going home. Wait! I have one more thing to show you. That's it then. Tears and Svartal find somewhere, imprisoned in a mine. So? What now? Home. Brother, a word. Don't hold the lad's curiosity against him. It goes with being young. In my youth, we learned obedience. And is that what you wish for him? Brother, he's going to walk his own path. If you don't want him walking away from you, then smarten up and walk with him a while. <laughs> Genuinely one of the most important lines in the whole game. I was about to <laughs> yep. say, it's, it's so it's, critically it's important. It's a lot of things, yeah, on their path. In Not even in a cutscene. To... That's right, yeah. I guess it's an in-game cutscene, arguably. I, I forget what we would, how we start you categorizing see holding forward. Yeah, well, you, you get what I mean. I, 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 it's these moments. Like, um, I think even in Drinker's stream, he was like, he doesn't talk when cutscenes play, but when these moments play, he's like, he'll talk with his audience and stuff. It's like a is an indication Ooh! of the dialogue being less important when it's not in a uh, hard cutscene format, if I can call it that. Um, was, yeah. You know, I don't blame people for missing it. It's just that this yeah, line is super fucking important. Yeah. yeah. Find a way to open Rome travel to Sparta Farm. I bet there'd be all sorts of useful equipment for us to. Enough. We will go. I really like that because he's like, come on, Dad. Uh, the upgrades, armor, weapons. He's yeah, like, shut up. Like, shut you up. You like loot? We'll go. You, you get all that <laughs> stuff. He's like, yeah, fine, we go. Fine, we go to McDonald's, son. Fine. <laughs> really? If we do not find Tyr, you will abandon your search. For good. All right. You won't be sorry. Come in. Come in! Now, if you would just wipe your feet very thoroughly, I'll wait. You're not gonna wipe your feet, are you? This is another scene I think, uh, Rags, when you- because this is still, like, early on and you even knowing anything about all this. I think Sindri made a pretty good impression on you in this scene, right? Uh, yeah, I've always liked, uh, I- I really appreciate just, um, we get a lot extra out of Sindri because this is the cutscene level where we have expressions and you can see where the eyes look and just his mannerisms, how he moves around. Uh, and it really helps bring this character to life. Uh, and, and you really appreciate him, especially his dynamic as opposed to, you know, Kratos and a lot of the other people. Yes. Uh, Sindri is a very quick favorite. Lots of bouncing off of different personalities. And yeah, uh, just keep, keeping an eye on everyone's faces again in this scene. They were, they were clearly putting a lot of effort into this. Mm -hmm. Your bedrooms are there. The kitchen is just over there. Any Anybody need a snack? Kratos? <laughs> snack? I do not need a snack. What we need is your help getting to Sparto <laughs> Farm so we can... Oh, I should have included it, I guess. Um, that basically, uh, the realization is that Sindri's been helping Atreus this whole time. Yeah. And Kratos is very fucking upset about that. Try and rescue Tyr. To Tyr? Alive? I mean, that's... What? It's okay. What? I told him everything. Everything? You waited my son and disobeyed me. No, I, I kept an eye on him. On your behalf. Nothing risky. Everything very safe. Somebody else speak. What's important right now Somebody is that speak. we try and open up travel between <laughs> realms again. You said you know a way? Yes. I do. I just... It's just... There's... It's just a lot of mud. Then why haven't you opened the way already, man? Well, to be frank, there was... Something we needed your help with. Oh! The Holder brothers finally require the services of the smartest man alive. That's it precisely. Hey! Not... How does this not feel like a reintroduction for these two in terms of... I know, right? <laughs> Sindri spends the whole scene, like, trying desperately just to be taken seriously and to help people and to... All about that mm. germophobic stuff, but also uh, just avoiding damage. Then Brock just blasts onto screen, like, hey! <laughs> Yo, I'm here! <laughs> Obviously, they were introduced earlier. It's just that this felt like the actual, like, reintroduction as opposed to the, uh, yeah. just saying hello to him. Not so... How'd that get in here? This is also kind of the first scene of the main 
Let's go aside. Like post introduction, right? Kind of, yeah. What in all yarns me the half been doing? He's too damn tall now. Too damn tall. Looks like. Here is now your home ah. base for the rest of the game. Yep. I blame you. <laughs> well, come on then. Let's get him something that fits at least. He's just getting older, you dark prat. Didn't you ever have an awkward phase in your youth? Hey. I suppose what's hey. done is done. They came right out and said it, too. We're all thinking it. Sorry, a trans actor. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, Svatelfheim Holder brothers got a very, very recognizable light motif, I would say, because of. Uh, yeah. It comes up at yep. a certain point that's very memorable. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just the variety of the instruments and the vibes in this game. Well, and how you can take one theme and shift the instrumentation and maybe the key a little bit and totally change the tone of it. <laughs> I was surprised they didn't copy it's the menus darling. over He's a from the other game. They really wanted to separate them out, I guess. Because I would have thought it would just be saved work, but then again, I've never developed a game, no. so what would I know? Cousin of ours, sort of. Works for the city on safety issues. Should have access to all kinds of information on mines. And I know he's no friend of Odin. That's why your mother sought his help when she was trying to whip up a rebellion. Ready? A rebellion? Did you know about that? I did not. A rebel leader from your mom. Sounds like exactly what we need. I think you missed the Ta-da! You missed the ta-da. Well, never mind. I'll have this oiled up in no time. Meet you at the gateway outside. Rebel leader, Derlin? <laughs> if that ain't giving a hound a haircut. Huh? Very true, don't give a hand a haircut. Wait, what just happened? Why, I, uh? Who just did that? I, I guess we're back at the just beginning. Restart which one, which one of you is fucking responsible for that? Yeah. I, I don't know. I was just sitting here watching. I'm, Dear I'm Lord, I hope a, it wasn't me. I'm inside of a game right now. I can't click shit. So it was you. It was metal. He pressed hey. a button in the game and it made something happen. But I've been pressing buttons this whole time and nothing how was in, happening. How incredible. It was you, Rags. You're just shifting blame on me because I'm no. German. Whoa. And I don't even know how to I don't even know how to do what just happened. Some people just said yeah, it, was I, I, yeah. it was Joel. It could have been. I was trying to oh, yeah, so open to a different window. Yeah, uh, does, very does all true. do anything and watch together? Remember things or however tap? they pop. Oh, it's not it ruins good. everything. <laughs> Evidently. Later, Damn you, Windows. I suppose you think Derlin's just counting the days until a couple of strays show up looking for trouble. What do you so, mean, uh, Brock? Show over. Oh, you help us. <laughs> oh, is it not playing for you guys? It's playing, it's playing for me. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not seconds. seeing anything. Does that mean I was the problem? You might yes, be the problem. Yeah. So. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> if you want to Absolutely. rejoin the room, that might fix it. You are okay. the problem. All right. Can I hit just reload? Okay. You're the god of problems. So Alt Tab dun, does come. Dun, dun, dun. Zeus. <laughs> Radley, Radley says that when he's dreaming, and Bibi is like, what? Oh, right, yeah. Uh, okay. right. Yeah, this one was over the old times, that dream, yeah. <laughs> one of the normal ones. You back in? Is it working? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. So I'm not. Sorry about that. No, never mind. It ain't old Brock's place to cast asparagations on my relations. This smudge sponger notwithstanding. Ignoring you. Fine. Go darken Derlin's door. See for yourself how it goes. Just be warned, he's not the friendly sort of dwarf folk you're used to. He's cranky as all get out. And he talk funny, too. Sounds like a true study in contrast. Head talk rock. buddy. Do he talk him. funny, oh, this too. This would be the part requiring my assistance, then. You said it. This device here has been crafted to your measurements. It'll help you get a better look at the problem with those bifrost eyes of yours. So I 
Do I control this thing somehow, then? Oh, no, 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 no. This is just <laughs> to hold you in place while we shine this light <laughs> in your eyes. Oh, oh, <laughs> send me a sodding bastard! <laughs> <laughs> Brock is having a good time with his life. Like, I mean, <laughs> they probably did Open that the now. correct way, though. Like, don't do, you know? It's like, okay, we're gonna put his light in the eyes. Let's not let's not make him dread it. Let's let's tell him about it right as it's about to happen. It's probably the best way. It makes for an incredibly useful <laughs> tool. As a result, um, I'm kind of glad yeah. that they found a way to do this in a way that somehow like it makes more sense than pulling it out of their ass. Like, because the Bifrost eyes were like the whole yeah. they one of the last things mm -hmm. you actually get in the previous game, like the second eye. Hoping not to use the eyelid clamps. Do it! <laughs> <laughs> Do it! Oh! That's it! That's, that's it! That's good. good. Now, release! Use the, the clockwork orange shit on him. That's our cue. Come on, hurry! I'm coming, I'm coming! Crossful just eggs, man. What was that for? You'll see soon enough. Just to adjust. <gasps> there! That should do it. See? No permanent damage. I'll show you permanent damage, you wee fuck! Kratos! <laughs> throw me at him! Horns! Fuss! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, <laughs> joke, you Toss dope. me. <laughs> oh. I still can't... Can you not I, um, love these characters? I don't know. <laughs> they're fucking great. I, I, I was recording it while I was grabbing something. If you stand there for long enough, uh, Babia's like, Kratos, get me! Like, <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> Pick me That's up. Great. I believe Mom led a whole rebellion here against Odin and never talked about it. The fact that it didn't go well might have covered that notion. What your mother did before we met was her business. Did you ever ask? Eyes on the water. They are resources. <laughs> Change topic real quick. Yeah. <laughs> If you never asked mom about what she used to do, what did you talk about when you met? Like, did you just say, woman, guard the house. I will go to catch fish in the river and then leave for five days? No, your mother was far better at fishing than I. What exactly are you hoping to learn from Tia? Well, like I said, I was hoping he could tell me something about Loki. Was that one of Synthetic I'd Man's also like criticisms? To hear some Huh? The wife's better at fishing. Totally woke SJW propaganda. I'm sure someone in chat's already <laughs> taken care of that. <laughs> someone in chat's taken care of stories. <clears throat> Traveling to other lands, giant stuff, and maybe about what it was like to fight back in the day. Just for the history, obviously. History? <laughs> Let's hope Tia's in a talkative mood after being in prison for so long. Not all of Odin's captives can be as charmingly voluble as myself. We have no proof Tyr is truly here. Right. If he's here... So, actually, th this this might be a bit of a tangent, but I guess it's worth bringing up. Uh, Theo, like, how do you feel about the story being delivered through these dialogue, uh, like, these conversations while moving between places in the game? like exploring the environment i think i've mentioned that it's a good way to fill that time considering it's not being filled by anything else which is potentially a criticism you could have however yeah it's a good place to well people talk to each other as they go places right so that's completely fine the one issue i would have is sometimes the dialogue can end up coming out in a very poorly paced kind of way because there are things happening in between conversations so like a characters will have a conversation that doesn't really end like one of them just delivers a line that clearly invites a response but none is given because you walk into a combat arena then the combat arena you do all of that characters behave as if there was not a prior conversation going on because they can't really account for that technologically speaking and then you walk a bit past that combat arena after finishing it and the conversation resumes right from where it left off in terms of emotional cadence and it can be pretty jarring do you think that if yeah. this was a television show, because I don't think we'd even enter, because if it was a film, it would just not be enough time. Do you think that in a television show that you are presented with opportunities to convey this information in this kind of way? Or would you have to change it a good amount in terms of the delivery of this information to adapt it to television? 
You may have to change it. I'm not entirely sure it would like it comes down to annoying considerations like the amount of time you have. I think you could have that amount of time, but I don't think you necessarily would, depending on considerations like budget. I could um sorry. I don't know. I, get... I, I kinda like that system of like, hey, this sort of flavor text for the lore that we were talking about when you were side questing and got into this area where it necessitates a combat encounter. So we have to stop the conversation because if Amir keeps talking, it would be kind of ridiculous or, or you wouldn't be listening as long as you're playing on a difficulty that demands your attention. I think they almost so, nailed it. They, uh, there's yeah, just those, like, these I weird errors. Like what they do. Um, and when you, like, yeah. So oh, before that happened, be what I was saying was, and cause the player doesn't need to hear the beginning of the story again, you know, like, uh mm -hmm. yeah there's the, for some reason there's more mistakes in this game in that regard than there was in 2018 i don't know how that happened yeah. um oh, really? yeah because like in 2018 i think there was i want to say between th two and five instances of me actually having dialogue ruined because of crossovers or because it got cancelled out for no reason at all in this game i felt like it happened a solid 10 to 15 times and i was actually yeah, getting annoyed because i was like stop yeah. why are you stopping why are you starting why are you crossing over what's happening like what yeah, it's a lot of times when you go like on a sled or one of the boats and you're just like 10 seconds away from the next shore yeah. and then <laughs> they're crazy. like, let's, let's continue this later. It's like, why? <laughs> I, was I'm, listening. I'm, I still have time to spend. Also, right, I would well, have I stopped in front of the shore so I can finish the story. It was like... the, While the in 2018, why... it was mostly they stop when you get on, on the shore. They're like, okay, wait, hang on. We're going to go in there. What's funny is now, every time I see extensive accessibility menus, all I can think is when there's something that's a blatant oversight. Like, um, for example, in Callisto Protocol, you just can't remap buttons on a controller at all. So if you want light attack to be R1 and heavy attack to be R2, fuck off, because that's not happening. You have to light attack with R2 and heavy melee attack with R1. And what? it's just like, well, in your accessibility settings, you've got all this like crazy high contrast stuff and ability to shift the text size and make it so that you're automatically dodging and all this. Like, can I just remap the controller? <laughs> Why is that not a sorry? Thing they I made they made the equivalent of light heavy R one R two in, in like, reverse. The... Yeah, yeah. But like because uh, they're, they're I I assume that their theory is because R two is your <laughs> trigger that you use to fire a gun. That it should be your oh. your your go to melee attack, oh. and the heavy one is the weird one that you want to to throw, like you know, like every oh, now and I then. So, this is why we don't cross the genre streams. Yeah, <laughs> like you don't cross the streams, man. Like focus on the type of game you want to make. Man, that game sounds more unappealing the more I hear about it. Oh no, it's know. yeah, it, like honestly, it, it's <laughs> one of those things that like I would honestly regret rebuying it on console just so I could functionally play it. If not for the fact that it's so bad, I've definitely got a video out of this game. Like and Well. I uh I wanna drag the conversation back to the Do it. question of uh, yeah, yeah. what no 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 more specifically, um <laughs> Whether the whether it benefits from being a game rather than a television show or a film, because one of the reasons why I kind of stand oh. it as a video game is because I feel like having banter during these moments of traveling, you know, between different places, like when you're in a river delta sort of area or something to to go explore, is like a a, a good tool that video games have more readily available to them to deliver story um, that is difficult to do in a television show in the sense that the television show has a set pace um whereas in a video game if you're given more freedom to explore that's just something that's available to you i guess from a storytelling perspective that i think that they used here yeah no and i, I can agree to that i think that one of the strengths of video games as a medium is the ability to easily seek additional lore that isn't um a critical path like it's not it's not required in order to see the thing whereas every time you have a lore dump that has nothing to do with the story in a tv or a tv show or a movie it sort of doesn't work you know like it's like well why are you telling me this is this important oh, like it, <laughs> one of one of the pieces of writing advice that annoys me the most is cut it out if it's not necessary because I think that that's incredibly vague as a piece of advice, like what is or isn't necessary 
it's kind of complicated. I think, um, yeah, I think it comes down to people pacing. having a really weird idea of necessity because yeah. people tend to see necessity in terms of if it's strictly plot relevant. Strict or, yeah. Yeah. Strictly in terms like, of what it accomplishes specifically for plot or for characters, if you're being generous. Well, think about the exchange that we had before, right? Of uh, Did you ever talk to Faye about like her past or, you know, did, did you not do that? And then it's just like, go look for resources. That could easily, somebody could be like, well, that's not doing much, is it? You know, like that's not really <laughs> getting us anywhere. So cut it. And it's like, man, you lose, you lose a thread. And I guess that might be because wow. that's that's a bit more important. But there are like other conversations that are very much just about giving you a little bit more detail about the world, or just a little bit of information about a character. Um, well, I guess could... it, how Fringy actually, how's this as a scenario for you? Say if on the Millennium Falcon, like just after they leave Mos Eisley in the first Star Wars film. Obi-Wan tells Luke a story about the Mandalorians that has nothing at all to do with the plot. That's that's world building for the Star Wars universe, and there's a lot of good lore around the Mandalorians, but it's like, oh, well, why why what are you telling me this? Thing? Like in a, in a movie that it sticks out like a sore thumb is like, well, that if this doesn't come into play later, then I, I feel like you shouldn't be telling me this. Whereas I think you're very much correct in that video games are a medium in which you can just decide, hey, I'm going to wander around over here and talk to this character and maybe learn a little bit more about the world that I know, like part of the deal, the contract I enter into in seeking this information is it might not be critical to the plot, but yeah. it might give me a little more flavor to the world, you know? Yeah, I think when it comes to a film, just by virtue of how much time a film has, uh, I, th I think that expediency in storytelling is good, um, in terms of trying to achieve as much as possible, uh, concisely, you know, like strong dialogue, achieving multiple things at once means that you don't have to have a, like a conversation that you, that, uh, a less, uh, competent writer would take way longer to achieve, like you can condense it. I think in the case of a game, it's just one of the benefits is kind of like you said, that you can pursue optional dialogue whereas optional material in a television show or a film you know yeah it's you, not really like it's a, it's not a thing which happens unless we we enter an era where pop-up video is like would you like extra lore yes and then it just gives you a little sidebar for the thing it's like mm -hmm. your spin-off tv shows like are no optional yeah. content to add more <laughs> uh i guess in a sense did you enjoy breaking bad you can check out the optional story better call saul better call saul <laughs> Charmingly voluble as my. Well, we don't want to fall as a tree and you have a severed head on your head. <clears throat> None taken. None taken. Fair point, though. Very well. We're looking for Darlin? You have an appointment? Uh, no? Has anyone ever had an appointment here? <laughs> you collect on something, pal? Think uh, parading a severed head around on your hip is gonna scare me into somehow approving Estrid's accretion proposal, eh? We are looking for a prisoner of Odin's. <laughs> He's being kept in a mind. Right up until this point, I really. Dylan gets like fucking minutes in this scene, but he's so characterized, uh -huh. for lack of a better term. Yeah. So this guy yeah. is just like clearly really not cool. in the mood for bullshit, has dealt with a lot, and simultaneously already trying to figure these people out just by looking at them. Definitely mm -hmm. feels like he's on point. And when he says like, uh, you know, he wants the information, that, that little movement he does, like, yeah, so are we all, buddy. What are you like, you know, fucking whatever. Like, but then look at his face when he sees the axe. Somewhere. Some friends of ours said that you could help. Where did you get... Yeah. You chop her head off with that too, eh? She was my wife. Putting together exactly who these two are. Uh, yeah, no, he's too. like, yeah. oh, okay, wait, that wasn't that wasn't what I what I instinctively <laughs> thought it was. Okay, Hold completely on. changes she all. Got of it. And I really <laughs> love the uh, he grabs Dina straight away. Yeah. 
Does this boy look like he could be a cross between those two or what? Dina and I wondered where she went after our little coup here failed. Failed? Didn't work. Yeah. Come. Come. Failed. Faye is dead. Best of them are. One's left alive after pay the price. I'm afraid <clears throat> I can't help you with your little prisoner situation. But he could have answers on how to stop Odin. And free Svartalfine from the ace here. Now I'm not in the business of crossing the old father anymore. Wait, before you go. Like this. What is it? A fine. Hygiene code violation for improper transport of a rotting head. Uh, mm -hmm. Two demerits for speaking the All Father's given name and, uh, yeah, yeah. For fucking up my desk! A fine? Play it at your leisure. Okay. 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 <laughs> Get out of my office. <laughs> Yeah, him and Ratatoska especially came across super fantasy characters to me. Just the kind of... Absolutely, yeah. yeah. When you meet them, you're just like, wow, look at you. <laughs> like, what are you about? But yeah, everyone... Those people say, like, he looks like Sh uh, Smee from Hook. It's like, yes, he kind of does. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, right. <laughs> hey there. So what about get out of my office? Don't you understand? You said her name was Diener? Oh, uh, sure. Lots to say about this scene, yeah. but not until yeah. way later. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to. We have to judge it for what it is at the time, and we're getting the uh, the payoff in Thank a sec. Thank you. I think. Hey, this isn't a fine. Not now. There are enemies ahead. Yeah, it seems like Dylan may have helped them more than he mm. was get, handing on to there in terms of just... Uh, yeah. But it was a fine, but it ain't a fine. <laughs> what he gave you is pretty fine. Possible um, deniability for Odin, too. Yes, and... Well, yeah, thing is, there's a whole how he speaks... Yeah. ...aloud. There's uh there's so much to say, but most of what I want to say about that scene can't be said until way later. So <laughs> like I'm just gonna have to wait, I guess. Just stay but. tuned. Um yes, another moment to appreciate this Svartalfheim battle music now. Oh, and by the way, I guess it's worth noting that the game looks incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it almost feels like a given. Everything looks amazing in this game, just if you didn't know. I was just, uh, just watching here, it's like, obviously, yeah, this game is visually stunning. Visually speaking, this is compressed to hell and back, so... Uh... Even then. Were, were you playing in <laughs> HDR as well? Like high, high dynamic range? Um, I'd have to cool. check. I had to change some settings because my um things weren't okay. working right with my OBS shit, so... Uh, okay, because I, I find that like the way the things look a little on the washed outside here, that that tends to be what happens when I'm playing in HDR, but capture in standard dynamic range, and it it makes mm. things look all kind of gray. What you'll find like that. is that the uh, saturation and contrast they're going to change throughout this because my default saturation on uh, the PS5 is like sickly uh, in terms of color, so I have to turn it down. But I try to match it to what I'm seeing on the um, you know, the, the primary screen is coming through, but sometimes I make it a little too washed out. Like, so, uh, yeah. you'll see it. It'll come up eventually. The Because it usually is at the beginning of my recordings, and then I'm like, oh, fuck, I haven't changed it, and everything looks kind of clowny, like really, really bright and colorful.
Like you didn't have to go so hard on every single track, but you did. <laughs> you chill a little bit, but I no. appreciate it. All good shit. <laughs> so, quite the mouth you had on the train, lad. It's just a word. I've heard way worse from Brock. The word does not matter. <laughs> way you worse lost from control. We were falling through the air. I thought we were gonna die. Is that what you truly wish your last word to be? No. In moments of crisis, panic does nothing. Harness it. Let it serve you. Father! That's like, uh, I think it's in a trailer, and it comes up again later in terms of just a line that is important for something. And it's so weird that it's prompted by him saying shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's done in a casual moment in the game. There's a lot of really strong lines throughout this game. Um, and you can find them in all different kinds of places. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, there's like, I skipped a better part of that song. I'm sorry I can't play all of the, the songs. Like, <laughs> I tried to choose sections. I did my best. I'm sorry. There's a gate up here heading towards the entrance to the mine. If you can get up here, I'll need your help lifting it. If. Oh, come on. You can jump that. Your knees aren't that bad. Petraeus. You're an old I'm man. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you said not to. But I can't stop thinking about this. We spend all of our time fighting bad stuff. And I don't get why we can't do that alongside Tyr. We do not know him. We saw his shrines. He's a leader. He stood up to Odin when no one else would. If he's done it before, why wouldn't he do it again? Images from long ago do not tell a whole story. I can't help but feel like you're angry with me or something. Ever since we got to Svartalfheim, you've been critical of my every move. If you don't think I can lead us, just say so. It is not your competence that is in question. Okay, but what does that mean? Consider your intent. I intend to help the God of War stop Odin. And that means freeing him from whatever prison he's in right now. Atreus, do my words irritate you? It's fine. I get it. Brothers! Wait, is that light up ahead there? <laughs> yeah, it's just building up... Uh... Kratos is worried about what exactly Atreus is fully up to, and uh, they do mm -hmm. build that early on in terms of, um, there's a couple of lines, I didn't include them, where uh, Kratos asks Mimir what, is, what does he think Odin and <clears throat> Atreus talked about, the implication being that Atreus isn't telling us everything Odin said, uh, which is a bit of a worry. Yeah. Here! <clears throat> What trickery? Oh, and someone said, but he said intentions don't matter. No, so what he's talking about with the bears is that now that their parent is dead and they're orphan bears, your intention to not do that doesn't matter anymore. Only the consequence is that they are now orphans. Your intention matters before you commit to an action. And that's what uh, Kratos is talking about. Like, uh, why why are we here? Why are we getting to here? And if it's to, because you want to start a war, that ain't a... Uh, that ain't very good. That would be a bad. Sentences are said and lessons are given in contexts that, you know, they are dependent on. So those lines aren't exactly directly comparable considering the context of what they're being about. Yeah, like, when you have the orphan bears telling them I didn't mean to orphan you is, um, <laughs> it's, it's just not gonna yeah. do a lot. Thanks! <laughs> Okie your... dokie! Yeah. What does your intent matter at that point? When you're considering starting a war, then, you know, is this Odin? What game do you play with me now? We're not with Odin. We're the good guys. You guys gonna have fun reviewing this uh, without spoilers? It's gonna be great, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler free review. Silence, chat. <laughs> Soy tear. <laughs> no. Soy tear. You'd have an argument for that for a while, but 
Oh, dude, it was beautiful. Like, All the fucking people who were like, soy tea, and then they complete the game, they're like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> this is the god of war. Those plates. I know you. God killer. Have you come for me now? Only to free you. Stay the way. Brother, let me try. Tear. Tear. Look, you know me, don't you? You. You killed Mir! No! No! No, no, no! Yeah, we, we brought him right back! Yeah! Stay away from me! You monsters! Stop! I wonder sometimes, like, Atreus, that responds, Yeah, but we brought him right back! Like, <laughs> what, right what, back. What, I was what? about to mention that too, I was like, oh... <laughs> <laughs> kid, you don't have a good concept of life and death <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in this topsy turvy world. I mean, yeah, it's just fun that for the like all, all I think almost the first time someone has seen Mimir and gone, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Instead of just like, "Oh yeah, it's a head, no problem." I would, yeah, just let's not forget this is a talking disembodied head. So, in any other context, it might be strange. We need him. Wait! Boy, it's possible we've been around him just so long it alone. seems normal to here, us. Listen, but I swear we're not here to hurt you. We're just trying to get, get you out. From me, please. Take you somewhere safe I away from you. Odin. Show mercy. This is my father. We help people. I don't belong out here, please. It's worse when he's angry. Father! Are you not a soldier? Are you not a leader of men? Master yourself! My son brought us to this place. For you! Look at him! This, um, this incredible disappointment Kratos has for the god of yeah. war, for the Norse mythology. Like, what is wrong with you? Why aren't you strong? <laughs> you. Why? Why are you gay? You don't know me. Why? Why I know you what you stood me? for. You helped the giants. We're returning the favor. We? We are leaving. Are you coming with us? Large. Kratos realizing they're really tall in this place. Why is everyone bigger than me? I hate that. Big, <laughs> make large, huge. Mm -hmm. Here, your statue in the lake. You had a spear. I thought you needed a weapon. walking stick. No. A kind thought, but no. Thank you. No. But. Okay. Even the trail's like, that sucks, what's happening? Yeah. I, I ran because I don't always know what's real. Sometimes there's... A... There's no shame in that, brother. We live in strange times. Everyone hears him talk. We must return home. I was about to say, you could feel the shrug from Mabia because he can't really shrug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why risk Odin's wrath to free me? Well, Ragnarok is coming. I hope you knew that. Oh, we you thought you'd that. want to help. You freed me only to start a war? No! Um... Um, Sotia, it's good to see you in the flesh again. Mimir, what's become of you? Following in your footsteps. Betrayal, indefinite imprisonment, execrable torture at the hands of the Old Father. You didn't deserve such treatment. Did you? 
I will say, my view is a touch better than yours. We found him at the top of a mountain with tree roots wrapped all around him. The only way to free him was to... Well, that. Highly pleasant. For all parties involved. Ah! You okay? The light. It's... It's been so long. There's an outcropping just ahead. The shade will make it easier on your eyes. Come on. Yeah, it's becoming clear that uh, Tia's time spent in prison has had a huge effect on him, and uh, obviously from what we learned from him in the previous game, it wasn't like he was a very active fighting god of war. He was, uh, was a peace broker as much as possible. He stood yeah, up he to was... Odin, but it's not like he was known for being some ruthless fighter that rescued everybody from everything. Yeah, so everybody loved him. He was like, hey, yo, Tia, what's up? Come here, hang out and stuff. And like all the realms even, like he went everywhere and everyone was like, yeah, he's a cool guy. He's pretty, he's pretty neat. Now and Ragnarok is coming. Which means Baldur. Baldur is dead. Odin sent him to track down a giant in Midgard. And then he found Kratos. And... Anyway, I'd promised to take these two to the tallest peak in the realms if they'd chop off my head and convince Freya to bring it back. Amir, speak of Baldur. I was getting to that. What's that? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was sad to see in this recording, I had interrupted that other line that I really like, where he, he finishes that conversation by saying, it wasn't all kill this, kill that, but, uh, <laughs> and you saw, I, yeah. had a, I had a light jog, I don't know how I managed to outpace the dialogue. Um, yeah, this, you, uh, it, it, it stinks when it happens, and yeah. you don't feel like you've, you know, you, you're not rushing ahead, but I yeah. guess when you... You make these lines. You have to design these levels. And this know, is this is one. In mind. This is one they don't repeat. It's not one that just. Uh, yeah, comes it's gone back forever if you miss sure. it. And yeah. that's the thing. I could have sprinted, and uh, oh. I would have lost all of it. That's interesting. I, think, I, I honestly didn't think that any of them you totally lost. I thought they all just sort of resumed when you were finished the battle. I'd like, like I, I, I would figure in this scenario when you killed these guys and then got back in the canoe. T Mimir would say, anyways, brother, what I was saying was, and then just yeah. launch back into the story. It's, uh, I don't think they can here because as soon as this fight's over, we're going to be doing the big tier scene, you know, and to put yeah. that stuff bef after it now is a bit out of order. You should have taken the spear, defended yourself. No. I have abjured all violence. But you're the god of war. I left that behind long ago. If Odin starts Ragnarok, you really wouldn't fight? Not even if I wish to. Before we go any further, the truth. What is it you want from me? You speak of Ragnarok. Is it a god of war you came to find? Is that the tear you need? Atreus. I... Forgive me. I am grateful for my freedom. But if you want me to follow you to war... Or worse yet, lead you to it... Then kill me now. My fight is gone. Damage is done. No one's killing you, brother. Better that than to live to see Ragnarok. We do not seek war. Doesn't matter. The giants trusted you. That's the tear we need. We need you. All right. All I ask is for a good night's rest and maybe some food. I think you killed the guards bringing me dinner. Brother, perhaps now you'd like to finish the story? Uh, the sons of Thor attacked us. We killed them. Baldur tried to kill Freya. I killed him. But you skipped over how he fought and freed the Valkyries. And that the giants are all gone. And now they called me Loki. And finding the shrines. The giants and... are gone. When we got to Jotunheim, they were all dead. Dead. 
Do you think Odin? We do not know. Yeah, that'd be a huge deal to Tia. Big old friends with yeah. the giants. And uh and the fact that they've managed to come around on sort of maybe you can't hit things, but you can still uh still help us with advice and insight, which is one of the main things that uh Atreus seemed to be interested in from here in the first place. So, you know, it's not all a huge loss or anything. And hey, we stopped a guy from getting tortured by Odin, so that's a good thing. That's, that's pretty neat, yeah. I'm a fan of that. I think we're getting out of here not a moment too soon. Whoa, what are those? Reinforcements from Asgard. The Ain Huryar will want to investigate my disappearance thoroughly. And I mean, I'm going to say it now because I said it on my stream. It's just like, well, you know what? It's kind of weird that he managed to escape as easily as he did. Because uh, mm. you'd think there'd be a lot more Ain Huryar there, a lot more reinforcements, and they would have come in faster too, but there was like, it was mainly just cave creatures. The Ain Huryar, you fought like a couple of them. It's the only argument you could really make is that his location was supposed to be a secret, but even still. Seems still too easy, yeah, but fair enough. Use the Kenobi defense that, that, there, that no one would be stupid enough to try and free Tyr. <laughs> oh, we don't no. have to worry about, we don't have to worry about <laughs> defending it. It makes Genius. total sense, guys. Everyone knows that if you free Tyr, the Aesir show up, so no one will be <laughs> stupid enough to do it. Therefore, the Aesir don't care. Genius. Yeah, Jojo, I agree. I agree. Are they using the sky to travel between realms? Odin's got tricks up his sleeve we haven't dared to consider. They're coming down on neither Valir, too. Will the dwarves be okay? The time for such concerns has passed. We must leave. Now. Lord Tyr. You're really alive. Am I? I wonder. Okay. He's just tired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sindri doesn't know what's going on. Like, he's like, oh, we doing some heavy stuff? Okay, I don't know. Like, <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, yeah, however you feel, man. Nice. Oh, yeah. I promised him some food and a room to rest in. Ah, of course you did. Well, let's see what we can do. Please, come inside. Uh, we'll be right in. <laughs> so, Tyr. Sounds like promises were made. Let's see about getting you settled, shall we? If you'll follow me. So that's what's left of Tyr, huh? Back where I come from, we'd say he's been through a few things. Hmm. So have we all. Well, ain't you philosophical? <laughs> what are you thinking, <laughs> brother? I am thinking. I want things to be the way they were. Well, I'd like to claim a tree again. Certain ships have sailed. The horrors of cybernetics. Yeah. <clears throat> I just wish Atreus were not so... restless. I care only for your safety. I know, brother. But holding him too tight won't keep him out of danger. The lad's determined to make a few mistakes of his own. And I hate to say it, but I think Tyr might be one of them. I've never seen a man broken so completely. I agree with Mamiya, Tyr might be a mistake. Uh, yeah. But I guess maybe we'll find out, who knows. Yeah, and also Kratos' willingness to sort of confide in Mamir shows, yeah. you know, that they're very familiar with one another. I quite liked it when the mission showed up, what it was like, uh, speak with Mimir or something like, or confer with Mimir. I was just like, ah, oh, sweet. Like, the, we're actually going to yeah. just be like, so, about those events today, what are we thinking? Definitely a part of the story. He's not just being, he's not just a, a, a head that's super passive in that sense. He's, yeah, he's, he isn't he's definitely just a character. Someone who adds comedy. Uh, he's, he's, they've integrated him a lot more. Yeah, well, he I makes mean... you, he's got a character that makes you feel bad when you think of, uh, when you're playing this game, and Kratos is with whatever party member he's with, and you say, oh yeah, the two of them are off adventuring, and you forget about Mir there the whole time. You know, you feel bad because he's a, you know, a proper character and everything. He's no less a person just because he doesn't have a body sort of thing. Yep. Well, I, I think an interesting way to look at it is who is Kratos' best friend? And you got to think if your first instinct is to say Atreus, it's like, well, but Atreus is his son, so uh, assuming you can't be uh, the best friend of your child... Who is his best friend? And then you got to think, oh, 
I mean, it's Mimir, isn't it? So, I would hope most people would answer Mimir at this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's really no, there's no, no other candidate. Threat. You expect too much. Aye, perhaps. Pity Freya still wants to kill you. That's an ally we could use. That is not an option. No, I don't suppose it is. Trouble sleeping. Ah! Shh. I feel like Kratos very, definitely would have very, heard that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, interesting that Kratos immediately says, like, oh, you expect too much of Tyr. Like, he just was just broken out. Like, he has an understanding that Tyr has uh, th gone through the ringer. <laughs> yeah, know? it's like, I think his first reaction was, like, why are you so pathetic? But then at this point, he's already realizing, like, because not everyone's going to be able to deal with it like you do. Exactly, yeah. But um, it's so crazy how many fucking characters have been through the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, none of them can outdo each other in terms of suffering, really. It's like, oh, yeah, I suffered the most. It's like, well, did you? Uh, have you, have you been you? tortured for a thousand years or whatever? They're like, yes, have you? It's like, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what are the odds thousand and one, actually. Like, Get oh, right. you know, okay. <laughs> you cannot sneak up on me like that. There's something I have to do in Midgard. What? Without me? I thought we were partners. We are. Just... Wasn't sure you'd want to join me. I'm visiting an old friend. Oh, I see. Or possibly not doing that, taking into account she's determined to murder you. Everything Sindri says in this game is so on point. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> he's a very sensible person to have around. He's yes. definitely, yeah, that, he's that, that voice of playing it safe reason. And he seems to have gone from, in the first game, it was like, say you're going to do something stupid. He'd be like, oh, well, you know, maybe don't do that because this maybe could happen. Now he seems to be taking more of an active role of being like, what are you doing, idiot? Stop. It's, uh, I mean, it's the simple fact that he's invested in these people now. Yes. Yeah, they're more familiar. He you know, he cares plainly. about them and he doesn't want them to get hurt. Really? Oh, look, I think it's lovely that you see the best in people. I really do. And I want you to continue to see the best in people by not getting yourself murdered. <gasps> but we need her. It it really does have that he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day energy. Who, Sindri or the scene? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From Sindri. He's like, yeah, you need, staying alive is really, really important. It it allows for many things to, you know. <laughs> let's let's not really do good. this, kid. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, there's a lot of dialogue in throughout the game. Sindri will often just advise, like, maybe we go the path of least resistance, hiding, and safety. Yeah. It's worth the risk. Is Which is, I would argue, kind of indicative of, like, what happened to the dwarves, basically. They, uh, as a race, compared to the other realms, right? They're the least ravaged and destroyed realm, but they're also the most under the thumb of Odin. Yeah. So... Yeah, can you believe it? You're playing as a traitor. How about an alternative? Woo. Something much less risky, Whoa. but maybe could give you some answers. What are you talking about? A certain old friend. I hear a motif. A of <laughs> ah, I hear another one. A, I hear a motif. The sun's path, right? Is the yes. Yeah. Yep. That's the song. Very giant friend. Jormungandr? Did you find him? Why don't I show you? It's just on the way to the vengeful goddess who wants you dead. So it'll give us some time to decide about not going there. So, <laughs> you know where Freya is? No, no. I mean, yes, but look, let's just talk to the snake first, and then I won't take you to Freya. How's and I that won't sound? take you to it. <laughs> like, I'm showing you my hand, but I'm just... telling you it's gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> that, pay that payoff is so fucking great. Like, yeah. this is good. <laughs> <laughs> not so easy, huh? Not so Shut easy. <laughs> Good oh, okay. I'll hit him my one. So, bow. father said I cast a spell when Fenrir died. Magical bow, it's fine. Shut up. <laughs> I know, it's, I know, I know, yeah, it's fine. It's just. No, you're it completely has right. Bow energy. I, I actually think that is the moment where they're trying to establish that, hey, this bow is. It's not a normal bow. Okay? It's magic. Whenever yeah, anything weird like that happens, you just have to say, it's magic. Shut up. You can hit it with it, okay? Every time Brock and Sindri hit something once with their hammer and it changes its properties entirely, it's like, it's magic. magic. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. Magic? That is disquieting. Accidental magic's not all. I sort of turned into a bear. A bear? 
It's under the umbrella of accidental yeah. magic. And I lost control. Frey knows magic better than anyone. She could help me. But not giant magic. Fun. We'll do it. Which is interesting. I don't even know what is what even is giant magic? The well, seems to be it, all sorts of things. Magic's it's really magic. big. It's funny because uh, we we get told in this game where I, did the Vania learn their magic from? They actually answer that in Ironwood. Do it your way, then, Sin. A huge venomous snake seems much safer. It's venomous. You can fix it, <laughs> can't you? Or does your brother have all the talent after all? Depends. Is your father all the muscle? If I say Hello. yes, you realize you're confirming Brock has all the talent. <sighs> Damn it! <laughs> Why are you worrying so much Bitch. today? I just need to look out for the people I care about. It keeps bad things from happening to them. Freya wouldn't kill me. Jormungandr's probably not even there. Besides, he likes me. He's only eaten me once. I had conveniently scrubbed that from my memory. Your move! Yeah, it's already become clear. It's just like this dynamic of having not Kratos just means that we can open up some other things. Like Sindri's getting yeah. a whole lot right now. It's, yeah. It's, uh, we might, because I guess we'll be, because there's a few of these segments um, to come. They, like the Atreus sections <laughs> seem to be the part of the game that's getting a lot of flack. Yes, um, we'll we, we'll be talking a lot about that soon enough. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but but it's like you've highlighted one of the benefits of having Atreus sections is opportunities to deliver certain uh, story moments that would be impossible if it was Kratos. Yeah. yeah. Like you can't. You can't have. I I I I think I prefer to I guess delve into that in a later segment actually specifically like the part that strikes me as the very clear benefit of these sections. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's very relatable, but you know, especially when you're growing up, if you're a you know a young lad, a boy, if you will, like you're not the same around your dad than you exactly are, you're yeah. with yeah. your friends, you know. Especially if your dad is Kratos, a Spartan. I mean, all this discipline and everything. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm probably not gonna a... get out of line. There's no big joking with uh, with that kind of dad. <laughs> there is that definitely his perspective and how it differs from Kratos. But the other one is he can interact with characters who Kratos like he just can't narratively. <laughs> when I say can't, I mean if you want to actually write the story properly, right? Like. How, without referencing any specific parts, how many times can Kratos and Thor have a conversation that doesn't end in a, a confrontation that ends with one of them dead, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, how yeah. often can that you have happen? To come up with a reason. It's not, yeah, it's not even just the fact that the tone of the conversation is difficult to lead to a particular way, but they just, the reason for them to meet up and not hurt each other is going to be difficult to write every exactly. time. Exactly. Compared to the opportunities that are available with Atreus because of his more direct connection to the Norse side of this story. That's not weird at all. Shh. <laughs> you see the he gesture to his eyes because they glow yeah. when he does that. I just like that as a detail. Because I didn't even notice both of these things in the first place. It's like, oh. Like Mr. Yormi, he's cool. I like him a lot. Mr. Jormenheimer. He's a good snack. He is. He saved them in the end of uh, 2018. Yeah. Oh. Bye, Theo. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, just when the choir pops up. <laughs> no, I hate choirs. <laughs> um, he hasn't said anything. I hope he. I'm sure it's an internet thing or something. I don't know. <laughs> there are videos online of 
slowing down or speeding up or changing the pitch of his voice to try and tell not only what he's saying, but to see how close to Kratos it sounds to see if, like... <laughs> there were theories, something... right? The, uh, the the sound design on Big Snake is is incredible. Like it's it really sounds like an ancient being. You know? Yeah, like I like it a lot. Basic. Yeah, it really sounds like they took Kratos' voice and scaled it up. <laughs> Boy. that subtitles for this part. Yeah, they're really uh, helpful. I, I, <laughs> yes. them. I think it's to confirm that you're not supposed to get subtitles for Jormungandr. That's like, probably one thing that it helps with. Well, <laughs> we can like vaguely understand it for Atreus, but for his it's just too incomprehensible? Or No, I mean like if, if people are wondering just like should is he speaking in a way that I should understand him? But the way yeah, that, that his voice sense. is presented, like, th does it just make it difficult and I'm missing it when I shouldn't be missing it? By having the subtitles explicitly not on uh, Big Snake, it's, it's confirmation of, no, you're, you're not supposed to, like, understand him yourself, uh, whereas we give you subtitles for when Loki speaks. Yeah. What is that? That's all you're gonna say? I got well, big snack. I got anything. things to do. <laughs> I got more sleep to have. <laughs> Good talk. Ironwood. What do you think it means? It means we should have stayed home. Let's head back. So what was your plan anyway? Just stroll up to the old Valkyrie Council Circle and hope Freya's in a good mood? Well, now that I know where she is, yeah, exactly what I'm gonna do. Fuck! <laughs> it's a bit of a clunk, but it speeds up what is yeah. inevitable. Obviously, Atreus <laughs> is most likely going to try Turtle House and probably the Valkyrie Circle. I don't see why he wouldn't, but you yeah. just want to speed it up. I think you could have written that a little better. Yeah, that's fair. Well, now that I know where she is, yeah, exactly what I'm gonna do. Oop, that was Mark that paused. What's up? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I Sorry. saw it. I said it. I'm boom. Tell us you're in sight, huh? In, in all He's honesty, it was my chihuahua. Smoke. I see. <laughs> oh, of course, blame the dog. Yeah. No, but like, he's there so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of fucked up you'd blame a poor little innocent animal like that, but all right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you don't see I've me here. I've got to just not have watch together selected. That's, that's Whatever what you say. You could just not press the pause button. Racist. We had no choice. Not sure she sees it that way. Well, I'm not going to ask her. Besides, they were your arrows. You're absolutely right, which is exactly why I'm recommending we don't do this. You sure you want to go in there wearing the very arrow tip that killed her son? I'll hide it under my shirt. And besides, it's a reminder to be better. You need a murder weapon to be a better person? It makes me feel brave, okay? Is that such a bad thing? When it leads you to believe you can convince Freya of anything, yes, it is. I have to try. Are you sure this is a good idea? You haven't got a plan. Brock says some people run better on chaos. I think he's right. What makes you think that applies here? This is life and death. And this is Ragnarok. We can't just do nothing, and we're out of options. Living! Living is an option! Wonder what Mom would do. Why don't you trust her? Why won't you tell me? Hello down there! Hey! Come to your senses yet? Yes! I mean, uh, I'm not changing my mind. Ha! You do have doubts! Like you never do? I spared him on this recording. <laughs> I was about to ask what your choice you were gonna make. Because you know what? He doesn't deserve curious. to have a throw ball snowed at him. Known at him? Yeah. It's no known yeah. at him. It's known. <laughs> Better than having regrets. Known. I'm not sure I agree with that, but by all means, keep going and you might find those too. Freya! <laughs> you 
should have stayed with Sindri. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait! Stop! Your father. Where is he? Not here! He sent you? No! He doesn't know! You shouldn't have come. He took my son. What makes you think I won't do the same? You're better than this. You would stake your life on it. What do you know? The answer to that is yes, by the way. That's, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't mean yeah. that, I don't mean that as a joke. Uh, Atreus is set up throughout all of 2018. Like, his thing is to be able to sense a sense of, uh, what a person is, what they want, what, what they intend and stuff. He, and, you know, he's criticized, I think, several times by different people for you see the best in people. He sees something that is there. It's just not always something that comes out, but that's why he feels so encouraged and confident to talk to people who everyone else is like, what the fuck are you doing talking to them? Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, gets him gets him access to things where a lot of people wouldn't have expected it because he he has like a a clairvoyancy almost for for that. It's a part of his god powers. Or giant in a powers. way, he almost he almost comes across in a certain way as a foil to Heimdall, who has similar kind of you know it's similar ish ability, and but who's grown incredibly cynical from it. Yes. With me. I know you haven't killed me yet. So while you're thinking it over, why don't you let me go and I can tell you why I can't? Oh shit, you're right. Where are the Christmas PFPs? We're in the third. Shit. Oh god, you're right. Uh, oh. Uh, 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 everybody uh, panic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jingle, CP, panic. draw me one quick. Uh, I third was still in line the, yet. Uh, I was gonna work on it, but I forgot. I don't think I'm. I, it doesn't let you switch avatars during stream, or at least I'd have to do it with like a laptop or whatever. But suddenly Christmas format, and now I'm trying to fix the fucking Discord. Game. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's ruined. Shit. Well, pack it in, boys. We We're gotta go here. back to the beginning. Oh fuckle! Just, just there you go. Uh, We're I'll all chunky now too. God damn it! See, now we're in Christmas mode, but we don't have Christmas avatars, oh. or at least I don't. I'm guessing you guys will gradually okay. switch. The jingle yes. balls, jingle balls, jingle, 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 jingle. jingle the, the Santa Krimbus, uh, not Halloween, la 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 la. Krimbus time, Santa Claus, uh, snow uh, except for Fringy, uh, mistletoe stuff, and uh, bread mistletoe things. Fringy can get access to snow. Houses. He needs it. Got a freezer. <laughs> right, Fringy? Why, Fringy? what, to so create it and then... What to to create a snowy winter for me in this very hot country? That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I said I it's said it's starting to get warm, fringy. by the way. And it's I don't know, man. Like if it is, I when people tell me like, oh yeah, summer's great. It I don't understand. I don't get it. Yes, it's very hot. All of the grass is dead. Like it's Damn. <laughs> it's, it's unlike just, winter. It, it, Ah, uh, it's just, I don't know, man, like, it's, it gets so hot sometimes, it feels like your eyes are burning. Like, Jesus you're Christ. Walking around in an oven. That's not good. <clears throat> Have you considered wearing, like, sunglasses? I, it's, it's because, like, I, I don't know, how often have you, like, 40 plus degrees Celsius, obviously, I don't know what, I don't know what that is in, in weird American units. What, what is, it, what is 40 degrees? Well, I'm in Arkansas, Celsius. so it gets very hot and humid here. Yeah, it doesn't get no, it... humid here. It gets hot and dry. Uh, I've, I have well, I've been out to the are. Arizona deserts though, so I, I know I know the feeling. It's definitely not for everybody. I don't know, man. Like, cause cause of course when people are like, oh yeah, nice sunny day. What they're thinking of is spring when it's a nice sunny day in spring. Sun's out, not many clouds in the sky. Everything's nice and green. Um, all the animals are nice and happy because it's it's nice chill weather and it's warm, sure, but it's not like. You know, it's it's a nice warm. It's not like you don't like getting burning. hot and sweaty. 
I don't know. It's just I don't like summer. I don't like it. Autumn's pretty cool. Winter's pretty cool. I like spring, but summer, no thanks. How cold does it get in your winter, though? Uh, not very. <laughs> like, like yeah, that's I don't, why you we, like winter. I'm Canadian, man. Yeah, winter that's the suck. thing. I hear that like winter is really shit in uh in like a city that's cold because of just the amount of uh, hassle that it creates. No, just I, I mean mostly like seriously winter wouldn't be so bad if you don't drive but if you drive right. man winter winter changes everything when you drive because of the snow and the ice and the yeah ah yeah. and other it's people who don't know how to drive, drive on snow and ice I just I don't know I don't I don't, I don't understand how like it's it forty plus degrees is like. It's, it's it? like in a front, you know? It's no, it's not. It's not nice. It's it's terrible. It's just like it's just everything burns, you know, <laughs> like everything's everything hot. burns. Everything burns. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's, just, it's like Joker said, everything burns, except instead of money, it's like the air itself is like so hot. I don't know. And especially because you talk about how like inconvenient it is to drive when it's cold. I don't know, man. Getting into a car that's really hot, the steering wheel burns. The, <laughs> well, the, you uh, have, you yeah, but it's put up fine. A sun shield like a on the window. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> I, absolutely. It's a necessity when it gets that hot. It's well, still hot, go. though. It yeah. still burns. You could lower yeah, the windows, what, what, crank on the AC. Though. Yeah, once yeah, you what, get going, yeah, your air conditioners fine. Yeah, what, it's and fine. Plus the road conditions. No, but that's the difference. Because in Canada, that's the thing. In Canada, the whole road is snowy. Not just the part that you're starting out in. That's so you always have to worry about the eternal no. summer that never ends. I just, I don't know. I don't like it. The eternal summer that it. never ends. Yep. I definitely prefer summer. I got a convertible. I got, I got no snow on the road, no ice on the road. I got my rear wheel drive. I'm 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 driving around having a gay old time. I got my okay. sunglasses on. My hair okay. is blowing in the wind. I got my tongue sticking out, and I'm just <laughs> going, I'm just having. Oh, it's great. I love me the I'm love me some summertime driving all around the countryside, past the bayous and the swamp and oh the little rural towns. Get off the highway so and just. You're, you're gonna ah. tell me that you actually like it when it's like above a hundred degrees Fahrenheit. That that you'd you'd enjoy that weather. Hmm. Hmm. It's right. It's, so it's, you like it when well, it's not no, let like me finish that my hot let me right? let me finish my my okay. noise. So, okay. in the same way, I like snow and ice, but not every day. I like a hundred degrees plus, but not every day. You know, I it's, fucking hate it every time. It's I I hate it above thirty above thirty degrees. Really, I don't like uh, at all. But it's like once it gets above thirty-five degrees, God, that's awful. Especially when it's like that the whole day. It's like, oh, what's the time? Eight o'clock. Wow, and everything burns already. I love it. It's great. You are. Um... <laughs> yeah. What? Well, you're. What? Uh... <laughs> you know. Be going? careful now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, careful! <laughs> Holy shit! I was like about to. I was about to say. I'm mean, like there. You're... They can ban you for slurs, Rags. Remember what Kratos said, Rags. Panic does nothing, okay? And you're panicking. This is, <laughs> this is definitely <laughs> what I'm doing. Honest the panic. I'm yeah. honesting the panic. I'm a, I, Chad is right. I'm a based heat enjoyer. Oh, fuck Just that. go to the beach. Problem solved. Here's the problem. I Just hate sand. Beach? It's course in the oh, sand. It's so so everywhere. Go out he doesn't <laughs> like the heat. He doesn't like the sand. I don't like, like air. Sand. Do you know what extreme heat is, chat? There's heat and then yeah. there's that kind of heat. Yeah, there's everything above 25 yeah. degrees. That's extreme heat. Yeah. What kind of heat things hide in Australian sand? Based Europe. Well, yeah. I'm, yeah, so, if you walk on that sand... Like, yeah, exactly. It burns. I said everything burns, all right? Like like the steering wheel. The steering yeah. wheel of life. You gotta put that sun shield on your, uh, on it, your window yes. there. Yeah. Sometimes it's Just not enough, rags. Stick it on there, and you're good to go. Maybe if you the have weak, you is, maybe uh, if you have weak girly one. hands, you could get some Oof. padding to put on the wheel. So you can drive and touch it. Right, you know that like a lot of doggos get they, like walking on, on like pavement when it gets really hot. It's not good for their little paws. 
when doggos yeah. have to walk on the pavement. I'm looking out. Yeah, sometimes. Well some dogs are like doggos. that. But you're not, huh? Not me. I'm a based heat enjoyer. It gives me strength. I'm like the fire god. I'm like Arcanine. It gives me strength and powers me up. I don't think Arcanine was a fire god. Then you eat children or something. You're a fire dog. Just rearrange the letters. Oh. Yeah. My dogs cool. are more or less okay with it, and they're total pussies. Which doesn't make them Apparently cats. not. They sound like chads. <laughs> But anyway, this is a video game if you guys want to talk about it. Oh yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Uh, I guess Absolutely. so. Ugh. Speaking of speaking of winter. For your father, oh, save your breath. Winter, His fate is sealed. But you know who's to blame for everything. I cannot get to Odin. Nor do I need to. Ragnarok will take him. Yeah? Well, what if I told you that he came to Midgard? He came to us. Offered peace if we don't move against him. <laughs> Claims Ragnarok's already been averted. He lies. Maybe. But if you know Groa's prophecy, you know it depends on an army of giants. The giants wait for war in Jotunheim. No. I've been there. There is no giant army. There are no giants at all. Just me. You. In Jotunheim, we learn the truth. My mother was the last guardian of our people in Midgard. And, and that's not all. The giants have prophecies about me. They know me as Loki. I think maybe I'm supposed to help stop Odin, somehow. But since all the giants are dead and you won't fight Odin, then you've already won. Why aren't we working together? Now that you can fight again. I am far from whole. Okay. That line hits hard. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we found here. Maybe if you spoke to him. Tears alive? Yeah. We we broke him out of Swartalfheim. Impossible. The nine realms are closed to all. No. We opened up the way. We just don't know where to go next. But if we all band together. Enough. Enough! <laughs> Leave this place. Go and do not return. Go before I change my mind. Do not expect the same mercy for your father. So that's pretty good. That scene is great. <laughs> yeah, uh, that scene great. is very great. Uh, because Freya is a great character. A very, very, very good character. <laughs> the whole impression that you get with that scene is yeah. that Atreus is basically starting to convince her yeah. they should actually work together, and she just will not allow herself to be convinced to do that. She because she realizes that she's actually starting to get convinced. But she just wants to she wants to kill Kratos and she don't want anybody to give her a reason not to. It's um it's probably something I'll save for later, but there's a reason she's on the path she's on. There's a lot of components, but those components are actually starting to be worn away. And so it's going to start yeah. making you wonder why you're on the path you're on. Yeah, because yeah, you, exactly. you can tell now that she has all this new information, she's definitely considering to do something else. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like this new information. So now it's just going back to the drawing board. It's like, okay, what can I do with that? Yeah, and she, and, she was so yeah, confident and, that Ragnarok's going to knock out Odin, but... Um, Atreus is trying yes. to say, like, uh, it seems that there may be some additional action needed from several other actors. Yep. As well as realm travel being open and Tia being alive seemed like big shocks to her. Yeah, big re shocks, big revelations. Like, oh shit, that might change some things. But now, please go away before I decide to kill you. Get up, but are we telling your dad about this? Since you've okay. come clean and all. No hey, way. 
He'd kill you. Yo. Right. Well, speaking of coming clean, I need your opinion on something. Something I've kept from my brother for a long time. Long before you were born, there was an accident at the forge. Brock died. I couldn't accept it. I went to the Lake of Souls in Alfheim to steal him back. Legions of souls tried to stop me. I can still feel them crawling all over my skin. Thing is, I could only get three of his four soul parts back. Sindri. Brock just thought he got knocked out. I've been lying to him ever since. It's been eating at me lately. You have to tell him. He has a right to know. When the time is right. As should you with your father. That's not the same thing. You saved Brock's life. I caused trouble. No. I made a choice. One that wasn't mine to make. I... I couldn't be alone. So, um... Gravity has yeah. completed this game. Yeah. Holy shit, this scene. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, different seeing it. Um, a lot of people, when they go through this for the first time, which is all we're going to be talking about it for for now, you're yeah. sort of like, oh, is this setting up like we're going to have a bit of a bit of tension side between quest. the two uh, black blacksmiths and we'll probably have a side quest to Alfheim to get that last pit of yeah. the soul. Oh, one's blue and one's white. But... I think we both set that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. it seemed like the most obvious thing. So that'll yeah, be like, neat oh. to do when we get to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The other dwarves, when they saw him, they shunned us. So we left. Made our own home. Well, you can't change the past, but it doesn't have to be who you are. Let's go home before Father wakes up. That might be the best idea you've had all night. Trey. Trey? It's a... N Shut up. Cringe. So I'm not allowed to give you a nickname? Is that what that was? <laughs> Whatever, loke. Mahler, what's, what's my nickname what, that you gave me? What is... Rackleton, obviously. Oh, okay. That's fair enough. And, um... That's a pretty good one. As far as I go, that's a pretty good one. Just said Loke. Loke. <laughs> Tone Loke. Tone Loke. <laughs> Trey Loke. Yeah. Pringleheimer's liking that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nope. That was worse. Oh, <laughs> and I heard was... it when I said it. All right. Shall we? After Tyr was such a failure, just wanted now to- Now hang on, little Jotun. Tyr may not be everything you expected, but a failure? You saved him from a terrible fate. That's not nothing. And hey, maybe he'll be some help to us yet. Maybe. But Father's not gonna go along with this forever. He's probably already got our next hiding place all picked out. Well, let's not make it worse by getting caught. That is not the list that concerns me. Do we trust them? Yeah, Sindri's a good lad. That's kind of the point. Yeah, Sindri's yeah. really yeah. good. He, he's, they, he's... they do a great job having him warm up to you, or having you warm up to him very quickly. Yeah, and you can tell they uh, he he and the Treos have become like bros. Uh, mm -hmm. Quite quite similar similar how uh, Kratos and Mimir have become bros over time. Yeah, there's Just, uh, potentially a large is. amount of time that Atreus and Sindri have spent together. He calls him yeah. Sin. Because sure. as we know, they were looking for Tyr together, apparently. Who knows what kind of shenanigans they were up to this whole time. Mm -hmm. The path they would put us on. Trust their wisdom. And this is the closest thing to hearing directly from them. You are certain the Giants would not counsel war? I said that they were wise. In my experience, that goes with being peaceful. Oh, little brother! Told you we needn't worry. Atreus, where have you been? Peeing? Hope you're all hungry! I could eat. <sighs> like, my boy can piss. But it's such a, like, um... It's like, all it's right. like a league <laughs> of their own. <clears throat> it's have some, large bladders. It's one of those ones where it's like, that's good enough. I guess is a reason. <laughs> it's just like, that's a weirdly long pee. I don't know. All right. And he's well, probably like, my boy this, took a poopy as well. Except yeah, he's massive. He should have said one I, became two, father. <laughs> you know how it you goes. Could, you could say I took a giant shed. Uh, really as well no rested as I am. Be right down. 
Have your battle buddy examine your prostate. Is this sausage? Uh, I don't know if you're picking it up, but uh, Gear is sitting in Sindri's space. That's why Sindri's like, hey, what the... <laughs> okay. Sure, why not? So he just I sits just down, like just... did you see that? Like, <laughs> fine, I will sit <laughs> here. Yeah. I just like they sit there and have food and talk. It's great, yeah. I think yeah. that's neat. It's awesome. I remember food tasting better. <laughs> I suppose you'd like to try cooking for this long. <laughs> I accept. Dude, he got <laughs> splashed so twice. Like... <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm sure that's where I'm planning our next move. Oh, so where are we going? Alfheim. I'm with the elves. Alfheim? You hate Alfheim. Why would we move there? Move there? Oh, we are seeking information. The Shrine of Groa. I would never life. live among the elves. <laughs> Groa <laughs> suddenly found it there. Groa? The Knowledge Keeper? It, it is fun, though, because, like, Atreus is so certain that Kratos will do everything he can to just stay away from any and all conflict that mm -hmm. he's, like, move to Alfheim as retarded. moving and then, there, yeah. And Kratos is so baffled, like, why the fuck would I move there? Yeah, yeah. What <laughs> we you just said I hate it there. <laughs> oh, maybe there's a there secret that I can unlock. People there, Bye. And we know you how Mimir is. Yeah. Saw everything. Oh, no, that's a joke. I, I wasn't sure you, um... Never mind. That's great. Alfheim. Hey, don't go forgetting this what'll get you there. Yeah, hey, that's right, girls. <laughs> Did you see that? It's fucking, a soup and a... It, like, I don't even sure entirely what happened. I think it's like a pot of Brock's food went into Sindri's soup. <laughs> like, Really? I didn't yeah, see Yeah, keep an eye on it. Yeah, look that's at great. it. That's great. I'll find. Hey, don't go forgetting this what'll get you there. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna build a bigger table. <laughs> I'm gonna build a bigger table. <laughs> He's getting driven nuts. So upset about it. More for me. The soup made him loud. Mm, yeah. Off to Alfheim then. Here. Yay. You're really up for coming with us? I am. Whenever you're ready. Well. Whenever your father's ready, I should say. If my counsel might help you see him over there the eating soup with a knife, it's the least I can do to repay <laughs> that crazy you. person. Plus, truly a god. I think it will do me well to see the light of Elfheim again. <laughs> mm. All part of the training. That elf light. I don't think he, because you do see what he's eating. It's like it's just a series of chopped up sausage. Maybe he didn't want the soup. It's more yeah. of a, it's more of a stew. It's probably not, because I, I can relate with that, because I don't really care for soup that much, but I'm a stew guy. I'm a yeah. stewer. Yeah, I like to. You stew. like guys called Stewart. I oh, you I, made this joke first. Damn it. <laughs> you were faster. Um, I'm. I don't have any strong opinions on people named Stewart, oh. uh, or at least people named Stewart. But if they're if they're mice named Stewart, then um, vehemently. But does it make a difference if they're Stewart S T E W A R? Wait, wait, hold on. Yes, yeah, you are right? Because yeah. uh, you were, you were good. You were good. You has the it. other Stewart though? Stewart like Stewart Little. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could do either. If it's about ST. Yeah. Well, I, I guess and I'm also just there's... On, the, on the topic of stew specifically, oh, does that inform your perspective on the the if there is a, a more correct or STU? spelling of, of uh, Stuart? Um, not really. That doesn't really that, that doesn't no? change okay, it for cool. me. No, no, that's good. I'm glad you recognize yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not the, the spelling that's spellings. important. It's their uh, it's their race, uh, obviously. <laughs> you know, the, the mouse, of course. It, you know, if someone's a mouse, that's a big it's a big deal. You know, it's a big deal to be a to be a mouse. A big Stuart. deal in his own way. Yeah, a little it is. and also little man in a big deal. Yeah, and also Steward of Gondor. Uh, he wasn't too great. Uh, he was a little you know a little kooky up yeah. in the brain space, but yeah. You know, exactly Stuart Little's dad was Hugh Laurie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. That was happening. That was before he became House. That was before he injured his... Yeah. I can't remember. Why does House walk with a cane? Did he... Did, was there, like, an accident? Or was it... With Stuart, he almost... He tripped over Stuart Little and he fell. Oh. I remember... Oh, God. 
That's um, horrible. <laughs> oh god. No, Stuart was okay. I don't know okay. what it is. He it's lupus. Like, he just drew. Yeah, yeah Stuart. But it was fine. ligma. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember. Like ligma malt. Oh, oh. Hey, I got hey. it. Oh, Hades nuts. Before he became an entire Wait, house. Yes. yes. To also. Do that one. Uh, friendly chatter they mentioned. I can't confirm this. I'm just going to say it as though it's true. The cups they, they've got on the table, I mean, I could confirm it, but I can't right now. Mm -hmm. The cups they got on the table, the cups you collected in uh, a mission for the Dwarven Cups, I think, in the previous game. Yeah. That is the... Oh, uh, oh really? Yeah, not to mention, um, I can't remember the people who brought these things up, but uh, the, the hammer that Brock is using is Andvari's hammer. That's another quest item you got in the first game. So it's uh, nice. it's pretty neat. Yeah. Actually, all the artifacts you collect in this game, they go into like a shelf uh, between you and Kra uh, Kratos and Atreus' uh, rooms, I think. Oh, that's what the... Because I was, I was going to say, um, yeah. the, I sent for you a picture of it. The um, the poem you collect from Kavasia um, yeah. about uh, Astra's playroom, you can tell from the book cover that that's what it is. I think you can see it on yeah. the shelf. It's pretty <clears> cool. I'm pretty sure the other other artifacts go there as well. That's the That's the one I mean. But yeah, I saw that randomly. It's like, oh, that's neat. I like that. Good shit. Good shit. Hell yeah, brother. Wow, Mamiya I... sounds different. <laughs> <laughs> so, where did this plan come from? I, I knew it would happen, by the way. You told me how far, how long have we spent on this stream? I'd have been like, I'm thinking two hours. It's been four. It's been Ooh, four, four, yeah. Oh, wow. Christ. Oh. From we'll be done in 16 hours, then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was merely asking how you found me, and he explained the secret prophecies inside the Yodnar shrines. Fascinating. From there, we set to taking stock of which shrines we'd seen, at which point your father recalled finding growers outside the Temple of Light. And now that we can actually go to Alfheim, the prudent course of action became self-evident. Nary a last step for the world's smartest man. Even without feet, if you'll forgive the levity. I was always fond of her talks, you know? Aye. And it's good to see you a free man again, old friend. I mean, we'd have more to say if it were later on in the game, that's all. We would. <laughs> <laughs> but it ain't later what on in the you... game, so... Mm, all that's right. right. Um... One of the things I think is worth bringing up is that Tyr is a huge well of knowledge about the giants, and it's curious yeah. we've not got more conversations well, about bro. that yet. These clothes do better than I deserve. Darn straight! And never mind what Brock had to trade the landlord to get that Indrasil seat for you. The landlord? He's not the landlord! <laughs> uh, okay. He really did it. Tyr really slept in my broom closet. Ready Is that when you normal are, for you tall, godly sorts? Or just the ones locked up for a lifetime or two? Mind if I take a little peek at you? I promise I'll <laughs> yeah. be brief. Oh. <laughs> I fucking love that I don't scene. Know. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> My rat, rat, rat. what a strapping Squirrel physique. fella. Capable of an astounding variety of Oscar. acts of violence, I imagine. What is happening? What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> this must be the squirrel that turns the world tree. I just love that, that reaction. Well, aroma. It's, it's, it's just such a, like, because obviously he's not hostile, but he's still weird. What's happening? Yeah, like, what's crawling on? all over me. The animation on Rabbit Oh, he's Toaster fantastic. Is, 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 oh, it's so, it's so bouncy. It feels like um, a bit Looney Tunes inspired. Like, he's just bouncing around. Yeah, I'm going to wait you know? for a better pause screen, and then we can talk about his design. Bugs Bunny vibe. Mm. Pardon the intrusion. <laughs> Pardon the intrusion. Ah, yes. Amber resin. Delightfully nutty with a hint of squid ink. There you go. Perfect pause screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at him. Look, look at, at him. him. Awesome. Look at that little fella. He's a very confident little squirrel. He look, uh, the design is excellent. I, yeah. It's so good. So fucking exuberant of characteristics. He's immediately yes. like eye-catching and engaging. It's just like, what is this guy's deal? Holy shit. But yeah, uh, Pro He's ZD being the, the voice does a phenomenal job. It fits <laughs> right in. I, you, 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 uh, have you, you've got it right. You've got the part. Yes, that's in have here. You got it. Yes, we will likely <laughs> come across it in this stream. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love the voice. It's fantastic. 
and it fits him yeah. very well. Yes. <clears throat> Again, easy foil for Kratos. Just the the fact he's just highlighted like it's kind of a nice taste. This thing and then offers it back, and Kratos is like, "The fuck? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Lick it? I'm not going to do that. Lick it. Lick the no. nut. No. Not one for gastronomic expiration. I see. Wait. <laughs> if you're Raditz Hosker. Why are you so different when we summon you for help? It's a long story. But you are correct. I am indeed Ratatosker. The one you know as Ratatosker is merely one of my spectral aspects. And the particularly nasty one at that. I consider him so far removed from myself that he's practically a different person. Fun fact, if you're ever in trouble with your parents, this excuse works 100% of the time. Give it a try. You won't regret it. Well, that you met a different version of me. My spectral Absolutely. Self. That wasn't yeah. that wasn't me. You see. Oh no no no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Bitter, would you like to come out and see your friends? Fuck off! I'm busy. <laughs> I suppose. You see the little reaction he had, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> suppose that was to be expected. Anyway, <clears throat> now that I polished off all this. Fucking Kratos just like, what is this? Why do I have to deal with this shit all the time? Brethren <laughs> for you, would you like the seed back? It is the seed. Indeed. A seed of Yggdrasil, to be precise. <sighs> Since my dwarven tenants performed their little reconfiguration, you'll need seeds like these to open up new destinations on my tree. <laughs> Your tree, huh? Yes, my tree. He I feel like he says that with a little bit of pride because he takes care of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's mine. Here. How many world trees do you Let have? Let me show you. Clearly you have important matters afoot. Yeah, so uh, something happened here. Uh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. The starting dominance. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps as we travel, yeah, we that one happened. The tale shows up at someone visit. else's world tree. He poses, but uses <laughs> to elaborate. <laughs> okay, okay, it's your no. I gotta go T pose on Odin. Sure, I can. Oh yeah, I threw this in because I didn't think this was possible. You remember this puzzle, right, Mel? Friggy, I don't uh, know. Uh, yeah, there's a line of dialogue from Amir where he's like, oh, uh, you can't get it from down here, go up, you know? And then when you get it, Kratos is like, good eye for noting that there's a, there's a platform there. But I got it from down here. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, you can? Oh, well, yeah, okay. if I just roll it back, I, I was surprised. I, I only did it for a meme just to, like, try it out. But, like, look at the distance on the, uh, the grab. Perhaps as we travel, you can tell me the tale of your prior visit to the land of the elves. Sure I can. Be like, I got it at the top of it, too. Nice. Well, it's not even. <laughs> I don't think it was supposed to happen. Like, yeah, no, like it's like, I I would not have expected that to work. Uh, because yeah, it's like I said, there's dialogue for not getting it from this direction. But oh well, I guess I don't need that dialogue. I was expecting it to be like, oh, nice, yeah. something from Mimia, but no, it's just I don't think. I mean, it's... you you have a tendency to do things like they're not supposed to, so that's fine. That uh, yeah, the 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 the. the the Alfheim Desert one, I think that was pretty yeah. great. Like, <laughs> I I accessed the loot for completing a whole area before yeah, the area. Just, like, just the opposite way. I was just like, <laughs> oh, cool, loot. Then people were like, I don't think you're supposed to be here. <laughs> nope. <That's laughs> that was the last, last room. Bother to return. One realm to Whoa, what's going on here? Who's fucking I don't around? Know. What's going on here, Mark? Yeah, Mark. <laughs> I, I am totally. I do not even have the watch together window select. Sure. Freya never. Well, one hundred percent off me this video. time, guys. I swear. I know. I assumed the fate of his own realm took precedence. Wait, Freya's brother? Yes. Cut from a different cloth, that one. Freya's brother. How was he involved? Long ago, Freya of the Vanir traveled to Alfheim where he discovered a once beautiful land devastated by war. Using his divine powers, he set about cultivating a tenuous peace among the elves. Did you mention how that peace fell apart as soon as he left? I was getting to it. You hear that? Oh, no. That's enough, please. You don't need to do this. We don't want to hurt you. No. The light. Oh. Oh. There are. <laughs> I have. 
There, there are some additional things. I, there are things I'm skipping over in this that we are going mm -hmm. to raise at another time. Don't you worry. There, there are, oh, okay. Once All we right. get far enough in this, I'll start going back in terms of comparing lines or some oh, stuff. Good. But also, just other plans. We're on a Ragnarok right now. It's going to take a while. Uh, it's going to be at least two weeks. So, buckle in, buckaroos. Seeing the Lake of Souls so volatile. Aye. Fimple winter, you reckon? Of course, it's making the light unstable. So um, it's worth mentioning, though, of course, that you got a distinct vibe there. When Mimir was telling the story of Freya, it was quite positive and happy and wholesome. And, and it yeah. says that Freya is a pretty awesome dude. He used his power to make peace. And Tyr is, like, super cynical about it. Like, yeah, do you tell him what happened next? Like, gee. Um, <laughs> what's cool is we get another a telling of how... Freya made that piece at a different point in the game. I'm not sure it'll be in this playthrough because that's part of a um a side mission, I think, right? It's with Freya explaining it. Uh, I think she yeah, does it all the so. time, actually. Well, that's the Lake of Souls. Yes. After the creation of the Nine Realms, fallen souls began to gather down in those waters. When the elves discovered its potential, they built this temple to harness that energy. A smashing success, to say the least. Many of them became addicted to their newfound power. And thus, the Light Elves were born. Speaking of Light Elves... Let me try talking to them again. They Best may... just to let these two do their thing, brother. More Light Elves ahead. I'll handle this. Uh, maybe that's not a great idea. Oh there, friends! Salutations! We mean you no harm. Here, Salutations. get back! What I think is funny about that clip is it makes it look like Tia's like, hello everybody, we're friends, then Atreus just shoots one in the chest. <laughs> like, the thing no, is, um, you fucked it up. <laughs> I, I thought I, I was debating whether I should leave it in, but it's just like they've already fired like a big old projectile at Atreus yeah. at that point. I suppose I'll leave you two. Wow. Violent. Here they come. Do what you must. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious what's happened over time there with uh, Mr. Yeah. Tia. Yeah. And this Tia's is a true. comparison of the music that plays when you're in Alfheim in the first game to the second game. Feel like it's relatively suitable for dark versus light. Yeah, yeah. Hey Theo, are you okay? There's quiet. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Just stop screaming. Hit the button. Yeah, I'm good. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Say, um, well, anybody here, do you feel, I think, well, Metal, you might be the only person I can ask right now, but soundtrack okay. comparison of the first to second? Oh, I mean, I think I'll go with the second one. I think I would too. Personally. Uh, I mean, they're both pretty darn great, but I don't know, Ragnarok's one has, uh, has like something that's just like, mm, even better. I think he, um, as someone who's not musically trained, it feels like there's more layers and detail to the Ragnarok soundtrack and variety, but that would make sense considering he's built upon his 2018 soundtrack. That's what I was going to say. It feels like he's developed uh, a lot of the ideas that he had in the original, in, well, in 2018. Yeah. And uh, as was mentioned here, yeah, the Boulder theme is fucking awesome and is not present in this, obviously. Of course. At least I don't think it is. It might be, for all I know. I don't remember it. I don't remember it either.
Yeah, I haven't even heard that part. Oh, it's so fucking good. I remember, awesome. <laughs> um, I remember gushing over this when I was watching it with Rags because I noticed it then. Uh, where it's the war part, the 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 light elf theme is going going hard, and it's clashing with the dark elf one because it's the big war, and then fucking Kratos' theme comes in like that. It's yeah. Like, oh, or rather, just the vocals. It, uh, such a big old combination. I don't, I, just yeah. I don't understand. This is the, the Alfheim theme. It's not exactly going to be like... How do I say this? Like, it's not as important as many other themes. Like, wh what's kind of nuts is the the lower strings sound like they're playing almost a totally different song than the upper strings. Like, the, the kind of violins and violas are playing one thing and the cellos and basses are playing something else. But it, it fits well enough because... A, it, it's almost like the the higher end stuff is almost exactly double time, so it fits with the rhythm of the slower, deeper stuff that sounds like the kind of I don't know dark elf themes that they're bringing into the music. Well, and I tried to sort of represent it kind of visually, but the more you go through the game, the faster and heavier the light elf theme gets, which to me is indicative of how the dark elves become more important as you go along. By the end, because you're destroying all the light crystals and you're not exactly creating a balance or anything, but the Dark Elves sees an opportunity to attack when you've gone through and yeah. hit the Light Elves yourselves, which, I don't know, it just seems kind of genius, very much inspired, and uh, for anybody who's like, why are you attacking uh, Rings of Power randomly? It's like, same creator, same guy who made this yeah, made the, Rings of Power yeah. same composer. I don't feel like I'm attacking him so much as highlighting, he just... Look at the it... power he has, why? <laughs> like... Yeah. Why didn't was, he? Must have been working him on them both at the same time. Surely, there's a good chance that would, that would be the case. Yeah, because yeah. it would have been a long, long bit of work. Uh, and I don't know. It just feels like Rings of Power yeah. wasn't as um, maybe. Maybe if we were to listen to Rings of Power over and over again and look at everything, it was part of it is there's no storytelling shit to to even interpret a lot of the time yeah. because Rings of Power is so fucking dull and well, thin. Because that's the thing it's like what what are the other creatives involved with the project giving him to write the score around like what what what's the inspiration that the music composer is given in order to you know like help have his music evoke the correct emotion for the scene that's going on at the time and if they're just like I don't know, um, like the, this Aragorn looking guy like he's Sauron but we're not going to say he's Sauron right away but he's mysterious Okay. It's like someone says, like he must have known he could waste his time on Rings of Power. And it's like I don't know, man. He might have been. He might have thought it was it was worthwhile, but, but like I guess maybe not. it was. Like I said, maybe it was just a paycheck. Maybe he's a Lord of the Rings fan. No, maybe. he would have done better if he was a Lord of the Rings fan. No. Well, I mean, that's if it's right? both of those things alone, it's like okay, Amazon is going to give you a paycheck in order to write music for Lord of the Rings on paper. Like when you're in the negotiation for that, you've got to be thinking. Well, I mean, I've got to do it, right? Maybe he only <laughs> performed as much as they were going to give him. Like, so maybe they gave him enough to do it, but it wasn't like, oh, they're not really paying me that much. So, you know, you get what you give sort of thing. Maybe well, he sorry. didn't like the idea that they were doing Lord of the Rings like well, this. Well, I think they, he, he was actually pretty pro Rings of Power. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he defended it pretty vehemently. Uh, vehement. Words, you know which one I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on uh, on social yeah. media, I think. Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, that kind of you can bring the argument then to the conscious and unconscious. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, you could say that you you gave everything you had for Rings of Power, but us just listening to the music that you created for both of those things. Let's put it this way. <laughs> clearly, oh, yeah, you were right. more inspired uh, while making Dan one of them. <laughs> To stand from a bit more, it may well have just been that the time constraints for Rings of Power, <laughs> or the the uh, how involved he was in like the production itself, might be a factor. I know that um, Marty O'Donnell was in house for Halo, which he felt made it uh, easier for him to understand what the uh, 
what the game was about, like what the moments would be and sort of working with the developers to ensure that the music was really complementing the game. I I mean, he isn't in-house for Santa Monica, uh, but maybe they they just, maybe how they allowed him to work was just better for him. Yeah, to maybe. create music that was more uh, deeply connected to the storytelling. On top of other things, like that there was a story for him to actually latch onto characters, thematic through lines. Well, that's, you know, there's inspiration that. available to him that may well not have been present at all. This might I be... Mean, um... I, I wouldn't fault you for not being able to identify in Rings of Power. I, I obviously I went through all of Rings of Power twice uh, to make sure that we had covers I thought was very much accurate, and so you mm -hmm. know I'm saying this not just from casual perspective, but when you're like, oh, make a theme for when they second time visit Altheim. It's like, well, first thing he does is look at the old one and see if it's a matter of taking that one and adding to it or changing it according to what you think the vibe is of this one. Dark and light is already offering you a big old chance in terms of how you can represent that in the in the music. Secondly, it's like, what are the events? Like, well, they're going through this place and gradually destroying the light elves' control over it because they need to get access to the light and that there's loads of locked doors on it, and so you're destroying the crystals. So I feel like the music gets gradually more chaotic as it progresses. And then, of course, this big war at the end as you're trying to leave. It's like this pretty easy for him to then clash the two together and to involve other themes he's got going in the in the song already. Meanwhile, it's like, make a theme for the dwarves. It's like, okay. In Rings of Power, so it's like, make a theme for the dwarves. It's like, what, what have I got to work with? It's like, well... Oh, uh, they they mine. Um, <laughs> uh, is is it kind of difficult actually? Because like the whole plot line is bizarre for any character you choose in Rings of Power, and it's just like, what are you what are you gonna do? And it's like, because the funny thing is, I picked that one because I actually kind of like the dwarven theme he had in in Rings of Power, but not for any other reason than it's like, oh, I kind of like the sound. I can't really speak to it much more than that, and I'm sure he yeah. could. He, I'm sure he'd have more to say about it, considering he composed it. But I don't know. It just from a from a spectator, it just seems like you have so much more to work with to inspire musical choices from the story in this than you would in Rings of Power. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, it feels like he had more to say through his music here. Yeah. And as was yeah, mentioned in chat, um, way more. there is a song that was made by him and, uh, I want to say Hoysia? Hoysia? Is a, is a, is a, Hoysier? Hoysier, maybe, yeah. He's a big old artist. Um, Blood Upon the Snow, which is supposed to be like a main song for this game. And if you, you can watch a video of them talking about it and they... They sound incredibly invested in what the song means and this mm -hmm. game. And here we Pretty bitchin'. Go. Yeah. Do you think there's any way to stop the elves from fighting each other? If I pray or not abandon the realm, a lasting peace may have formed. But now... Can we really place all the blame on Freya? This war started long before his arrival. But he had the power to heal this land and end the war, did he not? He made his choice. The wrong one. For Alfheim, perhaps. But not necessarily for him. Well... I suppose we're all entitled to walk our own paths, regardless of where they end. What's wrong? <laughs> so yeah, just uh, big words from Tyr condemning the yeah. shit out of Freya for not doing everything he could to maintain a peace in Alfheim. Pretty straightforward. He, he, he considers himself quite the diplomat. He doesn't like that other people aren't taking more action to cause peace where they can. Perhaps yep. there is another interpretation of that down the line. Who knows? I say this because there are still several people in chat being like, wait, have they not played the game? It's like, yeah, we, played, we, we played it, we got it. Yeah, no so problem. We played the game. No I played it twice. We're consciously <laughs> not talking about stuff that happens later on. Yes. I could hear Mother and son, but I can't anymore. United by forces older than Odin himself. She is at peace, Atreus. I hope so. When Father went inside the light, he said You went he... inside the light of Alfheim? Yes. <laughs> and yet here you stand, of sound mind and decidedly not incinerated. You must tell me, Kratos, what did you see? That memory. Oof. Greek gods are built. You different. must tell me, Kratos, what did you yeah. see? Oh. Tell me more. It's, uh, it's perfectly reasonable curiosity to have from any character, okay? Perfectly reasonable. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and I like that he says that memory is for me alone as well. Yep. Yeah. Yes. But I felt only moments pass. 
Oh, huh? Wait! Come back! No! No! What have you done? Why did you do that? I saved you! You were trapped in there! I waited and I waited, but you wouldn't come out! So I pulled you out! Boy! I was gone only- So badass! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck, yeah, you're Kratos' kid, Bones. all right? <laughs> yeah. No! You've been gone a long, <coughs> long time. I didn't know what to do. You left me here again. <coughs> Why don't you care? <sighs> just going to say I love the first game as well. <laughs> yeah. Stacks of elf bodies. You're just like, <laughs> oh, fuck. That's impossible. The reason I'm showing this, though, is so you can see what happened, what Kratos said at the time, and now listen to what Kratos remembers it as. You should go before they come back. I hope you got what you needed. Didn't feel like moments to me. I was trapped. Atreus overcame great odds to save me. One could but only imagine. Yep. Well then. Ripped into him at the time because he didn't understand what was happening, but now yep. make sure to recant it as it was, which is you saved me. So... Yep. It's just criticism, a chore right. motherfucker, okay? He surely is, huh? Groa's triptych awaits. So, did you ever meet Groa? Many times. But she was plagued by constant visions, so... Conversation was... Difficult, to say the least. Your theme? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know mother's voice better than anyone. It was her. Oh, you have been she there. Right. Gone, boy. Speak no more of this. Fine. Father, she's she's gone. Does sometimes I feel like, like poetry so and good. rhymes. Sometimes the scenes speak for themselves, eh? Like the yeah, just, yeah. Uh, pretty makes you appreciate powerful. that this isn't a video game. This isn't a video game. No, I say it makes you appreciate that this is in a video game. Oh yeah, I'd love this level of storytelling. This level, yeah. it would be nice to have this level of storytelling in our fucking films. But oh yeah. well, <laughs> that would be something. It, it's oh, almost like, and why we get they, that next cutscene and character interaction ready for you? How about you play this fun video game? Exactly. Yeah, and this, the the keep moving line probably more addressing himself there. I, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> Aye, the end of everything. So this is it. There's nothing we can do to stop it. There must be a way. Why else is this hidden? Look, here. This is what we saw. It's you, fighting in Ragnarok. No, I don't. I can't. What's this then? That's new. Asgard is destroyed? The other realms thrive? And Odin dies. Shit. 
she lied. Roa lied? Of course she did. <laughs> Odin's working off a false prophecy. <laughs> so then, we can win Ragnarok. We can beat Odin. We are not present in any of this. But that was Tyr leading the charge against Asgard. Plus, Hell's army was there. And the elves. Champion. Okay. Whoever that is, doesn't matter. But for the first time, we know something Odin doesn't. We just saw we can win. Tyr? I won't allow prophecy to define my choices. But, but we just saw No, you. Atreus. This is wrong. Come. There is much to discuss. <laughs> so yeah, Tia's not taken the information well that he will have to lead a war. That's that's the mm -hmm. take on that scene. That is the read. That is yep. That is, yep. Nothing else Pretty to see reasonable. Here. He, he does not one for violence. He doesn't want to be involved in wars, and he's certainly not keen on just going blindly and following prophecy. Makes a lot of sense. Mm hmm. Enough. I. It's gonna be okay. For anybody who, because I feel like the context lacking here, he's dragging this person this way because they have embedded in their clothing crystals that when uh, near, uh, like, created elements of this temple create bridges. So he's using it as a light source to create the bridge. That's what's happening here. Okay, Tyr, you've seen what is to come. I told you I would not follow you to war, and yet here I am dragging an innocent, innocent. elf and marching towards the destruction of Asgard. What choice do we have? There is always a choice. I will oh, not man. lead you to war. <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting line. Yeah. <laughs> it's an incredibly interesting line. I feel like we're going to see that line again much later in this uh, breakdown. Mm -hmm. I won't. I'm not that god anymore. I don't want to fight. But with you three, there is no avoiding it. Your path leads to countless deaths unimaginable pain and suffering. Agreed. Oh. There's just more and more references. Kratos is just fucking Mrs. Faye. Big time. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you are ever in need of my services and I am not present, I have installed these handy chimes for you to notify me. Simply throw your axe and strike the chimes and I will attend to your needs. Would you care to take a practice throw? <laughs> a magnificent throw, Master Kratos. Truly a seasoned pro. Very well. You know how to reach me now. What else is there? Perhaps there was some confusion. This is for calling me out here, not for when I am here. Do you just like hearing the sound of the chime? I suppose they do sound very pretty. Master Kratos, this feels very uncharacteristic of you, but if you enjoy the pretty chimes that much, I will allow you to indulge. Yes, you've done it. Well, bro. <laughs> ah, the sound of the chimes is not unpainful at this distance, so perhaps you could not. Already here, as it were. So... I see you're deliberately attempting to push me into some sort of emotional outburst, aren't you? Well, I'm not so easily swayed, my good man. Stop with your stupid time! 
Oh dear. I'm sorry. It's very good. Oh dear. Send the branches up here while Neatho chews the roots from below to prevent awesome. overgrowth. A delicate balance. So they're friendly? Well, they're not nearly so affable as myself, but there's no reason to expect hostility so long as they're left in peace. Neithog is a stern matriarch, as protective of her offspring as she is determined to teach them proper discipline. That sounds... familiar. Hmm. You know what he's putting in that so-called stew of his, don't you? Vegetables! Fucking vegetables! From out of the dirt! That just ain't right. <laughs> that just oh, ain't careful. right. Careful. <clears throat> Thank you. Look at that. Our table is bigger. Yeah. Mm. Enjoy. Enjoy, my friends. Yeah. We'll see about that. Here you are, a meal fit for a champion. Enough. I said we would speak no more of that. Yes, of course. Didn't mean to offend. Um, genuinely a straight-faced analysis you could possibly give of this scene with this being all the context you have. That's a really strange thing for him to say. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought you weren't uh, keen on the prophecy stuff and leading into war, and like, that's weird. Like, I get that you want to maybe give him a sense of Right about his uh, potential future of being someone who's going to be important and strong and stuff, but you know, Tia seemed to understand better than anybody that we should be avoiding that outcome. He seems very anti-war, and that would be the context for him being a champion. So, bit of a weird thing to say. Uh, I'm not offended. It's just a word. The word that clouds your judgment. So, you really don't think it means anything? After the journey Mom sent us on? Everything we saw in Jotunheim? What was it all for? Don't you ever think about that? Every day. But I cannot believe her purpose was to inspire you to take foolish risks. But what if the giants are counting on me? What giants? I am counting on you. To be safe. To be smart. But Use the judgment of a man and not of a child. But what if Loki going to Ironwood is the only way that- you Oh, Atreus. My son. And nothing more. Do you catch in the background when he says you are my son, Brock nods. Like mm -hmm. his, you know, true man. You know, and yeah. Uh, yeah, this this is better explained if I included all dialogue. I haven't, but there's every time Atreus mentions the fate of Loki or Loki's job or what Loki's supposed to do, Kratos gets increasingly fucking annoyed. Yeah, it's like, not yeah, a fan he doesn't of want that. Him chasing that. He doesn't want him chasing that. I'm not hungry anymore. Forgive me, Kratos. My words were chosen carelessly. You really should eat. Some people swear by it. On almost a daily basis. I just don't Might understand. Even confuse you that Why is there all this stuff here, about Loki and, you know, and, and the champion? And I oh yeah, it's worth mentioning if anyone doesn't know that the dwarves can teleport. <laughs> um, so yeah, Sindri just appearing so what, here. like. So the, the way that we see him arriving... But we don't see him arriving, you know. Yeah, like if... It's once once the player, <laughs> well, once once okay. uh, Atreus walks in front of the, you know, our view. That's yeah. when they have him arrive. Yeah, we can't see yeah. him arrive. Mm -hmm. You really should eat. Yeah. <laughs> Some people it's swear really great. by it on almost a daily basis. I just don't understand. Why is there all this stuff about Loki and and the champion and Ironwood if none of it's real? He's just so. Uh! Mind if I give you the best advice you've heard all day, and possibly ever? 
sleep. That's when all the troubles of your mind work themselves out. Sure. Fine. Sleep? Sounds great. I mean it. I do too. Get out of here, Heidi. Already gone. Yeah, like I know it's kind of funny, but it's a really big deal that he would put his hand on his shoulder. That yeah, character, yeah. How much he's trying to get through to him. Yeah. The way he moved away with his hand, almost like it's contaminated, right? He's like, gotta go sort this out now. Anyone who yeah. ever said Sindri being a germaphobe is pointless. Well. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's not get sick. That's the point. Come on, we all know that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. Seatbelts on, chat. Seatbelts, uh, everyone. <laughs> Just knowing we're gods makes me feel so much stronger. Where mm. am I? It's all you ever talk about, over and over. Do something about it or shut up or it. Little people's little We're problems. We're sick of hearing about little people's little problems. Memories. And not nice ones. You broke the gate! That was our only way to Yonan! What do you want? Let's go! Truma! I don't understand! Whatever. 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 Hey! Don't run whatever. off! Whatever. Can you tell me whatever. where I am? Whatever. 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 You should pay for what he said about mother. Oh. <laughs> But we're God. We can do whatever this. we want. Please, please wait. Please. Please stop. Someone just said it's so weird hearing his young voice. So well, I, I think you can find this on my stream. When I started up and you first hear Atreus, I think someone in chat was like, Ugh, not a fan of uh, older Atreus voice. Then after like 10 minutes, they're like, no, it's fine, actually. <laughs> bring <laughs> like, it back. Bring it back. <laughs> it's just like a matter of like, what the hell? That's not Atreus. Like, no, yeah, that's how voices work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, what yeah. <laughs> People yeah. go through puberty. It's weird. I feel like this whatever part is also almost a little bit of a, of a meta joke from the devs, you think? Oh, the whatever that, part? Yeah, yeah because definitely. it happens in, during that section so many times. <laughs> it's a, I, I would argue it's a part of what's not very good about that a section. It's, it's a couple mm -hmm. of things that aren't working, but one of them is that he keeps <laughs> fucking saying whatever, whatever. The whole point is, in that moment in the game, when Kratos tells you to shoot things, he's like, I don't, even, I don't have to listen to you, you know? So they're like, mm. I know, we'll make him say, whatever, I, I get, yeah, I'll shoot, you know, whatever. But you end up having him fucking say whatever like 10,000 times. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it, many it times. It's this preteen dick arc. <laughs> um, so yeah, it feels like they're kind of referencing it there. A self-roast, as, as someone put it, yeah. And this is the, uh, yeah. the Jotunheim track. Oh, and it's worth mentioning, sorry for people who aren't following, he, we do get told what the mechanics are, but it's basically as simple as when giants sleep, they're able to essentially teleport to places that they focus on. Mm. Um, bear in mind, as far as we know, he is the only giant that's left. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of Jormungandr, I suppose. The only humanoid giant. Yeah. Yeah, it goes far as saying it's pretty fairy tale -y. <laughs> Yep. We have to 
Yeah, if humanoid is two legs and two arms, technically I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll count you. We're inclusive. I'm not. I'm not. Don't include me. I don't think I noticed that sound, uh, that music at all while I was playing. I don't know why. What I will Pretty say is that so some people are asking neat. how I how I did this. It's as simple as going from the soundtrack and putting in where I like estimating where I think a lot of the tracks ended up. But um, to be fair, this isn't necessarily the track that plays here. It's just a place I thought would be suitable to show off. Yeah, yeah. The Yoten yeah. one. For example, the Freya one that I did at the beginning, that was a match of one-to-one -to, -one to finding where it actually fits. But uh, this one, yeah, I think you can play the game in such a way that it just only plays the music, and that's how you can do it that way. But I didn't play it that way. I'm not finished with it yet. <gasps> ah! Ah! Pain is made from the bark of the ironwood trees. They absorb the memories of the forest so that the paint remembers too. Memories of the past. Of the future. I'd hate to get blood on it. What's wrong? I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. Huh. You look weirder than I imagined. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> um, was that mean? Kind of. Damn it. I'm already messing this up. <laughs> it's just you're the first person that I've talked to in a very long time. And weird can be good. Uh, thanks. I'm Angoboda. You must have a lot of questions. Uh, yeah. Where Follow are me. We? And so Angry Boat is introduced. Is everyone okay? Hello. Is everyone all right? I'm fine. You're I'm alive? Fine. You yeah, have I'm a heart fine. attack? I don't know. I honestly didn't have any issue. <laughs> <laughs> what issue might a person have? Oh, well, Theo, you hate everything. You must fucking Take despise Angry <laughs> Boda. <laughs> Theo, tell us about why Angry Boda is evil. Um, evil? <laughs> well, I don't know. Ah, I well, sincerely don't know. Well, um, I do know, but I... You know, I don't want to be uncharitable, you know? Well, yeah, let's start with the most charitable and, I think, accurate arguments. Man, this part is boring. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, rather dull. We don't get a lot of developments over the time that we have. I will, of course, have included the developments, and we're going to talk about them. But it takes a while to get it through this section. A yeah. long time. This section is it's just too long. It achieves things for the story, but the amount of time it takes to achieve them is... It's drawn out. It's a long fucking section. It's dude. a long section. Yeah. And it's, it's a section that includes a lot of um, <clears throat> the sort of annoying low interaction kind of gameplay scenarios, right? Go like there a fruit and, from a and tree. That fruit. And you do that. Yeah. And now get back on the yak and then go over to the other one and grab it. Like it's, it's, uh, it breaks the loop, like the core gameplay loop for a while. And if you're going to be breaking a core gameplay loop, you need to do it. Uh, ease us into it a little better. Like having Kratos pick a flower once in God of War twenty eighteen is kind of funny, right? It's, uh, you don't you don't have to fucking people still blew their minds at that. They were like, how could you how could you call this a God of War game? It's like it happens in like for one minute. He just goes and grabs a flower. It's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, you're gonna make it, especially if you know about that <laughs> deleted deed. Dare I say of what Christopher Judge says while doing it? It's funny, but uh, yeah, I don't doing even know about that. I need to check that out. Yeah. Well, okay. So I mean. They're recording that scene, and she says, "Go get me some lambs cress." And he says, uh -huh. "All right." Like starts leaving, walking out, and Chris just says, "Lambs cress, the fucking god of war." 
<laughs> it's really funny. It's brilliant. Um, the problem here is that, like, as much as I can argue, we draw a decent chunk out of this. I can't justify a movie's worth of time with what we get out of yeah. this. That's ridiculous. Well, yeah, because this that's like one is like or two, two to three hours, right? It takes. It takes. I want to say I'm trying to be years. fair. <laughs> Seven. I think the average person who's rushing through it, it'll be an hour and a half. But if you Jesus. try to collect everything, it'll be two hours. I mean, and for me, it might have yeah. just been the difficulty I was playing on that, like, I, time has no meaning as far as, like, amount of time I spent in each area. But <laughs> this was the first place where one of the kind of Joss Whedon-esque humor lines, like MCU things happened at, wow. at a particularly Pretty difficult good. battle. Well, you know, I'll tell you why. Because when you die... The patter between the characters when you're fighting, it's not dynamic, it's canned. So I heard, hey, huh, maybe I'm just lucky. Now, you're not lucky. Maybe you're just Loki about 500 fucking times. I died a lot in that battle. And every single time she says it right See, away. Okay, uh, I completely like, agree Aw. with you, but I will say, I'm sorry, what is the line in Avengers that is like that? You know, like no, we, okay. No, I'm not saying it's something that Joss Whedon would uh, write. No, I'm saying to it's be fair, something who I know it came across that way. I wasn't even defending Joss Whedon; I was defending Avengers because people are like, "Ugh, oh, Marvel humor." It's like there's loads of Marvel movies with really good humor. What do you mean? Well, I mean, yeah, I know, and like, you know, honestly, that line hearing it once isn't terrible. Like, it's yeah, a little bit funny, I guess. If yeah. it's like maybe I, I'm just lucky. It's like your name kind of rhymes with the word lucky, sure. But when you hear it more than ten times, honestly, it's just like, oh god, Angry Boda, please stop. Yeah, <laughs> For the yeah. The, the dialogue between them isn't exact. It's like some of the weakest any two characters have as an interaction. Like when you have, because mm -hmm. I think this, I just think this is the case. When you have a, a small section with Atreus and Sindri, it's a bit of a gamble. You don't have Kratos. It's like, so how is this going to work? And it's like, well. Is Sindri developed enough and is Atreus developed enough to keep us going for the amount of time they're going to cost us? And I think they were successful. We learned mm -hmm. quite a decent bit about Atreus' goals, what, uh, how he feels about Sindri and vice versa, and then something about Sindri and Brock and more about how they've been doing this for a while. And we got Freya. So like, that, was, that was pretty solid. But, you know, there is a, a, an amount of time that that scene could take where eventually people would be like, ugh, this is going on a little too long. Where's my Kratos? Give me back my yeah. Kratos. And I will say... <laughs> When you get Kratos back after Ironwood, it is one of the most like yes, like yes, thank good. fuck. But um, I wouldn't justify that in any way, shape, or form as a sort of like oh, it's good for that yeah. feeling. It's like no, that's just a relief of this being it's, over. It's a relief. Uh, was, uh, I, I gotta I say playing, though, I I was impressed with how much I enjoyed playing as Atreus. I I didn't think it would be as much fun as it was. A lot I of people that. hate playing as Atreus. Or something after I really that. see. I, I I didn't hate it. I don't I think it it's hate worthy. I think it's just no. It's, not perfectly fine. Some, the, the combat oh, is you not don't have as many options as when you're playing as Kratos. But yeah, like, it's, it's, sure. not, it's, it's not like terrible. Kratos. I still think he's better than like playing as Ellie in Last of Us, and I don't even mean Last of Us Two. I'm talking about the both. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you know, he's watch. comparable because they're both bow users, but like uh, with some extra abilities and melee attacks. But I still feel like there's more going on for him than there, there was for her. The fact that he has or, a dedicated skill tree for his abilities that you can develop mm. over the course of his sections. And it has a bit of crossover with the skill tree that, like, you can select abilities that are the player character Atreus abilities that carry over to when he's the companion character for Kratos, too, like the yeah. aggression ones and stuff. And, and I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, oh, that was neat. If you're going to make us play as a thin and more dull version of uh, Kratos, with slightly different mechanics, like the range shit going on, but it's, I don't know if it's different enough that you can't do it for too long... You're going to have to be careful. We can only sustain so much yeah. before we're like, why am I not playing as Kratos? Give me back. And this, by the, the way, Freya I, section, right? the I'm Freya trying... section did it fine. Yeah, the Freya section was kind of the model, I think, for how to go about it, especially the, let's call it the fourth Atreus section, I think is probably a pretty solid one as well. But uh, mm -hmm. second and third, I think uh, they're the ones that are targeted the most for taking too long. Third, by a much lesser extent, this one is hardcore hated by everybody. Yeah, this this one has like two, one or two places where it was like, oh, now we're going back, right? And it's like, nope, we're still going. No, it's like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah uh, you can, like, you can see that. And even the second right? playthrough, I was like, okay, we're done here now, right? And it's like, oh, no, wait, this is whole other section still. Fuck. <laughs> me and Mel streams. Me out, where does the third Atreus scene take place? Is uh, well, the... I can type it for now. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, while I, I, I get it depends on what you choose to do. 
If, uh, if you tell me it's a spoiler, I know. <laughs> I mean, um, it's it's technically a spoiler. It's just, I, I'd like the idea of trying to maintain some level of build-up for people who haven't played this before, you know? And who are listening to this. We can... Mm -hmm. uh, for like, uh, the frustration of this section yeah, in terms point. of how long it is is alleviated by just splitting it in half. Or threes. Yeah, I, I, sure. uh, I have finished or... my opinion on this. It is split into threes, delete one, and keep two, and refine the two uh, with pieces okay. of one. So we have this this done in two, and I think the first one should have happened uh, really early on, and you can't tell whether or not it was actually just all a dream. Uh, right. And oh, then good, the second idea, one, yeah. confirm at the beginning, this ain't a fucking dream, this is a thing you can do, I'm angry about it, blah blah blah, get all the information out that we, we had, but, you know, built on the, the first one that he thought maybe wasn't real. Uh, spending nearly two hours here is unacceptable, I'm sorry. <laughs> like it's yeah, it's way too long. Too long, too boring, and yeah, uh, I think there was three significant moments that are all separated by about 20 to 30 minutes in my stream where I was just like, ah, there we go, that's the natural end, back to Kratos, yeah. it's like, no. Yeah, and even if you, if you, as we already said, it's, even when you rush through it, you already know what's going to happen. It still takes over an hour. Well, yes. consider uh, the first time you control Atreus when you're going to meet Freya, right? That is a very interesting character interaction that the player is legitimately excited to get to and yes. see. Mm -hmm. So when you don't really have an idea of where things are going, it makes it a lot more difficult for you to sit through what would be generally considered less engaging gameplay in order to get there well yeah you're not quite sure where it's all leading to because you just don't know much about angra boda like and, and what what her role is in the story whereas yeah like with Frey, you know exactly like what's happening there and, and you, um, just because you know who she is you can sick. actually sort of estimate and guess as to how she'll respond but like here you don't know angra boda yet like you don't really there's not much to speculate on really you're just kind of waiting to see what happens and hoping that it will be worthwhile, or rather worth the time that you have to spend uh, just doing fairly mundane things in the game to get to those moments. Yeah. Was it the music tries too hard to carry? Allow it to do that, please. Allow it to try too hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need it. I wish the music carried Rings of Power. Oh, yeah. Um, this bit is where I genuinely wonder if they understood that the amount of interactivity given to you here, it just isn't enough to carry it. It's weird that you have... Low interactivity, low, like, chemistry, and low, like, uh, I guess, uh, engagement, like, all at the same time? Like, why would you... If you're going to have, like, a moment where the mechanics are more limited, you might want to have a, a crank up in terms of interaction. That's, that's mm -hmm. you know... But instead, you gave us, like, Atreus, which we do like him, but with a brand new character who's a um, nice girl, that's, like, the whole thing. No offense, we'll get into more of her character in a moment. Uh, it's just that... That's that's what we got. Is if this were uh, Atreus and Sindri in Ironwood, it could probably alleviate a lot of the stresses of a lack of facing because yeah. you can talk more about things we're actually interested in. Throw Brock in, throw whoever. And I know that story wise, that doesn't work anywhere near as well. But of course, I'd be talking about maybe redoing all of this. Right. Like, I wonder. If maybe they thought that it was carried that this section would be carried simply because it's going to reveal a bunch of information about the giants. I think like, so. It was more <laughs> also more relevant than character driven that's what i'm saying about like of all the information we get i think it buys it this is so subjective but i feel like it buys it about 40 minutes at absolute maximum like with with what we get in terms of information that's probably as much as you could have gotten while justifying that amount of time but i think the next person might say like no no 10 minutes and the next person's like i think an hour you know it's it's really difficult to talk about pacing um yeah it's just that it seems to be an incredibly common experience from people that this was horribly paced. There's yeah. no way they couldn't have given you more to do, like, meaningfully to do. There's no way. Or just split it up. Have his have his dreams be these little, almost like intermission segments in between yeah. the Kratos parts. Where a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. Or like, um... Maybe because during the section when you're the, using the yak to get to all of these different locations, it probably would have just been better off to have that be like a big open space that you could explore at your own pace and find like interesting things. Just give just give players a little bit more interactivity. Hmm. Yes, because um... that's very on rails that section. Yeah, when you invest, um, when when you have a game where you are leveling up a character, building their skills, and really starting to invest into a, a particular character then every moment that you have to play the game not as that character that you've invested in it can feel like um 
you feel like uh you you're we're wasting time you know that that's time that i'm not having in a character of, that i've been mm -hmm. yeah and part of it i think i know there's plenty of people who disagree with this but part of what makes it so jarring to me is how strong everything was at first in terms of rich for development like I'm getting so much. You know, uh, it's a decent comparison. We have Tyr as a new character, and he's not exactly the most interesting person on the surface. He seems to be quite passive and afraid and anti-action of a lot of kinds. So it's like, how do we make him interesting? It's like, well, we're going on an adventure to a place where we had an effect many years ago, and we're seeing the results of it with characters like Kratos, Mimir, and Atreus. And then they're telling stories of what they did, and they're getting information back from Tyr about his reactions. Like, we are building Tyr up by attaching him at the hip to all of these characters we love. It's like, that's a really good way to get us on board with a new character. Because um, I, I think I said this on stream, I can't remember, but, um, you know, when Brock first arrives in 2018, I could see people being like, oh, who's this guy? It's always the joke that he's just fucking, you know, rude, okay? But once you spend enough time with any new character, he becomes someone who can help a new character into the game. If we had Brock and one random new character like um, Lundra, right? Is, or is it Lunda? Lunda? Lunda. Um, his interactions with her make her, enough. No, stop. make her easier to start to like because, you know, there's an attachment mm -hmm. there. It's just that, yeah, uh, there's nothing... They made several bad choices here in terms of strategy for getting players to be engaged, dare I say, mentally. This is not... And yeah. to the point where, because this is all the attack. I'm going to start defending this sequence now um, <laughs> because I don't, I don't think it's worthless. The, How uh, dare you? The shitty pacing has gotten it to the point where most people don't even know what happened in Ironwood. They don't. They just. They just Which, want to scrub from their memory. Even though it does achieve some things narratively, it and just doesn't go achieve them. them at a pace that matches yeah. the uh, the rest of the game. That's all. Well, yeah, because of the fact that I'm chopping this up for what I think is the most valuable, we will get. I think around about half an hour of visuals of this place and and dialogue. We have lots to talk about, and that's the stuff mm -hmm. that probably that's that's how much they should have shaved it. But oh well. Yeah. You got that someone well. fight a dogger, that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Where are we going? My mother recorded her visions, or prophecies. Thought you might like to see them. Where are your parents? They're not around. Are they? Hey, I know you have a lot of questions, but not this one. Okay? I'm sorry. Race you across? <laughs> what? Go! Ah, uh, okay! Racist bullshit. She cheats. It's rigged. <laughs> I can slow down. <gasps> Women be cheating. Wonder who he is. So weirdly, I meant to edit in that she beats you on that. I don't know why. I must have deleted that clip. Oh well, she beats you, but she cheats. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she knows the way already. Ahead. She was way ahead. And then you, yeah, like well, she, the cutscene little like thing madness. happens. But yeah, she just gets teleported Well, but there. Atre Atre what Atreus says is true. She says, to the amulet, I think. And he gets there first. And then she says, ah, the top. That's the end. And he's like, wait, what the fuck? No, that, that wasn't the... the then she's already gone. So, yeah, cheat, cheat, cheat. Moral oh, of the story, cheat. don't trust women. No. Very yeah. true. Yeah. Very true. Oh, and it's worth knowing, yeah, the prophecy that says Kratos will die. Atreus has no knowledge of that right now. And this is right. uh, him seeing this panel that was in Jotunheim, but he didn't see it. Wait. No. No. It's not right. That can't be what happens. We got another version of the sun's path. And we're going first person now to try and enhance the panic element. No, no. no. Not anymore, though. No, this isn't real. Ironwood's not real. The Utengar's not real. None of this is real. Hey, hey. Whoa, whoa, you're okay. You're okay. It's all all right. It'll be okay. Look at me. Hey, hey, hey. Calm down. Calm down. It's fine. Just breathe. Hey. Hey, breathe. My dogs are both sniffing my headphones. <laughs> are there tiny other dogs in there? <laughs> yeah. I can hear them. You cannot hide them from me. Let go. They're very confused by the ground. What other dogs are you not telling me about? Okay. 
You're fine. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. No, don't worry about it. It happens to everyone. That happens to everyone? Not the wolf part, but getting scared about your future. That cannot be my future. It says I serve Odin and my father dies. There's just no way. Look, this is the only way things turn out. The sooner you accept that, the better. When she said that on my stream, I was like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's uh, she got triggered by the suggestion that he would alter his future. She seems to have a very different view on this. A very different perspective on prophecy. I will say, it's having Atreus... So, it is really useful in a story to have characters have access to different information. Um, cause then it's just gives you more opportunities for subtext. Up mm -hmm. until this point, we've had the subtext really of Kratos' interactions with Atreus pertaining to like prophecy and everything with something that he knows that Atreus doesn't. Now Atreus knows it, but he knows it, you know, and Kratos doesn't know that he knows. And so like from this point onward, there's a new dynamic to their conversations about, uh, prophecy and what's going to happen in Ragnarok. Cause I mean, you know, it's safe to say he's going to keep this from him. Yeah. Well, that comes up a little bit later, yes. <clears throat> oh, shit. That was mean, too. Look. Just forget about that now. Forget the future. Forget Loki. You're a giant. And... You're clearly coming into some powers that you don't understand yet. Come on, let's take a walk. You can help me with something and I'll teach you. You know, giant stuff. No, I'm good. Come on. It was, uh, funnily enough, I think it was soon oh. after the this section that I checked the map and I was like, uh-oh. There's <laughs> lots of places we haven't gone yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where did you say we were going? We need to collect some fruit. If we follow the river, we should find some. There's flowers over there. Silence. I... okay. <laughs> no, that's what they're called. They only grow in Jotunheim. My mother and I used to take naps in them when my grandma and her fought. It was one of the only places she found peace. Listen, I know we're out here having fun and all, but maybe we should talk about what you saw in the mural. What I saw would never happen. I wouldn't join Odin if it cost me my father. If I learned anything from my mother, it was that these things have a way of coming true, one way or another. I learned from my father, too. Close your heart to it. But I can't. Not for this. Hey, what's this one? I painted that one with grandmother. Minor pet peeve. If you're gonna have him recording a line where in one of his lines he's jumping up and clambering onto something, maybe have that inflect in the voice just a tad. Which sometimes they do, sometimes they do not. Uh, yeah. Trying nice. to remember. Yeah, uh, the one that comes to mind is actually in 2018. It's when uh, he asked Kratos what his powers are and. Kratos pushes on the um the oar to push the boat out, and he goes, "I do not know what the strength that you know." And, and it's just like, "Oh, that's that's neat." Yeah. Um. But yeah, they didn't there. I guess I it's because of the fact there. that you need to call record two versions, right? One where you he didn't climb, and one where he does. Loki, show me the wolf. Not here. We're fighting. <laughs> Feels weird when I change. Like, I'm not in control. Do you need to be? What do you feel when you change? Of uh, course, she'd say that because of her being of destiny. Yeah, I was gonna say like that. Line, we should probably say more. So she's clearly very much like the control of your life is not in your hands. It's in the world's hands, so to speak. Like it's mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's happening already. So she believes like your idea of controlling and deciding is actually bad. You should be more. Um, go on the rails that are set. And, uh, yeah, so the idea that he's like, how do I control the wolf? And she's going to have a very different point of view on how that works. Part of you unleash the wolf with that anger. Maybe you just need to find the part that will guide it? How? 
You can fight with all sorts of emotion in your heart, not just rage. If rage lets it out, another might help you stay you. Which, uh, yeah, from that point on, the wolf becomes your rage mode. And yep. Better you. So obviously the idea here being that you're not going to release it just when you're angry. You'll release it in the hopes that you can defend either yourself or other people. Uh, that's going to play into a lot of the big moments that he brings them out in future. Oh! What's that soul in your knife? The what? The... There's, there's a soul inside your knife. Did you not know that? No. Whose soul? You know, maybe you should keep it where it is until you figure that out. How did... I don't just go around stealing people's souls. Bring the wolf, Loki, but under your control! I have something for you. <laughs> that cut was really awkward. <laughs> I, try, I try and fade them a bit better than that. Uh, something else, by the way, that happened. I thought that the rock skipping thing was so incredibly pointless if all it was going to do is be like, surprise Draugo, ah! Yeah. But, um, turns out, I don't know if you did this battle, you can do it so well that you uh, get a resource. Wait, really? Yeah, you have to nail- I, I thought I was nailing it, especially because it's unclear and the dialogue seems to suggest you are doing it well. If you do it really well, she's like, excellent, or something like that. And it's like, oh, I did it. But I had a curiosity, I was like, am I okay. doing it as best as I can? And then I did it apparently perfectly. It skips all the way over to one of those uh, seashell things and it opens it up and it drops a thing into oh. the water and you can pick it up. Okay. Yes, I, I, I was legit like, oh. That makes more sense. <laughs> like, yeah, I was just bored beyond shit at some point. Like, I just I thought it was silly. Anymore. Like, you wasted my time. <laughs> I don't care about fucking skipping rocks, especially when the controls are hold right trigger, let go of right trigger. It's like, come yeah, on. Yeah, but dude. you don't have any indicator if you're doing better or worse now. Well, really? They, it depends. It gives you uh, one skip, two skips, three skips, four skips, five skips. I think. So the more skips, the better you're doing. I mean, yeah. But I mean, just like, like real uh, life. But you know, so I think it's still cringe. I mean, with the controls. <laughs> it's like... Oh, you can use the bow to hit the shells too. See, I didn't even know that. Yeah, you can. I tried that on my second play because I <clears throat> I saw those shells. I was like, oh, I don't know how to get those because I'm on this yak thing, so I can't shoot. And I was like, oh, I'll probably come back with Kratos or something, which you don't, but... Well. You know, I should have taken that as a lesson that the stone opened them up, but I'm sorry. Not a true gamer. Fake gamer. I knew it. Fake game war. Should I be scared? No. Uh, I, uh, don't have anything for you. If it is true, what do you think I should do? Doesn't matter. There's no changing where you end up. You can try whatever you want to avoid it, but it'll happen anyway. You're telling me nobody has ever changed their fate? Ever? I mean, sure, maybe some details change, but the end point remains the same. It's better to walk your path than to struggle against it. This um better to walk your path and struggle against it. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a, a line about fate that we really <clears> haven't <throat> had of for anybody else so far, and uh, mm -hmm. it's weird because it sounds like it was come out of a bad guy rather than a good guy. But she really does believe this, and we get more on why mm -hmm. soon enough. Yeah, As she talks. She definitely doesn't seem at all frustrated about it. Certainly not. When yeah, she she's almost. A big out. Mm. It feels like it's that's 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 how we live. That's it's nothing yeah. wrong, nothing right. It's all that's just it is. Um, if doesn't seem like something you're excited about. It just means we're coming up to the end. What does that mean? You'll understand once we get there. This way. We're coming up on the Valley of the Fallen. What happened to them? They were tired of living in fear of Asgard. So they hid. Left a pile of corpses to confuse Odin, should he ever find a way into Jotunheim. Where'd they hide? You'll see. Oh. More marbles. Wait, you've seen these before? Not these, but I found a few in Midgar. Where? Inside your mother's murals. <laughs> oh, but that's... There are more out there. What are they? These are the giants. They could stay in Jotunheim, waiting for Odin to find a way in to slaughter them. Or they could hide. My father helped whisper their souls into these, and before he died, he passed them on to me. How they are your responsibility. Are you sure? 
what my mother saw. You're supposed to know what to do with them when the time comes. This is a lot of responsibility. It is. And it's all yours. Hey, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm done. I guess. Now that I've given you those, my part in all this is over. Y you could always come with me. We could fight Odin together. If I was supposed to fight alongside you, I wouldn't disappear from your damn mural halfway through. Something on your mind? Nobody believed this place was real. So yeah, uh, worth mentioning, just that's how extreme her position is on this, that she believes, yeah. like, she's clearly upset by the fact that she doesn't have to do anything else now. When it's like... Which is weird. I... She teed him up for a really solid pickup line. He'd be like, well, what if you do come with me? Um... The, the the obvious conclusion that I think most people would draw is like, wait, but if there's no thing telling you what to do, that's that means you can do anything. Because you can do whatever you want, right? Exactly. Yeah. It seems yeah. that like now I'm I'm free from my destiny's fulfilled. It's done. Anything that happens now, it, it it's all me. It's it's it like I'm I'm finally I that 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 would explain why we why she might be so glad that he arrived. He's like, oh, finally, I'm gonna be free of destiny. You know, I can get out. I can escape. I'm I'm done. Now everything's on me. Uh, someone said she's apparently putting a lot of trust in a kid she just met. So the idea here is that she so fully believes in prophecy that if it said, like, you must cut off your own foot, she'd start doing it. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's to do with her family. They We go into this a little bit more soon enough. But uh, the giants and certainly her portion of it uh, believe so hard in the visions that they would see them and then try their best to make everything about them happen. Um, obviously a very different perspective than a lot of the characters that we're familiar with. And mm -hmm. yeah, she's having this rage sort of of like i'm i'm like worthless i don't have anything to do now that's that's my input yeah done. like what is the I'm purpose now what's my purpose when yeah that's the thing she she may need so some like, pieces put together and maybe a character is going to provide them for her i think i think it's just um you could say it two ways oh what am i gonna do now like as i'm excited because now that i've finished my obligations here i can go Pursue my own path versus a much more deflated, like, all right, what, what am I meant to do now? What's the point? Yes, I'll die. Yes, I'll die. Well, <laughs> um, so is it Mola will explain why the writing is bad? Let's watch. Uh, oh. I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. I do have an issue with something that's coming up, but it's not with her characterization necessarily. Uh, I don't know if anyone else does. Let me know. Uh, I, I think it's I a bit of a missed opportunity, but... Eh. I think, well, I, I, to be, I mean, okay, go ahead. Like what specifically? I think that we could have had a better opportunity to see, I guess it, I, th this idea that she's free from destiny, her, cons like more of a strong opinion regarding, you know, concepts of free will and fate. And if you can even make any sort of choices, um, I don't know. I, it doesn't quite. It doesn't hit me, this character. It doesn't quite gel, I don't think. Um, I don't have any specifics, I suppose. Well, I guess the thing is, is that there's a scene that's coming later that I think is pretty relevant in terms of tying into this part of and, and Atreus did ask her, like, can we make at least little changes? And then she's like, yes, you can, but ultimately pointless. You could always stick to the road you're given, sort of thing. Like, it, but her premise is that, like, hey, now that my part in the prophecy's over, like, I might as well... Like, I, well, I, her, her I, plan I, is to just carry on like looking after the wildlife, but she finds that so yeah. lame in terms of it's not that she doesn't enjoy yeah, doing like, that, it's just end, that right? I don't what have a, a role to play in a story that the whole world is involved with. Mine yeah, is... She's, she's resigning to be a sad, bored person for the rest of her life, essentially. Like, be she's yeah, like, well, which is because yeah, of the culture she's grown up in that you accept what you're given, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we'll, we'll see yeah, a bit maybe. more, see if uh, there's any other thoughts people have gonna be so surprised. Loki, you can't tell anyone about Ironwood, not even your father. The biggest thing keeping this place safe is that Odin's not looking for it. My wards can keep the wildlife at bay, but if Asgard ever came looking- I get it. I'm sorry. I won't tell anyone. Perfect. Hey. You keep secrets better hey, than Elrond. Uh... Killed <laughs> no. a flower? Yeah, that oh. guy sucks. I. It's a gift. Thanks, but, uh, you keep it. 
I thought he was just hyper simping when he when he did that, but I forgot that there's a line earlier that she says she has a gift for him, and he says I don't have anything for you, and so that's why he yeah. did that. Yeah, which is a little bit better. He's still hyper simpy in this se sequence. <laughs> yeah, um, and and I said on stream and I stabbed by it. I know you can't have like a Sindri in this scene, but I love the idea of him picking a flower, trying to give it to her. He fails. He looks down, and the camera pans over, and you get anyone from Kratos to Amir to Sindri to Brock's reaction to it. It would be great. Just like that's pathetic, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking loser. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it would be so much fun compared to this sort of just hitting as, like, okay, all right. And yeah, I, I'll give him space. I know it's the first girl he's properly interacted with. I get it. I yeah, understand. Yeah, he's Twitter-pated. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, yeah, first girl. What if you... Oh, my God, dark. it's a girl. No. The other realms? Anyway. I live in a wooden hut with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> my animals. <laughs> Sweet of you to offer. You know, I thought learning my destiny would change something. By the way, I just chopped out like it, fucking twenty minutes. Yeah, this, this, uh, this, this particular section felt like the most superfluous like part of, of the ironwood. It's like holy level. shit, you did not need to do that. Is, is she's collecting paint stuff? It's like yeah, you, you could have just had the dialogue and we walked back. You didn't have to do this. But I'm still just me. Was it like that for you? You're always still going to be you, Loki. It's about coming to terms with it. And you've come to terms with it? I thought so. I, I meant what I said before. You know? About your paintings. They're really good. Are you trying to cheer me up? Yeah. Is it working? <laughs> Ask me again and... Oh, damn time. Who was that? Kyla, she. What's wrong with it? I can't feel anything. There's nothing to feel. Kyla whispered its soul away. You know where she lives? What are you gonna do? I've buried enough wolves this winter. Follow me. If we run into Gryla, please don't do anything drastic. Why? She's my grandmother. What? She wasn't always like this. And she learned my father wouldn't do anything to avert his fate. She... changed. I see. Did a lot of giants live here? Over time. You want to know about your mother? She lived this entire life before she had it. But I don't know anything about it. I think it's incredibly weird. I think you brought this up, Rags, when we were checking it out. How did it take that long for him to ask about his mum? <laughs> That's actually a good point, yeah. Like, it's been... I, I, I hesitate to say, has it been over an hour of this place now? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we've been here a little while. Um, obviously I'm chopping it up so it doesn't quite feel that way, but yeah, it just is really odd that, like, he would have only now been, like, leading to talking about his mum, when this is the most information he could ever have access to about her life before him. So I don't know anything about her. Your mother left the path of the giants way before I was born. So, Gryla, what does she need animal souls for anyway? She can live moments from their lives. Finally feel free. <laughs> The wind in their fur as they run. Ow, thanks. <laughs> Hit the camera. <laughs> it's like, ouch. <laughs> only worry is being what to hunt and where to sleep. But it's not <sighs> real. Oh. Loki. Hey, we know my future, and it doesn't involve us getting killed by your grandma. Not how it works. I mean, it does, though. So, well, I find that line pretty interesting. It just shows there's a, there's a gap in her own thinking that she's not really considered yet. The fact that it is in stone, but also not in stone. It's like so. It's not in stone. It can't be both. Yeah, I there, there's like if he was if he was pressing on stuff like this harder. If there was when she says, you know, you could do you could change little things, but not big things. Like, well, what about don't a lot of little changes lead to big things? You know, how how come you know well, who draws the line? Why can't you know why can't we really push that and really been more insistent? Like, no, 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 really, just come with me right now. We can go. Let's go. Come on, right and, now. And it's we not exactly it. the best. Uh, test but you know if if someone is prophesized to be like the king of blah 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 and they're 
And so I was like, I could just kill them right now. I could just do that. I could just shoot this guy in the head right now. <laughs> that was, it seems like a big event change, doesn't it? I took it. There's not much more we can do. Bear girls would skin it and piss inside. Is it weird? Hold this. Because he's a weird fraud. <gasps> what are you? You didn't have a least favorite giant. Did you? What? It's at this point I went into conditions. We'll let it. We'll let it finish first, Rags. Let it play out so we have every reference we need. This one. No. You can't. Your mother said I'd know what to do with these. Yes, eventually. I just gave them to you. I know. But... You can't hide forever. Right? And we can't just leave it here to die. Are you sure? No. <clears throat> I actually don't know how to do this part. Okay. Got a magic paper clip that can help us. Together, then? That's it? Where's it going? That even work? I don't know. Here. I think that's enough. Um, so that's Jormungandr. I don't consider that a spoiler. That's how he's made. Yeah. It's, um, I think I'll start with a compliment. I appreciate that they couldn't have Loki's son be a snake or something, but this interpretation <laughs> makes way more sense in terms of how that could come about. The soul whispering and all that shit. Um, yeah. Everything else, not a fan. Uh, I don't know why he would have decided to do this. It's, this is uh... fucking bizarre, and I hate it. This is <laughs> so many weird questions and just all kinds of stuff. I am so for anybody who's a little confused, right? All the giants, in order to hide from Odin, uh, had one of the giants whisper their souls into these marbles for safekeeping. I don't know what it's like to live inside a marble. They never tell us mm -hmm. in terms of what it means or what like it feels a like. Ball. Yeah, maybe it's constant stasis. You never actually feel anything. <laughs> or maybe you're just sitting and they're looking around in a bag, like, man, this is boring. I don't know. <laughs> like, but they understand them to be people. And they and and Loki Atreus, he's feeling pretty bad that you got these soulless people, the things walking around, and so he's like, "Oh, I know, a bodiless soul and a soulless body, yeah." But it's like, but these are these are people, these are giants. And yeah, so... these are uh, these are the these are essentially your your kin. They're trapped. They're waiting to be given a body so that they can essentially live a normal life again. And 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 what appears to be on a whim. You found some soulless snake in some random person's house hanging around, literally. And you're like, yep. you know what? I'm going to put the soul of one of my people into this snake body. And you know what makes because... it really bad, before you even highlight all the reasons why you should not do that, is that he's clearly aware. He said, who's your least favorite giant? Exactly. Yep. This can be punishment for the person. <laughs> that line <laughs> ruins it. <laughs> it yeah, really yeah. You can't it rely on him being naive or thinking this was the best thing for he, he knows it's not a necessarily good decision. You cannot gamble with someone's life just because you're curious about what will happen next. And this hurts the both of them because she should be vehemently opposed to this. 
She has a she should be slightly like, what, more the, excuse in that she can be crazy with prophecy shit, and he he argues yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. doing what he's prophesized to do, and so she's like, mm, but I even agree. then, she I should agree. explain like you. This is that you're putting the soul of one of our people into that snake. It's gonna be living as a snake when it was like one of us earlier. Would you want to be living as a snake randomly? Like, don't you think we? I gave these to you 15 minutes ago. Maybe fucking <laughs> chill. Someone said I'd hate being a snake. No obs. Can't even choke the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta coil yourself up the right way. I don't know. They probably have an equivalent. They're snakes. Uh, but yes, it's very, very odd. And I just don't get it. And and by doing this, Atreus' reaction is basically like, I fucked up. You got, you take the giants. God damn it. And I'm just like, we don't even... What did, what were you hoping for? That the snake would just be like, hello there. Thank you so much for releasing me. I appreciate yeah. it. Here are three wishes. And also, oh. why, why, why only... The snake. What about the other animals you just saw? Were they not cool enough to oh, I, get a soul from you? Well, because he considers what he does here kind of a mistake. He regrets it immediately yeah. because the snake doesn't talk to him. I guess he doesn't know what he's I, done. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like I don't know why you didn't. What did you realize... want the snake to say? I, I just. Oh my I, god! What the fuck is happening? I where are my arm? Am I a? Am I a snake? You made me a did, snake. Why did you do you this? Made me a snake. <laughs> What the yeah. fuck? Put me back in the Pokeball. Find, and so, me, a, like, find me a body a fucking with fucking Dunbat from Soma. Oh god! Kind of Why would you remind me? It's so horrifying. Um, but the the, the uh yeah. The, so the thing about this is some some people are like, well, I mean, it's better than being in a bobble, isn't it? It's like I have no idea, and neither does Treus. You exactly. don't know that. Yeah. If if you could whisper one out, or you could speak to one that's been in there, and they say, yeah, it's a horrible experience, then you could maybe use that as a motive to do this. But you don't have that. As far as we know, they're chill in there. Uh. So yeah, I think this needed way different sets of mechanics to justify why these two would make this decision. I think if you gave me the choice between, hey, live with no arms and no legs or be asleep, I'd, I'd be like, yeah, asleep. I, well, so, Especially, it's like, the, 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 could you even speak with a snake's mouth? No, well, even, I mean, he well, speaks we, that, like, he Norse parcel. Yeah, yeah so be small, so it'd be like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, just, I want it highlighted, though. I don't think anybody should be like, I, I'm pretty sure I prefer being a snake than a marble, or I prefer being a marble. It's like, no, we just don't know, and neither did these characters. In fact, they <laughs> thought there's a risk of it being really bad, and that's the problem. No, being a, being a marble sounds pretty nice, man. I, I, just, I feel like you're just, like, on pause. Like, if you don't have a... You know, it feels like the, the body needs a soul for it to be, you know, essentially effective. So you wonder, like, does the soul need a body to also be essentially oh, effective? Are you on pause? Like, you're 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 just on standby mode until you're reunited. I assume. I quite uh, the super chat that just came in is relevant. Is the the giants went into Pokeballs to avoid the Acia? The Acia is still around. Like yeah. you haven't we haven't quite solved that problem yet. Yeah, so. but they're looking for giants. They're not looking for random snakes. But they end up fighting. <laughs> like that's what. Yeah, happens. but yeah. Well, <laughs> should have told them you were a giant. You idiot snake. They were playing Marble Blast Ultra on the Xbox 360. They have uh, an equivalent on Steam, and I love it. Yeah, mar being a marble would be okay, man. That's all. All right, I'm fine. I agree. I'd rather be a marble, but as long as you can bounce and jump, and then platforms appear in all levels and stuff, that'd be great. But yeah, yeah. Uh, not not cool. Not a fan yeah. of this moment for either good, of them. Good point. It's funny, I never even thought about that scene because I was just happy when everything was over. <laughs> you can watch my, my stream. I'm, I'm like uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. when this happens. I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know. I need to think about this one. Because uh, there's always the chance when it comes to a story that's got a lot of intentional writing that something will come along or something could change. Or maybe a character that you trust and take to be literal in what they say could turn out to be a completely different character or something. Like just for instance, like a hypothetical. Uh, so yeah. you need to wait until... Maybe get all the information. But you're giving up already? They're your responsibility. It's not that. It's not. I just think they're better off with you. Yeah, I'm 0 for 1 right now. No, <laughs> <it's blinding. laughs> I won't even remember in a moment. We're just going to kill him. No, because we are going to stop her. If 
What well, you just stopped you me want? stopping her, so I don't know what you yeah. want. <laughs> <laughs> but an ironic actual point to be made here is that, hey, this isn't prophesized. Angraboda, what you doing? This isn't yeah. on any shrine. She's not well. Yeah, a snarkier character would be like, oh, were you prophesized to stop me? Or oh, tell me what plans in the prophecy, you know? Well, that's the thing, right? Because, like, she at first doesn't want anything to do with this, and then she's gradually invested by, like, the idea of stop her from killing innocent creatures, and now she's like, okay, something should be done because this isn't right. It's like, that's an mm -hmm. interesting POV. Maybe that should take over whether or not it's prophesized. I told you never to come back here! That's right, look at me! There's so many things I've forgotten, and you refuse to be one of them! It doesn't have to be this way. Listen, okay? I'd rather listen to the conversation than save an innocent creature, so... That's what we're gonna be dealing with for a second. of a son's path. Yeah. Good shit. You can't help but except they're definitely gunning for a fairy tale aesthetic and with the music as well now. Especially with this this giant person had you to be a It's yeah. a giant with a cauldron. Yeah. <laughs> Magic <definitely getting>. cauldron. <laughs> so um if you're gonna have this anywhere it's like yeah Ironwood seems like it was trying to build up to something like that. Yeah. With drugs. Burn. Pretty much. I yeah. should have thrown you to the wolves right after I pulled you out of your mother. Get out! I just... Get out! No. <gasps> Let's go. You think you've done something here, granddaughter? You are nothing! And no one will ever remember you! Not even Loki! You'll just be a forgotten chapter in his story! He'll be too busy mourning his father! I see you again! You wish you died with your parents! You sure it's all right to leave her here? What if she comes out looking for? She used to leave me food. 
What? She'd say she didn't care about me, but sometimes I'd wake up and I'd see a loaf of bread sitting next to the fire. It's baked just the way she always used to. She's not a monster, you know? She's lost. You wanna walk? So everyone in chat is saying cringe. I'm very confused. I'd like to hear some arguments. Go for it. Yeah. I think it's the his story thing, but uh, I don't know. I, 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 honestly, so... they, like, I only yeah, noticed that I, because I, I the subtitles what... were on. I didn't notice that on my oh, own. I when think I was they playing. think it's too overt. <laughs> That's what... Something that... Yeah, but like it's because I'm seeing people say like actually calling her a side character bad writing. It's like the point is she's insulting her by saying that she doesn't matter, that she she's, is a side character. She's gunning for yeah. her insecurities. Yeah. This is what she's insecure yeah. about. That's what yeah. she is specifically upset about. I wonder who might know these things. When... Mm -hmm. If you remember, like we even found that um, that she drew herself with her grandmother. They would have spent a lot of time together. There's a reference to how there's lots of arguments her mum and her grandmother would get into. The grandmother thinks prophecy's bullshit and that you should just try and live every day as it comes because life is pain. Uh, but every other giant basically was like, no, 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 live based on whatever the visions say. And that Angraboda clearly, even from a young age, was always incredibly sad and disappointed that she didn't have anything to do beyond help Loki. That, that was her last plot, plot point of her story. Give him yeah. information. And so her grandmother knew that. And first she's like, get the fuck out. And then she's like, wait, I know. I can use your insecurity against you. You are fucking nothing. You're just a chapter in his story. You'll never matter. No one's ever going to care about you. And uh, it works, right? Because that's the kind of thing that she takes seriously. It's the, th the thing that would dig into her personality. And the grandmother knew that. She just dest destroyed a crack cauldron. She wants to get yeah. some revenge. Um, so, like, as much as I can understand why someone might be uh, triggered, I would say it's a it's a false alarm. Like, they're using re reference to what your story is in reference to how you see your story unfold in visions. She's not, if like, making a meta reference. Was, if the dialogue was Loki's story instead of his story, would that make it better? Why would that matter? Because apparently people seem to be getting, uh, are having a reaction to the his story but isn't he a guy? In reference to the word history, though, so, like, no, it's just like calm down. I guess. Like, well, I, I know, know, and like, I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking, though. So, like, I mean, my point is that if it changes, if the dialogue was, you'll just be a chapter in Loki's story. If that changes your reaction to it, then it's not really. It, well, it's I not mean, really the intention of the right? sentence. It's the it's a fluke of the wording. You know what I mean? Like, so, like I'm, I'm trying to shine some light on that part, though, right? Luke, like, the it's the same sentence, yeah. you know? His story and Loki's story are exactly the same sentence. Yeah, like, I know. I, I, I'm 100%, like, I 100% agree. I'm just saying that to the people in chat who are bothered by the wording of his story and think it's cringe, if the wording was Loki's story, would that change your opinion? If the answer is no, it's like, okay, well, then you cool. just, you, you think that it's bothersome because of the intention of the sentence where Angraboda is a chapter in the character Atreus slash Loki story. Whereas the, I think people are reacting to the cringe aspect being the meta history being the, you know, his story. I guess I, just, I don't like, care. I want something better than that. As like I'm trying criticism. to, I'm reading a couple of responses. Yeah. Some people saying like, well, it's just fucking boring. The whole sequence It's like, okay, we I'll concede that it's boring, right. but I need more on why it's like, but some people saying the delivery was cringe. It's like, well, I mean, it's an exasperated giant, angry grandmother. I don't, I don't know. It seemed about on point. I, I, I don't, especially um the lady playing Angra Boda. I thought her face was pretty strong as she was walking away. Mm -hmm. Shows how much it means to her. And I quite like the part where she just starts, she in, like cuts off Atreus to just start talking about how much she loved her grandma once upon a time. Yeah. But, uh, and what's happened since. Because she, she know it's obviously upset her, but she knows what's happening. She's lashing out. She's upset. And so she's digging at her, just trying to basically target her insecurities, but trying she's to kind of her. above well, it, right? Fine. Yeah, she knows that it's hurtful, and obviously it hurt her feelings, but like she's going to try and rise above it. Um, I mean, you know, yeah, I just, uh, 
I think most people are chilling out on the his story thing. I all I had to do was point out he's a guy. Yeah, I think correct. that fixed like, it all. Think... <laughs> <laughs> also, that history and prophecy real, are like right? opposites. So. Some um, well, I, I mean, it's not like he's so people are really saying like, oh, see, she means history, not his story. It's like, well, maybe she, that's the whole insecurity is that she is a chapter in his story, being his the vision but, that relates. But to also, him. he's a guy, so if you're gonna refer to him but not by name, you will say his. It does seem yeah, like I respect their pronouns. <laughs> I think it's cringe because the grandma just explains Angerboda's problems. We already knew that was her issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, if if you're saying like just showing that the grandma like, knows, is that cringe? Also, if, if she knows, yeah. Let, let's let's put it this way: if someone was like, "Man, I I really should avoid you know uh, ice cream because I'm just I'm putting on, I'm starting to notice it in the mirror," you know, as, to a friend, and then that mm. friend gets angry at you one day and just says, "Shut the fuck up, fatso," he'd be like, "Wow," but that's one way. But then if they were like, "You're insecure about being fat," I think is the idea is they're saying. The first one would be more reasonable, the second one not so much, but I mean, the, the grandma was pretty angry uh, and sort of lashing out, as, as was just mentioned. It's like, uh, I think if, you, if, if you're if you angling, the dialogue should have been more subtle in terms of, you know, I, I guess we could tweak it to be like, don't you hate that you don't have... No, that would be worse. Uh, <laughs> People lashing out angrily like this don't tend to lean towards subtlety. It just, mm. yeah, that's what I mean. I'm trying to... I, I think I want to agree that we could improve the dialogue and everything, but it's just, um, I don't know, it seemed, it fit enough for me. Uh, I think if EFAP I was can't to do let anything... Chad have a different opinion. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean? No, I'm talking Chad. to you. I am talking to you guys. If you don't want me to do that, I could turn you off, I guess. <laughs> like, Maybe uh... the solution could be to have her, uh, the, the giant, the, the big lady, say something along the lines of, like, you're, you're at the end, you'll, you'll be like me, you'll be doing everything you can to experience whatever you can or uh, you, you'll come crawling back or you'll know what it's like to be like this soon or I guess something it, along those lines i i get those edits but they just feel like we're changing it totally yeah. rather if, than like making tweaks i mean it's clear what she's trying to do and how she's going she's trying to hurt her feelings it, so like that's yeah, it i mean um, if that's her goal it, this it is how you do it if i was yeah. to do literally anything to it i would maybe shorten it that's about it maybe yeah maybe Oh, I think so. Never. So, is the problem really people are drawing like it's a message about how women are just chapters in men's stories? I don't Man, think there's no way, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. it's, it's, please don't go deep into it. But this, I thought the whole, I thought it was go away. If anything, it's overt that Ironwood is about an individual, not men and women. Like an individual's chance to create their own story and not be, you know, bound to whatever is said of them in terms of destiny. With, it's okay, guys. You don't need to read too oh, that yeah. far into it. Like, just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this reminds me of, um, I, I wish I had the picture, but like Rainbow Road and Mario Kart fucking pride ass bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's really funny is that's the first time that I've seen in like normie circles people sharing one of Jeremy's tweets. Yeah, well, yeah, because Jeremy quote tweeted and being like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Just don't, you don't well, want to... No, I think that that guy, the guy who said, oh, it's a, this woke bullshit in, Mar in the Mario movie was replying to <laughs> Jeremy. No, I know, but Jeremy also <laughs> quotes me the response, like, what? Oh. Okay. He, I think he said, like, this Rainbow Road, my dude. Like, that's been... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> <clears throat> way. You should get you back. You've been gone longer than you think. You could just walk through that. Anchor Boda. It's fine. This was a long time coming. We'll be back once we reach the other side of this path. Well best then, number first. That's two out of three. Atreus. Race me. Come on. I see what you're doing. You know you want a rematch after and last time. I appreciate. Um. Last time. I beat you. Cheetah. Uh, pretty sure it was a Peter. Top. Pretty sure it wasn't. Better helps you sleep at night. Gonna cheat again. About to have a musical section show up. So prove me wrong. Imagine which one it is. One, two, three, go. Five. Oh, wow. You coming or what? Go, go, go. Fuck. Oh no, you don't. 
the turn here. Price is theme. Yeah, it's so good. Versatile it's as great. hell. Super engaging at this point. It was already sold it's to very me. Very upbeat and adventurous. I have absolutely no idea what you're saying. And the more I hear it, it might become my favorite one of the lot, actually. I'm so great. <laughs> Over Kratos's? Might be, yeah. I just like this one a lot. Ooh. Actually, I say that and I, I think Faye might be my favorite. <laughs> Faye is awesome, dude. <laughs> Someone said more generic music. <laughs> Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Get out of here, man. Like, I can only hope for a world where this is generic. I, I was going to say, I'm, I am happy as is a... that, it is, Yes, it is made of notes. <laughs> oh, gross. Fuck, like, really? Oh, this one, too? <laughs> <laughs> Instruments play it. Oh, this isn't supposed to be here. <laughs> this is this was supposed to be. I threw this in as a reference for the the bread thing. I, I think it got shoved forward on the timeline. I like I bread. bread. I was gonna say I'm a pretty big fan of bread. I had bread today. It was nice. I'm pro bread. Bread. Oh, you can't say say that in today's climate. Oh, I'm anti bread. Or hot. Yeah. I'm all all it's bread. Once you're gone, my part in this is over. So, you know, feel free to stay. I think you come with me right now. Let's go. I think your part is as big as you want it to be. Hmm. What are you going to do? Get a big part, boy. <laughs> no idea. I can't just sit back and let my dad die. Huh. Huh. Other home. Other home. Other home. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. Uh, it's worth saying now, uh, mechanically speaking, yes, he's been gone for some time, and we're aware that uh, from the prior games, I actually think, that time tends yeah. to work differently, and he's already been gone for a while anyway. So... It's a little yeah. bit stressful, the idea of meeting up with Kratos, because you might have some stuff to explain, and you can't talk about Ironwood, so what's he going to say? Yeah, what's he going to do? if you know that <clears throat> Odin has invited him to Asgard. So, um, yeah, the, there's a real good vibe right now of, like, okay, when I get to Yggdrasil, he's probably going to have some dialogue. I'll get to Sindri's house, mm -hmm. and I'm going to walk in. It's going to be awkward. That's what's in your head when you're playing this. And then this happens. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to visit Fenrir. For two days. I... Do not lie to me again! Why did you come here? Alone? That did little see that? voice break in there. Yeah, it's amazing. I just, you can't stop looking at his face. It's the little details. It's his facial expressions, the voice. Christopher Judge, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Then why? Why? What is it you will not tell me? I have tried to walk this path with you. We follow your every whim. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. Because all that matters is that you are safe. But that's not all that matters. Who's keeping you safe? I do not need you to protect me. You sure about that? What do you know? I can't talk about it. But I just need you to trust me. You kept secrets, but I trust you. It's not the same. Why not? You hid things. Mother hid things. You had good reasons, and so do I. Why can't you just... Later. Remember us? Not sure this is a PTSD flashbacks to the Valkyrie fights. Like, no. It's no. funny. Um, on my stream, uh, I was already thinking about how, like, I'm trying to make sense of this. Why would there just be a random Valkyrie attack unless it's to do with Odin, which is what they imply? And then yeah, I, yeah. I was just, 
Like, you could see me putting pieces together as I was fighting her on stream, I was like, and eventually I just go, wait, is this Freya? Like, I was like, is it possible? Because it, it would make some sense if it were, because we've got no reason to assume we're fighting a Valkyrie at this point, and yeah. of all the odds of one finding us right now, right here in Midgard, it's like, hmm. And if you keep an eye on all the animations and the particle effects and stuff, some of them are familiar. Done it. Yeah, and the, the wings look like a falcon as well. I just for some reason. Yeah, it's really yeah. obvious when you're looking for it. Dude, the way he says it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh fuck. I almost it's, it's almost it hurt you. It's so fucking good because she's almost tricked him into finally fighting back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's like he's like almost offended. Like, wh why did you, you bitch? Like, I, I, I <laughs> how dare you? It's like my whole deal is I've just been trying to stop you from hurting my son and taking all of the damage while not killing you. And you almost made me kill you. Yep. It's not that deep. What I said isn't that deep. <laughs> like, it's, she's wearing a mask, my dude. I think I mean, she's trying yeah, to look, protect her identity. It doesn't need to be, but it's like, well, shit. This yeah, is now she, the person who's been trying to kill you has kicked it up another notch. She <laughs> says later, like, she was annoyed that he would refuse to try and fight her every engagement, so this is obviously an attempt on her part to hide her identity. Yeah. <laughs> every agony. Every violation imaginable. No! <laughs> You do not want this! Oh, no, Control it! She was our friend! Uh, and that's... That, it's... It's so important that yeah. that perspective it informs so many of the decisions we've made so far. Relating to her. Atreus. Uh, this Dad's spot. hitting a nerve, man. She's <laughs> seen uh -huh. him be a real dad. Oh, uh, it's, it's he just loves his son so it. much. We talk about it. You're of more use to me. Alive. So we just went from like an internet connection of one megabyte per second to like a hundred. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much, yeah. We, we, we were like uh... plodding along with some things to say. What a fucking shotgun blast. Holy fuck. There's so much to talk about there with Freya. Because it's so many things that have motivated her decision there. And she's not happy about it. She's really, really, really <laughs> upset about the choice that she has to make here. Mm. And it's easy. informed by so many things. It's informed by what we mentioned earlier with uh, when Atreus <laughs> met her. That it's just like all of this information is leading you to a place where you know what choices you need to make here. And this is, you need to cooperate with Kratos. Like you just have to do it. And especially when she sees Atreus turning into a bear there. It's like, yep. So it's pretty clear with all of this information, you, you you just gotta put it to one side for now. But then there's also yeah. what you mentioned before, that it's like, this is Kratos, this is who he is. He does not want to hurt you. He considers he like he he owes you a debt, like and he knows it. Um and also him just being a good dad, you know? It's uh Atreus. Impossible not to sure consider okay. as well watching her watching him take yeah. care of his son. Like what's that gonna make her yeah. think about? Exactly. How important that connection is and yeah he just he just saved your life again <laughs> i mean yeah, arguably exactly. maybe she would have been okay but at the same time he clearly cares to protect you after and you put a knife yeah, to his throat or blade 
She has to well, channel that anger into destroying that big old boulder there. She's got to... Yeah, even Kratos wasn't sure like, what that was going to be until it happened. Yeah. But uh, oh, I just... God damn it, dude. That that performance from her when she was losing her shit. She's fantastic. She's yeah, it's... excellent. I imagine mm. several other studios might want to snap some of these actors up for uh, game stuff, because... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just... Yes. Danielle Basuti is her name. This, this is what it feels like to have yeah. two completely opposite motivations in your head at the same time. Yes. Exactly. Ones that are extreme and powerful, too. Well, I mean, another thing is she knows that for the last, say, what, five or so years, like, uh, Kratos... Uh, three, sorry, I think. Atreus, going, oh, is it only three? It's yeah, I three, yeah. Figured, Pretty sure oh, it's three. Oh, I thought three. Atreus was going from around, like, 11 to 15, <clears throat> but anyways. Well, however long it's been, she spent that entire time trying to kill him as hard as she possibly could to yeah. the point that like she stabbed him she stabbed him at the beginning of this game in the chest with a sword <laughs> and he just kind of shakes it off and doesn't kill her so she also kind of knows it's like he just wants to be a good dad and he's trying as hard as he can to not fight with me and i i think this is the moment where she kind of like realizes that she's like I think oh, she has to account for like, his perspective which she's been yeah. trying to discard as much as possible right it's just yeah. he's the one that yeah, gotta, ball, gotta I'm kill him. and then meanwhile it's like well, wait a minute he likes you he you you know why he made that choice you know and you know that he doesn't want to hurt you and you know that he obviously he has a son that he wants to take care of yeah, too that he loves and then you son. know that there's a role that Atreus must play uh in connection to you know, her pr previous life, right? With Odin and all the other race. Like, just, yeah. It, 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 she's forced to a point where it's like, despite how fucking angry you are, you have to, you know what choice you have to make. And I mean, it reflects, right? And her screaming her lungs out as she, yeah. like, unleashes all of her rage on something other than Kratos. It's, it's great. It's, it's so good. Yeah, and just this boiling point. Again, the performance. Mwah. Yeah. Yep. And fabulous. used to me alive <clears throat> this is home home really you will tell the truth when i return well, i must set things right um, we'll take him oh your majesty a pleasure to see you again Bronifer. Do not let him out of your sight. You heard him, sunshine. Come on, get a move on. What is it you want? I refuse to remain bound to this realm. We travel to Vanaheim. Well, guess it's just us then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, what a variable. Brock. It's uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that Cinder and Brock got Salt more involved in, in this game. Right there. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. If you are still bound, how will you travel? I crafted a protection ward that'll keep me from being pulled out of the realm. It should hold until I find what I need. And what is that? The source of the magic that binds me to Midgard. We're going to find it. And I like how Kratos asked the question that the player's thinking. Exactly. Yeah. Well, how can you go to Vanaheim if you can't leave the realm? It was like a temporary thing. Yeah, they even uh, argue that Odin's curses have uh, weakened because of Fimble Winter, as it weakens yeah. all of the like 
active curses or spells or magic of any kind. I will help you. One thing I find kind of weird, I suppose, is how willing she is at this point to just cordially chat with him. I know it's about pertinent information, but there's I don't sense any vitriol coming from this. You don't? Okay, hang on. But it I just hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I know. That's why I still might kill you when this is over. Sure. <laughs> I mean the preceding things. You don't, I, I don't. know it's all part of the same conversation, but I still... Well, I mean, you could do that with a lot of conversations. I, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't buy it. I think that she's able to provide practical information, but she's still going to make clear what her motivations are. And you can tell as the conversations proceed, she's still spiky as fuck, but she'll entertain engagement in conversation, and she has a short fuse uh, in Vanaheim throughout. And it, mm -hmm. to me, that feels like an example right there of like, how are you doing this? It's something impossible. It's like, I'm doing it because this, this, this. And it's like, oh, was it this? And it's like, yes, and I'm still going to kill you or still might kill you. Well, also, I mean, she's been redlining on her mission to kill them for three years now. And like, I, I, I think she's probably kind of hit the point where she's, you know, just kind of done. It's like, oh, okay, well, you know what? Maybe I have been a little unreasonable here. And so I'm, I'm still oh, not going to be nice to you. Yeah. But... I mean, it's still not going to be nice to you, but like, yeah, we'll we'll do what we got to um, do. This is a big tan, not really a big tangent. So you know, the Game Awards is, is happening real soon, and uh -huh. there's a category for like players oh, players' voice where you, it's a hundred percent dictated by votes. From, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> right now, it's it's there's only a few hours left for round two to conclude. And apparently, these five games are set to advance with these percentages for their votes. So I'm going okay. from lowest to highest. <laughs> can't wait. Stray, the game Stray, the little cat, the cat game, game, got 11%. Mm -hmm. okay. God of War Ragnarok has got 12%. Okay. Uh, El Elden Ring's got 14%. <laughs> um, uh, okay, oh, I know Genshin where this is Impact going. <laughs> Genshin Impact is at 15%. Yep. And well, the, current front runner, the current front runner is Sonic, Sonic. 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 Yeah, Sonic, <laughs> yeah, because Sonic fans are crazy. Listen, guys, you thought the fight would be between Ragnarok and Elden Ring. Right? Right? You didn't realize between... Based Hedgehog running in. <laughs> to no, it's because all of the autistic Sonic fans, whether in prison or not, are just they're they're Chris, crazy, no, insane not. people. They're insane. I hate. You know what, you, you motherfucker, you haven't played Frontier, Sonic Frontiers. Maybe. You don't know yeah, how amazing that game is. Nor shall I. Well, then yeah, you're a I bad man because... I can't, I, wild I of can't Sonic the Hedgehog risk its infection it's... getting on me. No, you, I... no, 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 no. It's not the Breath of the Wild of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> it doesn't have open worlds. It has open zones, okay? okay I haven't played it. I'm just... I'm maybe there is a difference. I mean, I kind of maybe there is. I, for one, am willing to bet my entire fortune on the idea. I has open zones but isn't open world like that. Look, listen, yeah. I don't, th I don't oh, think the people I, I would ever vote that wrong. Question. I think Sonic is game of the year. No, I think it that's is. That's right. And ultimately, yeah. It's, it's, yeah players can can Sonic maybe. or the Tarnished go fast? <laughs> Didn't think no, so. No, wait, so Kratos and the Tarnished, sorry. <laughs> Kratos I mean, Tarnish has the double jump and horse. Nobody can run faster cool. than Kratos. He's the <laughs> fastest <laughs> man alive. Gotta go fast. Kratos, Kratos used to be able to double jump, but he can't even fast. single jump anymore. No, he lost it all. Uh, and, you know, the Tarnished, he's, he's pretty lame, you know? Looks like Skeleman, kind of. in the chat so. for double yeah. jumps. So he, he, really, like, Kratos and the Tarnished <laughs> teaming up it's, couldn't take on Sonic. Look, maybe Sonic Frontiers is actually, like, I, I hear that they're doing a bunch of post-launch content for free, and the reason why was because the game was received well by fans of the game, so that's kind of neat. I, I, like, I honestly haven't played it, and I've heard that it's a skeleton of a great game, but right now it feels like it's, like, early access. This is why okay, you spit well, on fandom. Sonic. I didn't say anything, that was rags. <laughs> they, they added me with that. I didn't say anything mean about Sonic fans. Go for it. Vote for your favorite game. No, all, I love all you. that happened was we read out the list and then, and then laughed. Not <laughs> what, even is, about it. <laughs> what even is Genshin Impact? Is, I don't know. I'm um, a, a, a Chinese free to play game? Breath of the Wild. Like. It's a game that I thought yeah. was about mechs. Because <laughs> like, I thought Genshin <laughs> I mean, Impact. It, it, like it's Max. not altogether terrible from a basic mechanical standpoint, but uh, if you're going to get deep into it, it's uh, a pretty scummy mobile, more like pay, to, it's, pay to win game. I, I played it, you already said it was a Chinese game. Game. So when I seen, was Well, I mean, yeah. It is. It's interesting that Stray is doing, it's, it means that Stray's beaten out, like, 
Wait, what other? Hold on, <laughs> I'm working through the list. Horizon Forbidden West came out this year. Remember that? Not game. Not, I, have not, game. I have not played Horizon Forbidden West because I played Zero Dawn on PC with the mouse and keyboard and was like, okay, I'll wait till Forbidden wow. West comes out on is, PC. Is Aloy faster than a speeding hedgehog? She's uh, oh, no, no, definitely not. Not really. She's... She just runs around like a normal same, person. Yeah, Kratos yeah, tarnished normal, an Aloy versus Sonic. We know what happened. All I heard there was trash game because I can't go fast. That's all I heard. Well, yeah. I mean, Aloy is a ginger, but then again, so is Knuckles. Because Knuckles, Knuckles is a uh, red. Why, did, why isn't he Australian? Why is he American? He's an enchinda. An echidna. An engendered. An echidna. It's an echidna. Well, he's, well he's, maybe, uh, he, maybe his parents moved to America, right? Well, he's just he like Kratos. Kratos is kind of a hedgehog, if you think about it. Uh, the, the I'll say this right now. Match. I've never seen whatever Knuckles is in real life. I've never once seen one of those animals. Oh, have you? Wow. Okay. Wow. Really? It's yeah, the no, spit never. image. You don't, you don't I, even have to look up what they look like in real life, because that's just how they look. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, Sonic uh, looks that... just like a hedgehog. Yeah. Well, I th yeah. Sonic's cooler looking than real hedgehogs. Real hedgehogs wow. just they almost look like uh, wow. he looks identical know, to man. real hedgehogs. Bring you do something. Just described, so real, I don't even know why I think that, that makes real sense. Real are cooler than Knuckles. The I think real hedgehogs are real neat, and I'd hang out with them and have cards they and drinks with them. I don't think I, they run very fast, but still. No, I've I've not seen the fast running part, so I think this game lies. Do they even know their own source material. Jesus. Uh, honestly, yeah. the only thing I've ever seen a real hedgehog do is sleep. <laughs> they sleep a lot, I think. Maybe they, they dream about <laughs> being really fast, and that's where they've got the inspiration well, from. Sonic, Sonic, that's what Sonic is. He, all the gameplay, it takes place in the two hours every day that he's actually awake. He's like, wah, wah. He's, he's always <laughs> sleeping otherwise. Like, all, all, always sleeping. That's the space se uh, sections in, in the Why game. That's when he's sleeping again. It's like, oh, a lot space. Done in two waking hours. <laughs> so anyway, there are people there. There are Sonic like fan, like actual Sonic fans, and they're they're just there are beautiful people, and we respect them. Out, screaming and yelling at all of the trying to like yell through the internet connection, all the Sonic lore that we're we're missing to explain how Sonic could actually beat Aloy and Kratos and probably, the probably, other one, yeah, um, and the the stray cat. But we all know we all know cat. we all know Sonic 06 is the best of them all. So there you go. They don't like to remember hey, that man. one. Stop it. But That's I was going to say, you really Sonic think Sonic they're 06. here doing that right now? They're watching the Game Awards and they're typing in their votes for Sonic Frontiers. The That's Game Awards doing. isn't on yet. <laughs> they're watching right the now. the pre-stream uh, where the guys go like, there is oh, no uh, oh, I, only I, for I the will, Sonic I'll, fans. I'll, There's one for the Sonic. I'll fans. give a bit of credit to the Game Awards. I really thought they were going to nominate The Last of Us Part One for a bunch of shit, and it's basically not nominated. For I don't know if that is that. Are they, <laughs> oh, well, Resident Evil Two got nominated, so that's I presume it's eligible. Wait, uh, hmm. uh, well, but I mean, no, Resident Evil Two remake is that's a different game. I I know it's different. I know. <laughs> um, whereas the one is like part one. I do love that trying to recontextualize it. Ah, see, it was part one of a part two story. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> anyway. Anyway, back to God of War Ragnarok. Since I know we we're, we're near the to. end now, but still, still a little bit to go. You know, near the end. You lie. Promissory. Where would Call you God of War Ragnarok, God of War yeah, Part we are, 2. Oh, bro, don't worry, we're on our way. I got an old drinking buddy I've been meaning to look up once this joint were back on the map. Got a hunch lending you mokes a hand's gonna end me up where I'm going. And what makes you think that? Cause last I heard tell, she was running with that beefwit brother of yours. Freyr is not a part of this. Well, my hunch says otherwise. Scroat two. You're gonna move <laughs> shit pit out here. Oh, that's another good line in there that you don't have in here. Which, which she says, we didn't ask you to come along. And he just says, it's because you didn't. <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, I, uh... <laughs>
worth noting new it's it's really cool to see the variety in the realms that we get to travel to in this oh, game heck yeah, yeah. That, Man, like vanaheim, to to vanaheim alone is incredible like it's got a vanaheim lot of variety. Is gorgeous this by the way feels more like what i was talking about with what they failed to do in ironwood it's like what if we don't have the standard kratos atreus mamiya combo now and it's like oh god what are you gonna what, what are we doing it's like kratos and mamiya you're like okay i'm, I'm in brock you're like oh, pff, well yeah and freya you're like oh Oh shit! Oh, this sounds like it's got plenty of potential. Are you kidding me? And That's an awesome dynamic. This is excellent. We don't we don't even have a new character to bind to. We just have loads of things to explore. It's like give me that juicy dialogue. We need the Brock game. Just... We need Brock as uh, the God of Star War. Wars story. God of War. Yes. The Blade <laughs> War Story. But if it helps these two find peace, this is a temporary alliance, Mimir. Anything beyond that would require trust. Oh please. You know damn well Kratos isn't the true cause of your suffering. You're both as much a part of my suffering as anyone. My spell, I can feel it slipping. Well, it's... Yeah, in case anybody's not familiar, Mamiya's the one that brokered the marriage between Freya and Odin, which yeah. is the beginning right. of the end um, for Vanaheim, basically. Of, yeah. So she has lots yeah. of resentment towards Mimir as well as Kratos. And Freya's brother is not too I'll... happy about it either. Also, I think this is a really good example of just, I don't know what the fuck happened with the audio, like the line uh, cue, I guess. Watch what happens here. Be torn from the realm. What can be done? Something I was hoping to avoid. That seems I don't have much. <laughs> <Why? laughs> like, what the fuck? But that must have... Uh, that must happen, though, when you're still learning that you could transform into, like, a hawk or something, but you can't, like, speak the same, so you just start, you think you're going to keep carrying on, but your body changes, and, <laughs> and you just like, lose oh, right, half I'm some sentences. Yeah, right. Well, well yeah, you say yeah, that. Right. Vocal cords entirely change size and But dimension. they don't, really. She speaks exactly the same when she's in the <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess so. Maybe she she's used to it now. She knows how to pronunciate her... I mean, birds and don't have with to a speak, beak. right? So that's a uh, that's a that's a tough one. And yeah, just just so obviously to to be more straightforward about it, it's like she usually says Falky, but when then she becomes yeah. a bird. This she went fa and then plays a different audio thing of just you know, <laughs> blah blah blah. It's like wait, what? And I don't know how that happened because I couldn't possibly have interrupted it. I I was walking as fast as possible. They like yeah, you know no what idea. I mean, like coming through a little like that was the game speed, not mine. You see, it's this is the kind of shoddy craftsmanship that leads Genshin Impact and Sonic Frontier <laughs> to be exactly. leading your plays. That's what happens when they try to go as fast as Sonic. They just interrupt it <laughs> themselves. Yeah. If only I could speak Where as fast as Odin's Sonic the Hedgehog. Time. No, I discovered it once you unlocked Realm hey. Travel, and it solves very little. This form is extremely limiting. Also, hey, uh, how's about a riddle? <laughs> Take your mind off. The riddle? I'm in no what runs mm -hmm. with no legs. Easy, a nose. A computer. You have to try harder than that, bro. Just you wait, smart guy. Where is everyone <laughs> Just going, you wait, I smart guy. They must have withdrawn, <clears throat> hidden Where themselves out go? in the wilds, and covered their tracks with magic. No way of knowing how many are left. Or yeah, the Vanaheimians, or whatever the fuck you're going to call them. Uh, the Vanaheimers. Soul shit ton of people we don't see any of them because they're all hiding away which is their yep. way of trying to get away with this in Svartalfheim you see some dwarves where they mostly run away into their houses and then the other realms like everyone's dead basically so their way of avoiding having to do lots of character model stuff but you know even in Asgard they try and make concessions on how they'll go about uh presenting people which isn't a spoiler everyone knew you're gonna see Asgard in this game at some point I didn't say how wait right. what what did you call the Vanir what did you call them the Vanaheimians yeah <laughs> the Vanna Humblos. That's something Brock would say. Yes. Well, all those Vanaheimers. Vanaheimers. <laughs> Gotta keep your Vanaheimen intact until marriage. Or how to reach them. Acer ran cockshot all over They're this Vanacy. place. They're huh? You can thank Mimir for that. War with the Vanir was never my idea. My idea was brokering the marriage to end it. A great success that was. Obviously, the peace was no less a disaster than the marriage. Maybe Did he invade out. again as soon as I was exiled? Also, if you find any small mice. What was that? Sorry. Nothing. Nothing at all. I legit have no idea what you said. I missed it. That's all right. I'm just enjoying the music. We're having a gale time. Ultimate in the 
very early, you'll find the laser, which is laser. pretty trash in this game. Yeah. Brock's incredibly intimidating battle stance. Well, I don't know if you saw it, but he did a move where he like stunned and uh, hurt the yeah, shit out of three, all three of them. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, damn. That's what I, said, is like, I was like, Brock stunning all three of them. He, like, he hits them once and he just yeah. stands there. Like, they yeah, know. No. They know his power. And they know. They know. That's Fimble the Winter. <laughs> He's just like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, I'm losing my shit at how easily you're killing yeah, these guys. You don't know how difficult these things were I, for me. This, <laughs> I played the game on no mercy mode. I died many times. <laughs> this is easy, oh, super easy mode. It's because I needed you know, the custom. You know, actually... No Mercy, I think, is the same as Give Me God of War, with the exception of the that level up mechanic that I was telling you about, where okay. the, um, really? the the enemies will just like kind of randomly level up, and you can you can interrupt them out of it with a ranged attack or an elemental strike of some kind, but it does make it so that you really need to yeah. you really have to keep an eye on the battlefield, which um, the camera doesn't help you with. I know the difference. Enough. The difference between no mercy and normal is already huge. Yeah, that's what, that's what I figured out. I was like oh, that. Is, that yeah. feels like there should be something in between almost. I remember when I was playing this mode. Obviously, the easiest is just I got hit like fucking twenty five times in the fight with um, <laughs> Thor, just because I was I was half. I had the controller in one hand. Basically, I was trying to do something else, and uh, mm. I was just getting surprised. Like fuck, I'm still not dead. <laughs> like how is this <laughs> happening? And memories of that wagon. Fancy folks and quality meats. And though I remember your brother stirring up an awful scene. Why do you keep bringing him up? My brother is no concern of yours. Do you understand? Oh, I understand plenty. Listen, I know how bad it can get with one's own kin. Sindri and I were on the out so long it was like not having a brother at all. Now nah, I take some of the fall for that on account of me walking out. But it never stopped me blaming him most. Any of this sound familiar so far? And what is your point? My point is, that weren't the end all of things after all. Once we got our heads right, it was like no time to pass. He went straight back to being as big a pain in my ass as he ever was. Mm. That's family. You gotta keep them close. Where they make you good and crazy. Why do you think I need to hear any of this right now? My focus is on regaining my freedom, and I have no intention of being distracted. Look, all I'm saying is, if you happen to find yourself talking to your brother, maybe the worst words said between you don't have to be the last one said. Enough! When the day comes to face Freya again, it will be when I am standing on my feet and free. Do you understand oh, me? It will not be while I'm stuck in this preposterous situation. Got a case of pride, I get it. Hope yours clears up quicker than mine did. A touching story, that was. Bite me. You wish. Bite me. You wish. I, uh... That's one of the things I can yeah. still do. Scenes Great. like that really let you know what kind of character Brock is. I'm gonna make yeah. fun of everybody, but I am going to let you know that I care a lot about this situation in my own way, and I'm trying to help you. Yep. Like he, uh, all of that was because he wants Freya and Freya to, to you know, be friends, and uh, part of his investment in that is probably because he knows Lunda. Lunda, I keep misremembering her. Lunda. Yeah. Uh, you know that she's gonna be a part of Freya's camp, so it's gonna be better if we can all sync up. Yeah, and he's just like, he's kind of fucking around. He's kind of making fun, but at the same time, yeah. he's opening up an idea here that she, he's hoping she'll resonate with, while Mimir and Kratos are sort of just like, hmm, go ahead, dude. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know. Go nuts. What did Odive everyone away? What weapons did he make the dwarves build him? How much was just Mjolnir? Can one man do this much damage? Depends on the weapon. Give me a boot. Hmm. Fucking kidding me. Did you guys get what? to actually see that? It, see what? It skipped out for me. Yeah, it, it did says depends on the weapon and the man. Yeah. That's like an awesome moment. The fucking stupid ass video skipped out. <laughs> what, did what are the odds? To drive everyone away? 
Mjolnir. What weapons did he make the dwarves build him? How much was just Mjolnir? Can one man do this much damage? Depends on the weapon. And the man. Give me a boot! Great. Happy that played properly that time. Good. <laughs> that's, yeah. For some yeah, reason, just, uh... Jeebus told, just decided to make it jump on that out, out of all the things it could have jumped on. Rude. Jesus was like, so, heard you were uh, looking at other pantheons. Yeah, what's well, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, like, why did you? People think it was my editing. Could you see the loading signal? That that's that's watched together. Okay, not me. How dare you! You don't go telling no one about that. Run up! Bet you're glad old Brock's around to save you. Uh oh. We should probably go get him. Keep your guard up. Seems like such such a mellow uh, what reaction. What we have here? Oh, one eye send another god to do his dirty work. Thor, too busy. We do not serve Odin. <laughs> no. Picked a dangerous place for sightseeing then. All right. No, no. No need for threats, brother. I know we probably should save it after. I don't know if I'll remember it, but just do you see his reaction the second he started hearing Mamiya talk? Yep. Yeah. But immediately like, like oh, oh, great. Me. Oh, I know that voice. <laughs> you know, I'd cut off your head, but it seems somebody beat me to it. Aye. Oh, quite observant, brother. Oh, no, you're no brother of mine. He sold my sister to that prick. We broke it a piece. Oh, did you now? Where is it? Hmm? And where is my sister? Some dungeon in Asgard? Is she even alive? Answer me. So a few things. I like that the subtitle actually changes credit in the middle of scenes when you discover who the person is. He was Vanya Stranger and then he turned into Freya. Yeah. yeah. And I like that him getting closer to Mimir, not necessarily to hurt him, Kratos is like, back the fuck up, buddy. Like, yes. Oh, my friend. My head. Yeah. Nobody gets to touch him. Yeah, get your own. I guess we'll settle for blood. Um, also, really, once again, great first impression of the actor for this character. Like, Absolutely, uh, yeah. Man, it feels yeah, like whoever his good. sister is real kids about him. Obviously, we know who it is. I'm just saying. Like, it's uh, them eyes. Stop! What is that? Why do you speak in her voice? It's me, Ingvi. There's no time to explain. Just listen. These men are in my service. I'm here to reclaim what's been taken from me. It's too late. You can't undo what's been done. I can. I will. Now let them pass. So... You serve my sister. Come down. What's with leaving me hanging like that, you crusty hag? <laughs> oh, can it, Blobber? Come here. Well, found who I was looking for. Think I'm gonna stay and catch up. Oh, are you now? Do as you wish. Brother, if you wouldn't mind, I'd have a word with Lord Freya. Sorry we got off on the wrong foot there, stranger. We're pretty used to only seeing Aesir in these parts. Don't typically get friendly faces. That... That is a friendly face, right? 
His name is Kratos, and no. <laughs> and no. I just appreciate that. Like, he ain't friendly, no. <laughs> He's my Manaheim. big Greek bodyguard. Yeah, we've been occupied since... Uh, I lost count. What is your plan? Still kind of working on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother, mm -hmm. I think I could be of use here. If my counsel is welcome. Well, I'll take what I can get. Your mission will go considerably smoother without me in the mix. Come back for me when you're done. Hey, Kratos. As long as you're working for my sister, carefully you don't screw up. She's not too big on forgiveness. A bit late for that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's such a like, oh boy, you don't even want to know. All right, let's see what we've got here. Oh, Tell me about too. your army. Oh, you're looking at it. What, you five? Against Odin's army? Well, six, if you count the dog. Oh, fuck me. Very, very important. <laughs> <laughs> you know their numbers. <laughs> oh, yeah, numbers, movements, outposts. We have good intel. Uh, just short on help. I see. Well, let's have a look at the map then. Now that the distractions are out of the way. I have words, if you would hear them. Speak, then. With anger you feel for your brother, I know it well. You have a brother? His name was Demos. When we were boys, was so he was taken by two Demos. gods obsessed yeah. with prophecy. The gods of my homeland seldom left survivors. So by the time I learned he had lived, it was too late for amends. His anger poisoned him against me. But I never stopped loving my brother. You think my anger is irrational? You've known Freya for mere moments, and already you're taking his side? I am not taking his... No. You're just sharing your thoughts on a subject you know nothing about. An ancient... So yeah, that to me feels like a repeat almost of what she did with Atreus, where she's like, okay, fine, yes, I'll, I'll hear you out. And the more he talks, the more angry she gets, and then she'll just... Yeah. She goes for what is essentially the worst possible interpretation of what he's saying. And I think that's deliberate. Like, uh, she does it a couple of times in these conversations. Mm -hmm. This is uh, something cool that happens. You come across an ancient, and I'm going to show you what happens when you do well against it versus shit. Oh, really? You've fought them before, haven't you? Figures. <laughs> it's a wonder I've had such difficulty killing you. Kind of neat, both ways. <laughs> uh, like, just just indicative of how much she does like not that. like that you're yeah. alive. <laughs> yeah. Okay, obviously you knew what to do, so... Well, she's not just an being a bitch. <laughs> this is a lot of <laughs> section is her being an asshole. I know what you're doing. Trying to play on my sympathies in the hope I let you live. I am only trying to help. The mistakes of the past need not be repeated. I don't need to hear about the mistakes. I've made enough of my own, thanks. Everyone is so eager to advise me. As if any of you know me or what I need. The biggest loss in my life is due to you saving me when I specifically told you not to. Well, it was my family. My mess. I know Baldur wasn't perfect, but he was mine. I know. You know? You think you can even begin to understand the pain of losing a child? Ooh. Yes. Yeah, I can. do. There was another. Before Atreus? Her name was Calliope. Calliope. He crashed to the ground. What happened? It was long ago. Never mind. I shouldn't have asked. It's one of them, like, moments when you're playing this as yeah. someone who's a huge fan of the entire series. This is like, oh yeah. my god, are we about to acknowledge his whole family? Thank you, yes. Holy yeah. shit. He said the words Calliope. Yeah, it feels, uh... A little intense because it's just like he doesn't open up about this stuff, okay? With yep. basically anybody. It's but really um, awesome. he's talking to someone he's trying to gain the trust of who mm. lost their kid, so it just you know. They waited and I feel like they've earned their place with him talking about this. Absolutely. It's uh I was so happy when they started talking about it. It's just like, man. That was like one of those random goosebump moments that I didn't expect personally. So it's like, oh shit, he's talking about this? I thought we would never hear about that, but yeah, we'll we'll get more here in a second. Well, then, yeah, likewise with Demos, though, it's a, the, the the biggest moment with Calliope, like aside from obviously her her role in the first game, 
was um in Chains of Olympus, the like the other PSP spin-off yeah. that Ready at Dawn made, where it's the the tap X to let go of your daughter's hand right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> in Elysium thing. Yeah, it's uh it's it's pretty good. And yeah, and really uh, kind of... if you know she tried to needle him again, but it fucked up. She was like gonna call the card of like, I have been through suffering more than you have, and it's what I was saying earlier, it's like you haven't, bitch. <laughs> like yeah, stop, yeah. stop pretending like you have. And uh, even she was like, "Oh shit!" And then yeah, it develops a little further. I know you. You should know my daughters. In the service of a cruel god, I was tricked into destroying a village, not knowing my own wife and child were there until their blood stained my hands. I swore revenge. That's. I can't imagine. I paid back their blood a thousand times and burned Olympus to the ground. Yet, the guilt remained. Perhaps you will kill me, Freya, but it will bring you no peace. Perhaps it is not peace I seek. All those times I found you, why'd you refuse to fight me? Every outcome would mean defeat. What does that mean? I have never wished you harm, Freya. You helped us. You saved Atreus when he was sick. I did not wish to live with killing you any more yeah. than I wished to die. I see. So good. Oh. Yeah, it's just this impossible <laughs> position that he's been stuck in for yeah. the past like three years. And it's not been fun for him. I used to play hide and seek with Freyr in the crops. I spend afternoons stealing honey bread from the Grand Hall. At harvest time, we dance and feast until the sun rose. It was all so simple. Why did I want to come back here? And be reminded of all this. It wasn't enough what Odin did to me. He's desecrated every memory I have of home. Be glad you have a home to remember fondly. In Sparta, we were taken from our homes as children and raised in the Agoji. We marched though we drowned. Fought for scraps or starved. Our elders beat us till we could not stand. At night, we made our way home. You notice how I realized how fucking loud that was? So I was like, well, I guess I'm just gonna stand here while he says this instead, because I don't want to fucking yeah. ruin it. Alone. Or we're food for wolves. That Yum. is how Spartans are made. Well, considering how Spartans are made, it's no wonder you turned out as you did. Your fate was sealed from the start. Fate can be overcome. I used to think so. When the Norns told me of my son's fate, I thought I could change it. You know well how that worked out. The Norns. The fates of these lands. That's right. You defy prophecy at your own peril. The yeah, all these pieces of dialogue, they're all like revealing pieces more of, of Kratos' history is making more sympathetic to Freya. But at the same time, you know, it, we can still generate slight pieces of conflict. It's like agreements are coming out of conflict, and it's just stuff to talk about because they got to do something on their way to getting uh, their, uh, their free from a curse. And so all it's going to do is what it always does. It just gradually humanizes uh, him to her. And um, yeah. it's, it's, it's that, like, they're talking about all of the things you're probably going to want to aim for them to talk about, but they didn't, like, rush it. They've gotten onto these topics... A lot of it is her bitterness that he doesn't understand that she's been wronged intensely, but he totally does. I also think that her telling or him telling her about his past in order to give her a bit of a sense about what he's gone through and what his history is like is it, it also kind of achieves the same goal of tell like reminding us that like yeah the, this guy is a a spartan who who grew up in the way that you see like the, i don't know the things that like the beginning of 300 where they Rough. look at the babies and decide if they're gonna throw them off the the cliff or not and then they when they're a preteen they send them out into the woods and they they do that whole thing where they come back as spartans or not at all and it's like ah oh, man like it's it's nice to be reminded of that every now and then and to think of how cool it is that he then became the god of war and is now in Norse mythology. Like, it's all, it's all really, really cool stuff. Trace would agree with you about prophecy. He rushes blindly to a fate the giants foretold. Disappears for two days, trying to prove he is their champion, favored to fight at Ragnarok. What? 
I know all the Ragnarok prophecies. There's no champion of the giant. It is one glow concealed. Because of this champion, the realms are saved at Ragnarok. Only Asgard falls, and Odin with it. So all this time, Odin's obsession with every detail of Ragnarok, he's been missing a crucial piece. Ha! Well done, Groa. Atreus will not be- Some, uh, some fun thought once you get further along. Aha, yeah. Odin doesn't know this secret. Mm-hmm. Upon a prophecy. You still stand against fate. Even with victory foretold. I will not march my son to war. He is no Spartan. I would keep it that way. You would speak to me of protecting your child? Is my tragedy not enough of a lesson? Fighting fate is a waste of the precious time we're given to spend with them. You never know when someone will come along and cut it short. More neat tunes. Um, I think yeah. part of this plays during the fight with Neathog, but I decided to uh, I've chopped that one up mainly for its story, so there's no musical moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Ragnarok will not bring back what you have lost any more than killing me. I am reaching my limit for enlightened platitudes from you today. Can you please just shut up and kill things? Can be seen as funny, but telling Kratos of all people that shit, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> Tell me to kill again. What? I killed to protect my son, to aid my friends. But I will be no one's monster. Never again. You don't get to make that choice. Not with the debt you owe me. I am not here for debts. I would always have helped you. So much has been taken from me, and I'm just supposed to let it all go? Freya. Enough. And that, to me, is the crux of her entire emotional fucking turmoil. Yeah. Is I'm supposed to, I gotta do something in response to what you did. I have to. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything that's happened to me, but part of what's interesting about what's happened to her is that one of the things, for example, that made her commit to going for Kratos is like, okay, so I gotta get that warrior spirit back. And she did. And it's like the, the ability to actually harm again. And that was one of the bigger reasons why she wasn't getting involved in anything. It's like, also, I really want to fucking kill him, but I can't bring myself to yet. You know what? I can use him to get access to the other curse that prevents me from traveling the realms. And of course, if I break that, then I'm almost back to like full power. And it's like everything that was restricting her, her pathway that related to getting revenge on Kratos has already opened up a lot for her. And it's starting to become like a thing of, what's well, so you just going to kill him because what? It just, it just feels like you should. Like there's some kind of obligation. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. like, what exactly is it that's motivating you? To, the longer that this conversation... It's pretty apparent, right? The longer the conversation goes on, the more her will to continue with that quest is being whittled away. Because, again, it's just more information that recontextualizes who Kratos is instead of just this... Basically, this uh, thin... Um, like, instead of being able to view him simply as... Um, like, the entity that was responsible for Boulder's death. Instead, it's, oh, this is, like, a person, and all of this history explains so much about who he is and how he operates, especially the Greek backstory. World tree roots bound in Odin's damn knots. That's how he did it. Come on! <laughs> That scared the piss out of me the first time that happened. <laughs> it's, I did not expect that I was to expecting a payoff of he helps her break him apart when she doesn't even want help to do it, you know? And it, but it's like, nope, yeah. suddenly Godzilla. Like, oh, God. <laughs> no, no, Godzilla. Yeah, yeah we, we, we mentioned him. You. Her. Finally! 
that was pretty cool. I think it's yeah, epic as fuck that cool. she, as a bird form, tears out the Vanaheim restriction, turns back yeah, into yeah. warrior mode, and then fucking helps you. That's so cool. <laughs> you have what you seek. I suppose this is the point where I forgive you. Where I kill you. Forgive him, yay. Have you decided? I really love the choice of what he does with the axe. It's an implication yeah. of I'm not gonna let you kill me. So, yep, yep. what's the decision? What are we gonna do here? can do either. There's still a part of me that is so angry that it'll always be it'll always be angry. But no. You are not the one who needs to die. I do see that. I almost want to try and break it up a little bit because there's so much to say otherwise, but... <laughs> yeah, everything we've been talking about, all that argumentation, basically she's just, she's at the point where she's forced to make the decision and it just makes no sense at all to kill him at this point. Especially yeah. with, uh, she's got almost everything back. Now if she's got a team of people, now we've got access, like, killing Odin, stopping Odin, it's a potential now. It's something that yeah. Atreus brought up, she was like, you know, I can't, I can't do anything with Odin, hopefully Ragnarok takes care of him, but now that's not true. And it's like, are we really going to use everything we've just gotten to kill Kratos? Or could it maybe now your focus turn on someone else? And it just looks like that that's that's what really tipped her over, being like, all this effort <laughs> I put into in terms of killing you has granted me access to everything I need to do what I think is actually important. Yeah. Uh, see the rest of this. Fuck. If 
everything that's happened between us. No need to explain. Not to me. Mm hmm Not for that. Rhea. When last we spoke, I was... No. You were right to distrust the word of a god. No need to explain. Not to me, not for that. Oh, I forgot about that. I will. Dude, that's one of my favorite callbacks. Uh, oh, it's. Shit. I even said I just, it, it, the why it stuck out to me is it didn't quite feel like Kratos' dialogue to say not to me, not for that. But it's because he's repeating back to me what she said to him. It's, it's fucking great. I just found it great on its own already. <laughs> I'll keep him. That's a mother's promise. It won't happen again. I promise. You see that it does not. regret saving your life and never will but the choice between life and death should have been yours to make I should not have robbed you of that choice What a Man, fucking that, that, scene. Yeah, that, that sigh there at the end is like... Yeah. Oh. Um, obviously, a yeah. pretty big character arc there. What's yeah. happening is that that is years of weight that is now finally yeah. lifted. And I think exactly. a huge part of why she's so capable of moving on now is that he told her exactly what her problem was. He understands yep. what's, why she's mm -hmm. so fucking pissed. Beyond, obviously, the death of his son. Um... Yeah, uh, and phenomenal performances once again. And what a great callback. How much you guys care about the story that came before. Good mm -hmm. job. What really, I love so really much good. about it is that it presents, it presents a more honest uh, sort of answer to the question that the story essentially raises, which is like, will Freya forgive him? And then, as, as though it's a binary, right? Like Credo said, forgive or kill him. It's like, it's a little more complicated than that. She's angry, and she's upset, and she can feel that way, and she can still find a way to push forward, and, like, move forward and, and forge something with Kratos. And conversely, Kratos made a choice, um, a choice that he believes to be right in terms of saving uh, her life, but then there's also the recognition of what exactly it is that's, like, the breach from her perspective, you know, one of them anyway. Um... And just acknowledging that, it's just I I like it for that. Feels like it's it's uh it's meaningful, it's mature, you know, in terms of what it has to say. It's um it's what connects uh Freya and Kratos a lot uh, and Boulder. Mm -hmm. there's, there's all these um, impossible positions, super positions that they all seem to maintain, which is very human. Like I yep. Uh, one of the ones you can talk about as a connection would be that she refused to let Boulder know how to undo the spell because she absolutely cannot let him die but at the same time she fucking hates that he's suffering and hates that mm -hmm. he hates it she still maintained it right up until he died um mm -hmm. of course kratos being like like it's so obvious if you were with kratos you'd be like so you don't want to die but you're not gonna kill her like you understand that you're gonna have to make a choice eventually and all he's been doing for these past few years is desperately reaching a point where he doesn't have to make that choice again and again and again so tense so overwhelmingly frustrating and and yeah this is the moment where he finally doesn't have to worry about that anymore um yeah and that's what that sigh is it is a sigh of relief of relief yeah exactly well and, um an interpretation that was added on that i didn't even necessarily think about after i saw an interview was that um what they told him to motivate him to make this sigh as well as everything else is happening 
is Kratos knowing uh, that she's just made a decision that he very well not, not might Maybe be able not to have made. make. Yeah, could he ever forgive the person who killed his son? And he's so relieved that she could. I say forgive. Whatever is happening here, it's a very complicated emotional state between these two. And uh, her expression when he explains what he regrets, uh, it's just, yeah, this is... Uh, and I feel like they took their time, but I'm going to prompt you because you're not saying as much. But what did you think, Theo? I believe you had a controversial opinion on this, at least to me, at one point. Okay. Dead. Smart move. <laughs> Which opinion? I'm racking my... Uh, I think... Trying to meet my position regarding the resolution of this. Well, uh, I mean, whatever opinion you currently have, I'm not actually... Because like, when you first told me, it sounded controversial. Maybe it is, maybe it is, I don't know. Just, what do you think? Okay, I don't really have a... My opinion just pretty much aligns with yours at this point, because I thought at first that it was happening a bit too fast. Like, I was kind of... Just watching through it, I was kind of dumbstruck by how quickly everything happened, progressing from Freya's various emotional states to the next, to the point where she's willing to fully, like be on side as it were but we've talked about that and yeah uh, i don't know if that really there's plenty of reason to inform why things progress at this pace i think i don't, I don't blame anybody for necessarily coming to that conclusion it's that freya is uh is a fucking giant washing machine a blender of emotions mainly being fury uh and so a lot of how she gets through this sequence is uh she's snapping from one sort of like approach to another like, because Freya is a very kind and caring person, but at the same time, she's got it in her head that this fucker needs to die. And so she keeps, like, oscillating between trying to accept and understand and listen, but also just every time he triggers her with any possible bad understanding or interpretation, she bites his head off. But, you know, she's finally forced to really make that decision, and that's what we got. Um, yeah. yeah, I think uh, this moment ranked pretty high for you, right, Fringy, until some, some other moments happened. Like, this was a... Uh so yes up until this point this is one of my well i mean i mean I, I would say it's one of my favorite moments in the game the problem is that when i say one of my favorites there's a pretty big list at this point <laughs> this point. yeah there are moments i really like um i kind of said it before but i uh think that they did a fantastic job with freya um like she's one of the best characters in this game when yeah, I, I say I, one of the best, I mean like she is competing for she is competing for a super duper high up spot on that part list. of um why yeah I mean we've kind of looked at it only from uh, her and Kratos' relationship. What's going on for her here is that for many years Odin has just had complete control over her, played with exactly. her like a puppet, yep. and mm -hmm. well, took everything from get, her yeah. by using her. It's been a nightmare, especially when we get more information on the side quest. Uh, she when she said "get out of me," I think she's referring not yep. just to the roots as part of uh, the Odin's, Odin's roots in her life, essentially. That like so much of her current situation is controlled by him, this person that she absolutely hates. Yeah, um, she's she's regaining her freedom and autonomy. What a fucking and having disaster. regained it. Yeah, because that's what know, her and Freya were talking about make. vaguely is that the Vanaheim needs leadership and help, and she hasn't been able to offer that this whole time. To the point where, uh, as she said in the 2018 game, as like the Vanya hate her because she betrayed them as far as they're concerned. Mm -hmm. But she's been desperate to try and get back to him because, and, and that's the thing, she loved his son. His son was with Odin. His son was an Aesir. It's uh, got a lot to have to deal with. Oh, I also wanted yep. to point out again, I said it a lot during my streams and everything, but... That they had, that they they had the choice to just disregard basically the, the the original trilogy and the other games as like these silly fighting games with that uh, clown I think, character. I feel uh, like that's almost. been dropped by now, but people really did push that sentiment that they find these games frustrating because they don't seem to like their origin, their history. Which I can't say that. Yeah. The comparison and to I make was... is with The Last of Us 2. That game hates how yeah. how it, its prior <laughs> game ended. Like fuck you for yeah. ending this way. We're gonna change it. Yeah, it's yeah. strange to recontextualize things so that you see it in a different light. Yeah, and the way they do it here, where they take these parts that are like really important to Kratos' character and everything, uh, and integrating it in this game and make it super meaningful, and we get it like something like this, where he actually talks about Calliope and Demos and what's been happening, and it's like I was I was really impressed they did that. They just didn't make a Yep. Make a laughing stock of what came before it. 
and they just put it in there and it's really good and i i'm, I'm a big fan of that and uh, I think it's worth mentioning because it was so well accentuated by uh, Fringy's particular playthrough by this, but it's, I think it's just a straight up mistake they shouldn't have had. You unlock the amulet right after this happens. Now, if you remember in the uh, opening, it's da 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 da. It's like her theme when she's attacking critters. Right now we're doing da da. Like it's really soft and slow to try and imply like yes, we've finally got there. It fucking hardcore halts. When you pick up the, you, it's right in front of you. It's press circle to pick up the, and it's like, Zing, you've unlocked the amulet. Oh. It's like, it's like, <laughs> I, I, not, not now. Calm down. Do this like slightly later. Let this, let the song settle. Let this, That's let it all fair, settle. Yeah. Don't do the thing. It's like, it's just barging in like, hello, mechanics. <laughs> like, I'm just, okay. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Video game here. I suppose it's time to face my problem. Okay, I, I chopped it out because it's uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> going into the uh, what we were talking about a moment ago about you know the old game and recognizing those. This game seems to pull kind of like the opposite of what Marvel does, where this game is willing to. I mean, it understands it's building off of something. It needs that old thing to kind of have this thing, and it's kind of accepting the baggage along with that and then working with it instead of just trying to have it both ways. The best mm -hmm. attitude towards repairing your story I think you can absolutely yeah. possibly have. You have to just be like, that is my history. That is what I'm building on. Take me seriously or don't. I'm using it, um, you know, in a, in a respectful manner, in a way that I'm acknowledging what it is. Um, it's interesting, too, because, uh, it, it, you know, arguably this game is incomplete without more awareness of what happens in 2018, but... As many people will say who've played the whole franchise, it's like you're missing out if you don't play the first three before this game too, which is mm -hmm. like, Jesus Christ, really? It's like, yeah. That's uh, yeah. how much to it, draw. It's it's honestly why it still to me sucks that most of these games are best played on PS3. Because the only the only God of War game that is from the original series that you can even play right now on a modern console is the God of War 3 remaster. Right. Yeah, because yeah. I've got... I've now got everything up to that uh, ready to play on PS3. I think I've got two copies of God of War 3 now. One on PS3 and one that's remastered ready to play on PS5 yeah. if I wanted to. Yeah, that yeah, copy well, is... It's, it's the copy one is that you can play on PS4 <laughs> or 5. It's, so um, it's still like... This franchise has earned my worship to some degree at this point. <laughs> where yeah. I'm like, owning two copies of it, I was like, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I'm fine with it too. Yeah, yeah. And after that? I don't know. It's been a long time since I've had a choice. Let me live with that for a moment. Your brother seemed open to your return. Oh, I'm sure he'd love nothing more than for everything to go back to how it was. Leaving the responsibilities of leadership to me. It's not as though I want to be angry with Freyr. He's my brother. He was the most important person in the world to me for half my life. Wait, Skull and Hadi are in Vanaheim? We learned the giants rescued them from Odin and brought them here. And look, the sunlight wakes the sleeping roots. See how they stretch to welcome the sun? Beautiful, no? A far cry from the sheets of Midgard snow I've grown accustomed to. So much has happened since I last saw Freyr. I'm not even sure where to begin. What do you want from him? An apology would be a start. I want to forgive him. I'd like to think he's changed. He's all I have left now. What I'll say is that um, a lot of why this meeting next is going to be meaningful is in overt like, cutscene dialogue, but a lot of it is in lore pickups. And find out like what Freya and Freya mean to each other, how they got to the positions they're in. And one of the bigger elements is just that during Alfheim, which you you heard pieces of, um, you know, Freya finds out that Freya. Uh, forgive my accent because it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> um, the 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 there was uh, the marrying off to Odin and whether or not he believed his sister was in trouble. And so he left Alfheim. Go and see what he could do about it. He was. Uh, Attacked, ridiculed, and burned by the Aesir, and booted out, presumably. And so he's been trying to generate a resistance and maintain it while believing that something horrible may have happened to her. As you, as you heard what he said to uh, Mimir, is she in one of Odin's cells? Is she even alive? Um, so 
you know, she feels like he didn't turn up at all when that's 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 her brother. So where was he? Why didn't he ever come to Midgard? Why didn't he find out what happened to her? And so there's a lot of stuff going on between them. And so a conversation between them is a long time coming is kind of what I'm getting at. And even Kratos is like, he asked a pretty good question. What do you want from that conversation? What are you, what are you looking to, to find from him? And since she's in human form... Dies to Demos. It there. is difficult to seek forgiveness when you feel unworthy. Forgiveness can be powerful, even for the unworthy. My wife, Faye, taught me that. Hmm. Well, be glad you have a spouse to remember fondly. Which is a pretty neat callback. He said, be glad yep. you have a remember home you can home. remember. Yeah. All my former spouse taught me was that there's no limit to the depth to which a soul can sink into darkness. Oh, burning wasn't related to the burning was before the wedding. Really? Um, because they—that's the one thing I was actually confused about was the burning. I wanted to know more exactly what happened because the way everyone describes it is like he was set on fire, but presumably it wasn't lethal because he's alive. <laughs> so it's just uh, I, I wasn't. All I know is the 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 main parts. Obviously, is that they've spent a lot of time apart from each other, and they both feel like the other didn't do enough. Uh, depending on whatever station they they were in, but um, yeah, I need to um, refresh on the uh, on the law pieces on that one as well. He taught the magic and got burned, and then there was war. Is that what started the war? Again, I'd have to read all of the things. That's one of the things I I didn't include in this set of uh, I didn't even include the notes Kratos has on like Odin and Thor and stuff. Um, I don't think we would be able to finish this in any sense of a timely manner. Um. They attacked him because the he tried to teach them to grow f crops and it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> they sucked at it, so they set him on fire. See, the thing is, uh, I think it was mentioned by Mimir that Heimdall burned uh, Durlin. So I guess that's a uh, that's the way they like to punish people. Me into marriage to spare my home and took my home just the same. Scattered my people to the wind. Maybe it's time somebody drew the line. Like salt on a table. Maybe it's time no. someone makes Groa's prophecy come true. I will not wish for war, Freya. War is a terrible thing, Kratos. But some things are even worse. The god of war doesn't want war. They've ruined him. Yeah. That's soy. pretty cock of war, soy of... God of soy. Ragnarok. Uh, uh, yeah. Cuckarok. <laughs> You know, if Atreus rushes to Ragnarok, you may not be able to stop him. I will. And if you fail? I have prepared him to survive without me, if he must. <laughs> the, is there an implication there that he's going to stop him or die trying? I, I would assume so, yeah. And that he's comfortable with the idea that he likely will because of the prophecy thing. Which, which is pretty cool as conflict. He keeps denying prophecy as a thing, but he at the same time is clearly trying to prepare for the fact that it's true. Mm -hmm. um, though I suppose it's good to prepare, regardless. You, know, you never know what's going to happen. No. It really is you. <laughs> you returned to us at last. Yes. Uh, let's celebrate. You reclaim the throne, we'll rebuild. Me and you against the world. Huh? Just like the old days. I'm... not staying. I don't understand. You're here. Maybe together we can take back what's ours. I only just got back what's mine. I still have work to do. <sighs> You've seen what's left of the realm, right? Do we really mean that little to you? You question my loyalty? Vanaheim turned its back on me. Oh, you still can't let go of that old fight. It was my duty to save as many of our people as possible. My responsibility. One you didn't take seriously then, and from the looks of it, one you don't now. You think this is a game to me? Yeah. <sighs> we lost everything to that maniac you called husband. 
The man's family set me on fire. How did you expect me to react? Like my brother. Like the boy that used to have my back no matter what. And who I always supported no matter how selfish his choices. <sighs> I expected you to come and find me. That no matter how hurt or mm. angry, you wouldn't abandon me. Freya, please. I thought you were dead. No. I've had to live lifetimes with those last awful words I said to you. Have any idea what that's like? Knowing that your own selfishness hurt the person that you cared about the most. Abandon you. Oh, Freya. I mourned you. Oh, I've missed you so much. And I, you, Evie. But I won't bind myself to another realm when I finally have my freedom. I'll send help, though. And I will come back. I promise. This hasn't been your home for a long time, has it? Do what you gotta do. All right, all right, that's enough. <laughs> Ain't y'all got nothing better to do than gawking at family sorting squabbles? Come on, you two. What a fucking legendary way of being able to turn the tone to a different direction. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, it's one of the things I tried to talk about when I was talking about how you how you move tone. So like when you have a character that's expected to do cut tone, like almost every time he's in a scene. It's like mm -hmm. a, almost like a cheat code, but it's um, highly expected. Brock, what a legend. But anyway. And they, they gave it enough time to breathe, you know? Like, they finished their thing, they had, like, a moment, and you have, like, another five to ten seconds or whatever. When he's and doing the thing that... Um, looking. That happens in real life. Like, when someone's having that level of a fucking, like, domestic, you sort of... You, people will watch and listen, because it's like, man, this yeah. is just like TV. And then he's just like, he's been through it many times with his own family members. He's like, stop fucking watching him and staring. It's weird. Move. Yeah. Or at least, can you look? Can you look like you're not staring at them? At least, like, <laughs> at least try not to look awkward. He's uh, this is what I mean. He's you might be like, what a cloud. He's fucking around. So he's like, nah, Brock's doing this because he cares about him. He wants them yep. to uh, you know, have their moment and not be stared at and blah blah blah. It's a private thing. But yes, um, well, thoughts on that scene? Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? I think, I think that that what what an excellent use of time. You know, we Go learned. A, we got a we got a lot. And not a lot of time. Um, elaborate about their relationship, how they feel about each other, the reasons that the reasons why each of them feels the way that they do. Ultimately, how happy they are to be back together, and that she took all that advice to heart along the way that mm -hmm. uh, Freya got from uh, Brock and uh, uh, Kratos. I quite like the um, the dynamic change and how justified they were. Right, the the opening of just. Hey, how you doing? We haven't seen each other in a while, and it's totally like, are we are we going to ignore all the shit we have to deal with? Maybe we are. Woohoo! Yay! And then she's like, well, okay, anyway, bye, because I got to go sort something out at, at a different place. And he's like, ah, oh, gee, you're doing you're doing that again, huh? That's just that's what you do. You don't really care about about all of us. And then she's like, motherfucker, really? You got to go there? And so it it moves into like the just the bitterness and shit on him for drinking yeah. and shit on each other for not being in the places they probably should have been but like you can tell the turning point in the conversation is when he admits uh his his own flaws led to hurting someone 
he cares about so much. And it's like, uh-oh, parallels. Mm -hmm. He's already said sorry as well. And so, yeah. Uh, and both the actors uh, putting in quite a bit of effort there, at the least. Yeah. Again, and it's just... The most important is letting each other, enough. each other know how much they care about each other. That's what's... That's the truth. They were worried about each other not giving a shit. But the truth is, they really, really did. It was just really bad circumstances. So yeah, uh, I think they did a pretty good job, as Rag said, with the limited time they had to get us from all that shit they had to sort out to it practically being sorted out. Yeah. Just because there's bits Very of information... Yeah, neither of them knew something important about the other in terms of yeah. what happened and why. Which feels appropriate given everything that we just had in that, that segment before between Kratos and Freya. And just Kratos and Atreus. Perspective. Uh, yeah. There are parallels everywhere. They're running around. There oh. are many parallels because it's like poetry. It really it rhymes. is. It rhymes. It does rhyme, though. I remember where to look for a gateway. Follow me. Well, you two seem to be getting on since completing your mission. Dare I hope this alliance has some staying power after all? It seems to me we share a common enemy. Kratos, you may not accept that Ragnarok is inevitable, but you're smart enough to know Odin is a threat. Whatever comes next, our best chance of surviving it is to work together. Do you agree? I do. Then as to Brock's offer, down. you can imagine staying under the same roof as a couple former enemies? No further temptations towards terrible vengeance? Not against you. Either of you. You have my word. So it's true. Tears really alive? Aye. Not exactly ship shape. He sleeps in a broom closet now. But he's adjusting. How did you find him? Largely, that's down to Atreus having figured out how to access the prophecies giants reserved for their own kind. We only learned of it ourselves after Thor and Odin came calling. To your home? Is it still standing? Barely. But all the violence was seemingly just a distraction to let Odin have a private word with Atreus. Odin was alone with your son? Did he tell you what they spoke of? Yes. He said that Odin invited him to Asgard to help him find his answers. The answers he's rushing into fate in search of. That's troubling. Well, brother, before you see the lad again, might we discuss an approach? He will tell me where he has been. That uh, is my well, approach. Well, so I do ah, have a question then in terms of uh, all of this. How much... Is there anything in here for all of the optional Freya stuff? I'm afraid the, uh, that is an absolute uh -huh. zero. We're going to have to bring it up from memory because I don't, I don't, I barely have the time to get us all the story stuff, like yeah. all the side stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the the short version, if we're going to, the short version is yeah, that there is a ton of material in Vanaheim oh, yeah. for Freya that also obviously works for Kratos and Mimir since they're there. It's a, um, it's an example of something that this game does which they didn't do in 2018, which is filling the side content in the story with a lot of meaningful character work and, you know, and plot development. Not necessarily directed, like, very, <clears throat> you know, like, not inextricable from the main plot, um, but definitely fuels uh, a lot of that. Because what we get, specifically with Freya, is a, uh, a fairly extensive um, side quest that delves into... Damn, the problem is that, like, the details are gonna be a bit vague. It was the- it was, uh, to do with her wedding vows with Odin, and, uh, and then retrieving the sword. Yeah, you know? um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's- it's, uh, that's a really great side quest that gives us so much information on Freya and how she perceives the relationship that she had with Odin, and basically finding a way to take that, to take all of the- the, um, essentially the traumas of, of that relationship and try to- move past it and become stronger yeah um it's really great it filters into my perspective of that character in the main quest and it really feels like if you're not doing the side content you are missing out on a huge portion of what the game has to offer narratively which makes it our job to try and summarize as best as i can from my memory she discovers a bunch of items that relate to her history with odin and as she finds and destroys them um mm -hmm. she tells stories about how gradually over the time she you know, was was married to Odin. It started out pretty okay, and he, there was something there. He wasn't, like, the worst thing ever. Um, but she describes a lot of things that were very obsessive about him and strange, and then how the people of Vanaheim, they were still pretty loyal. And you find a couple of spirits that are like, oh my god, I've been waiting for Freya, yeah. and here she is. 
then you also find mm -hmm. like the equivalent of Norse graffiti of people being like Freya betrayed us, she'll never come back, that sort of thing. Um, and and then she says like Vanaheim, as time went on, and she I think she said once Boulder was born, Vanaheim basically turned their back on her. They were like she's done, she's out, she's not one of us anymore. And um, all she she never stopped thinking about them, sort of thing. And Odin's influence and the connection made in aid of trying to broker a peace eventually caused a much worse war to take place. And uh, she was unable to do as much to protect or even speak to the people of Anaheim. But yeah, eventually you gain access to the sword. And uh, she tries to yank it out of... It's in a stone. It's very King Arthur-y. She does a spell and tries to open it. Can't. Tries really hard. Can't. And then she basically says, this sword was meant to represent like the bonding of her and Odin. And she says he had a line, something like the deepest wounds create the strongest bonds or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, implying, of course, that all the damage he did to her makes it so that it's almost impossible to get him out of her, which is a development of what we saw earlier. Um, but she comes around to accepting the sword is almost representative, yes, of the bond she had with Odin, which was more than just poisonous. It wasn't just bad. It also bound her into being the queen of Asgard, which means she shouldn't be so headlong obsessive into destroying Asgard and Odin. There are people there who are innocent and technically that she's responsible for. And so she says, what this sword used to represent is no longer what its legacies are going to be. It, it is an incredible parallel to the Blades of Chaos and Kratos. And it gives you mm -hmm. just enough information that's going to come back and be very important in one of the final payoffs of this game in terms of what happens in Asgard. It's yeah. kind of the reason why it's, like, it's so important to engage with all of this side content. And, and plus as well, like you mentioned it before, right? But as you're exploring uh, Vanaheim, Kratos is helping uh, Freya like free this the the souls of our uh, like you know deceased Vanir, and and just doing all of these things. And a lot of the time, when you complete them, you get a very sincere thank you from Freya to Kratos for helping her do these things. Yeah. Like all of that is into basically my assessment of these characters is that Kratos is going out of his way to do these favors for these people, and way less so in this game than before like the the pretense is, is really starting to drop he's not doing it to get you know resources he's doing it to help people he wants to help people and by the end of that side story uh they've talked a lot about each other in their past and she on your way out of that area she says i appreciate you becoming like my new confidant basically yep. yeah um, yep. there's also a great moment that i should have included but like i said i didn't have the time as you're exiting, I think the main sort of story payoff of that side quest, Mamiya says very sincerely, thank you for saving me. And it feels so strong as a payoff in terms of just, uh, he was never going to, there's never been a great opportunity to say that to her. Because uh, the, the relationship no, everyone's not. sharing has been so fucking abrasive and toxic, he never got to say, because if you remember, when they first meet in 2018, she spits she on him. in his face, yeah. Um, and he even says, if I knew that the Witch in the Woods was Freya, like, I wouldn't have suggested this. Yes. Um, but at this point, yeah, it feels like enough sort of a bridge has been built that he just finally says, thank you for saving my life. Uh, and it's just, yeah, you get a reconciliation between... Uh, at that point, I was so just overblown with how you took her from being this violent psycho that's trying to end my life into one of my, like, closest friends as the protagonist. Like, good job. Mm-hmm. And it's all done with these uh, pieces of history that relate to each other. They they share a hell of a lot of the suffering they've both been through, you know? But yes, that's you get all of that. Um, you can go home before or after that. It's up to you. And as I said, like, it's just when you see that level of... We didn't even talk about the Mamiya one. We can at a, a certain point. No. All right, thing is, right, we, right. Are at, we are at seven hours and we're only at Freya joined the team. So Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Martin Diplomacy. Yes. Aye, but surely the lad's got more say. But surely the lad's got more sense than to- Don't underestimate Odin's powers of persuasion. He filled my son's head with lies. Why wouldn't he do the same with yours? <sighs> You're gone for two days. Also, the another character might have said, uh, you don't think it, it, he, she would- place the blame on Odin for being tricky, not on Atreus for being stupid. Yeah. 
And it's just planting in Kratos' head more and more doubt about Atreus' motives and yep. potential to be tricked. With nobody to watch your back. I'm your partner. We're not supposed to keep secrets. You sound just like father. Whose side are you on? Whose side? I don't know. What does it even mean to be on your side right now? How do I know you won't be running off to Asgard next? If I did, at least I'd be somewhere I could make a difference. Now that is crazy talk. That is the craziest of all possible talks. Why? Odin had the chance to kill me, but he didn't. He offered to teach me. Maybe if I had more answers, I could prevent- Prevent what? What is this about? It doesn't matter. Just let it go, okay? He better screw his head back on. And I mean tightly. So you're back. Or you could just walk Are in. Are you ready to answer me? About what? Where did you go? Who did you see? Was it Odin? What? I really like how Atreus was just having a pretty raised argument with someone. Kratos mm -hmm. walks in and Atreus is like, oh, hey, you're back. Hey, as if as if like yeah. everything's chill. It's like things are not fucking chill, dude. Oh, hi, yeah. Dad. Far from it. Were you going to say something, Mark? I heard, I heard things. Oh, no, I, just, I, I was making a joke. said, oh, uh, hi, Dad. Wow. You can't take this game seriously. You're like a Marvel fan. Oh, my oh, God. Very true. The Everyone knows Mark's Marvel humor. Get him out of here. I'll be doing this. Boo. Think? Do you deny it? <laughs> Answer me! Did you go to Asgard? No! Of course not! But so what if I did? It's my future, it's my life! You are my son! Then why don't you trust me? If you want me to trust you, then tell me the truth! The truth is you're being a complete asshole! Laddie! You know that's no way to change a man's mind! He doesn't have any faith in me! It's fine if he keeps secrets, it's fine if Mom did! It is not fine! Her secrets are hard to be stuck with this path. Mm. Oh, okay. So you don't believe in her anymore either? This is not about your mother! What you have done is lie. Wonder where I learned that. That's quite enough. Since when do you always take his side? Since he became the one making sense. That is such a, like, we've already heard it before, You're but that is that is when Mimir is fucking pissed. Yeah. 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 I yeah. barely yeah. ever hear that tone from him. Look at that face. <laughs> like, yeah. <clears throat> and it's especially Look. chill with Atreus mostly, but now yeah. Atreus is yeah. going, like, absolutely out of control. He's like, You're not making any sense. Well, Absolutely. especially his uh, body language really sells it. True, um, but also, uh, you if if you are ever wondering why it is Mimir is especially angry, you're about to get the answer. I was only thinking about going to Odin, but I swear it's for a good reason. There is no good reason to go to Odin. He'll only cloud your mind. But I'd be going for us. I, I gotta stop something bad from happening. Something bad did happen. Look at me, at Freya, at Tia. Odin did this to us! What's got everyone caterwauling all of a sudden? Atreus wants to go to Asgard. Asgard? Get kicked in the head or something? Great. I guess everybody's against me now. You must choose who you're going to be. Are you going to continue to lie and keep things from me? Or are you my son? Choose? I never get to choose. Just leave me alone. Listen. Let go of me. Listen. Let go. What the fuck? Atreus. What the fuck? Sindri, just, just try to keep control. Come on. Uh, hitting a Sindri is not a cool. Okay. Uh, no, nope. uh, that's a very, big no. Very upset me in my stream. It was first thing I said when Cutsey was over. I was like, "How dare you!" <laughs> like, yep. Yeah. Um, oh boy. He was there. Yeah, and, and him with Atreus ended. His um, he's got control of the wolf, but the bear is not controlled. No, at not least, at all. Not now. Uh. Pretty great because that means Kratos it's was still. Only... Letting him make the choice himself. Mm -hmm. He didn't yes. sprint at but him. Also, also he kept first, calling first him. Time he's called him boy. Boy, yeah. Oh exactly. yeah. It means a hell of a yeah. lot. 
but yeah, I, I actually I think it's worthwhile to mention that Credo still lets him make that choice. Yeah, that's really important. He's a really good dad. Just um, disappointed, you know. <laughs> It's uh, it's it's all those trust issues. They build it up, build it up, and then they're causing trust issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Freezing cold. Lots of Hellwalkers. Definitely in Midgard. This is just a oh. editing mistake. Don't worry about. It. Oh, okay. If I go to Asgard, following the prophecy where Father ends up dead, but if I stay locked up at home, there's nothing I can do to stop it. I guess in Asgard, I could at least keep an eye on Odin. Be a spy. Find out his plan. Take control of this. It, it's okay, buddy. What, Norton? No, he helped the turtle, the tortoise. Yeah, Charlie. He did. He, he, lit, he, was, lit he was really room. cold, and he helped him out. Yep. I think he's here for me. I'll be okay. Think. Okay. I'm ready. Take me to him. It was at this point when I was editing, and I was like, good god. I'm really gonna have to start cutting because, uh, yeah. This is getting so long, and we're not even like. There's still so much story left. A lot of, a lot of flames. Oh also, the fucking Asgard soundtrack. Yeah. That was yeah. a good one, dude. Uh, also, just lost. Asgard. You, you didn't get to see it, chat, but the vista. Yes. The vistas are glorious. Oh yeah. Beautiful, and and uh, there's a commentary almost every time you enter a realm. They talk about what Fimble Winter has done to it in Svartalfheim. It's the the gas and the almost noxious mm -hmm. elements and the earthquakes in Vanaheim. It's like a, an extreme humidity in um, obviously in Midgard and the others. But Asgard is like protected. Odin has seen to it that Fimble Winter hasn't like destroyed it. Um, yeah, it's, a, so. it's nice and warm, beautiful. Yeah. Like, oh, cool. uh, I'm just getting my bangs. Well, there's nothing to see this way except the big wall. Is there a gate to go through? Nope. Not unless you're an ace your god, but I guess you'd know that if you were an ace your god. Me? No. I'm from Midgard. What? No shit. Me too. I'm skilled here. Lucky. Hang on. Are you... All from Midgard? <laughs> yep. The, uh... Allfather saved us from the desolation. Gave us a safe place to settle, but... We don't go in there. Can't get into the city unless you know magic. You... You don't know magic, do you? A little bit, yeah. What? No shit. You, can you walk through walls? Not yet. Huh. Couldn't I just climb over it? Can make my thumb disappear. That? Look, ooh, wow. Down here? <laughs> Whoa! Uh, no, aren't you afraid of dying? Well, yeah. I mean, look at that. But, Odin awaits. Wait, you know the Allfather? I'm sort of his apprentice. No shit! What is he teaching you? I'm not sure. Well, how many other students? I don't know. How long you stayed? You don't know. Okay. I'm gonna go climb that wall now. Well, this I gotta see. Need help? I appreciate it, but I gotta go alone. Oh, I was gonna climb with you. I may owe Odin my life, but I don't owe him my death. Not that I think you're gonna fall. Forget I said anything. Well, that's all very logistical, <laughs> like in terms of yeah. just stuff happening. Some of those lines are going to come back, but uh, yeah, of course, it sets in motion that, hey, Odin saved these guys from Midgard, so, mm. you know, it's a little bit to think about, considering yeah. he's got Makes such a bad rap. Guess. Makes um, a second guess a bunch of things. 
Yeah. Is that Hoogan your guide? Who? Odin's Raven. You know, from Hoogan and Moon. Pretty good guy. Though, not sure he'll know too much about climbing. I feel like it's worth saying that we hear about Hoogan and Moonin being the, uh, the birds that can essentially cause realm travel, but uh, up to this point we only ever hear reference of Hoogan. It's kind of strange. Yes. Well, Loki, you seem like a good guy. I really hope I am not about to watch you die. Thanks. Me too. Did you, did you ever go back down? The... Oh, no, I didn't. What happens? Oh, yeah, he's just like, oh, do you change your mind? It's like, no, I just want to say goodbye properly or something along those lines. I guess like, just like two sentences. Just kind of mm -hmm. neat. neat that it's in there. Yeah. Anyway, new character to introduce. Here we go. Yep. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hi. So, what part of the enormous wall made you think, oh, visitors must be welcome? I kind of want to point it out now because it's just so interesting, but he does so much hand acting. He'll, uh, <laughs> it's true, yeah. He moves yeah. his hands around a lot when he speaks. It's just a neat little flourish he's got. Hey. You must be Italian. I was sent for, actually. Hey. By Odin? There's a tomato in his what hand, not an apple. All Father, King of the Aesir, possibly want with the likes of you. That's between me and Odin. So, um, I kind of, I think I'm just gonna call it out now. It's not exactly like a big old reveal. He, um, he has, like, all-seeing eyes, and it, he specifically has the ability to read your intentions and, like, what you're thinking about. Um, yeah. He can learn a lot about a person just by looking at their eyes. So what's neat about this is he says, why are you here? He's like, Odin sent for me. And he says, you know, why would Odin send for you? Now that, in a normal conversation, would imply he doesn't believe Atreus. It's like, no, what's actually happening here is he knows he's not lying. So he's asking him genuinely, why would he send for you? Mm -hmm. Because I know he did, but why? And then him saying, that's between me and Odin. Look what he says in response. You don't even know, do you? Can't draw it out of him because he doesn't actually yeah. know. <laughs> I just think that's really neat. Like, because uh, it works both ways before you discover he has that power. Um, but afterwards, it makes even more sense. <laughs> think you could pull me up, or <sighs> no? I don't think I will. I think maybe I'll drop you. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no, no, no yes, no, no. I'm going Stop. to drop you. Goodbye. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. Think how mad the All Father's gonna be when. When he finds out you killed his guest. Which is true. Loki of the Jotnar? Yep. You can see his eyes kind of like moving, sort of flickering in a way. The Jotnar. Enemy of my people. I am not your enemy. That head tilt being like, mm, yeah, like not sure about that, buddy. <sighs> I will be the judge of that. What is your job? I protect the realm I love from trouble. And you think I'm trouble? You just met me. And I can already see you are eager to prove yourself. Way too eager. Probably due to an overshadowing father figure you can never live up to. Good guess. I yeah, because when I was playing it at this point, I was like, okay, how did... Wow. <laughs> like, but okay. upon understanding Hyped, I was like, oh, he literally knows that. Mm -hmm. You can read it from your brain. I would also guess that you are disrespectful, entitled, and impulsive. You don't know me at all. Which implies that that is something that Atreus, uh, Atreus thinks of himself. Yeah, which is pretty hard to avoid considering what he just did. Yeah, so it's not like knowing that about Atre uh, Atreus's character is, you know, this is, it, it's not like he thinks I'm totally in the right. I didn't do anything wrong. I wish puss to this. You know, this one isn't on me. There is definitely that element in him that Heimdall confirms. Very, very uh, chaotic character, you could say. Mm hmm At all. Oh, you are here to help people. Hmm. No, no. You are here to help 
yourself. To manipulate and lie to whoever you have to to get what you want. I know you're young, your voice probably dropped while you were climbing the wall, but <laughs> what a twisted little soul you Burn. have. <laughs> you are chaos in a spiffy archer suit. I watch your mouth move and I see cities burning. Pretty interesting line, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing good is going to come from you being in Asgard if you aid the Allfather and have no treacherous intent. I guess that makes us allies. Wow, that's almost as impressive as Balder taming a dragon. Balder had the luxury of not caring how badly he got. I kind of like the idea that the reason Balder of like all people game. tamed the dragon is because what was it going to do? Kill him? <laughs> like, it's not going to do that. Yeah, it's not as impressive. You know. <laughs> Dominate them fair and square. Dude. And yeah, I love the idea that he says, I dominate them fair and square when you're the only person in this world that has the power you have. Like, but he sees it as, hey, I, I sort them out without thinking them. Whoa. Are these all Aesir gods? What? You think all Aesir are gods? But Skilder told me that oh, only. Well, if Skilder told you, clearly whoever that is must be the authority on Aesir gods, not the Aesir god you are currently talking to. You literally know nothing of our culture, do you? I know lots of things. I know a giant built that wall. A giant built the wall that keeps out the giants. Primther, son of Thamur. I know the whole story. Really? I truly cannot wait for you to regale me with the revisionist tales of Asgard's architectural history. Is that Odin's Which is a pretty interesting set of lines to have. We had a theory that uh, a lot of the stories Mimir and... Freya would have told. I doubt that the people in Asgard would appreciate them for their accuracy. Yeah. More like, yeah, okay, sure. And a lot of characters make reference to how, like, why do you believe these stories being told by people who hate us? What's, yeah. It's got... really cool that they put this in here because, of course, they wouldn't say, like, oh, yeah, Odin did kill all these people. Of course he did. Like, come on. Also, they, this they... is another interesting yeah. moment, too. Pal right. Palace. Do you think the All-Father needs to puff himself up like some mortal chieftain? I guess not. That is the Great Lodge, which the All-Father built with his own hands. I'm sorry if that is a letdown for you. Real power, you see, does not need to flaunt. It emerges when the time is right. Don't you agree? It's a pretty meta line about Asgard. Everyone expects Asgard to be a particular way, thanks to other media. Uh, yeah. yeah. This, this media was like, no, the, 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 if you understand the Odin in this game, he ain't going to be building giant golden towers. Wouldn't make sense. Yeah. So uh, it, it's almost like the game is trying to calm you down, because a lot of people freaked out. They were like, ah, where's my great hand? Yeah. Oh, like, I was okay. actually still like, at, at this point, I was like, maybe this is still a trickery from Odin, I, maybe? Yeah, I, I said maybe there's like a... Yeah. Maybe there's like a, a big old palace somewhere, but no, that's that's it. You discover a lot of Odin's character as presented is authentic to a yeah. degree. Uh, and yeah, he does not care to have golden towers. No, he It's still a nice place, though. Like, yeah, mm, yeah, it's very cozy. I mean, it's pretty gorgeous, I would say, yeah, especially for the time. I, th I think uh, Lovely. it'd be cool to look I'd, around. I'd, just, I'd go drink some meat there. Yeah. Hey! Whoa! I thought we were going to Odin! You see, the thing is, you do have a treacherous intent. So I am not letting you anywhere near the Allfather. Do or I That's right. Show me all of your stupid little tricks. That was boring. Guess who's next? You sure you want to keep Allfather waiting? Funny thing, I am sure about that. Yes, I am feeling very sure of that, in fact. Oh. 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 Whoa. Whoa. How is that doing? Oh, oh, oh. oh no, arrows! How fearsome! Oh, asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just touch oh, it. Sure. <laughs> that didn't work. I am really screwed now. You're not gonna stop me from seeing Odin. You'll be seeing him from your grave. Ha! So the retort doesn't come out because I was in wolf mode. Yeah. Uh, I'll replay this now without the wolf just because I don't know how much I want to reward the game for making that happen, but 
yeah, that moment, Atreus is supposed to say something back, but I guess all he could do is balk right now. That is yeah. your big special move? Hilarious! Down, boy! Uh, 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 real animal lover! You like that? The, uh, the special move uh, made the arrow bounce from Heimdall to the next target, which is gold topper at the time but then he just says wow real animal lover yeah. <laughs> shooting him when like he's not even in the fight you're not gonna stop me from seeing otis he'll be from your grave what that doesn't even make sense like i repeated it just to get the line out and that's his response yeah i mean yeah. i do have to say loki i am profoundly Unimpressed. You should probably stay down. Great. <laughs> Knock it off. Yay. Like it or not, he's all father's guest. <laughs> I thought I smelled something. Please. Take one more step, you're not gonna like how this ends. Really? And how do you intend to stop me? Look into my eyes. You tell me. You are a sick man. Loki! A oh, fuck fuck it. his dead body. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a pretty like how yeah, little thanks. time we get with Thor and how much of an impression he makes. Yeah. The He's use of very, his theme there very is very imposing. Good. His what was what, sorry? The use of his theme there is very Oh good. yeah. Mm hmm And uh the expressions as well, once again, just being like, seriously try me. I'm not in the mood. He's never in the mood. He's always upset. Never knew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's just so great, just look in my eyes and you tell me, and it's like, ugh. <laughs> Which, yeah, it should have, at this point, maybe give away what's going on with Heimdall, but uh, Odin's about to explain it. And yeah, having Odin arrive just being like, hey, Loki, it's kind hey, of, it's up, kind buddy? of like, uh, okay, okay, all right, this Are is we just gonna not acknowledge, <laughs> you know, what yeah. just happened there? I, um, I, I see you've met Heimdall. He reads minds for me. The boy is false, our father. This young man, who is my guest, is covered in mud. Care to explain? He means to betray you. <gasps> is that true, Loki? You a little trickster? <laughs> uh, I'm just messing around. Of course he means to betray me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Time doll. I fucking... fucking love that scene. <laughs> it's so funny. He turns around and Hamdal moves to the other side. He's like... He says, uh, <laughs> of course he means to betray me, huh? <laughs> I, I can believe that fucking pissed the hell out of him. Like, what? You were right there, man. Why did you move over there? Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, just uh, the the little playful, like, yeah, of course he's here to betray me. Why would he come here? He's like my enemy. And this this recognition of that, by the way, makes Odin almost immediately much more interesting than the nil. He's just like, oh my god, okay, all right, yeah, okay. This sounds yeah. like a smarter mm. approach than a lot of characters may have given. He's on the ball. Gonna... Yep. Why else would he have given him no reason to trust me? Not yet. But he's got some very big questions. And oh, yeah, so actually, this is a... This is... This is what exemplifies the reason why the Atreus sections are valuable. How often are you going to be able to find a situation where Kratos can interact with Odin, Thor, Heimdall, many other people? And others, uh, yeah. And... In a non way. What kind of interactions... Way. Exactly. Because the reality is when it comes to... If if you're good at writing stories, uh, like the people who wrote this story, um, you recognize that ultimately there's only so many times that the protagonist and antagonist can meet each other in a situation like this that doesn't end in a fight where one of them, you know, gets killed. Yeah. Um, just based on the nature of the conflict and the characters' perspectives on each other. But using Atreus is really valuable just because of the role that he plays uh, and how he's more connected to the Norse side of things than Kratos is. Just gives us opportunities to, in the ensuing, you know, scenes, 
do so much work with Odin that would otherwise be very difficult to facilitate narratively. What are you up to? Dismissed. Go. Gladly. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, why it's, you gotta be <laughs> like that, Odin? It's small, but like, you know, why was Thor just standing there? It's like, because he's waiting for orders. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's just like, fuck off. And he's like, yeah, fine, okay, I good. don't care. Yeah, yeah sure, good. whatever. It's like, well, okay, then. You could have just said that nicely. Just, um... <laughs> Our relationship, hmm. Clean yourself up. The little glads. <laughs> like, <laughs> what like, is yeah. The bad guy, he's right there. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. He's got a bow so, right now. Uh, Heimdall, will you just relax? And that's the thing, Atreus is as fascinated as we are. It's just like, yeah, what, it's what like, is this what dynamic? Is Odin is like putting me <laughs> above these guys. The Anyone idea of telling a guy who can read first... people's minds, Heimdall, could you just relax? He's like, but no, <laughs> he's gonna kill you. <laughs> he's gonna get you, yeah. man. Thing? See? <laughs> he's like, like I, I don't know. Especially you. because, like, at this moment, I can imagine Heimdall, Heimdall being like, yeah, I guess he doesn't. He's not gonna kill like, you right like, now. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, I guess he's, yeah, not now. But it's fine. That was great. Like he asked Atreus, was like, "You're gonna kill me like first thing right now?" And Atreus was like, "He's like, I'm, I guess not." I was like, "No." <laughs> like just the little shoulder. These are fun interactions like, for both. Odin. He's uh... yeah. They're both looking at Heimdall to confirm it in a way. Like, <laughs> yeah. see? Look at the eyes. Come on. Also, which is which is interesting because it would be uh, like how if you had someone who had that power, that's like kind of what you do is like see, double yeah, check. Like I'm telling the truth. Know? Look at me. Yeah. Um, I'll be right back. Carry on talking about um, stuff. Alrighty. Um, Which, oh, here might be a relevant question since it was one that was floated uh, during the first scene. Already, what are, what were people's impressions of Odin now? Yeah. Like, even after this brief exchange. When you see him in retrospect with that first scene, when he's talking to different people for a different reason in a different place with different goals, then you could see that this is clearly the same character who's just operating in a different scenario and mm. so now you still see that character as he was before but of course now that the situation's different you could see why he's behaving differently but you're still interested because you haven't really you haven't been given all the information yet you still you're still very interested to see where this is going because this is a very as far as stories go and characters and everything this is very unorthodox to happen in stories right mm. essentially oh. you've been given this ticket to interact and speak with you know the quote-unquote the bad guys uh, as they've been perceived throughout the story um and so you're you're all ears to see what's going to happen next yeah. especially to learn about odin this villain Wait, you, i i i oh, sorry go for it oh i was, I, was I, I liked him from the get-go i mean i had no nothing to expect really to be honest i was just like oh see how he's gonna look like i i didn't expect a particular look from Odin, so it's just like checking out what's going on, and when he came, I in, it's like, oh, that's kind of doing like kind of mobster like. I kind, I kind of like this because I don't, I, I don't know was... anything about the mythical side of the lore or whatever. So it's just like, yeah, I can tell you what it looks like in his temperament. Yeah, I think I was in a similar position in that I didn't mind what they were gonna do. Like there wasn't, you know, like, and then I. I by this point in the story, there's very much the sort of what are you what's what's your game? What are you what are you up to? Yeah, what's going on? Because mm -hmm. especially here, right? This is a way less confrontational interaction when the first time that we met him, it was pretty tense, like pretty clearly. Whereas yeah, already yeah. by having by having Heimdall be the one who attacks him and is causing trouble, and then Odin immediately steps in to protect him. It just, just de-escalates immediately. Yeah, exactly. Which is interesting because if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you consider it the thing in the beginning, it's like, I just want peace, you know? I'm just, uh, you know what? I just want this deal. And now it's just de-escalating everything. And even even though Heimdall is like, uh, like basically his right hand, I think, is the idea he is, right? Because he can do the, the whole mind stuff. Saying, hey, he's going to betray you and everything. He's like, yeah, whatever. But he's just not going to be doing that now. I'm going to need to talk to him and make him trust me. The thing so with you, you, you maybe try to do things like, oh, maybe maybe he does just want peace. Maybe, I mean, we never really get the side of the ace here, and now we get the side of the ace here a bit, and they, I don't know, this all seems pretty chill so far. 
Except Heimdall, he's a prick. I, there's there's that working in the scene as well. I think it's I think the the simple thing though is that the game knows that you're going to be looking at all of this, wondering like, yeah, but like you're lying, right? Yeah. Like you're, <laughs> Because characters at this point who you have, who you very much like and trust, have all said that he's a liar. And so everything he's saying to and around Atreus, it's like, hmm, are you trying to nudge him in a particular direction? Mm. What is the objective behind each line of dialogue? Because he seems like a person who is, despite being quite disarming, is like very selective with the words that he uses. Yes. And the things he says. You know, the notions that he keeps in people's minds. You just can always have in the back of your head, though, if he tells you snow is white, he's lying. He's lying. <laughs> your boy Mimir, the best bro in gaming. And if he says Absolutely. that, like, yeah, he's, you know, it's kind of hard to move past that. Also, like, this, feel, this feels like a good example of, uh, with all four of these characters, I guess Thor's left, um that all four of these characters are so distinct from one another. Oh, yeah. Nobody feels like they're treading on anybody else's shoes. Because we got Odin, the sort of sly manipulator. Of course, Heimdall is, like, the most cynical fuck that there is. Like, just complete asshole. And then you've got Thor, who's, in, in a lot of ways, like, really understated in his, uh, in how intimidating he is. But then there's also presence, the dynamic you know? between him and... Yeah, like, his presence is... It's so interesting. They do so much work with him in so little time. And already we're getting more of the dynamics between Odin and Thor. That Odin is the boss, orders him around. Meanwhile, Thor is very, uh... Yeah. Not passive, but submissive, basically. Yeah. He's, That's kind he's of some underhanded, like... He's tired, yeah, dude. He looks, yeah. he looks like he's he's seen a lot. Jojo! Yep, uh, yeah, oh, well, the dogs are freaking out of him. <laughs> the dog is tired of your bullshit, apparently. <laughs> no, she's, she's tired of the Chihuahua's bullshit. Oh, uh, okay. It's his fault, though. He's a very passionate Latino. What's the what's the crazy saga going on on the other end of the mic? <laughs> no, it's a poodle time. fighting with the chihuahua. That, that's all that's Is happening. that like a bit of rivalry that Fierce stretches battle. back to the beginning of time? I, I think it's more that the chihuahua loves the poodle, and the poodle is upset about the fact that she's not as strong as the chihuahua, so she tries to scare him. How is a poodle not as strong uh, as a chihuahua? Oh, no, it's a teacup poodle, and he's a... Um, yeah, he's, fuck? he's Poodles he's fuck anything. Things. Well, but she's like she's like five pounds and he's seven. So he cut poo. Oh, one of those things. Yeah, I don't know. She's like I don't know. <laughs> those were wolves once. This might be a good time to plug my Instagram. It's basically a puppy Instagram. It's Mark the Cyborg. So. I was uh, I was listening, by the way, doing some chore. But uh, I find it super interesting as well that uh, this is everything Odin wanted. Uh, he sent Boulder to get Atreus. That's what was going on in that whole game. Mm -hmm. Or at least maybe not uh, fully known to him at the time exactly what he was after, but we find out by the end of the game it was Atreus that he wanted. And now Atreus has come to him. This is this is top everything. This is everything he wants. And you've got Heimdall getting in the fucking way. But yeah, of course, yeah. he's finding it a little bit frustrating. The fact that Thor showed up. Do you really think Thor would have shown up on his own to protect Atreus? Like, no, he was sent by Odin. Yeah. Of course. Because it's kind of predictable, possibly, that Heimdall would make the mistake of being like, dude, I can read him. He's not He's not your friendly. It's like, I know he's not my friend. You know what he did to his dad? You know what he's done to my <laughs> son? Like, yes, I know. I know all of this, but I need something from him. And uh, I like that he introduces himself as someone who can answer Atreus' questions. He's immediately putting it on him that, like, you need me. You want me. So, hey, how about a partnership? But uh, yeah, as you guys said as well, just keep in mind what everyone has said about him. Get out of here! Get out of here! We kind of was like, okay, I guess. Like he takes that last look at la last look at Atreus. Mm -hmm. His eyes. I will. Yeah, I, I want to talk about it a bit more, but I'm gonna wait. But I think that's very important. Heimdall. We've not seen that attitude with Heimdall for fucking. You'd never expect that, but that's how much he's got respect for Odin. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pretty interesting. He's a lot, I know. Very perceptive, but sometimes he just forgets to think, you know? Oh, and I've seen a lot of it in chat. It's the idea of, like, I really like this guy, this character, even the look matches him, but he ain't Odin. That sort of attitude. 
And it's just like, okay. Oh, tell me how uh, Odin is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's an expectation of what Odin should be. Um, and I just, uh, I just don't... It's, it's hard to sometimes put into words, but you guys know, chat, you know what EFAP has to say about adaptation. And if you're going to be mm -hmm. adapting one of the oldest, like, known stories we have, you know, compared to, like, all of the stuff we have within the last hundred years, even. Uh, yeah, we, we, we would have no problem with stretching and pulling in different directions. Um, and it's just a matter of, yeah, uh, I, it seems that you've already answered my question, but if I said if Norse mythology never existed and you were watching this story unfold, you'd have no problem, right? Or if his name was John instead of Odin, it would be fine. Um... But I'm not going to deny people have expectations, and so I can't deny how you feel about it. I just think, uh, I wouldn't want it to get in the way of how fucking great this characterization is. Yeah. I'm just always interested to see different interpretations of characters. It would be kind of boring to always see them as the same, with the same attitudes and aesthetics. To see different takes on characters. And you know what? I can't it's piss- always welcome. I, could, I, I, I piss someone off no matter what. I already had messages being like, why do you keep saying this Odin is nothing like the Norse one? And I'm like, what? I don't, I don't know what the Norse one is like. I just keep getting told things about it. Like everyone's I mean, an like, expert. Are those that's people? Wonderful. Are those same people saying that Anthony Hopkins is Odin? That, so yeah. that's. Or, I, I told this story not? on. Um, I told this story on Metal's Forge, right? But I'll tell it again here because it's fucking great. I'm watching Drinker play the game, and he's going through. And someone says, "Hey, what do you think of the 2018 one?" And he's like, "Loved it. Thought it was awesome." Um, and he said, "One of the things he really likes about it is how authentic it feels to Norse mythology." That triggered some people. Excuse me, excuse me. And you went, uh, you know, a couple of messages, and one of them said, "You have no idea how much this disrespects the uh, Norse mythology. Thor is a hero of the people. Odin is a wise, like, you know, uh, man who like binds the realms together. And uh, uh, Loki is a fucking evil son of a bitch. They've got everything backwards, and they've disrespected the hell out of it all." And I was, I was listening, and I had the same reaction as Drinker, where he's like, "Okay." I didn't know that. Like, fair enough. Okay. And we just move on. It's like, fine. Yeah. Another message comes in saying, that last super chatter is full of shit. Thor is not a man <laughs> of the people. In mythology, Thor would kill someone with like a second look. That sort of thing. And the drinker again is just like, okay. <laughs> like, very well. That is the mythology. Sure. Uh, you know, whatever you say. And then the final super chat comes in saying, Norse mythology doesn't agree with Norse mythology about what Norse mythology is about. So it's like, okay. Yeah, that, you know, that, all of these people are chat. absolute experts. So, They've read all of the primary sources. I'm sure of it. They have very like thorough interpretations of what these characters should be. They're definitely not going off of Wikipedia articles. Well, and of course, a familiarity with all of the different translations, right, of different texts yeah. throughout time, and the re and the understanding of the differences between those translations and how they might meaningfully affect. Yeah, of course, they've the they've of course got a really strong understanding of translation Ooh. theory and how different translations will capture the tone and register of the yep. original work, you know, differently, and how that can affect interpretation. I'm sure they've considered all of that. It's bad enough, right? We have people who disagree on how Luke should be characterized from a film in the in the eighties to a film that came twenty years later, however long. Fuck it, whatever. I I don't care about time. My point is, we have people disagreeing like that to create like huge fandom splits over whether or not it's it's right. How in the world are we ever going to get an answer on whether or not Thor, how big Thor's belly should be, for example? <laughs> it's like that's the well, that stories that were told hundreds of years ago around campfires, and some of which were translated, some of which were written down at different points in time, and then translated at different points in time in different languages. Like I don't know, man. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like, weird. Like a non-standard in pop culture perception uh, depiction of Norse mythology comes along, and suddenly everyone's a folklorist. I don't know. I know I am. Yeah. Just um, just don't ask me about where I got it from. I kind of absorbed it. I watched a lot of Marvel, to be fair. <laughs> hmm. And I've heard they nailed yeah, it. Yeah, that Thor oh, sucks because Thor's looks like Chris Hemsworth, except that one movie where he was a bit chubby. Um, he still looks like Chris Hemsworth, though. Yeah. He did still look like Chris Hemsworth. Just he looked like chubbier. Chris Hemsworth in a fat <laughs> Wait a minute. I can appreciate that you know, Chris, you know, put that much effort into gaining all of that weight for the role. You know, it just shows how dedicated he is, you know, to the He's craft. Not Do you understand Chris how much Hemsworth, Fortnite... Christian Bale. Well, anyway. Yeah, okay. He, he gains weight. He loses weight. 
What a cool way to travel. Eilish. Yeah. So how'd your father take the news that you decided to accept my invitation? I don't think we should talk about my father. Not well, huh? <laughs> Can't blame him. What a way to save that conversation. Like, yep. instead of being like, <clears throat> ah, so we have limits on what we can discuss, he went, oh boy. I didn't, you know, like, it, like as if he gave him a stronger answer. It's just like it, it welcomes you back into the conversation if you almost ejected it. There's a lot of what Odin says. Uh, I didn't mention it. I meant to in his first conversation where, when he refers to Mimir, he says, "Can't the smartest head alive tell?" Blah 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 blah. Uh, everyone. He calls himself the smartest man alive. Calling him the smartest head alive is like, oh, I mean actually a little bit more offensive because it's like <laughs> of course he is he's only fucking one at least as far as we know um yeah a lot of a lot of dismissive and insulting language that's almost sneaked into the actual words that he uses uh we'll get a lot of that and this is the thing you don't get much of odin relative to let's say kratos but they use their time very specifically mm -hmm. and he's not actually alive i mean Undead is what Mimir is, right? I think. Is that what he's classified as? Um, yeah. Uh, probably. <laughs> <It's just laughs> he was dead, <laughs> and then through a magic bullshit, he came back to life. He's a so zombie. I I'd assume, yeah. Oh, yeah, and he calls him a, a retired god of war. Mm -hmm. uh, you can interpret that one. His wife and my disgruntled former employee, he's not exactly getting an unbiased view, but you... You're curious, open-minded. That's important. Priest, meest, carry on. Pretend I'm not here. If I'm being honest with you, Loki, you're lucky my offer still stands after you went and sprung tear. But I suppose spending time with him is punishment enough, isn't it? <laughs> At least Mimir never lost his sense of humor. Super interesting. He's talking about them this casually with everything we know yeah. that he did to them. Like, like oh, it's annoying to spend time with Tyr, isn't it? It's like, the guy I rescued from you that you tortured for thousands of years or whatever the fuck? Like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, Lamal. Yeah, idiot. but he's making it all appear much softer. And he even turned that into a, a concession on his part, something he gave. It's like, you're allow I'm allowing that, and I'm still giving mm. you this. But look, it, that's all behind us now. I like to keep looking forward. Hey, hey, hey! I want them trained, not decapitated. Just keep it below the neck, all right? Is that really what you do when I'm not here? All father. Queen Gana. The Ain Huyar are ready for your blessings. That's why I'm here, isn't it? Huh. Yes, there's a new Valkyrie queen. Great soldiers, these Ain Huyar. But they tend to come out of Valhalla a little foggy. I do what I can for them, help them remember who they were in life. That's important. Don't you think? A sense of identity. Almost like he's toying with Atreus with that line. He knows that's what he's mm -hmm. after as well. Mm -hmm. Sense of identity. What I'm offering by you being here. Gives things meaning. Moon Pinafri Rothgar. Someone said I've heard this called the C.E. Odin scene. <laughs> yeah. C.E. Odin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, Moon that's Pinafri like. Gorm. Oh, I'm Gorm. Pinafri. Kevin. He's like, you're, you're Kevin now, and she's like, but, but I'm, but I'm too late. I don't no want to be Kevin. No backseas, sorry. You're like, oh god, okay. we have Next identity. Up. Quickly, kill ourselves. <laughs> Just jump over the little fence. Ah, good. Those are for him. I understand you're an avid reader. These are just a few things from my personal collection. Uh, thanks. Just just a hand for David there. Great, you know, great work, David, coming in. He doesn't have a big part in this game, but, I mean, he nailed it. Coming in, he's yeah. got the books, drops him in, exit stage right. I mean, I really want to just... Good on you, Kevin. You did an excellent job. I just want to make sure that someone... Yeah, he needs to know that someone out there appreciated him. So, I've seen some criticism of David. Uh, they didn't like the body language. I think that's a... Fair interpretation, I, but I think he did pretty well. I I think that it just it, it he's on he's on duty. He's a librarian, not necessarily a people person. He's doing his job, does it well. He's a no frills kind of guy. He's very utility focused. 
I appreciate that. Good job, mm -hmm. David. Excellent right. work. Yeah, you do good work here. Thanks. Jurgen, those better not be mushrooms, I smell. Listen, I appreciate your offer, but I'm really not sure what you're expecting from me. Right now, you're just visiting, Loki. One step at a time. Steady there, Carl. But with all respect, Carl. you need to know. I came to study, not to serve. Another servant is the last thing I need. I need someone with drive, with curiosity. Someone will take initiative. That looks good. Is that braised? But why me? Is it because I'm half giant? Big deal. So's Thor. Erlen, try to stay awake for me. Okay, <laughs> but... Look, don't overthink it. I have a project I think you'll be interested in. A major learning opportunity for both of us. What about my family, my friends? I need to know nobody's going to get hurt. Why would I hurt anybody? A truce is all I've been asking for from the start, if you recall. Look, you're here now. Stop worrying. It's all going to be fine. Almost to your room. My room? Yep, just over here. Feel free to come and go. Take what you need, poke around as you please. You're not my prisoner. And more importantly, I am not your father. I find that line fascinating, not just because he's called yep. old father, but it's almost like I'm not your father, therefore I'm not going to restrict you. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> hey, isn't isn't that fun? Isn't that tempting? Like it's said in such a casual and friendly way. He's like, you're not my prisoner. Everything's chill. Isn't this great? It's great. Come on. All father, there's a situation that needs your attention. Sif! You missed welcoming our new house guest. Say hello to Loki. This is him? Here. In our home. How nice. My diplomat. I love that. <laughs> My diplomat. <laughs> it's like he's commenting on how fucking shit that was. How nice. <laughs> like, can you try a little harder? Everything all right in New Midgard? The refugees are fine. The situation is with the dwarves. You know who is back. Yeah, it's always something. Put those books down. We got another stop to make. Uh, sure. Yeah. All right, I'm here. Where? That's pretty great, by the way. <laughs> He's like, oh God. <laughs> Where is he? He? Oh, he, uh, just over there. Oh, other. Sir. <gasps> uh. So uh, the reason that cut is because fucking original recording, some random noises started happening on my PC for like notifications and just like fucked the seat up. So I was like, great. <laughs> Thanks. Chief, it's been too long. What's the issue now? No issue at all if you're trying to build volatile death traps. I approve these designs personally. And not all that recently, I might add. Did you just wake up with the urge to be a pain in my ass? Yeah. Who's the kid? You training puck pockets? You know what, Derlin? You reek of cheap mead, and that is by far your most endearing characteristic. Now listen up. It's me, your entire economy, speaking. I want you to know that I have confidence in you. Confidence you can deliver me these machines as promised on time on budget and of course safely The dwarves have never let me down and they're not about to start now, right? Good See, A lot of what was just said can be seen as pretty like chill and positive, but there's just threats everywhere. Oh, yeah um, and a lot of power moving around the when he said mm. I gave these designs myself and not all that recently like the implication yeah. being you're taking a fucking long time to make these guys <clears throat> and uh Durlin's not stupid enough to like he knows what's being said and yeah your entire economy speaking is just a pretty great line too uh, yeah that's his grip on Svartalfheim which uh you do get a lot of information on in the Mimia side mission with this place yeah have you have you looked around in uh Odin's office because you, you you can you can see some of those plans for these uh, weapons on his desk lying around. It's kind of neat. Oh, I did look yeah. around, but I didn't see them. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna let you catch your breath. When you're ready to get to work and start getting those answers, meet me in my study down the hall. Oh, and help yourself to a change of clothes. Whoa! Loki, right? Gotta say, the irony of this isn't lost on me. This was his room, you know? His? My brother's. Your brother? Modi? Ah, oh, your brother. Really? I had no idea. Uh-huh. And now it's yours. Enjoy. Fruit throws, Doctor. Relax. You got some pretty small shoes to fill. We're better off without him, Loki. Trust me. Walk with me. Uh, don't forget your sword. <clears throat> uh, someone will clean that up. Oh, any thoughts about this new character? Well, one. seems to be jokey uh, at first, but then it's like, oh no, we don't, don't worry, we're actually better off without him. But clearly bothered by her brother being dead, of course. Yeah, and she's holding him. his uh, his shield when she said that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, mm. this is all very confusing and interesting. It's like, how much of this is true? How much is this bullshit? And yeah. Are you here Connor. because you were sent? Are you saying things because you were told to? Or are you saying this because this is what you believe? What is Atreus supposed to make of all of it? Um, yeah, and the fact that yeah, Magni and Modi didn't exactly seem like uh, nice people, necessarily, but it would have been her family. Yeah, still family, exactly. Well, was, I guess it's just interesting when we, we know that Thor is furious. Uh, it was pretty clear that Sif was unhappy about all of this too. Yet Throod is uh, yeah. obviously like not clearly right. Like when she's saying, "Yeah, we don't, you know, we're better off without them." It's like, well, you say that, but like you're you're obviously pretty upset about it. But the fact that she's even willing to be friendly to uh, Atreus at all is interesting, right? Of all the people that he's encountered, the only people who've been friendly to him so far, uh, Odin, <laughs> who yeah. He doesn't trust and and Throod, who seems like way less likely to be a very deceptive person. So, uh, what kind of sword is that? It's new. One of a kind. My father gave it to me for Valkyrie training. You're in Valkyrie training? Got time to talk about it? I was just heading to the Great Hall. But if you need to go to work, grandfather's study is just down those stairs. That's my room. Used to be Magni's. Guess I'm moving up. Oh, that Valkyrie poster as well. I didn't even see that. I think it's the tapestry. I didn't see that either. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know if they had posters back then. <laughs> this is a castle, isn't it? There are tapestries. Fine, not a poster. I think that there that was a Valkyrie weapon on the... Yeah, you you can tell she's moved in recently because yeah. Magni's stuff is still in here. Yeah. So how do you become a Valkyrie? First, I train till I'm the best I can be. Then I wait till Grandfather notices, and then I hope he and my dad can convince Mom it's okay. You know, my father and I, we encountered a whole bunch of Valkyries. Encountered? What? Where? <laughs> promise to tell me everything. I promise. Mother, did you meet Loki? Oh, 
Now he's got you involved with this? Involved with what? I'm being friendly. Isn't that diplomacy? You understand who this is, right? What his father did? Why does he want him here? Mom! Come on, you're embarrassing me. We'll talk about this later. Sorry about her. Moms, right? So, did you want to look around some more, or do you really need to get to work? I think I may not have cut this properly. <laughs> can, can we all agree that Sif is this game's best girl, though? Some of them might wow, picking her, picking her over Please Freya. Please do not involve me in your pathetic attempts to impress Oh, Freya's a better character. Huh? Don't Come get on. me wrong. <laughs> you haven't had enough Heimdall in your day? Let's go. Yes, I, I understand. I, can't, I think I might actually have accidentally cut out Heimdall dialogue there. Um, oh well. Uh, <laughs> we just... I'm not, I'm not everything is here, I'm afraid. Wow. Yes. You failed us. It looks like I left in and cut out the wrong things. <laughs> yeah, the wrong one. Do you see me nodding and saying, yes, I understand? <laughs> Do you see I... me nodding? I... Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, all right. Mm-hmm. Ah. You see, the, this is you not letting me talk. No, Hugan. I, I don't need my ears clean. I need you to stop croaking and 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 accept the answer you know I'm about to give. I was just looking at this. That old thing. I've had that since. Huh. Who can remember? You, you have a name? Ingrid. Really? Sure, why not? Take it, if you like it that much. For real? Consider it a perk of the job. Thank you. I mean, really. And they say... Man, Odin is so nice. Wow, come on, let's walk. Guy. Yeah, he even says... People say I'm the bad guy. So, another use of the, uh, the, uh, the Asgard theme there. Mm -hmm. Oh wait! You're welcome. Wait, oh that's, and then, uh, yeah, and there's, there's the Tresses too. too. Yeah, because yeah. uh, something's developing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, he's got a square button ability now. Big. Everyone's it's got me all very wrong. Very similar to another you sword we've seen. Drives me or power, wealth? Nah, never have. You know what drives me? What I really want? I want answers. Same as you. See, mortals have it easy. When they push up against life's big questions, they can look to us to give them meaning, divine comfort. <laughs> we both know that's a sham. But when we have questions, why are we here to give meaning to mortals while living without it ourselves? No. We're more than that. And I found something that proves it. So important! How neat is that? I don't even know that I've come across that motivation before. A god who's upset that he doesn't have meaning despite providing it to other people. Yeah. yeah. What's the point at all? What a great idea. <laughs> like, and yeah. yeah, mortals get, get the, 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 the afterlife. But what, what do I get? Who am I? Why am I here? Yeah. Good stuff. We've got another character in this game. A pretty main character asking those same questions. What is it? It's what drives me. You feel it, don't you? Feels like... Knowledge. Truth. Someone in chat just said, great, but it goes nowhere. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I don't even sure what I meant to say to that. I know what I'll say. Other than we'll show yes, you where it, it goes. Don't you worry, we'll show yeah. you where it goes. Yeah. All truth. All the answers. We can find out why we're here, learn how to change our fates, stop Ragnarok for good, maybe. 
save the people we love. How? I was a young god when I found it. Spent lifetimes studying it, following every clue down every dead end, looking for and finally unearthing this. You see that? It shares the same mystical energy. It opened a crack. Can we just look inside? I wouldn't recommend that. What's the broken mask for? You recognize any writing on it? These aren't from the Nine Realms. Pizza. From smoldered earth and obsidian spark and a field of battles never fought. Are you certain? Because if that's a clue, I know what it means. And what's that? Keep working with me and find out. You don't have to kill anyone. You don't have to betray your father or yourself. Come on, I know you felt what I felt. The answers are in there. Let's get them. I mean, you translated this language like it was nothing. If I do help you, what's next? Thor, get down here. All father. Don't do that. Don't do that. What's next is chasing this down. <laughs> That's really good. Take this and this stealthy side of beef. See I don't beef. <laughs> Stealthy side of beef. The <laughs> thing is, <laughs> like, catch just, that. To draw from it though, is he is on call and willing to do everything he says at a moment's notice. And what does he do? The first thing, insult him. It's like, yeah. Okay. Um, and as well, like considering all the stories we've gotten in 2018 about um, Odin's different deceptions, a lot of them come down to his interest in that person having stuff he wants. Be it, uh, Mimia describes how he wanted to make deals with different people to get access to whatever magic they know. The prophecies they're aware of like all of it has some relation to having access to abilities or knowledge that he does not have um and you're already seeing it here the fact that he's saying like nothing <laughs> nothing comes above us being able to get whatever is in this whatever we can draw from this we can we can sacrifice everything else we don't need to do any of that shit with warring or uh betraying or anything else just just let's just work together and get this and I don't know comes across really genuine doesn't doesn't seem like a lie yeah. i don't promise anything nonsense happy hunting and you go easy on him you hear me Muspelheim. The rest of the mask is here. It's where all father dropped us. What do you think? Just take that and do your damn job. Or is not thrilled. Up there. <laughs> I'm excited like because it's gonna <laughs> get more force. I'm yeah, to be yeah. sort of be around him and have him around. <clears throat> and can you see the uh the saturation has just crashed. Yes, I yeah. can't say that. <laughs> I don't notice it for, I think, like 10 minutes, so you have to wait. Ledge we could reach. If we... Too slow. Hey! <laughs> you can't just grab that people like that. a lot better now, though. No, what else are they? Throw you? <laughs> you know. Uh, I think uh, this looks a little too sickly. Um, I think the colors are a little too... Explode it's, it's not perfect. The it's not of... Over totally gray, though, which is kind of no. I, I get you. Uh, there's a there's a happy balance, I assume, but it's just that I don't. I think this is a little too much. Moosefulheim, ain't it cool? It is. It is indeed. And isn't it cool? Lava land. To have Moose these two in. specifically. Yeah, it's the I one that looks more wonderful. like hell than Helheim. Um, yeah, classic hell, as opposed to classic Norse hell, hell, which is all yeah. cold and misty and spooky. From your father for what happened to my sons, but I haven't taken it from you. Yet. Yet, yeah, mean? that's the thing I meant earlier. Don't want to keep the all-father waiting. 
Speaking of which, the mask. Right. You want to talk about blood payment? What about the giants you killed? They were my family. Thalmor, Ronair, they were your people too. The giants were blight on the Nine Realms and I reveled every single one of their deaths. Let's just change the subject. Y you know, uh, the last time Father and I were here, we beat every one of Surtur's trials. I think you could- Don't play me. Really feels like Atreus was gonna go the way of like, you know what? There's reason for me to be annoyed at you. And the second it mm -hmm. triggered Thor, he's like, no, nope, that's not a good way to go. All right, we'll try something else. Then, <laughs> yeah. Stop right there. Listen, Modi had some problems, but he was my son. And the only reason you aren't mush right now is because of that broken piece of wood. Look, clearly neither of us can do this mission alone. And I want to impress the Allfather just as much as you do. You don't have to like me. But we're going to have to trust each other. Just a little bit. Trust. Good form overall, but not aggressive enough in my opinion. You're more than welcome to step it up. This is me trusting you. I wasn't playing you, by the way. The trials are fun. Don't you ever have fun? You're so different from your daughter. She hey, said... come look at this. I saw you spot this on your stream, Bell, and it made me like, oh yeah, that crab is Our wearing crab. that guy's helmet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Crab. That's Thor, what the... Wait, Surtur's Shrine. You didn't die over there, did you? No, but I was thinking... Well, that's your problem. The trials are just past that cliff. Mm. Might be something new to do. First we deal with them. The Allfather's waited hundreds of winters. He can wait a little more. It's fun! Fine. Stay right here. Yes, sir. Do you trust the Ace here? I mean, I know I can't trust them. I just need them to trust me. But that's only gonna happen if they think I trust them. Yeah. My father and I visited this place the last time we were in Muspahan. Feels like forever ago. <laughs> Edgar Boda? <laughs> you know, for someone who was trained as a warrior, you are tragically easy to startle. I... I, I didn't. What are you doing here? A girl can't visit a shrine of her own volition? This is Thor fighting in the background. Yeah. Here, here, here <laughs> are Sorter's marble. Maybe. Right between the line of trash, you're the shrine. You're out looking for more giant marbles? You know what this looks like, right? Two of them. Like the life story of one of our people? And also maybe a storage closet. No. This looks an awful lot like the fine destiny. Yeah, where was this written, Angra Buddha? Hmm? Um, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's worth bringing up because um, it was mentioned at some point, but Atreus talking to the sword as though it's uh, as friendly yeah, and chill as... I think I mentioned that in our first play. Well, our, when I watched it with you that first mm -hmm. time, I was like, mm, "You're opening up to this this sword that he gave you real quickly." I think yeah. it's partly to do with the whole Atreus uh, gets a sense of what a thing is much better than anyone else does. Uh, it's like intention and nature and where it's sitting, where it's landing and stuff. Hence, his uh, often walking into talking to people that people are uh, like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And it was um, tied up. When he met it, um, but I still think you should probably have some level of concern. Yeah, about sure. Yeah. Say to the sword. So, because um, Mimir is like, "What the fuck have I been teaching you all these years? Come <laughs> on, man." Mm -hmm. Is what are you doing here? Rewriting my story. Odin gave that to you. It's not. Well. Oh, it is worth mentioning, it does come up later, but there is commentary from Kratos about Atreus's 
trusting of people, and he explains something about that that we haven't mentioned yet. He did, but it's not... I'm not working with him. I would never tell him anything about Ironwood if that's what you're worried about. And I'm definitely not serving him. Prophecy's words, not mine. I've got a marble to find. Her attitude is you're weird us, there. Fun. Are you sure you're up for breaking the rules like this? There aren't any prophecies of you collecting any marbles. Our endings haven't been written, right? Come on. Shane. <laughs> Sinmara. Hmm. Don't think I've heard of her before. And here comes Surtur. Wow. Looks like they even became friends. Uh, good friends. Um, love caused them to combine into some kind of huge creature. Ragnarok. And then... Ragnarok destroys Asgard. Right. I'm gonna hang back here. Don't want your, uh, friend to see a giant he missed. Of course. Just be careful. Please. You too, Loki. Hey, Ingrid. Think Thor died from... You thought you could defeat the god of thunder? <laughs> oh. <laughs> of course. I admit, that was fun. You could have done that at any time. You seem to be handling from those yourself trials. well enough. Yeah. I was <laughs> trusting you. Ain't that impressive. Real god stuff. You are a god. You're damn right. And so am I. <laughs> it's here. This is the spot. But where is it? In the lava? <laughs> No! No! Ah! Damn it! Some advice. Sticking your hand in lava is never gonna feel good. I wasn't thinking. Good. It's better that way. Alright, let's go. Uh, mm -hmm. oh. Don't try to play me again. Isn't it You're interesting okay, that yeah. those those two lines follow each other? Don't think, you know, don't do it. But also, mm. like, using my intellect, I know that you were trying to screw with me back there. Yeah. He's trying to trick me, mislead me. Yeah. Because he's not stupid. Thor is not stupid at all. You're still a giant, and I'll revel in killing you, too. What did you do? Loki. <laughs> the rift got brighter. Look, you did it. Look, one of these phrases is complete now. We can read it all. But you can't translate it. Not yet. See, I got a little theory. I think if we can find the rest of this, we can use it to look into that without, you know, losing an eye or worse. Look at this. We make a good team. Don't we? Don't we? Make a good damn team? Just like you and Balder. Oh. Mm. <laughs> that, that. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> Um, we're going to begin with that one. Uh, tells you a lot about what's going through Thor's head right now, which is, he's not happy. Why isn't he happy? Yeah, no, of course. He's having to hang around with a kid who was directly responsible for one of his son's deaths and was totally there when the other one died. Uh, oh, as well as his brother. My and brother. was forced to go on a fucking yeah. adventure with him uh, to get things for Odin. And now he's watching his dad talk about how great he makes a team with this fucking kid. Yeah. In front of me, Meanwhile. his son. Who does everything for him. Does everything he wants. And so he tells him, hey. Kind of said the same thing about someone else. Remember that guy? The guy who went fucking nuts? The guy who's dead as a result yeah. of your orders? Yeah, wasn't mm -hmm. that great? The guy who you haven't avenged at all? Thought we'd yep. let you know about that. Meanwhile, Odin's thinking, why the hell did you just fucking say that? That's just sabotaging me building a relationship with the one thing I've wanted to get this whole time. What because are you doing? Odin doesn't give a shit how Thor feels. Nope. And uh, just if... doesn't factor his perspective into it at all. And if anything, he's just like, "Why the hell are you sabotaging, you idiot yeah. asshole?" Um, yes, Can't that you is see a what I'm doing here. That is quite the death stare. He was in quite a good mood there, and then you just yeah. reminded him not only of all the stuff we just said, but yes, Odin is pretty bitter about losing Balder. That was his son. 
Yep. Why yep. the fuck did you say that? Don't say that again. That sort of shit. Yeah. Uh, in just, you know, what was that? Three words. <laughs> we just achieved quite a bit. I guess it was just like you and Boulder. That'd be five. All right. Maybe less impressive for five. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, tells you a lot about both of them with very limited words and expressions. Pretty good shit. Very. We've talked about it so many times at this point, but achieving multiple things with the one line of dialogue is just indicative of great writing. When you can advance the plot, you can have it laden with subtext while also more overtly revealing character motivations and being tethered to thematic elements. And like throughout the game, there's just so many lines that are incredibly strong. And we got so much more story left. And if you compare this to something like Rings of Power, right? Where you have all these <laughs> lines that are trying so hard and they do nothing but confuse and make mm. you scratch your head or they just do damage to characters. But, oh, they, they try to be so grandiose and meaningful. This is, this, this is the polar opposite of that. This is that, but it works. Um, I think a couple people are confused. Um, Thor is Balder's brother because Balder is Freya and Odin's son. He is... Uh... The son they had together, which created a whole bunch of other problems. Um, I, I, in case if it was someone wanted clarified, I believe Odin likely cares about his blood, um, and that he cares about Boulder beyond just being his closer, so to speak. I know that's what he called him. It's just that Odin is uh, obviously putting certain things above others. I, I, I don't believe he literally I, does not care about anybody. No, I don't. Well, I, don't I think also about. he was. He the the closer speech he gave while Thor was in the room and he just kind of brushed off Magni and Modi's death as like, well, those ones were self-defense. Yeah, so and, he, and they were kind of useless. I think he, yeah, he had to give a, a reason for being pissed about Balder that went beyond, he was my son, because then Thor would be like, well, they were my sons, so. Well, I, I, I'm not even sure. I think it's just, I think he's speaking pretty honestly there, which is that like he does value some people more than others, even though they're all his family. And he's much more, he's incredibly open about those preferences. Yeah. Like he obviously preferred Boulder to Thor. Like that's pretty obvious. People behave out there. Thor was really great. I learned a lot from him. You learned something from him? Really now? <laughs> okay. What did yeah. you teach the kid? Nothing. What could I possibly teach him? The, exactly. Oh, uh, man. Exactly, he says. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was four. wondering when... Yeah, it feels like there's, there's so four. much animosity to the point where it's just yeah. like, you're my tool, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, like Thor's beaten down, worn down after how long hearing these sorts of things from his own dad. Mm hmm It's just, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, Odin is, uh, and I mean, with that, right, and also, you know, like, father-son relationships are a pretty, pretty important part of, uh, important part of this story, and it would seem that Odin and Thor's relationship is going to be relevant in terms of parallels to be drawn or not necessarily parallels, but rather contrasts to be drawn between Kratos and Atreus compared to these two. Yeah, and the effect, it just generally, because it and applies to course, Freya and Boulder, the effects your yes. parentage has on the, on the results of a kid. Thor and Magni and Modi, too. Yeah. And Throod. Where that went? Actually, I had a pretty good idea. Change of heart. I'm not really sure why I came to Asgard. But I realize now it wasn't to be a spy. I need you to know you can trust me. And if I'm going to help you take this to the end, I need to be able to trust you. And trust is earned. I get it. Take this, figure out the rest of it. If you're staying, that is. You're going to tell me what you're really looking for in there. Translate that, and I'll tell you everything. And on that, young man, you can trust me. You always this hard on Thor? Seems like you're mad at him or something. Ooh, getting nosy. Getting personal. No, I get it. But it's nothing like that. It's... Well, to be honest, 
It's the only language he understands. I'm serious. Go ahead and try being nice to him. See where that gets you. And as much as that may very well be true, judging from what Atreus has been trying so far with Thor, he still he tried to talk to him a couple times, got nothing but venom back pretty much. Mm. How did that end up that way? Was it always that exactly. way? Exactly. Oh, probably I not. Doubt it. <laughs> Isn't that a green? Wonder if Tyr brought that back. Are you trying to make friends now? Well, I just aided the All Father. You said that makes us allies. Yes, as long as you had no treacherous. Interesting. You don't sometimes. I... Oh man! <laughs> like okay. he, he says, you don't know what uh, what you're doing here anymore. Like so, what's what's cool about that as a development? This is totally optional dialogue. Is that yeah? It used to be a clear read on Atreus that he's here to subvert Odin, but he can't read that anymore. He always sees the best in people. While all I see is what people really are. Nobody ever says what they mean. Some lie to the world. Some lie to themselves and don't even know it. And then there is you. You don't know what you want. You don't even know who you are. But I hope you do know this. I will be watching. Yeah, it's safe to say that as a viewer, it's um, we're not going to be as convinced as Atreus, more than likely, about Odin, because, mm -hmm. you know, our stories work, but it's, uh, it's a little bit worrying to know we have a confirmation in-universe that he no longer feels the need to subvert Odin. Yep. Another banger transition there. That transition is so <laughs> good. Yeah, that's awesome. And that ain't just any knife. That's the combo of Greek and Norse knife. Yep. Good morning, brother. No news, I'm afraid. I have a plan. Do you now? The Nords. You found them once. Could you do so again? I could try, but I don't see how that they would help. They are the fates of these lands, are they not? I would know what they know. You may not find them cooperative. As long as I find them, where do we search? Midgard. But if Atreus is in Asgard, there's no getting him back without an army. We should be raising one. Yes, nothing like a catastrophic war to improve the situation. The boy seems quite capable, perhaps if you simply give him some time. You are not free of blame here. You encouraged his foolishness. It's confusion. I do not seek war. But if Odin has stolen my son, do not doubt the lengths I will go to. Your nature has always been clear, Kratos. But you, Freya. That's probably one of the most aggressive sentences he's ever come up with, with how we've seen him so far. It doesn't sound aggressive, but him saying, do not doubt the lengths I will go to, he's like, your nature has always been clear. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's the... Uh... Yeah, he seems, seems a little upset even thinking about it. War is a first resort. That's not the Freya I knew. I hope the Norns can give you the counsel you need. Perhaps mine is no longer of use here. Oh. Tear, stop. This is no time to divide ourselves further. Come, sit, please. You have been quiet. 
Frankly, I'm surprised you of all people would seek out fate. But your instincts haven't let us down so far. Let's find the norms. Who am I to offer him counsel? I only hoped to help the boy find his answers. And I failed. What's my role in all this now? Tyr, you're at the center of this. You always have been. That's why Odin imprisoned you in the first place. He's terrified of you. I doubt that very much. It's the truth. And not just because of prophecies. No one has ever united the realms as you once did. That is not who I am anymore. I know you feel that way now. I've lost myself before. More than once. But believe me, there is something beyond that. And what is that? Purpose. Purpose is the path that leads you to yourself. So you would have me accept my fate. Lead your armies into war. Secure your vengeance. If securing our justice is not your purpose, then find another. For your own sake. I think that conversation is very important considering how things develop with Tyr. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, it's, it's difficult to get across exactly what I mean by that. <laughs> I mean, uh, in the coming scene or two with him, that, that conversation helps inform some of the things he says and does. I suspect we may have consequences to look forward to. Squirrel. Ah, Master Kratos, my apologies. Madame Nithog's disappearance weighs heavily on my mind. She a friend of yours? Less a friend than another longtime tenant of the tree. She was here even before I arrived, and that was ages ago. To even think something could keep her away from her babies. Terrible, just terrible. About Nithog, you should know. We had no choice. It was Odin's doing. Oh, I am very well aware indeed of the alleged All-Father's role in this tragedy. Sadly, there's no expecting him to clean up after himself. Not all gods show the interest that you do in writing past wrongs. Ah, Mr. Freezing! I think Ratatoska's pretty bro. Neat little detail. Yeah. yeah. You can, obviously, all of that can be missed if you uh, don't press triangle mm -hmm. at the right times. True. Gusts and constant radar attacks. Oh, that's because they believe Kratos is responsible for Fimble Winter, and that killing him will end it. Where would they get an idea like that? From me, of course. Mm. Of course. <laughs> Quiet! She is a friend. Now. Better they get this from you. I think that's a pretty neat detail, because they would have been pretty much present every time she tries yeah. to kill them. Exactly. Once the wolves have the scent of the Norns, we'll just need to follow their lead. I will open the gate. Brother, what exactly do you intend to ask the Norns? How I may find my son. Nothing more. You don't imagine it's a chance to clear up all this mess about prophecy? Perhaps get a second opinion on your alleged demise? You didn't tell me you had a death prophecy? When Atreus and I reached Jotunheim, we found a hidden mural. The giants. <coughs> Faye herself had foreseen our entire journey long ago. Who we would meet, who we would fight. All of it as it happened. But you aren't dead. That <coughs> image was from a time yet to come. I see. You've never struck me as someone who fears death. That's not the problem, is it? No. Death can have me when it earns me. Then maybe it's not the future that bothers you. Faye sent you on your journey, and she made sure you'd see that image at the end of it. And you're still not sure why. I wish to speak of this no further. Well, the Lake of Nine is certainly... Yeah, that's the epic, epic, epic line. line it's ever. One of the best yeah. lines of the game, yeah. It's pretty <laughs> it's cool. Just, just on the way, basically. Death can uh, have me when it earns me. It's like, oh man. And yeah, just bringing up part of his insecurities related to Faye, she she highlights some mm. sort of there, and then he's just like, okay, new subject, bye. That's not... Yep, yep. We're, done. we're not doing that. Seen better days. Raiders have made themselves quite at home. Not sure I've been back to these parts since our great battle with Seekrim. 
She speaks highly of that fight as well. You know of that. She told me all about it when she found me. She believed you could be an ally. Long before I believed it. The Valkyrie Queen. An ally. I'm the Valkyrie Queen. As Sigrun was stubbornly determined to remind me. I should have guessed it was Sigrun helping you recover yourself. He's so loyal. <laughs> Why? Clever. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a love goddess to see where you're coming from. Quiet. Mimir, have you encountered these Norns? I Not fought the love goddess one time. right. They have ways of discouraging visitation. Odin made his share of efforts. Wouldn't talk about what he found. Either he gave up, or he wanted to forget what he saw. There. You mind telling us what you experienced when you sought the Norns last time? To be honest, the details are hazy. Like waking up from a dream. Mainly, I remember that nothing could be done to change my son's fate. Which only made me more determined to try. Brother, what of your story? You faced the fates of your homeland, yeah? Oh, nice of the The you. legends Sweet. I heard about the ghost of Sparta were totally exaggerated. Exaggerated? Oh, not in the brazen bloodshed righteous fury part. The part where it said you traveled back in time itself to win a battle once lost. It's strange credulity, obviously. I mean, a rumor about Thor knocking the world serpent back in history from Ragnarok is one thing. It is the truth. The threats of fate span all life and time. The Sisters of Fate abused their power. When I challenged them, they threatened to undo my existence. So I killed them and turned their power on Zeus. That's the most dangerous and irresponsible thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love when she says that. It's, it's so good. It's so cool because, yeah, it's just been this thing about God War 2 where it's just like, that was insane. It's just like, yeah, it should be seen as insane to any yeah. character you tell. Mm. Like, what? have no such magic nor does anyone in these you just like imagine sitting down and explaining the mcu to these characters <laughs> just do it like, it's like no one would ever write that what a ridiculous story he's like sorry this one was a what a world a realm a universe a, a reality and a dimension yes, yes. I'm first don't three forget timelines story, yeah. we're okay but that fourth one sucks <laughs> i can you imagine if it existed odin would have it and if Odin had it, we'd be five shades more fucked than we are already. Five shades I would not more ask fucked. them to change the past, even if they could. I only want information. And that's quite dangerous enough, in my experience. Freya, thank you for your help. I know this was not your focus. The sooner we find your son, the sooner you'll be able to focus. I just hope it works. Just the same. Thank you. Kratos, ghost of Sparta, the king of Olympus, destroyer of fate, cruel strength, bringer of war, weapon of the gods, turned against his enemies. He chases a redemption he knows he can never deserve. He cannot. So for those who don't know, because it's not necessarily an intro, there, this is the Norns fucking with our characters. Uh, yeah. That was Give the intro more. they just gave Kratos, which, to be honest with you, more than half of it was just badass. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, the other piece Very is a little bit more critical, and it's interesting to think about where they would have gotten the information. Freya of the Vanguard, Master of Magics, Queen of the Valkyries, Witch of the Woods. I'm a long-winded know-it-all, and I cannot change. See? You forgot smartest man alive. Yes, that <laughs> itchy, <sir>. Yay. <laughs>
What Watching makes it even that... greater is they actually don't say anything. Yeah, it cuts that. them off. Well, they give up. <laughs> <laughs> again. Normally, I don't mind ladies whispering in my ear, but this is positively awesome. Anyone ever tell you that you babble when you're terrified? Terrified? I'll have you know I'm at the very most deeply apprehensive. And breaking tension with humor is the sacred duty of a traveling companion. Hey, how very dare you? Babbling. Babbling. I love the semantic difference between terrified and deeply apprehensive. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, as well, as well, he knows his role. He does it well, okay? Walter, <laughs> listen to me, please. Stop! Why did you bring him here? You are not welcome here! Wait! Baldur, come back! Talk to me! Harm him! Nobody harms my boy! But me! No! Freya! Brother, over here! Come get me! I want none of this! Why did you never turn on Odin? But I did! I tried to stop him any way I could! Don't lie! You sought to open from the deep. Ow, this is my mere thing. Stop letting me. You sought to favor. You plotted his war. You watched him mistreat everyone and everything. And you never gave us death until you turned on. You. I know secrets. It's true. All of it. But for love of you, I became a better man. A counselor for peace. An ally to all those who. feel much like succeeding. I see the door has disappeared. Or it was never there. They toy with us still. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a pretty intense representation of all their deepest insecurities. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, uh, I appreciate the insight into all of them, starting, of course, with Freya. She believes she killed Boulder. Uh, yeah. Pretty much fully at this point. I imagine that she shifted a lot of it to Kratos, but that's gone at this point. Um... Especially that the showing her break his neck, like it's uh, yeah. yeah. Nobody hurts my son but me. And then, and then of course, quite, uh... Mimir. He's got incredible guilt that he didn't act faster. He took too yeah. long to become a good man that protected people, helped people. Uh, and the big insecurity he has is, did I only help once it affected me? Is that the only reason I did it? And. Uh, yeah, and the fact that she said you assisting a violent god even now, that's something he thinks. What he's mm -hmm. thinking about. Uh gonna come up again at some point. But it's just yeah, it's just these are these are huge insecurities. And of course the, the big one with Kratos being Atreus when he said he killed his family. And it's like this this big old like uh that's the one thing you would never want turned on him by Atreus, I think. Mm-hmm. To, to be afraid of him because of what he did to uh, them. Yeah, yeah. Hits you like a brick when you hear it too. If you know his backstory, it's like, oh. And like, like, oh, the disconnection. He fear. killed his family. Like, it's like, 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 get away from me. You're a, you're a, you're a monster. Sort of. She's like, ah. 
So yeah, all of them having uh, having deep, 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 deep issues, and the Norns obviously throwing them through all of it like a gauntlet. Um, but maybe we can discover a little bit more about them as people. What's uh, what are they about? Kratos, Freya, and Mimir's head enter the home of the Norns tentatively. They have finally reached their destination. Kratos speaks first. I, I seek, seek my, my son! son. <laughs> you know the child is an Asgard. No, you seek what all who search for us seek. To know the ending to your story. The ghost of Sparta furrows his brow menacingly. He resists the urge to grunt. Oh, he oh, fails. <laughs> he fails. You come to us, piteous archetypes, seeking freedom from your scripts, as if knowing your lines would grant you the power to rewrite them. Speak plain. <laughs> you will die, Kratos of Sparta. But you called him the destroyer of fate. There must be a way to subvert destiny. There is no destiny, Puck. The protagonists are speechless. They do not understand. There is no grand design, no script. Only the choices you make. That your choices are so predictable. Merely make us seem prescient. When my son was born, shut up! <laughs> Your prophecy said he would die a needless death, and he did. Because you could not let him go. Because he thirsted for revenge. And because you kill gods. But what Kratos did, it was not out of hate. Should I bring him a crown then? He still slays gods, but now he's sad about it? You are the sum of your choices, nothing more. And because your choices never change, you will learn that Heimdall intends to kill your son in Asgard, and you will do what you do best. And then Ragnarok. The skies burn, the curtains fall. Exunt omni. Heimdall. <laughs> Again, he misses the point. <laughs> Focusing on the second act, to the exclusion of the final. A common mistake in storycraft. We are leaving. leaving. He stomps away, followed closely by Freya. I enjoyed your story, Kratos. Pity it has to end so soon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was educational. Dude, the music. What? Yeah, music. Yes, great. Really good. What, a, <laughs> what an interesting take on prophecies and yeah. you know, basically people fulfilling prophecies. It's not it's not just the we know what's gonna happen and here it is. Like, no, we're going by the nature of you guys and your choices are so obvious every time that we just can have a very good guess what is going to happen because you never change your uh, your choices. It's not a prophecy, it's an educated guess. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. It's, yeah. it's safe to assume they have a very unique and powerful understanding of people. Like, and that's what yes, gives them course. access to more of course, yeah. of an almost deterministic look at, at the world that no one else will be able to do. But what they've said is pretty much one of the most common understandings of how all of this shit works. You're pretty easy to predict. A lot of people are in certain circumstances. Back to we've talked about this before, but there'll be sometimes there'll be news, and I I see it and I read it and I'm like that is you know blah 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 and I'm like can't wait to tell you know Fringy Metal Rags or whoever about this even though I'm pretty sure I know exactly what they're gonna say like because uh, I know <laughs> yeah. them pretty well but it doesn't matter because like you know it's uh, it's fun to experience and share and stuff but you know 
they know them well enough that this this is is it, I think it's really cool that the only thing Kratos really took from this or seemed to was the information that Heimdall is going to kill Atreus. He's not paying attention to what they're trying to say about how well, yeah, like uh, everything they said, rolls out. Right, that they're focused on the second act, <laughs> like on the middle to the exclusion of the end. He's so focused on that that the consequences of committing to a certain course of action are just sort of out of his mind. Yeah. And yet you'd be and yet people are surprised when those outcomes happen. It's and, uh yeah, and then like you're the sum of your choices, which is that's just another one of those we are reinforcing a certain theme that has already been established. We are we are building it up. We're just adding more elements to it. And uh reading it ahead of time cuz it's interesting. I love how the Norns say intends to kill and everyone remembers kills. Like, like it's set in stone that Heimdall will kill Atreus, and so he has to stop it, as opposed to re realizing mm -hmm. saying he intends to kill him is no different than he intends to kill you. Like, uh, yeah. he intends <laughs> to kill a lot of people, I'd imagine. There's a lot of intent. I mean, and that's the other thing. Kratos is not familiar with Heimdall. He doesn't realize how much, like, he's under control. He doesn't realize the scenario in Asgard. All he's been told, yeah. and he's laser-focused on it, and that is Kratos at the core. He's, he's spoken before about how Atreus being safe is basically number one. It trumps everything. But he's come so far in these games from the man he was in the first three games that it's like uh, the, the Norns are basically saying he's just, it's another format for the exact same results. Uh, everything fucking dies. Intention to execute an action and actually executing that action are two very different things. I intended to date a lot of girls in high school. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Failed successfully failed uh yeah. but yes uh w w what i think a big takeaway from what they said isn't very disagreeable it's just not what you want to hear mm -hmm. yeah you never you never want to hear the whole my oh no that's just <laughs> i mean you did this to you what do you want me to say yeah and uh, i like that mamiya remembered in their summary of him he's the destroyer of fate but the thing is i think it's safe to assume what they read out is everyone's description of themselves Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it's what they think of themselves. Yeah, yeah. Kratos is raging against fate throughout this game. The concept of it, uh, and and he did kill the sisters of fate. So <laughs> you know, that was going to count for yeah, something. He, kinda, he, he did that. Though. Not sure how he pulled that off, considering they have access to all of time. But hey, it reminds me of a which is a Mortal Kombat game where you kill the god of time at the end of it. Maybe I don't remember. No, well, I'm mainly asking Fringy. I think he's the only person who might know. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I I'm there. sorry. I certainly am not asking you. Ugh. Yeah, uh, some smelly. Which, uh, which game? Which Mortal Kombat game do you kill the God of Time at the end? Ah, uh, that was eleven. Yeah, because that game makes no sense at all. Yeah, I remember just fighting because I watched a story summary of it and I found that fucking hilarious that you're battling the God of Time like in a Mortal and Kombat then she format loses somehow. Yeah, and she loses. Yeah, <laughs> like nice. Um, but yes, uh, the Norns, I think, especially after the comments we just heard about God of War 2, this just feels like a way better version of what the Fates were all about. Because God of War 2 is all about the Sisters of Fate for the most part. That's what the main story is about getting to and using. Um, the Norns represent a small part of this story, but I think they're a way better uh, approach to the concept. Yep. Based on what I understand about the Sisters of Fate and God of War 2, <laughs> it does sound like... Pretty funny. Were... I'll give them that. They're funny. <laughs> that tree. Well, isn't that interesting? What is this? That's the noose, brother. The one Odin hanged himself with. As part of his endless mad quest for secrets of life and death and what have you. What are you doing? It's a charged object, significant to Odin. Perhaps I'll find a use for it. Brother, what they said about the boy? Will not happen. Oh, I agree. It will not happen. We will not let it. Of course we bloody won't. The question is how? You wouldn't seriously consider killing Heimdall, would you? I will do what I must. Oh, is that all? You're wrong to dissuade him, Mimir. You know Heimdall. I grant you that he's a spiteful, vicious little shit. And so loyal, <laughs> Odin entrusted him with Galahor. If we have the chance to eliminate... That's no joke, by the way. Galahorn, you, you read its lore when you are in Odin's office. It's like one of the most powerful things ever, and Odin's just got it with Heimdall. That means Odin trusts Heimdall, like, incredibly. Yeah. Um, mm. It's interesting to think about. Eliminate him before Ragnarok. We shouldn't hesitate. 
Considering his powers of foresight alone, that is an if of mountainous size. Even supposing we're all perfectly comfortable plotting an assassination, and I, for one, am a mite rusty at that measure, we've got no way to reach Heimdall, and no way to kill him if we did. I have killed gods greater than him. I don't doubt that, brother, but it's hardly my point. Look, I think we're missing the Norn's message here. We've all got our tendencies, and yours is to run headlong into danger to protect the ones you love. I do not intend to change. Not about that. Why should you? Apparently my tendency is to kill the ones I love. Freya... I don't need you to comfort me. Either of you. Their accusation was cruel. None of us believe... The truth can be a cruel thing. Anyone care to argue with that? No. But Baldur's fate had many causes. Prophecy among them. How do you mean, brother? There are many tales in my homeland of those who fulfilled prophecy by attempting to avoid it. So it was when Freya tried to protect Baldur. And so it was when I accused my son of going to Asgard. Then we agree. It'd be foolish to go after Heimdall. No. If Heimdall must die for Atreus to live, then Heimdall must die. How can you say that, knowing what you know? Because if Heimdall is a threat to my son, I must act. It is my... Your nature. Well played, Norns. Now tell... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so much to pull yeah. from that whole conversation. Kratos was listening to uh, what the yeah, Norns yeah. gave, but the thing is, like, tell no matter how much you tell him, by coming into this action, you're you're playing into your your weaknesses, your prophecy. Your, he's like, I don't give a fuck. I just don't care. I don't care about any of it. Yeah, ultimately, my goal is protect Atreus. I like, will, I will enact whatever actions are required for that goal. And yeah, this this Chad yes to all of the threats of of what could happen. He's like, yeah, sure, fine, whatever. Because the thing, what the what Mimir I think is trying to get at is that uh that option you take every time it leads you to places that can be rather negative. And he's just like, like I give a fuck, dude. It's the correct choice every time to save my son. Yep. I'm never going to be like, ooh, maybe I shouldn't save my son because things could somehow get worse than if I didn't. Like, nah, it's not happening. And yeah, his... ultimately, you got to set a priority, and his is protect that kid. So it's like, well, it's it's that's hyper my goal. hyper dad mode. It's uh, makes complete <laughs> yeah. sense. Yep. And... Everything I got to do to get there is fair game, and just so you know, I will kill gods. I'm that kind of guy. Well, can you release this playthrough somewhere? It's a good compilation of the main story and important dialogue. That's something I was thinking. With the amount of effort I put into the edit, I don't know if it's worthwhile to drop it up on Moolah just so that you guys can actually. Yeah, you should. Check like, it out uh, or not. I'm not sure. Story bit, yeah, character. It's, just that it's yeah, taken like ages, that. as you can probably tell, to construct this. Mm -hmm. And the idea that we just drop it after the EFAB is like, well, I guess I could release it on its own, right? I mean, it, it'll I, be useful for a lot of people going forwards if it you essentially list it and say, this is all of the story slash character stuff. Uh, you know, a, a good, you know, it'll be a good asset to have, a good uh, piece of reference, not just for you, but. And us, of course, but for anyone, I guess, on YouTube who wants to kind of watch that. And it'll be good for all of the people in the audience to be able to reference later. All right. I, I don't I mean might... for this to sound like a plug that's sniping that, but um, I, I've got a guy from the Legion of Memers um, cutting my playthrough together that's uh, going up on my channel as like a cinematic edit for people to just watch the story. Just you... I think this is a game that, like, you know, if you just watch the story, that's still worthwhile. Is, wait, does that cut have you in it or no? Well, I, I'm playing, but it's just game. It's pure gameplay footage, like totally clean. I don't oh, put a watermark you... on it or anything, though. Because so, if you guys want to make videos on God of War, feel free to steal my footage. Oh I, well, yeah. The, the, um, not to uh, sort of dilute that, but yes, you can already get plenty of long. I think the reason why people are suggesting this one is because I've cut it specifically to consume the story important yeah. elements instead of. So, like, you don't get a lot of stuff that could be considered superfluous. Oh yeah, no. Uh, likewise, uh, that, that's oh, okay. why I have the editor working on it to just make it as as more kind of like a hey, if you don't like video games but you think this story sounds cool, watch it like it's a movie, and it's not just like unedited me playing. It's it's cut down to the the story critical stuff like, for the most part. Tell me of this power Heimdall wields. He sees the future. More like he reads the person seize their intention my intent will be to kill him knowing that will be no advantage 
Brother, this is no one to underestimate. Any move you make, he'll have seen it coming. If you must face every him, sound we you need make, something every bounce you break. An edge. He'll be watching you. You may. <clears throat> Very well. I really like this moment that I think Kratos from any other game would have been like, I can take him, shut the fuck up. But yeah. Like, it's been long enough, he trusts him long enough, he's like, all right, we'll do it your way, Mamiya, what is your way? And I love it because I think I cut it, but he, the, the, the way becomes, ask the dwarves. And then ask they the say that, and then the, the thing comes up and it says, ask the dwarves. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> ask the dwarves. Ah, the oh, inevitable asking of the dwarves. Oh, yeah, I did leave it in. <laughs> the path, ask the dwarves. Theo, do you hate that? Yeah, Theo, where's the hatred? What's going on? Yeah, Theo, do you not like it when it says ask the dwarves? Okay, all right, just checking. Listen, just as checking. long as you're having fun, I don't want to be keeping yeah, you here. Yeah, I'm glad if you're... that you're having a great time. You are right? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> just... All right, that's good. <laughs> don't, good. Don't want you having to stay here if you want to do other things. That is totally okay if you would like to. I just uh, don't know. I haven't gotten a much of a vibe on how you feel about the story lately, that's all. Fair uh, enough. I don't, know. Oh. I just don't think I have anything to add, which is kind of Fair. depressing of a place to be in. Oh, well, you can always just agree. <laughs> you know what that thing? I know it's, this sounds ridiculous. But you, you can always say, just like, agree with rags. You could be like that thing metal said. That seemed accurate. It's like you could even say that. No one yeah, would ever say that, though. I know. I yeah. was suggesting like it was a hypothetical. It's good that you said it, though. You metal is our Thor. Oh, he's our oh, he's. He's our little chunk of beef. I, did, I didn't even have a retort to that. I didn't have a retort to that. That's pretty yeah, cool. Okay. I'll be full, yeah. yeah. I'll he's be full. He's our, he's our little beef chunk. <laughs> oh, and that's someone's... Beefy, uh, little beefy boy. That's someone's referenced, yes. That's, I was thinking about that, too. This is the part where he kills you. Like, it comes up multiple characters and then, like, the in-game sort of notifications. And there's an achievement that unlocks. That was really cool. Portal 2, everyone. If you don't know. Good times. Yeah. Great game. Excuse me, sir. Could I have a moment of your time? No. Oh dear, oh dear. What's to be done? What is it you want? It has come to my attention that Neethog has been oh. slain. I didn't cut this properly, uh, because the idea is I wanted to show the the, the conversation of Neethog a little when, when it's like sort of brought up. This is where it actually happens, but this is meant to be cut. So these, see, these are changes I can make before I have a final vision. And as a result, her offspring have been let loose into the Nine Realms. What of it? We kind there of did this already. Three promise I'll to rest. The Norns say Atreus will be killed by Heimdall. The plan is to kill Heimdall first. Oh, wow. Okay, Heimdall. Let's see. Never loses. Sees everything coming. Unpopular at parties. This won't be easy. Whatever his advantages, I will overwhelm him with my own. That's the idea. You gotta overpopulate his senses, see? And I got just the thing in mind to help you do it. Sindri! Frack! Go get Dropnir. Dropnir? But we need it. Our supplies. Oh, we got plenty. And to spare. This Even unironically, happily, and thoroughly answers the question of where they get all their materials from. Uh, they, they've constructed a shit ton across the games, and you can treat it as a, just an in-game thing, whatever. They make stuff, shut up. You provide them materials and stuff, but... Uh, Dropnir is is already a, a, of some level of fame, from what I hear, in Norse mythology. And, um, well, I'll let them introduce it first. Dead trepid. Why would a... Oh. You mean we combine it with... That's right! And then, when he... It'll go... Damn you, that's brilliant. Very well. I suppose there's nothing to do, but... Go fetch Dropnir. Dropnir? I bloody knew these two had nicked it. And Odin blamed me for it disappearing. They stole Dropnir. We didn't steal nothing. We just ungifted what never should have been gifted in the first place. Kind of weird. It feels like Tia's yeah. annoyed they stole Dropnir when, <laughs> if yeah, anything. Like, preventing it Odin from strong, having right? Dropnir is probably a good thing, yeah. yeah. Just, exactly. He's, uh, he's been a little weird, Tia. He's been a little weird. Been a little bit sus. I will just help me kill Heimdall. Never you mind all that. It's a fucking surprise. We're artists. artists. But to even store Dropnir, you'd need... You were saying... So now 
Now you intend to kill Heimdall. Violence cannot prevent violence, Kratos. I truly thought you understood that. No matter what you thought I understood, my son is in danger. I will not allow harm to come to him. That's a lot of rangs. <laughs> well, what's even cooler about this is we have no idea how deep this place is. Exactly. Well we, <laughs> well, we can assume that it was deeper than last time on account of the bucket hitting the bottom so violently. The abrupt stop. Yes, yeah, exactly. that's actually a good, good note, yes. Yeah. Sindri is the Lord of the Rings. Nice. <laughs> so Bear McCreary, which which thing about rings was better to work on? <laughs> I like, I love how they have it on the string. So this is clever. This yeah, is it's clever. Really smart. So they know the real one, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna miss you, little one. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a bit of a nightmare. Got it! I think. I think. I think. Disaster. <laughs> I thought you didn't believe in fate. We are all worried about your son. We... Enough! Heimdall's a threat, not only to Atreus, but to everyone. He's Odin's left hand and he carries the horde that begins Ragnarok. If we have the chance to eliminate him, we then should... it's just as likely a trap because the bastard knows your intentions. Kratos, I've never seen anyone so much as lay a finger on him. Not one. Well, I gathered what's fit for gathering. Oh, you have all that? Totally unnecessary. Wait, you sorry? Could've... Like all the whole get in the ring thing with his POV, they could have done it in a different way where he just comes back with it. It does a little weird thing, you know, but that's just such a cooler way to do it. That's so interesting. And it stands out as a neat part of this where we follow his perspective, mm -hmm. Sindri's perspective yeah. going to get it. Yeah, and uh, the guy's under a lot of stress um, and, and sorting things out and just listening to everybody tearing each other apart as you leave until it fades out and then fades back in once he's... Uh, Got the ring. The ring itself being a really cool little fantasy item, and then the yeah. storage of it making a hell of a lot of sense. You're right, they could have not shown us all of that, but it was neat that we saw it. Yeah, and the sound Whoa. design flourish was nice. We'll have yeah. to go to Svartalfheim to get the rest of the materials. Not to mention we'll have to visit the lady. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, that's a relief. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Ow. <laughs> Kratos, whenever you're ready. The lady, no idea what he's on about, brother. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting battle conversation. Basically, of course, Freya is like all steam ahead. Go, go, grab him. Kill, kill Heimdall. Good, good, good. That's 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 gonna yeah. be good. Kratos is like he's threatening my son. He's forfeit. Uh, obviously, the two dwarves being like, well, you know, if you're gonna do it, they want their practical response of like, this is how. And then Tia being like, really, really, we're just gonna kill another person. We don't care about the repercussions. We don't care what's gonna happen next. We're just gonna kill him. And then of course, Kratos just being like, why are you being retarded? He's killing. Gonna go after my son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, time to go. I'll take it from here. I'll speak to the lady. I, lady. I never get to speak to the lady. There are reasons for that. Brock will go. What? No, no, no. I you heard him. Mm. What's your friend? I ain't oh, it hurt. hurt so much. I know, right? Sindri being so yeah. prideful and <laughs> ego driven that yeah. he wants to see the lady. Yeah. What a little bitch. Let Brock go. Yeah. yeah. What the? Yeah. Let Brock talk to girls. No, you pimple shrimps. Pimple shrimps. Think that'll keep us out? 
And this, by the way, they do this a couple times. Sometimes they, I don't think they always justify it, but basically the idea is that we're going to go on an adventure with uh, Brock and Freya. And once it's over, you're allowed to go back to the game, but they can't let you out because there's too many things that change to account for it game-wide. So basically, someone uh, in Svartalfheim likely fucked with our ability to realm travel, and so uh, Brock is going to reopen the one to Svartalfheim. And yeah. at some point he'll fix it so that all of them are back open. But it's just their way of trying to justify why, listen, we gotta do some story things. We can't have you going off and doing different things until you've done this. Well, think the fuck again. Think what was all that? Again? <laughs> Don't you say <laughs> trying to hog all the glory. Same old shit. Not that. The gate. What's wrong with a bloody gate? Most likely someone in neither of the been making a fuckery of the works. Probably on account of all that incursion and you got up to. But don't worry, you little dangling head. Old Brock came prepared. I got ways in and out from the old days. Gates said never even think to look for. On account of being stupid. I'll meet you up there. Go on. Brock. And go on. <laughs> you sure he was the right pick for this, brother? I trust him. He speaks plain. And yet so colorfully. Um, the Brock <laughs> entry, out of all entries, other than maybe me, is, is one of the most positive Kratos has, where he basically says, I can tolerate him. Yeah. <laughs> like, his, it's like a thing of uh, describing his positives and negatives that he's just like, I, I, can, I can accept his company. It's just like, whoa. <laughs> like, you must really like him. You have to let me take Brock's place. He can't talk to the lady. He mustn't. No. Do not ask again. But, oh dear. Oh, oh dear. It's not his fault Atreus ran off, you know. Or are you just being Brock's champion? As you can see, new recording, the saturation got cranked again. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. What are you insinuating, Highness? Can't the smartest man alive put it together? The giants conceal a mysterious figure who changes the fate of Ragnarok, and you're oblivious to the only rational candidate. The one who's fought wars against gods and won. I am not their champion. Well, we're each entitled to our opinion. Was that the reason you proposed this alliance? You expect me to lead your armies at Ragnarok? That is Tyr's job, not mine. It's plain to see Tyr's no war god anymore. Nor am I. I have left that life behind. Wow. Not killing gods you haven't. Or else what are we doing in this realm? Forging this weapon? Your choice. You know where it might lead. I am only protecting I my... know. I know. And we both know the places protecting your child can take you. I was just thinking of how Odin antagonized the giants for generations. Nearly wiped them out of existence twice. Now you may have a role to play in stopping him once and for all. Don't you think it's possible that's what your wife would have wanted? Do not presume to know what she wanted. I'm not saying anything you haven't thought. Her secret haunts every step of your path, wasn't it? When he said that, she's standing just in the background, and it's such a Freya will remember that moment <laughs> when you say that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if you talked about your doubts, they wouldn't explode when you talk to your son. I Oof, true. And this is mm. the funny thing, she's become more familiar enough now that she feels like she can take a step into being maybe a bit more critical, but hey, just because you know, he's invested in getting you to be friends with him. There's still subjects you need to be careful when you're talking about him. Yeah. Do not doubt it was what I left behind. She would never have asked that of me. Why would she need to ask? She saw your fate. Three of Odin's kin dead because of the path she put you on. You don't think she knew exactly what it meant, sending you to Jotunheim? This is mere conjecture and probably quite enough of it, Highness. We're all making an effort to cooperate here, after all. As Rags is pointing out, you get a lot of that dialogue from Mr. Mamiya. He's like, clearly noticing things are getting a little bit more tense. And he's like, all right, mm -hmm. maybe we should roll that back. Chillax, guys. You're right. It's not for me to say. <laughs> Look, I wasn't trying to provoke you or cast doubt on your marriage. It just seems to me your thoughts haven't caught up to your instincts yet. And I know something about that. Meanwhile, I'll see what else I can learn while we're here. Maybe I'll send a few Ain Harryar back to Valhalla for good measure. Well, you have fun now. 
Hey, you made it. About time. I got everything all set here. Now we just gotta push on up to the fort. Bulky. Hopefully nobody springs an alarm. No, what's your nattering, you snake sucking mommy milk sauce with your protective gear? <laughs> Ain't you never seen a legend in the flesh before? Brother, did you notice the dwarves of the camp were twice as alarmed to see Drop than they were to see you? They did seem surprised. All right, now I can turn this crank and cap that geyser there. Hey, got another riddle for you. What gets bigger, the more you take away from it. Well, let's see. Something abstract. You can't do big. this to me. Abstract? <laughs> no, that doesn't work. <laughs> stomp the stomp. Stomp the stomp. That clever. What a great bit of dialogue that is on the surface. A simple, uh, fun uh, riddle that these two characters get to fight over. How neat. Yep. Yeah, that is a really cool thing that they have. And what a clever little riddle. Kudos to those who uh, know it. Act it quick, yes. Yeah. Vampire. Jump for the lady. Grab some what? The wind? No, you idiot. The it's sound it. of the wind. Oh, watch and learn. See? Dwarven magic's all about the intangibles. The relationship between the stuff what you can touch and what you can't. It's about understanding. Understanding what? The nature of a thing's more important than the form of a name. Oh, the dialogue man. is too... It's just... It's too <laughs> well written. Yeah, like... It's excellent, uh, and it was kind of it's fun really cutting good. all of this because when you see it all in a row, it's like fucking hell. This would have taken ages. Mm -hmm. The amount of work Absolutely. they did. Absolutely. The amount excellent. of revisions yeah. and redrafts. <laughs> um, funnily enough, this was literally pooped out about two hours before this EFAP was started, this stream, this this one. Nice. But of oh, course, uh, yeah, we're, by the way, this only takes us up, doesn't take us to the end, is my point. Uh, but I was going to yeah. say, you know, it is nine hours and 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, look <laughs> at that. We have been going a while. The more we could do, the better. I am still fine. But obviously, I don't want to push everyone to heart attacks or anything. So, uh, just just putting that out there. How's everyone feeling? You okay? I'm, I'm doing okay. Right right I should now. probably get to sleep. Um, you know, no, I'm not going to cut it off there. Obviously, there's a particular scene we uh, have to play. It's just James just yelling before you heard everything. Just <laughs> ignore James. <laughs> um, well, so and uh, the idea, of course, is that we're never going to be able to finish this all in this stream, uh, but. Uh, uh, as long as you're on board, Mr. Mr. Theo and Mark and Metal and Rags and Fringy and myself, we will continue it tomorrow uh, from wherever we leave off tonight. That's all very acceptable. I think, uh, Theo, if you want, I don't know, it's completely up to you just to stay for the upcoming payoff. Um, but if, sure. No problem if you don't want it, but yeah. Uh, if it's okay with everyone else, can we maybe do one more hour? Yeah. If yeah, I, can, I do can do it, I can do it. Yeah, yeah, fine. <laughs> All right. Puppies are asleep. They will not disturb us anymore, I don't think. No problem. All right, then. The funny thing is, I kind of do need to stop the stream eventually so that I can get the rest done before EFAP starts I was, again. I was thinking about that, yeah. actually. I was wondering. Because the thing is, I've got another about hour and a half to two hours of game to play, and then I've got to chop all of that up along with another hour I've got left. Uh, the idea of sleeping and being ready for this, I'm going to cut that shit close. It'll be tough. Yeah. But I'll try. It's so funny. This is one of the longest EFAPs we've done in a while. We're still nowhere near finished yeah. coverage-wise. Like, not even a TV show or a movie. Is it, how is it everyone... Feels uh, like one, but in a good way. Chat, how have you felt about this format? Do you think it's a little too, a little too weird? A little too long, a little too... Uh, how we feel? I'll, I'll obviously check the comments when this goes up as well, but it's been a very strange format. We've like, It so has been odd, and, yeah. but it's not often that something like Ragnarok comes around. Yeah. So I think <clears throat> its strangeness is, you know, justified. I did say in the in Metal's Forge, it's like, oh, you thought a three-hour discussion was long? We, uh, it could be <laughs> argued, I think, we're past the halfway point in the game, but we're up to nine and a half hours of discussing. Yeah. It's and nice to talk about a good. Makes you appreciate it. 
Yeah, and hopefully people have a better idea if they were like, why the fuck would anyone like this story? Like, hopefully we've given a lot of what we yeah. were drawing from it. Yeah, and even if you don't super, you know, connect with it a lot, hopefully it will at least get you to appreciate the kind of work that goes into it, especially considering that, again, this is a video game, and this is the kind of thing that I definitely am glad to see, you know, apparently flourish and be appreciated and uh, be beloved by people. I want to have games that are more willing to put you know, a lot of work into the narrative and the characters, not to, you know, say that <laughs> it should take a, you know, a, a front seat to, uh, to gameplay or anything. But obviously you can have uh, uh, you can put a lot of work in a story and characters in games. And I just wanted to highlight what was mentioned as a flaw is like not covering the side cause. It's like, dude, <laughs> like if we did, yeah, yeah, come on. I don't know. Like seriously, looking at three streams of nine hours, probably if we did that as well. Um, oh yeah, or we could, uh, it, We'll try and summarize it and, and recommend it, of course, in terms of go search out for the videos if you really want to see what happens in them. But like the Freya one's pretty much the only one we talked about so far, and it's it's pretty damn strong. Uh, I feel like all of them are, but yeah. Alrighty then, let's uh, let us see how far we can get. Lady, then. The Lady of the Forge. Ain't no more magical creature in this whole realm. Why, I've been waiting for my chance to meet her since I was knee-high to a Noken. But Sindri had never had it. Said I was too uncouth. But today's finally the day. Woo! I got goosebumps Woo! on my <laughs> bunions. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I've never seen you so... reverent. Are you nervous? What? Shut up! No, fuck you! <laughs> I love that response. <laughs> what? No, shut uh, up! Fuck you! It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Wow, Goaty, you sure did give up on that riddle in a hurry. I give up nothing. It gets bigger the more you take away, is it? That's right! Hmm, sorted. It's desire. Nope. nope. What do you mean, nope? <laughs> desire only grows when you take away the thing you desire. All right, it's not perfect. I love that, where he's just, he reads it out to himself, and he's like, yeah, okay, that's... <laughs> like, <laughs> sure, it doesn't really work. But let's hear your answer. Oh, you won't get it out of me that easy. <laughs> I see no forge. You don't see the form of a forge, but we're going to the nature of... I was almost following him for a the moment there. <laughs> I, um, uh, um, I, uh, uh, Yeah, baby. Fuck, the music helps. Just making it so epic, even though it's already pretty awesome. She yeah. needs the final ingredient. Blood of a god. Oh, I have Give that. Your head. Fucking cool! That's no. awesome. It's just like I mean. Also, if you're gonna give Kratos a weapon, that's gonna be like, oh, this is like the final kind of chapter in this this whole saga. What's it gonna be? What's actually gonna have some weight to it? It's like, well, we already have his wife's weapon that he started this saga with, and then we gave him his old weapons from the old trilogy. What else? It's like, well, what? The first weapon a Spartan uses is a fucking spear, mm -hmm. man. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. <laughs> don't forget comboing it with a well-known, yep. at least to Norse people, object from yep. Norse mythology. And what mm -hmm. a fucking cool way to contextualize this. A repeating spear. Like, for Kratos as well. I was like, oh, what an excellent choice. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty yeah, neat. Maybe. The, uh, the blood she drags from him. It's like the two 
aspects it shows of the Norse, uh, sorry, the Greek god of war symbol and then the, uh, the Spartan symbol. Mm -hmm. Chevron? Yes. <laughs> the, uh, the idea that that goes in and then it turns into the little, uh, the red uh, ribbon or whatever it is. But, but like, uh, Rags, I remember you not being too fond of it. What are you, what are you, uh, what are you thinking? Oh, it's it's just the way that it sort of looks when you're with the way that it kind of works with the animations. I don't think that the the banner on it, as long as it is, kind of keeps up with a lot of the animations. And I think it can look a little, maybe more than just a little silly in some of the actual animations when it's in combat and stuff. Um, Probably fair, yeah. Like uh, the way that it looks, you know, there is it's got a nice regal ceremonial sort of look to it. Uh, but uh, when it comes to actually fighting, uh, I think it it would probably get in the way a little bit and the game doesn't often know quite how to deal with it uh just because of the speed at which the animations can play out but it's just a little aesthetic you know thing which, um, which funnily enough like the most praise i have for it is aesthetic as well just the uh oh what a what a what a neat bit of flavor that feels like it it evokes the colors of his uh the spartan history as well to the spear it's just Mwah, but simultaneously, yeah. Like I said, I didn't notice a lot about the animations, um, but obviously it's one of those things where maybe if you if you see it, you just don't unnotice it, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, it, like, it is a bit weird that it, uh, like, for people who haven't played the game that are just watching this because you're curious about it, um, it, it it's a ranged weapon, of, uh, or it has a ranged property to it where you can basically just throw infinitely regenerating spears. And um, it does look a little bit strange. I think it has a bit of context in the series because that uh, a, a similar weapon is in Ghost of Sparta as well, uh, where uh, like you get the I think it's just the, I think it's the spear of Sparta that you get, and oh. it's a it, it's a yeah, a very similar kind of range weapon that that yeah. throws almost exactly the same. Um, and and I, I think when you think about how that looks in animation, it's like okay, well. If it's just you chuck a spear and then another one respawns in your hand, that is a bit strange looking. How fast do you make that look in a way that makes it look good, but also feels good as like a projectile weapon in a game? And I think that when you're talking about regenerating spears, it's, it's kind of tough to make that look, you know, the way it should. Because well, I mean, I'll just go as far as saying I, I think it was... <laughs> I think it passes the badass check. Uh, and oh yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> for sure. Not only that, um, so, yeah. I've seen a lot of people say, like, it's my favorite of the three, and some people are like, wow, the blades, right? And I'm, I'm just sitting here like, oh, man, all three are fucking great. They're just yeah, they're like, such great. Yeah, I mean, like, that's, that's where I was at with it, too. I was like, I, I love all three of them, and I, I kind of didn't have a <laughs> uh, a main, as it were. Yeah, I like well, using all three. What's really important is they're all functionally distinct. They and they all serve have... great narrative purposes. Uh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, of course, there's that. It's it's a nice blending of the two, right? The Leviathan Axe is uh, slower, but a heavy hitter. The Blades of Chaos, error of effect, really quick. Not as strong, but yeah, again, real fast. And then uh, the Spear is... It, it just feels like that's a weapon in particular that's better for long range. Uh, and I, I think single combat. target focus, it can be quite effective as well, like overwhelming. It, yeah, yeah it, it it's, a, it's a great buff to the Spear, uh, sorry, the Shield. Like the, the the intention of dealing stamina damage over health damage, I think the the spear is a is a great addition to that, and a lot of its upgrades deal with stun damage. That um, I think I think put it in an interesting spot mechanically with the with the other two weapons. Well, and I like the you deal frost damage with the the axe, fire damage with his blades, and then with the spear, you can yank out a status effect from your enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's really cool. And has a wind property by yes. itself. And then when you fully upgrade it, it can quickly overtake your uh, playtime. The spear is very fun to play with. Yeah, it has like really cool runic attacks too. Yeah. Yeah, almost forgot. Ma'am, it would be an honor if you might bless it for us. Are you a. Uh... Hello? Oh, it feels bad, man. Hello? <laughs> the fuck was that? She acts like I weren't even here. Mermaids don't speak to our corporeal bodies. They speak to a part of our soul. A part specifically you might be missing. Did you catch how he delivered that line? 
mm -hmm. the, the voice yeah. starts to shake toward the end of it because he noticed it earlier, he's figured it out, and he knows like this is not going to be good news. Mm -hmm. I, but I gotta tell him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, eh, rip it off. Now I have to, definitely. Yep. <sighs> Oh, the music as well. Oh! Fuck! Yeah. Damn it, Sindri, you lion's cat scrubber! I knew it. I died. I fucking died! The fuck you want? It needs a blessing. Yeah, well, the one to give us the blessing just fucked off into the tomb! It needs the blessing of a great blacksmith. What? I can't bless shit. I don't have all my soul bits. It, the blessing wouldn't mean squat. It is the nature of a thing that matters. Yes. Not at oh, all. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's the delivery, too. Just like... Oh, it's everything. All right. May this weapon strike true. May it be wielded with wisdom. May it be put down when its job is done. So that's, uh, that's wow. one of the best things in the yeah. game. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Dude, I uh, I remember when I was streaming Ooh. this, I did not see that scene coming. When he starts no. to kneel, I was like, wait, wait, wait. And then yep. when he says a great black I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, Kratos, really? You gotta kill me. So meaningful that he would do this. <laughs> that he would do this for Brock. Yeah, this is, and, you have to understand, just... this isn't like he pragmatically decided I require a blessing. This is my friend is in need right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the idea that the inversion of I Brock's requesting the belt, the blessing from this ethereal, like angelic kind of mermaid thing. And she doesn't, she doesn't respond to him. And then, so it's like, you have this like angelic character being the one that doesn't give the blessing. And the one who does is the most kind of crass guy. That's like constantly swearing and is the most gruff dude in the game. But then it's like, nah, man. But his, his blessing is the one that matters right now, and it's just well, it's, like, ah, oh, it's that's... what like it, once again, Kratos showing how far he's come. He recognizes mm. a blessing means a hell of a lot to people like Brock for weapons and items. I don't know that Kratos necessarily thinks it's an. He would have gotten it from the creature if if she'd been okay with yeah. it with Brock, because he would just been like, yeah, sure, whatever. Well, that's what you do with weapons. But noticing how much it means to Brock, he's like, you know how much you mean to me, buddy. You want to yeah. know? Like, I want you to bless it. A kneeling to him. Yeah, three quarters of a soul or not, you're important to me. And yeah, it's one of the stuff. biggest and best bro moments in anything. Uh, yeah. And he's, uh, it's, it's, Brock is tumbling, all right? He's not in a good place, and you uh, you yanked him out of it. And uh, yeah, I just feel like there's a lot of support in this, uh, in this game and the previous. Brock comes through for Kratos all the time. Yeah. And uh, despite being, like I said, there's lots you can pick up from what Brock says and when. Yes, he is crass. Yes, he is vulgar. But you can see intention behind everything he does. He cares about people. He looks after them. So uh, yeah. Kratos likes him. This is a very well, simple exchange. Yeah. And but it's incredibly meaningful. First NPC you meet in 2018 as well on this uh, whole crazy journey here. And yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. It is the first weapon a Spartan learns. What hell? Ain't this just like old times? Yeah. A bit more accordingly myself. Yep. Guess we're doing this one boy style. <laughs> now listen, uh, I appreciate what you said back there. It's good to have friends when you find out your brother's a rack scabbing liar. No doubt he only wished to protect you. <laughs> Word his call to make. Guy dies, he's got the right to know about it. Take heart, Brock. We all die sometime. Many of us more than once. Any more guesses, but Hard not to just, you know, I left that lighted on purpose. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. But yes, anyway. Oh, boy. Oh, all right. 
gets bigger, the more you take away. Ah, is it time? Because the more removed from events you become, the larger their scope in your memory. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Mamiya's desperation to figure out this riddle, because he is the smartest man alive. He always said, he's like, fucking hell, I can't make any of this work. That's bollocks now that I see it. <laughs> That's bollocks now that I see it. <laughs> Never mind. Got one last favor to ask of the both of you, and we can call a square. What happened down there in the forge with the lady? That's my story to tell, all right? Agreed. Oh, very well. What are we doing, butt sausage? Where are we going, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brock. It is a good spear. Damn straight it is. Brock. Yeah. When you knew Faye, was she... Let me stop you right there, Kill. Brock ain't one to go breaking no confidences. Not even when it comes to the dearly departed. You have no idea how fucking difficult it would have been for Kratos to ask that question, by the way. Yeah. Like, it's showing vulnerability. It doesn't usually do that. But it's, uh, it's how much he trusts Brock at this point. You don't hear me spreading your business all over town, do you? Smiths don't blab. It's just how it's gotta be. I only hope Sindri's in one piece. It's... <laughs> Did Brock just say butt sausage? He did. He did. That is an offensive thing he <laughs> said. I love me a good butt sausage. <laughs> By the time Brock's done with him, the ice beneath those two is thin enough under the best of circumstances. No. And now it's time for another scene. This is, uh, this is good stuff. You get uh, This is the point in the game, I think I said this to free. Once you reach that Brock scene, this game starts to blast off in terms of yep. payoffs. Good time. I just want to talk. Dad to dad. Speaking of which, imagine my surprise when Atreus came knocking at my door. <laughs> He's doing well, by the way, and will continue to do so just as long as I return to Asgard sometime soon. Besides, our friend here has a, has a whole lot to live for. Arguable. Run along now, but behave yourself. <laughs> Do you see that? Like, he opens all of this with a meat shield. Yep. yep. And he barely even, like, there was no question about that. He pretty much acknowledged it. It's like, yeah, he you want to get to me, you're going to have to kill this guy. <clears throat> yep. New spear. Never much cared for Brock. Can't deny the dwarf's talent. You came to speak. I have to touch Drake. my spear. New. I like it. You don't really want war, do you, Kratos? All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. I want peace as much as you do. Perhaps we can find it together. Having him He's framed lying. by the spears here has got to be a very deliberate decision. What would you draw from it, Rags? Oh, it's probably, I mean, the tip of the spear is, I mean, it's its one of, the, the spear is probably the most, it, it's just an iconic weapon that refers to war and violence and conquest, and to have him essentially framed by this item, I mean, it's not telling us anything new about him necessarily, but it might be telling us that he might have these, the, the, these, these, you know, violence is something he's definitely willing to do that, you know, it, it sort of maybe frames him underneath him as a character that, you know, it, it's just, a, it's a part of his nature and, uh, or that's something he, he's willing to do. Uh, not exactly certain. Just something I just sort of noticed right now. Yeah, no, I think it's fair. I doubt this was an accident. I don't think they would have framed him this yeah. way just by chance. Um, Having him with a spear on both ends of a 2D screen. It's just like it makes in it feel like... In a digital game, I don't think yeah, it's going to be an accident. In a yeah. game where you can very easily remove or add things when you want well, to. Well, that's, that's kind of what I was getting at. But, I mean, there is a very low likelihood this was an accident in that they set up the whole area for the, the dwarves and they're moving the camera and when filming this. And they're like, oh, look, some spears are in the way. Uh, let's just move it so he's in the middle. There you go. And they didn't think twice about it. But I believe because of the way this game was built that this was deliberate and it's supposed to mean it something. It seems deliberate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, I mean, th th no matter what he's telling you, the the real Odin is ready to fucking kill you. Basically, is what you could get from it. Perhaps lots of different interpretations.
That boy of ours is everything I expected. So clever, kind. Be sure he's yours. A kid, you really ought to be very proud. He is the key to peace in our age, to break free from all this fate and prophecy. My son is not your key. Oh, God, do they not have metaphor in your homeland? Or rather, did they? I'm sorry, that's not fair. Genuinely feel like this was a moment of like, God fucking oh. damn it, my patience for you is running so <laughs> yep, thin. Yep, like, yep. you know what I'm saying, don't you? You can't be this bad faith, Kratos. Like, come on. <laughs> like, this is this. My son is not joking. It's like, but the thing Odin's just not going to be able to crack through is that it doesn't matter what you say. He believes you to be a liar and you have his son. That's the only reason you're not split in two right now. Yep. So, um, yeah, this is Odin's attempt to see if it's still too far gone or not. Um, is also another reason why you could imagine this sweet scene was prompted. But a third reason as to why it happens now is because those dwarves are now gone. Durlin is there. Likely those dwarves let Durlin know that Kratos just came by, and so Odin's come in. See if he can get a chat with him, because it's rare that he knows exactly where he is. Mm -hmm. um, at least in a place that he can reach. You're not the god you once were. And now is your chance to prove it. Return my son. Or you may meet the god I once was. And what kind of god is that, Kratos? What do you even know of godhood? In your lifetimes, has anyone ever worshipped you? Ever prayed to you? Can you even imagine that kind of love? No! You don't care about mortals. You don't care about anything beyond yourself. Beyond the monster who kills without cause. You fear what you can never even hope to understand. Is it any wonder that your boy is in no rush to come back to you? Don't listen to him, brother. He's just trying to get in your head. Oh, um, pretty, pretty choice words from Odin, and he lays yeah. all of that on right after Kratos threatened to hurt him. He, uh, yeah. Odin is just not in the mood, neither is Kratos, That's the big reason why these guys will just keep clashing. Is, uh, Odin feels like, and you can tell this from the first scene, I'm extending olive branches that I don't have to, you understand that? And Kratos is like, fuck you. And he's like, right. Man, you're a insolent little Sorry. shit, aren't you? Um, There's not... some legitimate questions there too about like people, like has anyone worshipped Kratos or prayed to Kratos? It's like, well, I don't know, maybe. Like there, there was a good gap of time between God of War one. No, and it's not two maybe. It's which... yes, uh, people have yeah. worshipped and prayed to him, but I don't think Odin's talking about a literal interpretation. He's talking about where who Kr Kratos is right now is is basically chastising him for being immoral. Like I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna achieve vengeance upon you because you're doing bad things. And Odin's like fucking insulted. Like you're the ghost of Sparta. You're like known for being a complete asshole. At least I have had like yeah. several eras in which I was worshipped and loved. Have you ever had that? I'm not sure yeah. whether or not Odin even knows. But something he's gonna rip into Kratos. Well, he did rip into him for is something that will get to him. Nobody ever worshipped Kratos because he was a good man. Yeah. Nobody ever. Well, and, and I mean that's of... that's kind of what I was what what my point was that I was like, well, I I don't know, like maybe what, when I said maybe I was like, was Kratos worshipped and loved, or was he just the God of War that was there for? I mean, a little while. Me and Metal played Ares. God of War two. I think you did recently, right? Like what we see is that yeah. Kratos is dominating as the God of War by pushing Sparta to higher and higher highs. They like oh, him in yeah, Sparta, like, presumably. I mean, yeah, you're right. I guess you're right. The Spartans love him. Mm -hmm. well, that's who I'm, when I say this, like, I'm assuming they love and worship him in and as much as he's a strong person who can lead them to victory. Um, as a quick reference, if you remember that guy who loved Daemon Targaryen in, in episode 3 of House of the Dragon, and then Daemon fucking steps on him. Yeah. I could imagine there are several characters who um, sort of like loved Kratos because of what he did for Sparta, but that he wouldn't necessarily notice or necessarily take too much action in avoiding collateral damage when he was godzilla his way through certain wars. Um, 
This is the character that, you know, we've moved on from, that he really doesn't want to become. Someone who, as Odin just put it, is like, you don't really care about mortals. You cared about uh, the prestige of Sparta. And to, un to do the response to wrongs done to you by gods. Like, if we pretend for a second in the first game, oh no, it's entirely righteous. It's like, well, it's the point those games make in the original trilogy is that it became bloodthirsty and uns unsatable. Mm -hmm. Um... So, like, what, what Odin needled at there is, is definitely a truth. Kratos, as the man he is right now, nobody's ever thought to look to him for inspiration or love, except his son, I guess. But functionality is a god, you know, it's a... And, and Odin is offended that this guy is the one to almost threaten and lecture him about, like, a moral stance. He's just like, you don't know fucking anything about it. And like I said, I don't even know if Odin knows about all of that stuff. The main stories that seem to have passed over is Kratos is the ghost of Sparta, and because he had some wrongs done to him, he fucking annihilated a pantheon. Um, I just think there's a lot going on here, and uh, that interpretation was sort of strengthened once we got to certain other payoffs in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, a lot of people are very upset because they believe that the developers forgot what happened in God of War 2 when this comes soon after a sequence that was all about referencing God of War 2. Yeah, uh, I don't think you should worry too much, guys. I think they know they're they're gunning for the uh, the other interpretation that he's not worshipped and loved for the actions and the and the inspiration is rather what he was as useful to those in Sparta. Um, and I think he's aware of that. He, does, he remember he hates who he was back then. So it's um you could argue it's just not the same. He's not been worshipped for who he is now. And who he was then, he doesn't even like, he doesn't want to be again. This game is about avoiding that person. Um, he just used it as a threat, like, I will become that person again if you don't return my son. Yeah. You know, um, and I just think uh, it's a really great move from Odin, too. And it shows Odin's insecurities. He's like, fuck you, man. You're annoying me. Like, you, why can't you just listen to me? Why do you have to be this grumpy blah blah blah? And it's like, because you have my son, dude. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You might want to realize how much that, that is uh, really getting to me, and, and that's why he throws that out at the end. Like, is it any wonder your son isn't coming back to you? That shit hits hard, Mr. Kratos. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, threatening Odin and implying Odin is the immoral one, he gets, uh, he gets all upset about that. Very quick scene. Lots of shit achieved. Thumbs up. Thumbs up the bumpers. I don't know if anyone yeah. else had anything to add. You know, I'm wondering. I'm just... I yeah um I agree. I guess with the way that Odin views maybe his living son right now, named you know Thor, and he treats him, maybe Kratos's attitude and adoration of you know his own or not adoration, but his love of his own son to that degree doesn't quite hit in the exact same way. Maybe uh, there's an element of Odin that just kind of doesn't even think to think that in a sense now that Baldur's dead. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know, maybe. When there was a couple of expression changes, right? Like when he mentioned monster, Kratos is, uh, is not happy with that one. And when he says our son, he uh, gives him a big old death stare too. Our boy, sorry, not our son. Superior bastard. That nerve of him showing up here. At least you rattled him as much as he rattled you. I do worry though, if I'm being frank. We've crafted a weapon to kill a god. One could say you're on the verge of returning to form. For those who don't know, that is the literal plot for God of War 1. Just gonna go try and find something that can kill a god, basically. Does it scare you? Aiding another violent god. I'm scared for you, brother. And I can't help but think Kratos said that, because that's what he heard at the Norns yep. place. So it's something that's on his mind now, too. It's like... That's something you think about. You think of me as like, you know, close to Odin. You ever worry about that? Because it's going to be pretty awkward. This is, this is why, by the way, it's best we don't all know everyone's feelings and thoughts at all times about everything. Uh, it's going to make friendships a little difficult. <laughs> See what are some things you keep to yourself, okay? Could start a war. The war. If that no longer concerns you, then maybe Freya's right. Maybe the giants had you in mind all along. Hmm. So this drop near Spear. You're prepared to use it? To protect Atreus. I am no one's champion but his, nor no one's god. That may be my form. It is not my nature. Oh! 
I, I, I would expect more noises from different people, but that's okay. It's no, just I, I it's got it. yet yeah, another no, example. I like, of, I like it. Another like example it. of finding new ways to use prior lines, but they do it so much. <laughs> There's only so many ways you can say. Well, yeah, they did of course, it again. I'm not flashing back on these ones. It's like, I mean, yeah, that's just in this game. It's fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. You understand. I guess a difference of opinion is hardly the most I'm setting aside for this alliance. As long as the plan is to kill Heimdall, the rest matters little. There's also the bit of news that Odin has some inkling of what we're up to. I thought I heard ravens. Damn it. What did he say? Lies, threats, and more lies. What did you expect? You think he lies that Atreus is in Asgard? No. On that, I'm afraid I believe him. Then the rest matters little. Now do the thing! <laughs> do the thing! <laughs> oh, look at that! She's special, that one. Ain't gotta tell me. Have you found a way to reach Asgard? Um, not as such. Had a few ideas, but they didn't so much... work. <sighs> Brother, without a way to Asgard, what are we doing? I do not know. I need to think. I am... tired. So... You're sure nothing unusual happened with the lady? Nothing at all? Nothing whatever. Smooth as snail shit, like I said. <laughs> Why? Snail shit. There's some reason you expected it to flip sideways? What? No, no, of course not. I'm delighted to hear everything proceeded as planned. Well, they did. And it was a proper adventure to boot. I taught them all about the nature of the thing and the form of the thing. Become a whole motif. You're making up words again. I said it was a motif, and it was beautiful. You are impossible. <laughs> I'm the most possible one around here. Where are you going, brother? That fucking exchange is so good. I and like it's it. yeah. completely optional. You can miss that if you walk off. <clears throat> a lot of people do, do as that? well. No, <laughs> we do no. That. Smooth as snail shit. No. So we're just keeping blindly on then. Hoping we don't walk headlong into Ragnarok. Is that your plan? Listen, I've had a long day. Mm-hmm. I just want to go to sleep and dream of my ginger. It feels deliberate that he tosses the blades while he places the axe. Yep. yep. Worth saying we rarely ever see him like this, but what has happened recently that is unusual, that has almost never happened, is uh, completely lost track of and the ability to protect Atreus. He's gone. Yep. yep. And uh, this so is so really he is incredibly vulnerable right now. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, and considering the flashback we're about to get, and just just this performance, it's um. You get a very huge sense that this is the worst he has felt in a long time. Mm -hmm. Because why did Treyas leave? Well, kind of oh, shouted at him. Kinda grabbed feels him. like he pushed him away, and yeah, yeah. The scars from the chains of Olympus, too. And this, uh. The big old. Uh, torso th yeah. scar. The blade of Olympus. <laughs> yep. Um. And, and, you know, he can't help but be reminded of all of his history when the last events he just did are, as Amir, Mimir put it, like, you're doing everything you did before. Yeah. All the things you're trying to avoid. And he just fucking misses her. Yeah. Let's look at his face here.
And like a, the character work is so unreal. We just said all of that, and it's like, you know what else is on his mind? He's gonna die soon. Doesn't know yeah. how it's gonna happen. Like, it's, this man is dealing with a lot. He just knows that there was a painting on a wall of prophecies that have all but come true of his son holding him as he dies. All right. Well, your father seems very ready to go. Shall we then? This way, Grumbles. Mr. Grumbles to you. Do you enjoy the gentle waves, little one? Father and I traverse this river often. One day, you will learn to navigate its waters. We live deep in the wild woods. The most beautiful forest in all of Midgard. And it is safe and serene here. Game is plentiful. And you will want for nothing. Uh. We're not far from the place your father and I first met. We nearly took each other's heads off. But he's softened since then. Somewhat. Fortunately for you, he remains dreadfully stoic. <sighs> I suppose it will fall to me to teach you language. Your father can teach you to hunt. Or perhaps that will fall to me as well, since all he seems to be good for is grunting. <sighs> have you nothing to say to your son? What would you have me say, Faye? Anything. Let him learn your voice. Let him know you. He is far better off knowing as little as possible. Knowledge is not always a burden. <laughs> to think the mighty god of war, frightened of his own child. I do not fear our child, Ray. I fear for him. He is innocent. We are not our failures. We are not who we were. We must be. Atreus is our future. Keep him safe, Kratos.
protect our son. that wall ever do to you oh good stuff yeah <laughs> again uh gorgeous transition the music tr yeah. changes with it as well um so that scene uh god how fucking well integrated it was too because that that whole moment is her really instilling how much it's on kratos to protect uh, yes. atreus when this is coming at a time where he feels like he's failed his job mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, of course, giving us everything we need to set up all of 2018, basically. The connecting uh, yeah. pieces. Several of, uh, it is, it is very evident now where, uh, Kratos' perspective on a lot of things has originated from, distilled very clearly by Faye. Yeah. You know, be better, we must be better. And of course, in terms of because at this point we've we've already uh, laid the foundation for a lot of the thematic through lines. Now we're starting to build them up even more. Um, we are not our mistakes. That she that that uh, that Faye is telling Kratos this. It's really important for him to understand that to move forward, um, as well as you know reflective of her as well. Um, so it's appropriate. It's an appropriate perspective for her to hold. And ties in really well with something that feels like at this point one of the big like pillars of the story, which is that notion of being better, of seeking to be better, not <laughs> allowing to be defined by your history or the role that you are said to play in the world, but to rather you know choose for yourself to strive to be a better person. <clears throat> The, yeah. the really crazy thing too is that we had like Falcon Winter Soldier come out earlier. Uh, it, was it this year? Or was that was that last year? Well, I certainly yeah. hope that people who say you got to do better, Senator, like when they say that in chat, well, that that's like a meme. That better well, be a meme, but and that's not like the, a. The, the thing a, is, though, like my point is, it's the the execution that, like, the idea of needing to strive to be better than your nature or better than the default of what you are is is a good value to strive for but just mm -hmm. when you execute it in a way that seems earned by the story that you've been building up Wait. over the course of two games yeah because the, con the context just... behind it in falcon winter soldier was he was told several Thank reasons you. why his plans are fucking shit and then he just started suggesting insane shit like you can end like did he say like you could just transfer all this food yeah. to all these people who need food as if like that's not a huge plot point in this call. whole series like, well, that they've been that trying phone to call has consequences. Well they, and they 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 already had logistics set up to try and provide food. Remember the fucking idiots destroyed it. They blew it up. The idea that you can just take resource X and move it to place Y and everything's great. Like it just shows how much Falcon has no fucking clue what's going on. He admits as much in that speech and then he just goes you got to do better. It's the most like well, balls well, fucking thing ever. Yeah, whereas in in this game, yeah. Sorry, me... go ahead, Frank. No, no, no. Uh, go for it. 
I don't know, I was just going to say, but in this game, though, they execute that's the same concept of the idea of you need to do better, you know, in a way that just makes a lot more sense and doesn't it doesn't seem preachy because it feels earned, you know, or at least that's kind of the way I see it. Kratos has locked himself into believing he's already had loads of lines related to this. He can't there is no retribution for him. There is no recovery. He's done so. He did what he mm -hmm. did and he is to live with that forever. A cursed man who just sits alone and tries to live his life bumps into Faye in the Norse world. She has surprisingly large amounts of her history that he's not aware of that links them a lot more than he realizes. The word she gave in that flashback, once you find out about the other side quest stuff, it's not just about him. It's about her as well. Uh, this, this push, this desperation to not let that define you forever. And if you can tell, like in 2018... He may have been told this earlier on, but he's still thinking about it, and he's still moving around with it, all these different pieces, and his, his adventures with Atreus, is being presented all these different events with different choices to be made, and then running with the ideas that she's put in his head on top of all the experiences he's had. By the time you hit the end of that game, he's absorbed it fully. You have to, we, we need to be better. This is fucking ridiculous at this point. Everything just keeps getting worse, and it's down to our choices sort of thing. It's really cool that they gave us that's two of three, by the way, for Faye. There's an incredibly yeah, meaningful scene that binds uh, the original trilogy to 2018 even more than it already had. I think what I appreciate about it is just, again, this level of honesty and maturity in terms of exploring that theme, right? The notion of don't be defined by your mistakes, be better. That at the end of 2018, which is one of my favorite scenes in that game when Kratos uh, is telling Atreus, like, we will be the gods we choose to be. You know, like, we must be better. Um that he has that perspective and holds that perspective, but then he's wrought with doubt when things, when he makes mistakes again, right? Even though he, uh, even though he's already, um, figured out that lesson, even though he's already internalized that message, uh, that, that lesson, he's still, there's still doubts when things go wrong, when things don't seem to be panning out as he, as he'd hoped they would. Um, and he's... it's kind of interesting, right, that Atreus, Mimir points out that Atreus needs to be allowed to make mistakes on his own, which, there'll be some interesting stuff for that shortly, actually. Yes. Well, shortly. But, um... <laughs> Tomorrow, I guess. But the fact that, uh, it's, you know, same applies to him, he still is going to be making mistakes, but that shouldn't stop him from... I mean, it's, it's the line, right? Don't be sorry, be better. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, when does this... Uh, so, what what is in this dream in full? It's like reaffirming his responsibility to protect and care for Atreus while also reaffirming that he should not allow what he was to control what he is and this comes at yep. a point in the story where both of those things are in complete limbo like what is what is the state of Atreus is he safe it's like I can't even say I fucked up as a guardian and then secondly what is the state of you uh mm -hmm. moving on from your past it's like I don't even know I I, I am tumbling right do? now you know what Hence, is what are you doing and it's like all that fury and the weapon, and then it's like, how do we get to Asgard? It's like, don't know. And so he's just got to sit and absorb the fact that he lost Atreus. Yep. Especially since the whole preceding, the whole preceding section of this game is, is people sort of going like, wait, so like you're gonna go kill God again? Like, is that what's happening here? <laughs> like, you're gonna you're gonna follow through and basically do what the prophecy says you're gonna do? Like, is that what you're committing to? And they're presenting this amazing. Like Thing that's happened he's moved on thanks to Faye and atreus but th atreus getting threatened is is almost forcing this pathway in front of him that looks too much like his old self mm -hmm. so um yeah um as long as it's not his fault then the kid can just blip to a new place the the arc of what's happening between atreus and kratos is getting uh, a whole bunch of stuff soon He'll understand. yes it is yeah, it is. But I think that is a good place to pause. We've got yep. plenty more to do. In fact, I think yeah. more people will be, if they were to have to choose <sighs> the first half, so to speak, of the second half, I imagine the second half is the part they really want to see commentary for. But you're going to oh, have boy. to wait <laughs> because of the fact that we just did that for 10 hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I have to face that yeah. I won't be able to finish this with you tomorrow. <laughs> no, why not? Is it cause because it's... I have to work on Monday. Okay, yeah, but I'm, I'm in a similar position. <laughs> oh, if, if you guys, well, but, but to be fair, we've covered what was that? Uh, four hours and twenty minutes. What remains should be around about two hours and ten minutes, something like that. 
Okay. So yeah, that's we'll the thing, it. but we'll be talking about it more because that's when all the payoffs are starting to uh, well, so really. I was gonna suggest this is for I don't know if you can all shoot this down if you want. Did you want to start slightly earlier or do you, what's what's the? I mean, I'm, I'm, me, yeah. I'm awake yeah. anyway. Just, uh, okay. I'm I'm but, only I visiting mean, I think Grandma Fringy... Commander tomorrow, and then I'm back. Fringy's the main one. Grandma. Too. I'll just no Rex no. <laughs> no I'm sure she's a fine lady if, now. <laughs> if it makes it easier for everybody else getting up earlier uh, or not getting up early because all you'll be awake I can get up <laughs> early okay. well um, okay then and we'll aim for a 6pm GMT start uh, uh, Mark cool. and Theo how are you guys feeling about that yeah it's fine for it's me 1pm it's the middle of the day alright then um well, before we go, how about everybody talks a little bit about what they get up to in life? Uh, we'll go with Mark first. Why not? Hi, I'm Mark the Cyborg. I make um, YouTube videos about video games. And um, I also stream on Rumble pretty regularly. And I'm on Locals as well. Uh, local, uh, sorry, Mark the Cyborg. Locals. Locals.com. Sorry. Ah, gosh, I'm running out of breath here. I'm very tired. Sorry. No and um, yeah, every so often I'll give away free Steam games too. So that's hmm. fun. And yes, I, I am an actual cyborg. I only have one leg. Are you reviewing Ragnarok? Okay. Whoa, 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 hold, up, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. You being sorry. a cyborg isn't about you not having a leg, it's about you having a robotic leg. Yeah, You've got I, to I nail this have, in the bud right now. I only have one human leg, and oh. I walk with the assistance of a robot leg. Also, yes. that nail okay, this that's in the bud. For. How long have you been awake, Rags? Nip this. Yeah, Don't nip. you do that? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you guys, do wait. Do you nip people's buds? Because I nail people's buds. What do you? What do you <laughs> nail? Do? <laughs> nail it in the bud and nip people in the butt. Is that? Is that what you in the butt? You went with the butt. That's fair. I, no, the bud. You just nail him right, the... nail him right in the bud butt. Um. Well, you know what? Go right ahead. I'm. I'm. Right. I, I'm quite a. I'm. I'm. A, I'm progressive. I'll allow it. Glad to hear that. <laughs> that I'm glad to hear that. That's good. That's good stuff. I like it. I like it. The as way, for me uh, making oh, a video on on sorry, as for me making a no, video okay. on Ragnarok though, um, I, I I did a um history of a franchise thing for geeks and gamers on God of War. So what I kind of wanted to do for Ragnarok was release what I, I I was calling like DLC for that video because it was a history of a franchise that was up until the point that 2018 came out. Mm -hmm. Ragnarok obviously had not been out, but now it is. So it's like, hey, if I made the video now, what would that segment be? And that's what I'm looking to do. Hey, sweet. All righty. Um, I believe links are in description, but if they're not, that would be rectified. No problem. Um, Thank you. But yeah, uh, Theo, want to talk about your, your new video you put out? That, uh, awesome <laughs> new you video? know the deal with me. Maybe someday. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you be like, shut the fuck up. Leave me alone. <laughs> like, okay, I'm scary. And uh, Mr. Matumblo, what about you? Hello, it's me, German man. No, I'm, uh, the, we, we did the, the forge on, on this game yesterday. Uh, it was not as long and was much more, I don't know, random. Just picking out random topics, just going for characters and stuff. That was fun tisms. Uh, yeah, I'll do Metal's Forge every week uh, now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even more than once a week when there's a lot of sludge going around. But What is the for next now, planned it's... topic? Uh... Well, my next planned topic was Callisto Protocol, but oh. now that that game was apparently unplayable, I actually don't know. Maybe I'll do just some... I know. There's a bunch of trailers that came out and just some stuff to talk about. Maybe i do like one of these, I don't know, random things. I don't know. What did you guys call it? Like a media medley or whatever? Yes. Oh, yeah. So I, so I might do, do one of those and just talk about some stuff that has been coming out. Maybe see what Callisto Protocol is up to mm -hmm. at that point. Callisto um, Protocol might be good video fodder because it is pretty bad. And um, oh. when in doubt, just replay Dead Space 2 because that I, you know what? Boy, uh, Dead Space is. remake is out when? Is it March? Uh, I think it's I, the end of January, actually, oh, isn't it? Well, January. yeah, I think it's like a month from now or something, if I'm not mistaken. I'm all Me set too. up and ready to stream Dead Space 1 and 2, and I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Resident Evil button. 4 remake is the end of March. And um, ah, man, I replayed that recently, and oh boy, it holds up. Of course uh, it does. It's Resident Evil 4. It's bitching. Great, great yeah. gameplay. For, for, for people who, who who were wondering, it's like, Metal, where are, you, where are you, your gaming streams? I haven't seen you on Twitch in ages. That's because I don't stream on Twitch anymore. Whoa. You can't even, 
You can't even subscribe there anymore. I, I'm not even affiliated anymore. I, I axed the Twitch. Uh, I'm doing all my streams of, uh, over on the YouTubes now, on that Metal's Forge channel. Nice. So, uh, yeah, that's where I've been playing all my Gad of War and putting the, the, the VODs on the archive as, uh, as, as, as you're used to, if you've been following that. Uh, but yeah, I'm... I mean, I wanted to stream Kalisa Protocol, but I, I don't know. I think I'm just going to be streaming some Demon Souls remake, which has been patiently waiting for me to get out of this uh, crazy, crazy God of War month <laughs> I had. Oh, yeah. This, is, uh, this has been quite uh, a good way to sort of drain it from your thoughts to get everything out in the, in the course of 20 fucking hours, I'd imagine. <laughs> or yeah. what it'll be. After after I played Scorn, I needed some good cleansing and it took a month, but I'm I'm good now. I'm good. Um and yeah, uh some people are asking when is six PM GMT from now? Um Google is your best friend for stuff like that. It can tell you instantly. <laughs> in, However in relation to typical start time, what might it be? Well, no, I can just now, right? All I was gonna say. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's literally twelve hours from now. Um and so oh, everyone, good. everyone has that twelve-hour window to do human things and sleep. Which Wait, is so redundant, in so. twelve hours from now, um, yes. I won't be able to do that. Would I? Were you not listening to that conversation? <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I thought, I, I guess I, I thought that it was going to be like a, a Wednesday thing. I, I, no, I, 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 oh yeah, tomorrow Wednesday, right? Oh no, I no. Well, uh, point being, I, I cannot do it tomorrow. No. Uh. Right. That's uh, <laughs> okay, well, that is an en enormous monkey wrench uh, <laughs> that just slapped right into the entirety of. Because the other the problem is I can't be like, but, oh well, we'll figure this out. It's the what well, I can do though is when I'm done with my things, I can join the stream and just have and just join it late. Well, obviously, because it might be. I'm trying to make it so that everyone here can make it. But like, how much would it cost you? Do you know? How much would it? Uh, how many hours? In terms of time? Oh, let's see. Uh, I might be th two, three hours late. Two or three. Well, you'll definitely catch the end. You know, the big, big, big parts of the game. You might mm -hmm. miss that one bit. The big, one of the big bits. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I can always rewatch it afterwards. No, I know. So I just um, I'm, I miss I'm, it I'm, live. I'm genuinely but... saying, you know, I'm sure people would like to know your input on. Parts of it and stuff, but obviously the the only problem is that we are impossibly stuck for because the thing is next defab is already set for Saturday and no, I I got gotcha. you yeah I just it is it is something that I uh, I can't miss it is it's not mm -hmm. it's not something I could miss but it should only take me like I said maybe two three hours until I'm able to uh, get back so I mean it's not that bad definitely a booty call all right all right yeah that's fine in fact I'll allow it uh. But yeah, you know, just, um, we knew this would be a long boy, the whole thing. Uh, oh yeah, yes. There was no mis, uh, no mistaking that. There's way too much to go. This has been a long one. Too much <laughs> this one has. It has. It's been a lot long. of good stuff. Oh, I've had plenty of fun, and there's so much left. Obviously, we haven't touched the majority of the big payoffs. Um, if we can't have Rex, can we get Fen Fenrir? <laughs> we have Fenrir at home. No, no. Fenrir at home. We heard Fenrir at home. A, yeah, we a number of times during the stream. Yeah. Yeah, my friend Rear Dome is a poodle and a chihuahua. All right. Uh, shouldn't delay anymore because, yeah, we all genuinely need to reset and be able to prepare for doing this all over again. <laughs> so, um, yes. Thank you all. Oh, well, unless, of course, uh, Rags, Fringy, anything you guys wanted to say? Um, not at the moment, no. Uh, still uh, setting up some things, moving some stuff over, kind of chilling for. Uh, a, just a little bit longer with uh, things before I get back into it. Though I've got, I've definitely got stuff planned. I'm uh, feeling a lot. Uh, definitely got things I want to get done. I, I've, mm -hmm. I've got a list, list of things I want to start knocking out. Yeah. Uh, obviously, super chats will be all done at the end of the second part of this. Nice and uh, sectioned and chronologically themed. Like I said, I'm trying to grab the ones that are mm. relevant as they come in here and there, but I, I'm missing them. But we'll make sure to catch everything by the time we hit the end of God of War Ragnarok's story. And then uh, next Saturday, the plan is to do the the last, presumably, of the God of War Ragnarok streams, in which we'll check out many common criticisms. Um, it's going to be exciting and fun, I'm sure. 
But regardless, though, thank you all very much for uh, joining us, keeping us company, for the kind donations, and, well, just being you. You being you, chat. We will see you in just about 12 hours. Unbelievable. Yay. Toodle pip. Cheerio. Yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Catch you. Bye, bye. Toodaloo. Flim flams. Oh, my God. In three minutes, it won't be tomorrow. In three minutes, it'll be today. Oh, my God. Yeah, I guess in some places in the world, yeah. Yeah, it's been today for a whole hour for me. It's been today for most of the day. I'm heading up the rear.